Given the staggering length of this video, I feel like I should tell you that if you're not a fan of long-form content, and instead want a more digestible version of this video in the form of the individual segments themselves, I will leave a link below to a playlist consisting of all the parts individually. I get seeing an 8-ish hour video is a lot intimidating, and I too would have a harder time watching it myself, so I feel ya, Holmes. I'm gonna try to be more accessible towards those who just don't have a free day on their hands, and you know, uh, there was a lot to talk about regarding this situation. A lot of moving parts and a lot of individual points of interest to look at. It's almost as if this is a video deconstructing a year's worth of harassment into one video. I hope you enjoy. The link in the description is only there to see the source material. Do not under any circumstance go to these people with the intent to be a dick. I don't support witch hunts or lynch mobbing, so don't be either. As for the subjects themselves, my video is for the purposes of criticism and entertainment. Take it or leave it. My content is not here to start drama. Please do not treat it like it is. Alright, have I invalidated my video yet? So this has been going on for way more than long enough to the point that making a third video now about this subject is not only beneficial to further compile new information, but also is becoming increasingly more of a necessity given the new information that comes out about this whole ordeal. It's not exactly what I'd call a video I exactly wanted to make, but more so a video that had been long since coming. So it's not exactly a big secret that I often deal with a lot of harassment, and a chunk of said harassment comes in the form of people angry at either a disagreement towards a stance I take, a misunderstanding about a video I was covering, maybe some oddly hostile tweet thread I wrote when I was 19. Mind you, these aren't the only motives people have towards attacking me, but these are the most persistent ones that I find people call back to. It is indeed draining to deal with it from such a constant basis, be it from Medicare fans, Just a Robot fans, the Alt-CC, ex-friend groups, Sherman and his posse, to a lesser degree, Akumu. Like, I get that I've made a lot of mistakes in life. I get that I've made a lot of mistakes online. Hell, I even will think that I'll continue to make mistakes in the future. And I even get that we are well past a point where that these mistakes can be rectified and hidden away to where we can all act like they never happened. Not like I'd want it to, but even if I did, that's just not possible at this point, and I get that. However, that doesn't mean we should never move forward, and that often does seem to be a problem with these kinds of people. And funnily enough, it's those very kinds of people that often have their own bone-filled closets that they would never acknowledge because it requires a level of self-awareness that would challenge their own moral compass. And that's where we get into today's topic. Returning to the stage, Justa Selvion, more commonly known as Doodle Clones, has been a user that has been on my case for just about a solid year at this point, and initially started pretty benign, just a few annoying comments from an individual who found a few of my videos. These got increasingly more frequent and hostile after Selvion saw confessions and apology. Again, I was able to ignore these for a while because these kinds of comments are normal for me. It was only when they picked up the Doodle Clones moniker that I even spoke out against him to begin with, and I want to emphasize that point. I had ignored Sylveon initially, which only got them to come back more hostile, and the reason I want to emphasize this point will become clear later down the road. Anyway, after Sylveon picked up the Doodle Clones moniker, I had given him a stern talking to before blocking him. Once again, I want to stress, this little idiot had been blocked already, but Sylveon wasn't having that, and so they had made their first video on me directly to once again get my attention. This first video was a commentary on a commentary I did in 2016 on Just a Robot, and since I've already covered this video, I'll make the critiques brief. Sylveon, while utilizing my old Elizabeth stills, basically plagiarized Just a Robot's response to my video all those years ago, and did it in a way that made Jar's arguments worse. In part because they were placed in wrong areas, the other part because Sylveon was out to tear me down by his own admission. See, without poisoning the well too much, one thing you're going to have to come to realize is that Sylveon is very commonly a bad faith actor. None of his criticisms have the intent to actually help anyone, but are way more focused on tearing the person down. And there could be a multitude of factors to regarding those that they follow, not understanding the most basic aspects of argumentation, or just out of spite, because that seems to be very common driving factors to their actions. Laziness is also something that's very common in what Sylveon does, and I'm not alluding to this in his production, because there is a lot you could say in that department, but more so the fact that Sylveon doesn't really make his own anything. At surface level, there's the fact that he's literally ripped all my sprites from my videos in Toy House to use in his own videos, which is something that we in the slideshow commentary community get criticized for a lot, and we'll come back to that. But also, just because Sylveon doesn't make his own arguments either, 
Outside of his original video on me, Sylveon had very much been caught plagiarizing from a lot of other sources and initially pointed towards people who are far worse than I am. There's also this comment, which is word for word from just stop second video on Luke. You don't change, Luke. You stagnate. You say you listen to criticism, but then continue going on with the same things you've always done, and it leads to you making the same mistakes. You act as if your content is just your opinion, and you don't need both sides in an argument to find the truth, as you so eloquently put it. You say that other people like me are the ones who are elitist for calling out your bullshit, but if anything, you have a bigger ego than most people I know in this community. You act like you can't be proven wrong, and until enough manpower is put on you to finally give up, you stubbornly hold on to everything you say like you couldn't be in the wrong, and it's everyone else's fault. You need to get it through your head that that isn't the case at all. Also, I know a lot of people are scared to talk about you because of how easy you are to provoke. You'll most likely make a response to this in some way, but judging by your last like to dislike ratio, I'd assume your response to this would be even worse. I would never say this to anyone who made one, two, even three or four big mistakes in the community and learn from it, but it's clear from how you say you go about content that you aren't going to change anytime soon without the biggest push ever. Even in DMs, when I tried to discuss with you about the video you made on me after after it came out, after a while you just stopped responding. It happened once again during the Lexit situation when I tried asking if we could VC and calmly discuss. I've heard this is the thing you do, Luke. When you don't want to listen to people and want to stop a conversation, you just stop responding. You plug your ears and say la 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 until the mean people go away. Well guess what? I'm not going away because this video is out there now. The thing I wanted to say to you, which I wouldn't to anyone else, is this. And I mean this in the most sincere, blunt way I can because I care about this community and where you're headed leave the community. You've caused almost nothing but damage, and it's clear through your mindset that it'll just continue if you keep it up in your current state. I'm not saying leave forever, but go leave for a good time and reflect on everything that's happened. Maybe come back with a different perspective, or a different kind of content entirely, because right now, you're the definition of a dilettante. If you don't know what that means, look it up. Thanks for watching. I'll hopefully see you all in the next one that isn't about drama for a good while. Sylvia, you aren't slick. We'll come back more into this pattern of behavior continuing into this video as I don't want to play on my cards just yet. Anyway, afterwards, Sylveon made a Twitter where their worst behavior started coming to the forefront. We're talking about racism, harassment, both the abusive and sexual kind, defending child pornography, uh, sorry, lolicon, transphobia, manipulation, art theft, cyber stalking, impersonation that borders on straight up identity theft, and the worst crime of all around these parts hypocrisy. I have learned probably more about this one 15 year old from the UK from them stalking me for a year than I know of even some of my best friends that I've known for years. I know his influences, his allies, his other platforms, everything short of his address or his parents name and phone number else this video wouldn't have to exist. Yeah I absolutely would call a child's parents to get them to stop stalking my every move. Are you kidding? Anyway in this video we're gonna go over the archive of just a Sylveon's actions. Less for his benefit, since I know he won't really care, but more to the benefit of those who watch me, those who wound up stumbling onto this kid, and for anyone who might want to know more about the situation I've been going through. I will have critiques for Sylveon towards the end, but I'm not holding my breath at this point. Anyway, buckle in. I'm also going to have some of these little breather segments for y'all who are wild enough to watch the full 8 hours for little post-point thoughts, stuff that I forgot to add into the script itself and thought would be good to clarify or expand upon by the time that I was just about done with editing. Uh, I'll try to tie them back into the chapter you just watched. Think of it like a mid-chapter advice column, I guess, or just me coming in to break the tension with some uh, gremlin wisdoms, if I may. That'll make more sense later. These segments will kind of vary in severity, uh, but they will be as important to this commentary as the main chapters itself, so make sure to not skip over them if you're watching them in playlist mode. Anyway, buckle in and enjoy the ride. I think the best way to start this journey would be to better explain the context of Sylveon's motives. 2019 definitely gave me the push that I needed to start soul-searching for the betterment of myself and others, as I was noticing how many people I was pushing away by that point, and how just in general, I was kind of devolving as a human. I refused to be there for people when they needed the support I refused to give them. I was kind of a gatekeeper for transgenderism at the time. I fell into a lot of bad habits regarding assuming of character or self-victimizing. I was kind of a wreck and it was all kind of just dawning on me throughout the year until I finally had a mental breakdown in the form of a video called 
confessions. Now, there were a few reasons for that video's existence. Uh, I wanted to confess my bad habits on a more public forum, to apologize to those that I had hurt, to hold myself accountable, and to allow others to hold me accountable if I was unable to, and then, if nothing else, cancel myself and ruin my own reputation, if so the chance the video did that. That was the plan B, if you may. By all accounts, before this video, I might have agreed with Sylveon that I didn't really deserve a platform. I was a scumbag, and there was no denying that. But Confessions was my last attempt to grasp at anything resembling change or betterment, and... Strangely enough, it worked to a degree. Not everyone was happy with the video, some people told me they didn't really feel as if Confessions was a good enough apology, which was the cause of the second video's existence. However, there were a chunk of people who took Confessions surprisingly well. And I'm not just talking people who didn't know this stuff. Ray Kohai, one of those people I gatekept their coming out, actually thought the first video was sufficient enough, and then the follow-up was just an extra bonus for her. So if you don't want to take my word for how genuine I was in these videos, you have one of my most consistent victims to tell you how much it meant to her. Ray and I may not be friends anymore, but that's for other reasons I'm not intending to go too deep into in this video. Just know we weren't really healthy for each other, and I think both of us knew that. But even still, she had accepted the apology herself, alongside quite a number of others that I had wronged at the time. There was one person, however, who didn't accept the apology. And that was a man by the name of V Omega. I'm certain Sylvia knows about V by this point. After all, this shit's been beaten into his head as much as we can beat it into him, despite the fact that he still seems to be resilient to understand why defending such an individual is... not good. However, we'll come back to this discussion later in the video. It'll be important then. For now, I'm going to focus on the main video that Sylveon alludes to whenever he's called out for why he tries to run me off of the platform that I have. Look, I don't want to be the one to say that I have improved to a degree, because that doesn't sound genuine to me, because it shouldn't. For an individual to explicitly claim that they've improved from bad habits that they initially had with no evidence to back it up, it's about as credible of a statement to make as the citation, Dude, just trust me. However, Sylveon keeps making this claim that I have not improved when there's clear evidence to the contrary, even predating confessions. So let's go through and point out some notable examples. Let's talk about Pikmin Planet, the person who was the initial cause of me looking at Master TP10's video to begin with. Because this is a neat little tidbit of yikes that nobody outside of a handful of people would have known that I did. So, there was this commentator called Skihound, who at the time was notorious for doing live-streamed commentaries called The Berserk Cast, where they and a group of other commentators would get together and just do what live-streamed commentaries do. There's unfortunately not very many archives of those streams, like, I know there was a Berserk Cast on me that's nowhere to be found online as of 2019, but I remember it pretty fondly and remember catching a bit of it live, though admittedly I didn't stick around to watch the whole thing. Regardless, sometime in the future I wound up on a couple of those live streams myself. The one on Yana's top 10 overrated Pokemon list, and the important one to the discussion, Cringe Fest. Which is essentially just a bunch of people partaking in cringe culture and reacting to various videos by people considered cringy. This stream, however, was special, as we were contacted by an individual known as Weston, more famously known as Kablam Bandicoot 64 if you're at all familiar with my earlier content, you know who Kablam is. He was a pretty big bandwagon back in the day. Anyway, we got Kablam onto the stream to debate him about his behavior and how he didn't come across as any better than his rival at the time, the mysterious Mr. Inter. And during that stream, Skihound, I guess, dropped the N-word as a joke? The details on this are a little hazy, but the only reason I know what happened was because of what Pikmin Planet did following the stream. So I made a video talking about the Berserk cast I was on and had advertised it to my very different audience at the time, with Pikmin Planet coming into my comments section and DMs saying that I shouldn't be advertising a racist on my channel. Confused by such a claim, I explained to Pikmin that it was more of an edgy joke over anything else and we had gotten into a discussion over whether or not white people should use the N-word. You know, as you do. With me on the defense of the ability and Pikmin obviously not in favor of it, uh, for a while we had our back and forths until I got so fed up with the discussion that I blocked Pikmin Planet from Skype. This caused a whole different situation to happen between Pikmin Planet, Azumanga Diofan, Scarlet Otaku, and myself. It's not really all that important to what's going to follow. And at the end of it all, we all collectively cut ties with Pikmin Planet. Some months after, and seeing Pikmin pop back up from time to time and blocking her every time, I started getting questions on Ask.fm regarding the unblocking of some individual anonymously. Unfortunately, those questions have since been removed by Ask themselves under the policy of certain questions being removed if they have certain topics on them, one of those topics being suicide. 
This Anon was telling me about how suicidal they became ever since I had blocked them and trying to get me to talk with them after constantly being blocked every time they popped up. So obviously I came to the conclusion that it was Pikmin Planet because they were the only person I had blocked at the time. Of course they say otherwise and I can't really make a case for or against either side, but generally that's what I had thought at the time. And in a fit of rage, I told them to do it if they were so dead set on it. So there are two parts of the story that I had to improve from. I was initially a person who was willing to defend the usage of the N-word and valiantly was willing to defend it against someone who was trying to inform me about the racist connotations that surrounded that word, and then after blocking them to have an account that seemed to be theirs tell me that they wanted to commit suicide if I didn't unblock them. I heartlessly told them to go ahead and do so because I wasn't having it anymore, which ultimately undercut what that person might actually have been feeling around that time. Starting with the stance on the n-word. From a general standpoint, I could point out how I no longer use the n-word, just at all in videos, and haven't since 2018. I've apologized for the comments on the videos that aren't the most notorious for me saying said word, so predominantly the Mr. Inter commentary and the co-op with chaos. Most of them are now unlisted, and Doodle is cringe had me straight up apologize for using the word at all. Plus, a lot of my humor has definitely calmed down, and while I can still be rather cynical at times, the edge overall has softened up, and there's a lot less of a chance that you're going to get another instance of Doodle Tones dropping the mythical gamer word. Great logic. I guess I can call black people niggers. Ski hounds and nigger. That ski hound had used the word nigger. Not like these things were necessarily okay back then. I can definitely say it's stuff that I've matured away from and can say looking forward that I will most likely not be doing. I mean, it's out there. I can't change the fact that I said the word. The most that I can say is that I'm sorry that I ever used the word and that I won't be using it in the future. Like, just as a whole, my demeanor has definitely mellowed out and honestly, I'm very okay with that. I was sort of upset when people started saying that I lost my edge because I felt like at the time that was an insult to my character, but that might have been for the better, really, because I can often go back to a lot of my earlier work and just oftentimes feel uncomfortable with how angry and aggressive I can be with my targets. So it's quite clear that my demeanor on the use of the word has changed drastically, reverting back to a similar, more liberal opinion about the use of the word that I had in 2014. Um, that's kind of obvious, seeing as the last video is you pretty much screaming at this guy in a word, with a word that should not be learned by anyone. Of course, I know you don't care about the Sylveon, since you seem to hold a similar reversion ideologically to the four years that I was okay with the slur. However, the point is that this was a thing that I was criticized for, and even something that I was criticized for defending. And in turn, it's still something that I have been consciously avoiding further and continuing. This was critique I apologized for and have been improving from, regardless on what you personally feel about the subject, which counteracts against your claim that I never improved. However, this was only the first part, and arguably the least egregious part about the story, when the other aspect is me genuinely telling someone to kill themselves under the guise that they were trying to guilt trip me into unblocking them. Which, yeah, no, this wasn't okay. It's genuinely toxic to sit there and disregard someone's feelings of suicidal thoughts because you cannot know how real they are. But ever since the mythical time of 2016, again, my perspective on this kind of behavior has in fact shifted. Friendly reminder that a video on my worst commentaries of 2018 list was put there for basically crossing that trolling line at a time where someone could have potentially been at their lowest point. I mean, yeah, I had to do a fuckload of research to even understand what was going on, but when I finally pieced everything together, I was livid, to say the least. And before I get that guy in the comments saying that I'm taking a joke too seriously or I'm falling for a troll and feeding him, I think you misunderstand the situation. Peter was actively finding someone who is having relationship issues and is trying to apologize for what he did while at the brink of tears online for his girl to see, only to then say no one cares about that and everyone hates him. Sun Rainbow was at his lowest, paranoid and scared. This is no longer trolling. Everyone's love, everyone hates you right now. That doesn't make any sense. I do have another, more modern example regarding just a robot, but on behalf of his privacy, I won't dive too in depth about what the conversation was about or how it exactly relates. But in any case, I had taken Jar's distraught nature much more seriously than I did in 2016 with Pikmin Planets. Now, no, again, that doesn't make the actions I did five years or so ago okay. But what this does show is that I have grown more as a person who understands the importance of mental health and being there for someone than I was 
so many years ago. Context be damned, this is not something that anyone should do, especially not twice. Those in the Order of Dimwitted Doves may remember me telling a dark ghost wind to jump in a ditch and die back in 2016 as well. So this was not just a mere mistake, this was a knee-jerk reaction to something I didn't think through and angrily started venting about on my public Twitter. Ah yes, now we get to the infamous Todd tweets. For those new to this context, Back in 2016, an ex-commentator by the name of the Fiery Henry made a commentary on an, at the time, Poketuber by the name of Tamashi Hiroka, who I think just goes by Tamahiro now. The video got pretty hardcore dislike bomb, which spiked Henry's anxiety, as he didn't actually think it was going to get very much traction. Because, fun fact, the slideshow commentary community is actually very niche, and unless you're covering drama, no one really gives a fuck about what we have to say, even as a 14,000 subscriber channel. If you didn't know, now you know. In any case, this prompted X odd member, Dark Ghostwin, aka Todd, to make a threat belittling Henry's anxiety about the whole situation because, and I quote, you should expect hate when you cover someone with 600k subscribers. This pissed me off and I told him to jump in a ditch and die, which was tactless of me, for sure. And while I have criticisms about how well Todd also handled this situation with leaking an ex-commentator's private vents and generally being a buzzkill about commentaries as a whole, to say nothing of his existing history of harassing people in the Countdown community, plus I will never get over how his Hugbox video was hilariously unself-aware, I still handled the situation worse between the two of us as I was an emotionally charged 19-year-old who wanted to get back at someone who dicked over a friend and then defended my poor actions about it pretty vehemently. Now, how do I feel about that situation? Not fondly, actually. Shock to everyone, apparently. As much as people like to assume that I still stick to my guns about that tirade on Twitter, I actually don't. Because after having dealt with the kinds of people that I was at the time, I realized how toxic I came across, and while I will say that I'm thankful that my tirade was left on its own and no one joined me in yelling at this one guy, that doesn't change how reductionist and destructive my threat is as a whole, and how not okay just in general it was. Funnily enough, as much as people got onto my case for being the target of harassment from the likes of Mr. Medicare fans, such as that kid Douglas or Jesus with bazookas did, it never did once occur to these guys that this extra layer of karma could have been both a lesson and have gone too far, which was kinda how it be. Dealing with Medicare fans as much as I did definitely taught me that this specific behavior wasn't okay, and I don't know about you guys, but I definitely have been avoiding telling people to stop aliving for merely making their own destructive decisions. You know, unless it's myself, because I know I can take it for myself. Past this point, you won't find a video in which I tell someone to die unironically, which could help cement that this was a very negative but isolated incident. To further my point, you can see that my demeanor has changed about comments like these with the likes of, again, my 2018 worst of the year list. Like, guys, I'm not making this up. He tells Common to actually get cancer. Like, he drops the jokes and the sarcasm just to say, Fuck you, and it's not even funny. Straight up, I hope you get cancer. Not to mention my 2020 list if you want a more up-to-date example of that change that post-dates confessions. However, in 2021, Sylveon still uses this thread as one of the examples of why I should be deplatformed, even now. To get back on topic though, my wording is very typically easily misconstrued, and this caused me to get into a lot of trouble in the past. See Jest or Robot, The Conundrum, Early Dylan videos, etc. And it continues to get me into trouble nowadays too. In fact, you're going to see that a lot the more we move into the 2017 and 2018 segments. I have to continue to clarify things that people may have misunderstood due to my shit understanding of language. In fact, that's the reason I practically refuse to be a messenger nowadays. Again, you'll understand as shit goes on. From there, I should also mention that I have a mouth that doesn't know when to keep quiet. If I have thoughts on a subject matter, no matter how right or wrong it is, or how much I'm even unsure what I'm saying is correct, I still speak on it, and that's what led into a lot of 2017 around me, hence this next segment altogether. Now, I can definitely say this one is harder to prove growth in, considering the nature of the point of this critique is not saying things, which, by the way, in hindsight, is kind of bad critique of myself, because shutting up is kind of the antithesis of the job that I'm boxed into. There's actually quite a few bad critiques of myself in that video, all things considering, but that's neither here nor there. I think the main critique to actually take from this segment is being more selective on when I talk about things, not never talk about things, because if I'm being affected by something, I should be able to speak on it, no? In that department, I think I have been better at that, keeping my feelings of certain things rather brief and vague in comparison to the wild statements I was making in 2016 and 2017. 
see my feelings of the Toby trauma from like last year as an example. Like where maybe in someone was criticizing an individual video and like something happened something spurred on from there or like uh from looking in like where the art community especially like the deviant art stuff like back in those days uh from an outsider looking into the art community i'm gonna be honest that fucking toby drama i did not like that toby drama at all and seeing how many people got roped into it um kind of without their wanting to like what was it? Nezzy Monster got roped into it. All because, uh, she had said that, like, oh, this kind of looked like, compar uh, she drew a comparison between that situation and the B Madame situation. And that just caused, like, this, uh, this one dude to just kind of rope her into it. And then she was just harassed for, like, she was harassed for months on end about it. And while the point of how I wrote things is a bit more subjective, I do try to sit down and think about what I'm gonna say in videos before making them to begin with if it's something of a more rather serious nature. That's why I spent years thinking about the George Raccoon situation. That's why a third video about Sherbin hasn't happened, and God knows this has prevented me from speaking more publicly on a ton of other things that I do feel were wrong. Of course, you wouldn't know of those potential discussions because I never went through with them. I can only list off a bunch of other potential video topics I had, but if I actually went through with explaining why I feel the way that I do, then not only would I absolutely be crucified for it because some of my takes are rather spicy, but also because that would require either calling people out that I don't want to or feel the need to, get into fights that I don't feel like dealing with, and more importantly, go against the selective shutting up that apparently needed to happen after this video. In any case, my point is that, again, this has been something that has been being worked on over time. My wording has become more concise when I do make a statement on something. I try to keep a healthy bit of nuance and conversation when I can. I may not be perfect in that regard, I am only human, but an effort has been made even if you subjectively don't see it or if I objectively fall short of it. Of course though, that's more a, you kinda have to take my word on this statement because otherwise it's very hard to showcase evidence for it. This I feel is when I really started to lose it because I've always said in honesty that I don't think that I'm honestly that great of a content creator, but I've gotten myself into the habit of fighting back whenever I see someone else say that. It's a drive that emotionally drains me just thinking about it. See Megadu, Mudhole, Us vs. Them, there's multiple streams, particularly Poilzone and Saturday streams, and some of the early steamer streams, just as some examples. I think back to early 2016 and how willing I was to accept criticism and then look at 2017 at how unwilling I was despite saying otherwise that I can't help but to think that all of this was caused because I developed one of my many bad habits I hold today. Had I not been so brash and emotional with my video on Jim, who knows what would have happened. And combined with how quickly I'd blown up as a content creator leading up to that point, I believe we can all agree that I got too big too quickly, and even now I'm unsure what I'm doing with it. That last statement holds true, I still did get too big too quickly and I'm still trying to figure out what to do with this size, but in any case, I do want to look back at the criticism point because I feel like this one gets brought up rather frequently against me, and if I may be particularly blunt for a second, rather unfairly if I do say so myself. Oftentimes, when it gets thrown my way, it's in response to me not taking every single criticism and applying all of them, regardless of how counterproductive or contradictory they may seem or, alternatively, was used as a gotcha whenever I didn't feel as if the criticism was valid or important. Not ever when criticisms would actually help or positively affect my content, because I typically take those critiques, though no one wants to ever acknowledge those moments. Like, I've stopped posting commentaries as frequently as I used to. I take much more time on them. I've re-added some of my snark and humor, but not so much that it's destructive or distracts from the content itself. I take what I perceive as jokes a lot less seriously. I use copyrighted or anime avatars less frequently. As mentioned before, I've cleaned up my act a bit. I meander less. I'm less subjective. I nitpick production less. Unless it's abundantly clear that something needs to be done. I spend more time researching. Like, sure, I don't ditch the voice changer and record my face holes talking because that doesn't help the production I want, and I don't get off the internet and delete my channel or kill myself because that's not good critique. I don't admit that I'm not trans because that's just abundantly not true and my four years of hormone container should be proof enough of that sentiment. Otherwise, what criticisms are there that I don't take? Guess there's the criticism of my drawings, maybe. 
I've hurt both Mills Co. I and I'm fairly certain Avi due to my own deep-seated, I guess, bigotry and skepticism. Like, there's really no other words to describe it. I feel like a bigot. How could I not be? It's not like I like being this way, but if you allow me to explain. Leading up to joining the CC, I'd met a lot of people in my life who randomly came out as trans falsely to get closer to me because they would feel like I'd relate more to them that way, and I definitely cut them out of my life for it. This developed another bad habit that I have now though, where I have to find any rationale to tell myself that people who aren't close to me only came out because of me so I don't get hurt again. And in short, this is a habit that I hate myself the most for and desperately want to break but I've yet to be successful in. And that especially sucks now that I'm in a community with a surreally high trans population. And if you remember my aforementioned Umbras and Discount stream fiasco, you'd probably know that I'm especially worried when kids come out publicly because I don't want them to potentially ruin their life. Though that's another side of double standards. I came out publicly at 15. GG. However, neither of the individuals I'm talking about are kids, so there's no morally based excuse that I have for this, despite how scummy it is regardless. It's just me putting patterns onto people because I've been so hurt so many times before and it just isn't right. This isn't okay for me to do and while I can sit here and apologize all day for it, it's not gonna at all matter to me because this is the last thing someone who is trans should get into the habit of doing. I don't imagine I need too much elaboration on how much I've been working on this one considering the longest commentary I've been a part of, predating this one, and which is also the longest commentary in this community, period, predating this one, is in defense of a young trans girl's identity. Nintendo Meta Runner, also known as Joshua Colby House, misgendered commentator Lin Lin, formerly known as Lin Dada, and then persisted to argue that her identity wasn't her identity. And I made a three hour long video responding to that garbage, with the last time I talked about Lin Lin having a disclaimer addressing the trans identity going into the commentary. Before we get into the video, I wanna follow up my usual disclaimer with another disclaimer. We had started this project back in May of 2019 and through scheduling errors and just overall everything that's happened this past year, things may seem very odd. I know our target has gone through a brand change and I think the pronoun game we have throughout this video might not be entirely accurate either. Lindana, by the way, is like 15, 16, point is she's a minor. Someone who, prior to this video, I would have spoken out against in fear of them potentially being disowned by their parents or some shit. But post-confessions, I've been working towards pushing past that habit, so I'm not a proverbial gatekeeper pushing out peasants to our fenced-in community. I mean, for fuck's sakes, I use she-her pronouns for Ray in this very same video. By what I thought was the end of my mental breakdown, I had talked with Mills Kohai and was too out of my head to just admit that the breakdown was based on a cycle of self-hatred. Again because I had thought that maybe I was just jealous that they were able to get help immediately, whereas I had to wait six years to get HRT. Which is worse, but as I said, I'm still a little out of it. And maybe I was, a little, but that wouldn't have justified such a massive meltdown that got them to block me to begin with. And even if that's not the case of the breakdown, Mills would have had no reason to assume otherwise when that's what I fucking told her. Like, good god, I can say all I want about myself, this was most certainly a step in the right direction to improvement, and you would be lying if you said you thought otherwise. In any case, confessions, as much as I firmly stand behind on what it stood for and will stand firm on apologizing for the actual things I did wrong, I will say rewatching this video a couple years later, it does have its problems and bad criticisms of myself that I can only reminisce on being beaten into my head by the likes of individuals who didn't exactly have my best interests in mind. Furthermore, I can say with certainty that some of the valid self-criticisms have been improved upon and worked towards fixing. Ultimately, the more subjective criticisms in this video could still hold strong depending on who you ask, but I personally feel as if I have objectively improved where it counts. Am I perfect? Good god no. But just needing improvement shouldn't be a justification to rally from ID platforming or a justification for endless harassment. If we all had to go by this very same logic, then any mistake made would be a means to harass people off their platform, and I'm certain that no one would want that if they themselves were in the hot seat. Especially not you, Sylveon, because lord knows I can point to objective problems and hypocrisies within your own online presence. In fact, let's talk about that. Another thing I want to point out, Sylveon alludes that one of the things I should be deplatformed regarding this video is the fact that no one calls me out for things. And I definitely touch on this in later chapters, but I do want to kind of touch on it now. Sylveon, does it ever occur to you that I was calling myself out because other people didn't? Like, it's not like nobody ever said anything against me, but 
With a lot of my video, there are things that people didn't know about regarding the, well, quite frankly, actually shitty things that I did that no one was calling me out on. I felt guilty about it, and so I was holding myself accountable for it. Confessions is, in essence, me being the person to call myself out for shitty things, whereas no one else was. But, oh no, people still don't call me out on these things that I've already called myself out on. The horror. Again, I do come back to that later on, but I wanted to make sure I explained that in more detail now, because I don't know if I go into enough detail then. Sylveon likes to talk a lot of shit, but I don't know how much they actually believe anything they say. It's fucking hollow, if I may be so brash about it. Right down to the videos they make about me. As I said, I've already covered one of their videos, covering me in full, where they just plagiarized everything just a robot said in response to me five years ago after I did my video on him. Just a robot! You know what? I'm tired of doing videos on reactors and social justice warriors all the time. I want to take a break. Maybe I'll do a commentary on something that won't make me angry. Hey, what's this? Eleven Pokemon that could destroy the world? Well, that doesn't sound so bad. <sighs> okay, this is going to seriously bother me if I don't bring this up here. I get it, you're trying to be a robot. That's your character. But the way you speak is grating. It's as if you're a child trying to sound incredibly cool, but you wind up sounding more edgy than anything. It makes me want to play dodgeball in traffic. It's always great when someone opens a video with an ad hominem attack. Now I don't have a problem with ad hominem attacks, but here's the thing Doodle Tones does. In her video on Pika Chan Gamer, she complains about him doing the same thing, yet she's doing the same thing to Jar. You're such a hypocrite. <sighs> Yeah, if you didn't catch that, this point is ripped almost word for word from Jar's video. It's always great when people start off a commentary with an ad hominem attack. Now, normally I don't care about ad hominem attacks, but the thing is, Doodle Tone does. You would show off your real voice instead of using the phone. Use a different program. You or better yet, use your real voice. Returning viewers will definitely know this, but the whole use your real voice argument seriously gets on my nerves. Same goes for the show us your real face argument. Neither of these critiques debunk anything anyone has to say. Instead, this is what is known as an ad hominem, which is basically something directed at a person instead of the argument that they hold. So it's bad for Pikachon Gamer 64 to complain about someone using Spiconia, but it's a-okay for you to complain about me using a robot voice. You're such a hypocrite. Jeez, if the trying to be me whilst pinching all my old Elizabeth avatars wasn't bad enough, we have plagiarism from Jar. However, not only did Sylveon do a video in retort to my commentary on him, but it persists in the same way that the first one did. And so did all the subsequent others that Sylveon did. So I didn't expect this to happen. For those of you that don't know what's going I made a video on Doodle Tone's video on Jar. When I made the video I didn't expect anything to come of it. Literally the next three days Doodle Tones made a response to me and things immediately went downhill. This is the most backlash I think I have ever got for anything ever- I mean... Yeah, it's almost as if this is the literal first video you made with any substance, my guy. With anything before then, just being a slideshow of images I drew for my characters. See this disowned stamp clearly labeled in the thumbnail in bright red? Or see this description where I explain that I don't like this video anymore? Yeah? You see that? Right there? You, you see it? See this follow-up video where I explain that I fucked up? You see this video of Jar telling people to lay off me? Cool. Oh, and do you see this video posted two years later to explain how much I don't like my initial video with this comment from just a robot himself telling people to leave me the fuck alone? Why is it that Jar fans seem to have a hard time understanding any of this? Yes I am aware that Doodle Tones disowned the video I'm very much glad Doodle Tones retracted false statements and admitted fault but for those of you saying oh Doodle Clones why would you bring this up after Doodle Tones apologized and disowned the video you're just bringing something she doesn't want seen into that I have to say that whether or not she apologized it still happened and still caused waves in the community if Doodle Tones has truly learned from it she should be perfectly fine hearing criticism of it even after the fact. I don't want the jar video to be seen? Okay, so like, first of all, this predated me unlisting a bunch of older commentaries, so videos like this aren't the first impressions people will have of me. So with that in mind, I'm unsure where you got the impression that one of my most viewed and public videos at the time wasn't one I wanted seen. 
All I wish was just that people would stop criticizing me through it as if it were still relevant. Because newsflash, it ain't. Like, I wouldn't even care if people covered it and acknowledged that it wasn't still relevant. I'm very much in favor of retrospective commentaries if you so desire to. However, you persisted to act as if this was all still applicable to my content nowadays with things like your final thoughts. Okay, final final thoughts time dude tones. I know I may come across as an asshole to you but I genuinely want to see you improve. You have a lot prudental to get better. You don't seem like a terrible person. Oh, wait, well forget that it seems this dark path just gets deeper. Oh, and by the way, Doodle Tones, this is just the beginning. That's not even touching that gross as fuck follow up that shrugs off this idea that it can change in your eyes and improve due to the fact confessions and apologies exist, but we'll come back to that topic. I don't know, but welcome to me screaming about my old video for the, what, fifth, sixth time? Maybe more? I've lost count? For those who are newer here and don't know this context, this is just a Sophion, a Jar fan who found Jar's video on me last year came to me to leave a bunch of destructive comments on various accounts, pretending to be me whilst at the same time leaving destructive- So the fist comments doodle tones show are clearly just jokes I don't see what's so destructive about them, so the- so the context for this is that in the video, I commented on doodle tones use the hypocrisy doesn't make you wrong argument, which has already been debunked by other YouTubers, yet doodle tones still used it in this video, which is honestly idiotic. I still don't see what's so destructive about it. Debunked? Where? Ah, well, that's rhetorical, because I know where this idea comes from. I also really like the part where he says, we lack the ability to ignore other people making response videos. I mean, really, how much of a hypocrite can you be? Oh, I'm sorry. Being a hypocrite doesn't make you wrong, even though I'm not saying it makes you wrong. But for some reason you're taking it that way. And number three, and this is the big one, stop being so hypocritical. The fact that commentators use the argument, just because I'm a hypocrite, it doesn't make me wrong. It just shows how far gone you guys are. Honestly, I haven't heard anyone but you guys use that argument. True, being a hypocrite doesn't make you wrong, but people will take you far more seriously if you actually practice what you preach. Honestly, when most people think about the commentary community, they think of a bunch of people who can't make videos, who tell other people how to make videos. And when you call them out on it, all they can say is, Oh, well, yeah, we do that too, but uh... Uh, that doesn't make our points wrong. Take the block of wood out of your own eye so you can see clearly enough to take the grain of sand out from someone else's eye. The best part about this most likely being the source of Sylveon's hangups with the Tukupi callout is Jar doesn't even debunk it. He even agrees with the general sentiment that the hypocrisy doesn't make someone wrong, but just has hangups about the hypocrisy itself, which personally, if I may, isn't the point of us calling out Tukupi fallacies, but... Whatever. With the T-Bone video, I don't even bring up that argument. The five instances of me even bringing up hypocrisy are either me calling T-Bone out on his own hypocrisy, or calling out how T-Bone's attempts to call out hypocrisy fell flat because what T-Bone was trying to call out wasn't hypocrisy. You like trying to point to me and claiming that I'm this huge liar, but this comment is potentially destructive in its own right because of that exact reason. Like, I'll concede to the first screenshot of being jokes. I kind of just slapped together a bunch of screenshots I had without much care. And yeah, I can see how those may be jokes. You get one. But the second comment is potentially problematic, especially in retrospect given everything that happened after the fact. You're only giving a reason in context, but not anything past that. And when you're so actively lying about what arguments I brought up in that very video, you hold me to a standard that I don't even break. A very similar general problem to... Ironically enough, my video on JAR. Go figure. With comments like these. So the context for this is that I saw 7 Omegas comment about Doodle Tones and it showed me how awful Doodle Tones really is. I've got words for those comments, but I've already addressed both that comment and another one that Sylveon winds up calling to, and because I don't just feel like restating everything in that video, why don't I just replay those words for you? Ethan's comment is emotional word salad that starts with V parading around how so many people were wrong about how vindictive he was towards me, attempting to recall a situation that he cannot remember in his own comment in order to make an extra point against me. Smooth. Getting angry that a video that was out to confess my horrible behavior spent more time 
confessing my horrible behavior over groveling at the feet of those I did go on to apologize to. And, by the way, he still didn't like that video because it didn't break down at a molecular level every problem I ever had because it was never good enough for him. Then he goes on to talk about the collectathon discussion, calling it a silly and stupid reason to not talk to him. Not understanding that the problem with that conversation, that situation, that drama, if you may, came from how he treated New Metal Slayer and Lunatic the Games video about it, making it seem like a scathing smear campaign against Pink Robot's reputation. This is never mind how he treated me in that situation where he could not accept the fact that I didn't consider Sly Cooper as a collectathon, but would consider Battle for Bikini Bottom War. Like, he's not wrong, it was a silly argument, but his attitude was why that situation was so frustrating, not the discussion itself. Oh, but because of my avoidance of him, I take things too seriously. Yes, while he might have also said that he took things too far, he had to make it also a me problem regardless, while in reality most of it was me explaining my side, which he was asking for, and then him demanding that I agree with his stance instead, while disavowing Slayer and Lunatic's honestly fun co-op on Pink Robot. You didn't even properly address the stuff that you said towards Leo when it came to that recent stream. Fix that in apologies, V was still not satisfied. You basically glossed over how you basically bullied Umbers and Discount into admitting they lied about being trans. Because explaining how this behavior was much more of a recurring issue was way more potent, I felt. But never mind that, I didn't spend 30,000 years explaining how that one moment was wrong. Never mind the hypocrisy on how he reacted when Joni came out, but that's neither here nor there. You never mentioned how you got a bad habit of just being a loose cannon with some stuff like that one time you blew up on Dulu over stuff related to Wolfie Chew of all things. Did you listen to anything in my video? He was hurt over the fact that I didn't put his video on a best list, as if that is something to cancel me over, talking about how he didn't like me, you can get in line, brings up how I discredited him for bringing down the alt CC single-handedly, uh, when? Talking shit behind YouTube dude's back for when he made his video as to why he's leaving the CC. V, I know this is a surreal concept for you, but being confrontational over a fucking video isn't always a reasonable thing to do. Then talks about how much dirt he had on me that he would never share despite giving this supposed dirt to someone on Kiwi Farms. By the way, I read it. It's just more emotionally manipulative dreck that the Neo Alt channel left in their comment. That comment also gets onto my case for spending more time in confessing my bad behavior instead of apologizing on a video that was out to confess my bad behavior and blatantly said that I didn't think I was going to get better or that my apologies were hollow. It gets onto my case for a drama that V wasn't a part of to say that that drama in particular is the reason V left. It gets onto my case for not making sure V was okay after being removed from the Cloud Palace, which blatantly not true by the way. You can find it in my screenshot document that when it happened, I tried calming him down and making sure he was okay, so fuck off with that. Sure, we didn't always talk after the fact, and maybe he needed someone then. However, and it's not like V didn't say stuff publicly about wanting people to reach out to him. Oh yeah, on a Twitter account that I never followed. V probably didn't tell you that, though. Then gets onto my case about me saying the drama surrounding the Cloud Palace was pointless, and then does that V Omega thing where he hears an argument and stretches it to an extreme where he acts as if I disregarded every issue the Cloud Palace video on the Cam Project had, instead of hearing my statement like it was said. The drama was pointless. V claims that I intimidated people into silence, when very much not true, I never said no one could cover the video. Hell, I wasn't even mad when Ellie, previously known as Micromavi, covered it. The only thing that I was mad about and this was a thing talked about in the group V was not in at the time, was where I was mad at the other Cloud Palace members who wanted to hit the video, when they could have just pre-watched the video in question before it went public. Those not in the Cloud Palace were free to it, I would not have cared. A bad video does not intrinsically need a drama attached to it, it could just be a bad video. We all make those, oh well, it happens. Making it that big of a deal was what I called pointless. That's all I ever said about it. Neo Alt then calls me a danger, an awful person, made the claim that I was willing to defend the child groomer, which is ironic in hindsight given this comment does exactly that, claims V apologized for his transgressions. By the way, I do not recall him ever doing that, and then told me not to respond if I don't have good grammar, so I never did, in part because why would I want to waste my time on that? The other part was because I believed it at the time. Because I was vulnerable. V was manipulative. This is not a good combo. Sylveon here, however, wants to run me off the internet because of things my abuser thinks of me. 
Because someone who is willing to lie or exaggerate at every given chance to make sure he got his way. Someone who is willing to rally people against one another when they were on his shit list. Someone I would not take the word at merely at face value because it was dishonest at the nicest of times. And if you don't want to merely take my word on how untrustworthy V is as a source, because I'm apparently some manipulative liar who cannot be trusted in accordance to someone who had a habit of being manipulative and abusive, you have Bummer Patrol, who also covered a gist of what kind of person V is. Oh, I wasn't looking forward to this one. Let's have a talk about V Omega, who is the sub-reason for why Doodle Clones is doing what they're doing. Confessions is the primary source, but it's V Omega's story in particular that Sylveon has decided to latch onto the most. And given my correspondences with Sylveon in the past, they very clearly don't understand who V was, why in particular people had a problem with them, and don't even seem to care, which is very concerning behavior. That's right, Sylveon apparently doesn't even know V on any level. Never met them, doesn't even know who they are outside of what they've heard from confessions and the comments that they repost constantly. They just simp for V and use them as a moral cudgel for their crusade against doodle tones. And let me just say, as someone who used to be friends with V Omega, this is both hypocritical and extremely misguided for countless reasons. V Omega is the worst possible person to be standing for. These comments that you're using are not only from V Omega himself, the Neo Alt CC account being his alternative account, but the people that have been trying to defend V have not ended up in the best positions, let's just say that. Until they became a lot more combative and a lot less interested in having cordial debate. If someone disagreed with them, then they would fire back in the most condescending ways possible and tried his best to make sure he walked away from the argument as the victor regardless of how correct his position was in the first place. He would talk down to people, he'd berate them, he would shotgun everyone with constant walls of text after the other, trying his damnedest to overwhelm you with a wall of logic in order to get you to submit. Keep in mind that this is actually a very common tactic used by very manipulative and abusive people online, especially if they spam you with dozens or even hundreds of messages. This was a V Omega staple. It's basically just like an advanced form of gish galloping. A massive red flag came in when V started going off on a former commentator by the name of Bon. Maratsu, where they were in the live chat and V just started to break them for the next, well, duration of the stream, just because Bomaratsu asked when they could come in. It was such a horrible move that the stream had to be privatized. Oh, and um, keep in mind, Bomaratsu was 11 years old. V was about 18 years old. So I was actually able to find all the old messages in the Cloud Palace Discord of this event, and I'll share the highlights on screen right now. The discussion was basically him trying to justify why he should talk to anyone however he saw fit, no matter what their age was. Really concerning in hindsight, but we'll get to that later. Uh, I got involved while I was walking to work, and the level of of reach that a legal adult was trying to take was insane. The amount of balls it took for a grown man to flex his fucking ego on an elementary schooler? I never thought I'd see anything like it, let alone from someone who was doing it unironically. But rereading their segment brought back a few more memories. Like the time they were harassing a small YouTuber named Kongi Muller to the point of literal fear. Those were fun times, weren't they? Bullying and harassing someone who was potentially on the spectrum because he was wrong on the internet. Or how he yelled at a 12-year-old Umbris for having a somewhat bad take on gore spamming in Discord, and V compared it to not calling out KKK members for lynching black people. Yeah, uh, that V was kind of extreme. So let's talk about the Cosmo situation, and to give some very brief context for this, and unfortunately most of the screenshots aren't easy to come by since V's Twitter is gone, so I'll show whatever I have on screen when it's applicable. Borg Productions had made a video discussing his thoughts about gay marriage or the LGBT, I don't fully recall which one, but most people didn't like it very much. Two of those people were V Omega and a very close friend of mine named Cosmo Stardust. Now keep in mind at this point V identified as gay, and Cosmo was identifying as a lesbian. So both of them very clearly saw similar issues with the video from the perspective of being in the LGBT. V made a script to cover it and a lot of people went to check over it, Cosmo being one of them, and 
Keep in mind this was and still is a common practice in the community. People check scripts all the time to make sure that there's no critical errors. Everyone does their best to make sure that our friends and our colleagues don't put out content that will be problem ridden or bad. Cosmo looked over it and I don't think she thought very much of it since she was going to make her own video anyway, but V took this as a sign that she plagiarized his script since apparently Cosmo's points were similar to his. And while I'd understand this if V had a unique take or had a very out of the box thought process, I would say no he did not board productions is not the most concise youtuber and his thoughts on the lgbt at that point were fairly common from what i recall and the arguments that were made between v and cosmo weren't exactly harvard level out of the box reasons for objecting to borg they're both smart people who had very informed takes on basic lgbt complaints that you'd hear from any other anti-lgbt content creator that's not a jab at borg's expense by the way i got nothing against the guy it just wasn't a very good video on his part i'll say that but the key thing that V was missing is that anyone, especially people in the LGBT, would likely come to similar conclusions to him considering that they have to live through being harassed and dejected constantly in society. V couldn't possibly accept this as the case, even from the perspective of being a publicly gay man, and continued pushing this accusation of plagiarism against Cosmo for months. Cosmo was very upset and tried reaching out numerous times to explain that she didn't do anything of the sort, but V was a fucking egocentric dipshit, and it always had to be about him, so very clearly, he didn't listen. Well, I mean, we all thought he did at one point, for about a second, and then one of his friends and former boyfriend named Neko Koda published a video on Cosmo in October of 2018 where the plagiarism accusations were included at the very end, which obviously hurt Cosmo. Oh, and you want to know the best part about it? In the comment section was V trying to stop people from commenting on the plagiarism accusation by using Cosmo's mental state. Yeah, that's right, the, the distress that he put her through for months was now his own shield from criticism. Needless to say, none of us were happy. Cosmo railed on him, I railed on him, and so did another YouTuber named Vabzakin. You might know them as Dulu. And then he went to Twitter to basically say, if you bring this drama up to me ever again, I'll block you. So I called him a pussy and then he blocked me. And I'm not wrong, he was a giant coward who was absolutely keen on harassing people for months, failed at manipulating people after the fact, and now he shuts down when people see through his bullshit. In June of 2020, Joni Rue dropped a Google Doc about how V Omega groomed and abused her. That's right, the Joni Rue that I just mentioned before, who was V Omega's best friend, was apparently groomed and abused. Now on one hand I wasn't shocked that there was abuse involved because of V's history of horrible manipulative behavior, but a grooming accusation coming from Joni of all people was... I actually, I don't, I can't even really describe what my thoughts were at the time, it was, it's still kind of hard to wrap my head around that happening. The only person who was willing to give V the benefit of the doubt whenever they were in the cloud palace, who stood up to defend them at any opportunity whether he deserved it or not. Joni was the reason I decided to make amends with V because of how much anxiety we gave them over our fight. Now she's coming out and saying that V was worse than any of us could have ever imagined. Apart from the introduction, Joni wrote this twit longer in a segmented format where it goes over what V did to her. The first section was the grooming accusation and the screenshots were not only provided by Joni, but by V Omega himself. That's right, V was stupid enough to give his own grooming evidence. This is also really funny and hindsight because V went to Twitter to talk about how people shouldn't be making claims without evidence and how they should dismiss the grooming accusation but giving your own evidence for why you're a groomer <laughs> after making that claim is fucking stupid. I know you've at least seen Bummer Patrol's video, Sylveon, because you apologized for your behavior within the comments of his video. Of course, that comes off still rather hollow, considering you already apologized for this exact same behavior on Twitter where the exact same person called you out within a bunch of tweets. Like, yeah, I know both of our videos came out after the video of Sylveon's that I'm covering. I'm aware of that. From a debate perspective, this would make this argument rather unfair since this is stuff that Sylveon wouldn't have known at the time. However, even as of writing this very video you're watching today, Sylveon had gone back to defending V publicly by trying to say that just because V was terrible, it doesn't excuse quote unquote all the terrible things that I did to him. But at most, when you really break it down, my crimes were kicking him from a group that wanted him gone in an admittedly tactless way, and not talking to him when he needed someone to talk to. The horror. 
I'm such a bad person that needs deplatforming. Hashtag cancel Doodle Tones 2022. Otherwise, you're justifying this harassment, utilizing a person who is willing to spin the truth like he did to Cosmo Stardust, calling her a plagiarist where it wasn't applicable, or otherwise just wanted to control a narrative surrounding a situation like he did to Frosty Bomb by making a big deal about them being Benjamin Perry, when that wasn't even a discussion we were having, or one that even came up. By the way, I still have that stream on hand. You can hear this shit yourself if you want full confformation. What the f***ing what the hell? Oh Frosty. God, you. Don't worry. No, not you. No, Frosty Bomb. It's just like, Joan, don't let others talk. What the fuck is up with you, Benjamin? Okay? No, that's it. Fuck it. Benjamin, you are able to talk as much as Jonah is. Don't try to fucking tell people what to do. Okay? Thank you. You try uh, okay, to fucking like, go on to others yeah. and try and fucking tell them, no, stop telling me to do this, stop telling me to do that. Oh, I'm not Benjamin, I'm not this, stop telling blah blah blah. No, no. Benjamin, you're gonna have to understand something. When it comes to you being as fucking irritating as you are, and you fucking obviously lying about who you are, no one is going to take you seriously within this community. Nobody. Okay? Oh. <laughs> Legit, you are fucking getting on everybody's n at this point. You have irritated how many people? And you trying to tell people what to do on, like, over this, when you have just as much as power as Jonah does within this stream, no, I cannot fucking sit here and let you just keep on going off like this. Seriously, man, do you not try hard enough and harm not too much? Are you high? Are you just, are you just like, um, some other YouTuber act like a baby? Congratulations, maybe you are high. Maybe you are not high enough. <laughs> I, I don't, maybe you're I know I don't like it whenever people like fucking like try and like talk down to people like live on stream or something. But no, it's just when it comes to something like this, like, I think it might also be because, like, Jonah's a friend of mine, but goddamn. When it comes to something like this, I, I just can't fucking stand it. Like, mm. goddamn. Like, like Frosty's just been getting on my last nerve, essentially. That That's what I'm going to say, but it's just... <sighs> <laughs> Legit. <laughs> like, if you're going to want people to take you seriously, if you're going to want people to at least give you the time of day... At least fucking give others the time of day, and at least take them seriously, Frosty. And, like, legit, if you are definitely not supposed to be Benjamin Barry, I would love to see some actual proof of this. There's more evidence showing that you are Benjamin than you're not. If you are Benjamin, you are able to actually fix up your reputation. Actually listen. So Frosty needs to chill out. Pretty get it, much. Get it? Chill out? Is more like a joke. Yeah, I get ya. Okay. Like, like, Susie, you can, like, probably call me out if I'm being too harsh, but god damn it. Like, I can't... <sighs> honestly, honestly, I don't really care if, uh... I don't really care about, like, if someone uh, calls out, uh, uh... Like, someone else, but... I, I know it's not like my yeah, audience, and I shouldn't be telling people what to do. Help what you are. Like I know I shouldn't be telling what like people what to do, but it's just when like I see Frosty doing pretty much that, but being far more like like it's obvious that he's just trying to fucking be malicious in a way, going no, I want people's attention, pretty much. Like hell, he even added Susie earlier, going hey, are you bored? I am. <laughs> like no, come on. I, I, I'm sorry, but th this is obviously Benjamin Perry. This is obviously what he would be doing, because he's a fucking attention whore at times. Like, I get that he's a kid and all, but come on. At yeah. your age. Really? Um, Mar 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 that's actually the single, saying, like, that's yeah. actually the single most smartest thing you've actually said. So yes. in a nutshell, never go blazing, Frosty Bomb. Yeah, that's actually, that's actually the smartest thing I've heard you say. Yes. Thank you. I was just saying, act your age that way. If you're not, 
He's just, like 12 or 10. Yeah, I know. I know. But act your age. If you are the teenager or the pre-teenager, you better be acting your age because I don't know I, why. I just want people to yeah, kind of... Like, like, I just don't like it whenever it's just like children try talking down to like people that are evidently not even in the wrong. Oh, hi, Pac-Man fan, 64. Um, yeah. uh, why are, what, why are kids even on YouTube? Is it for teenage? Uh, yeah. I don't know either. Um, yeah, dude, neither, was I wasn't first... even angry, Jonah. I was just more so irritated because, um, freaking Frosty Bomb earlier, like, <laughs> he, he ended up blocking me because I just kind of got a little bit irritated with him. <laughs> like, uh. He goes, hi, and I say, hey, and he goes, I'm trying to find, fill a call, and I go, okay, and? and? It's like, no one has come, and I only have three people in my call, and I go, okay, and? And he goes, that's all, I need one person in my call, and I said, I don't care, and then just like, still I do, even though I'm stupid. It's like, and I should care why? Look, I'm in my own right, call, I don't need I'll to go into back. another call, okay. Mm -hmm. I don't need to go into, a, like, into another call with people I don't... Or, like really want to talk with i'd prefer to be with friends or people i know and then it's just like yes i know that go on sorry and then hashtag booked yes get are you there Bobby, he's um... this is for everybody else in fact whenever you're in a google doc you have the same icon probably as doing gaming. ironically I'm enough back. the same Name is him in the dock, and he goes, I don't care, I swear I ain't, I ain't stop talking about this. And I go, okay, so you don't care that I'm calling you Benjamin, even though you go out of your way to say that you're not him? I'm sorry, mister, I'm only trans in commentaries, I don't buy that. And it's like, you know what, that, what I ain't, because reasons, and then this is his reasons objectively amazing reasons one it's mostly well pointless drama that was supposed to be there and two i'm blocking by have a nice day and All i right. wrote x and b but so like... <laughs> so it we've hit the we've, we've hit the mark where i'm about to swap calls you guys have a good one All right. okay All right. so side call three or side call four like, yeah, I figure Frosty and Benjamin were the same person. I don't think there was a single person who doubted that. But this kid was 11, and was at most eager to get into the stream calls that I did at the time, which, by the way, while wasn't a reason for me not to do these kinds of streams anymore, it's definitely a perk if I say so myself. V made it a much bigger deal, berating the kid for making what ultimately was just an alt account under a new pseudonym, and allegedly experimenting with possibly being trans, to which V spun as only trans and commentaries, which I don't think was ever a conversation point with Benjamin, though I'll concede that it has been a handful of years by this point, so full details of the dramas from back then do wind up a smidgen hazy. Still don't think it justified a seven minute fucking tirade about it. Point is, you're still trusting the word of someone whose word is maliciously untrustworthy and you are trying to justify the harassment and impersonation you've been doing through these untrustworthy words. Which, by the way, if I may go furthermore on this, doesn't excuse harassment. If V is a bad person but can still be defended because of shit things I apparently did to him, then what's your defense for your own actions by this point? We're not even that far into this journey, and we already have a glaring point of hypocrisy on your end, and given what I had to say about you in my last video talking about the situation, it won't be the last. Don't like rule. Just, just this once. In 2016, let me repeat, in 2016, Giancarlo Parimango made a list of 11 Pokemon that could destroy the world. Just a Robot made a commentary on that. I fumbled about and made probably what is my second worst commentary on that, then Jar returned to Cinder by making a video on me, and then Sylveon makes one five years later. I just wanted to show this because she repeats herself several times throughout this video. The video would be half as long if she didn't repeat herself. Fun fact, I only returned to the age of my Just a Robot commentary twice in the entire video, and both times I had other points following it. The first time after Sylveon literally says that we're the same person, and the second instance was during the third instance of Sylveon plagiarizing arguments against my old video. So, no, Sylveon, I don't spend half my video talking about that aspect. There are much worse problems with your video.
You guys watching my video may not think it's so bad but trust me this was a pain to sit through. Just wait till he sees what's in store with this video. This is where I come in. Now, I want to preface this by saying that I do not stand by my initial video on Jar. I have never claimed that you did. Cool, I never claimed you claimed I did either. The point for bringing that up was to preemptively clarify that to anyone who might have stumbled upon it. But, you know, glad we're on the same page. So a person from the Neo CC steps away from what they normally talk about to talk about Pokemon and fails every which way you cut it. Political commentator decides to step away from doing what they normally do to talk about Pokemon. And fail every which way you cut it. OMG, that's the thing I said Lamo. It's like we're the same person or something. Except, obviously, to literally everyone with two functioning brain cells, we're not. If we were... You'd know just a robot and I aren't on bad terms and haven't been in years. You'd also know what the Omega did to me and others as you- That there was supposed to be Doodle Clones the character talking. Doodle Clones is well a clone. It's in her name. So, this is often a point of defense for Sylveon. That Doodle Clones is a character who is a clone of me and shouldn't be taken very seriously. However, that only goes so far when you realize that the line between character and person is so unbelievably blurred that it becomes impossible to tell the difference. Like, were you just playing a role when you used the vent art that was initially used to outline one of my worst habits that was outlined in confessions after assumedly being called out on your behavior? Because, given that this was around the time of the leaked DMs between you and one of your enablers, this looks real fucking scummy on your part utilizing someone else's depressive episode for the sake of mere in-character manipulation. I mean, it's not particularly good either way if you were using it for a legitimate episode considering the context surrounding said vent art, but if you're trying to say everything you do is in-character, then fucking yikes! Are you also in-character when you defend the use of the N-word? Are you in-character when you defend Lollicon? Are you in character when you misgender me? Are you in character when you sexually harassed another user on Twitter? Because there's not actually any difference between the way you play your Doodle Tones character and you apparently being yourself otherwise. By the way, we absolutely will come back to those defenses of yours. You can't just hide behind the guise of being a character as a defense mechanism when there's literally no difference otherwise. Plus, this character is also contingent on the idea that I'm okay with you doing this. Which, if I hadn't made this abundantly clear, I'm not, despite what your literal faked screenshot says. Yeah, by the way, what was this video called again? Doodle Lies? I guess if you want to go by the name Doodle Clone so badly, I guess at least one of us does. Also I, I've stated about what feels like 9 quadrillion 999 trillion 999 billion 999 million 999 thousand 999 times. That am not Doodle Tones. It even says that in my channel description but I should have made that more clear in the video. Also a flimsy argument. You can claim that you're not me and furthermore talk about how you don't own any of my stills all you want, but it's really hard to defend that position of yours when your actions speak otherwise. Anytime you enter an art raffle with Elizabeth for free art that shouldn't belong to you. Anytime you've misled people into giving you said free art. And a lot later on when you started saying that you go by she her pronouns online only, which Combined with your view of the person you're apparently being a clone of, good fucking god that looks horrible. And keeping your characters the same age as the person you're impersonating. I, I mean, I don't know how to tell you this, my man. You could make it as clear as day in your videos that you ain't trying to be me, but that's not what a person on the outside would see. Also, I love how she complains about Jar being edgy, yet three seconds later she turns around and talks about wanting to play dodgeball in traffic. I mean, can you even hear what you are saying? I see you're also taking points from Jar's comment section as well. I honestly forgot I even made that comment. Well, doesn't change the fact it's plagiarized, but we'll come back to that. Wait, repeat that last part. Well, the repercussions of killing a god that created the land we stand on is... That has to be the most retarded thing I've ever heard in my entire artificial life. Groudon created the land in the Pokemon world, not in our world. Do you even know what you are talking about anymore? Yes, sir, miss. Actually, looking back at this retrospectively, I think I do. Warning the next part is so stupid. It might make your brain explode. I know mine did. Yeah, that tastes like poison. I just worded it like shit, and my point in general is kind of just an assumption. See, reminder that this is under the hypothetical that Groudon existed within the real world. But the rules are if a Pokemon came to our world, not if they existed in our world. Stop changing the rules. I'm not? If you let my point continue, I explain where my assumption comes from. 
If he did, then that could make him the god of our land, because as you and Jar both said, he is the god of the land in the Pokemon world. Therefore, that translation could apply. Yes, I am aware that Grant Don is the god of land in his world, but in this world that he did not create the land. Let me give you an example to make this simpler for you. So Ra is the sun god in his world but then he decided to go on vacation. And went to a different dimension. And that dimension was the Equestria dimension. Now guess what in that world? He is not the sun god. Celestia is- And of course you choose to ignore the basis of the hypothetical to take the easy route and say that the hypothetical shouldn't exist to begin with, which isn't an argument. If one brings up the basis for a hypothetical to build upon their counter-argument, ignoring that to bring up a totally unrelated hypothetical won't do anything to the original scenario brought up. As it stands, yes, my initial point was an assumption at best, so it doesn't exactly work against Jar's counterpoint against Mango Man. But otherwise, it still hasn't been debunked by you, because if we were to translate the powers grad on Haas to the real world, that could include its godlike status. My JAR video is 5 or 6 years old by this point, did you not think I wouldn't have time to learn things and look at my point in a more critical light? Please. Then it's only fair to take out unnatural solutions, like, you know, nuke Groudon. And sure, while destroying the world in that case isn't Death Star blowing up Yavin's size or whatever the fucking planet is, I don't know, Star Wars is so all that fun. What the hell did I just hear? Oh no. Not her. See Doodle Tones, this is what happens when you don't know Star Wars. Pathetic losers like this thing show up. I'm gonna also put a pin in on this for later in the video because I feel like it'll be more important for them. It doesn't change the fact that Kyogre can do a lot of damage to the Earth as it is. Try again. Try again. Try again. Hey, I get that you wanted to try and piss me off with using my old catchphrase against me as some sort of no you gotcha point and as a way to pretend to be me, but uh... Warning. This next point is so stupid. You might die if you hear it. I know I did. I love that for you, honey. Truly. Blatantly cutting context for the point that I'm making to isolate a sentence for your own gain and to throw petty insults at me is truly the next level of commentating, but unfortunately it's a very dishonest tactic because you're not going to be giving my point the chance to be properly debunked if you actually, you know, had a legitimate argument against it. We kind of need to be able to hear what I, all I had to say before you start throwing around how fucking terrible I am. On that note, Math isn't my strong suit, so I'll be skipping the Mega Blastoise segment. I take that back again. This is the most retarded thing I have heard in my life. It doesn't matter if Math is your strong suit or not. What he is saying is so blatantly wrong. The said if Blastoise's cannons increased by 50 could destroy the entire world. That's like say 1 plus 2 exalts 34 quadrillion 956 trillion 432 billion 987 million 400. The reason I call this Jar's worst point is because I'm skipping something that I don't know, so I don't know if he was wrong about it or not. I presumed what he was saying was fine here because. I would have no ideas to the grounds of his argument. Kill me. This is probably the stupidest thing I have heard. Doodle it doesn't matter. What he is saying is is that if Blastoise's cannons increased by 50 could destroy the world. An autistic 15 year old such as myself would have figured out in 2 seconds that that is complete garbage. And am not very good at maths. But I think that might have to do with me being a clone of you. This only requires the most basic logic to understand. Guys, I don't think he's yet caught the fact that this was never an argument. This is the exact opposite of an argument on my end. You're getting onto my case for not covering something. Like, Jesus, kids really wildin' out here instead of just touching grass. I'm not good at math. Jar obviously has a better grasp of it, so he's effectively getting out of my case for taking his word at face value here. This point never made sense to me. This is a pet peeve I have with the Neo CC. Why do they have to announce every time they skip a part? Can't they just cut to the part they want to talk about here? It'll do it for you. Imagine calling the SCC the Neo CC after 2017. I honestly had no idea that even happened. I'm still going to be calling the Neo CC though because I think that's a better name. I honestly had no idea it even happened. Right, because you totally didn't know of Jar's CC rant from 2017 where that term was coined in response for the alt CC. Clearly. Look, it's not even that big of a deal at the end of the day. I just brought it up because Neo CC was always the dumbest term for us as it's not fitting, actually. 
Mia would imply some aspect of newness, and the SEC has been around since like 2008, 2007 even, something along those lines. We would have been around a lot longer than actually most of the commentary community subsects, to be honest, but you know what, whatever. You want to call us red-pilled? Go for it, home slice. And it also better tells of the quality, or lack thereof, of this community. Says the person who ripped all my stills and characters because he can't create anything himself? <sighs> yeah. By the way, wanna point out, Sylveon reposted this video from their AU Doodle Clones account, to their Doodle Clones account. One I think this is the first time. I have been referred to by name so that's an interesting piece of Doodle Clones. Trivia. Two the reason for this is for some reason when I upload video onto this channel it for some reason uploads it onto my AU Doodle Clones account. Also that account is run by Susie that creature you saw a while ago. Oh, but I don't run that account actually. And we're not having your, oh, but clone shit here because fun fact, that is an artist's self-depiction. Now, yes, I am kind of pushing the definition of artist here, but I still draw that character to represent me as myself. And you, taking my self-depiction as someone who is openly asexual to the point I've ingrained it into my depiction's design, and trying to rewrite my very history as a sex-obsessed weirdo and planned sex offender, is kind of fucking yikes when you realize the reasons why you go about keeping my sonar around as your little pet, but we'll come back to that later in the video. Okay, final final thoughts time, doodle tones. I know I may come across as an asshole to you, but I genuinely want to see you improve. You have a lot per to get better. You don't seem like a terrible person. Oh, wait, well, forget that it seems this dark path just gets deeper. Oh, and by the way, doodle tones, this is just the beginning. Oh, joy. Can't wait. I can't wait ever. Spoiler alert, that video will too be driven entirely on spite and a vindictive hatred of me, probably because of what Vomega said about that. What I was trying to get across with that statement, is that I'm going to be covering more of your videos. Not that specific video. Man, that aged poorly. I still might cover it, but it won't be for a while. I'm going to wait until I am more experienced with commentaries. That also will have aged poorly, but uh, we'll get back to that one. If not what Kiwi Farm said about that video. If you think what 7 Omega said was so bad, then why did you pin the comment? Because V was manipulative and I was vulnerable. I don't know how many times we're going to need to run this by you. And again, I know chronologically no one would have talked about it with you by this point, like this video. But consider the fact that you still hold by to this, it's obvious Bummer Patrol and I didn't give information that retained in that thick as fuck skull of yours, so I don't know. I could be wasting my breath in a few hours doing something so fruitless, but we're doing it anyway. He's going to say that I'm trying to push responsibility onto everyone else due to one singular sentence within that video and say that I wasn't being genuine because I haven't improved in his eyes and started the video with a sigh, because apparently that invalidates all apology. I never said it invalidated all apologies. I just said it's a sign of a bad one and the reason most people think that is because there are so many bad apologies that have size in them. And the video I commented on is one of them. You had said, and I quote, When your apology starts with a sigh, you know it's not going to be good. Combine that with your dismissal of my apology as disingenuous and trying to claim that emotions look manipulative. What else am I supposed to take from that? Furthermore, I would like to point out an interesting bit from this video. Let's take a small step back. I do find it particularly interesting that you, V, and those around the ladder saw my apology as so insincere and would go out of your way to further argue that point in the case of yourself, but then you focus on the fact that I hearted, replied to, and pinned comments directly criticizing me further with things I supposedly missed within confessions. Mind you, things that ultimately weren't true, but regardless, things that I believed were true at the time. Did you guys really not make that connection? I was so willing to undermine my own apologies because of what one of my victims thought of it, and apparently that can't possibly be seen as genuine by any stretch of the imagination. Like, I don't know, maybe that's actually nothing worth a note, but it baffles me nonetheless. Your entire crusade is predicated on something that honestly doesn't make sense when you think about it logically, but whatever. I am going to be skipping Doodle Tone's final thoughts because it's just her repeating herself. Uh, no, actually. I detail the positive things about Just a Robot's original response to me, 
I talk about how little real criticism I actually get nowadays with most videos done on me being rather destructive and vindictive in nature. I bring up your plagiarism, something you conveniently skipped any time it was brought up, and then got a cameo from the Metal Man himself to put a final cap on this five-year-old drama between the two of us, which you also conveniently ignore, and so the rest of you aren't left with no context and are just taking my word for it, here you go. And now, a word or two from the man himself. I cannot thank him enough for this cameo, link to his channel both below and during the end card. Jar, take the floor. Hello everybody, it's me, Char, using his normal voice with absolutely no filter. But in all seriousness, when I uploaded my video on Doodle Tones, what has it been, four or five years? I had no idea it would blow up as much as it did. I just uploaded my commentary on top 10 Pokemanes that can destroy the world, or was it 11? I, I don't even remember. Because I was leaving to visit my sister in North Carolina, and I wanted to upload something that wouldn't be controversial, boy was I wrong. Now there's two reasons as to why my video on Doodle Tones blew up. One, like half a dozen people did videos about it, and a lot of people were arguing in the comments section. More people talking about the video means it's going to get more views, and the more people comment on the video, the more it's favored by the YouTube algorithm. And the other reason is because of the drama Doodle Tones had with Mr. Medicare shortly after my video, blowing it up even more. I am thankful for how good the video did. That being said, I am really tired of hearing about Doodle Tones. I keep running into people asking me to talk about Doodle Tones again. And I'm tired of it. And Doodle Tones is tired of it. Guys, she had more than enough. What did she do? A bad video on me because she misunderstood my video, and that's it. You're acting like she diddled a kid or something. No, she just misunderstood one of my videos, and she wasn't even that harsh to me. I truly believe Doodle Tones just misunderstood my video and made a mistake. But people are acting like she falsely accused me of wait. For the love of God, Zikozo, leave her alone already. Whatever punishment you think she deserves, she already got it. I really hate YouTubers, or pretty much anyone who gets popular, who always plays the victim card even though they're clearly winning in a drama, and acting like the person they're fighting against is the big mean bully who scares them. Dual Tones doesn't scare me at all. Do you know why? She got curb stomped. For the love of God, I'm not the victim here in any way, shape, or form. Don't tell me. Oh, I'm so sorry about what Dual Tones did to you. All she did was misunderstand a video I made. That's it. Get over yourself. Stop being such an SJW pussy. I remember when I was very young, there was this episode of Arthur the Aardvark. I forgot which episode it was, I think it might be in season 1 or season 2, I know it's one of the earlier ones. Where Francine makes fun of, I think it was Suellen the dog girl, it was a really long time ago, I don't remember all their names. She made fun of her for being quiet and I think she called her a mouse. This caused all the other kids in school to start making fun of her. Francine is talking to the lunch lady and she says, I know I shouldn't have called her a mouse, but why do they all have to be so mean to me? And that's how I feel about Dual Tones. She shouldn't have done what she done, but she's faced enough punishment for it already. Get over it. Now, some animal swear up and down the walls that he's not doing this for the sake of just a robot, but the alternative is that he's doing this on behalf of a manipulative groomer that I apparently lie about and hurt based on those comments Sylveon alluded to earlier. And even still, if that's been the case from the beginning, why start with the JAR video? Because it was easier for you to plagiarize off of someone else's homework to use in video form? Because I never fired back at just a robot? Also, I hope that suffices your thread claiming I'm some infection on this community that you clearly care not about. Spoilers for Sylveon's inevitable response, of course it isn't, because Sylveon is similar to V in that nothing is ever good enough unless you bend over and let him walk away the quote, better man. 
If you really want to fix the situation you are in you need to be more open and honest to your fan base and communicate more because if you antagonize your fans and your critics that's only going to affect your channel negatively and you clearly can't handle negative attention you just need to stop acting like you're something you're not and stop lying about people because in the end that's only going to come back and bite you. See, these would be good critiques if you had all pointed out anywhere in my video where I was antagonistic towards my fans or critics where I was actually dishonest, where I haven't been transparent. But outside of the comments you left that I showed off at the beginning of my video for the sake of context, you don't really do that anywhere in this video, and in fact, if anything, had shown your own instances of dishonesty in the form of revoking important context, blatantly lying about information you should have had, and preemptively poisoned wells to counter arguments you did not go on to actually debunk, Leaving the early, listen to how fucking stupid this is, points to diminish my counter critiques without any effort. I want to make this 100%. Clear I do not stand by my first video on Doodle Tones. I'm just defending it from bad points. I was needlessly aggressive when I didn't need to be. So form now I consider this video and that video non-canon. To my video series. On Doodle Tones so my next video on Doodle Tones. Is the real beginning. Oh, but here I thought pointing out your problems doesn't make them go away. I know, I know. He has a reason for this little comment that returns in the Halo fan portion of the video. So a person from the Neo CC steps away from what they normally talk about to talk about Pokemon and fails every which way you cut it. Now, okay, I know it doesn't really matter as to what video to commentate on, but I had to make an exception here. Do the tones has actually disowned this commentary. Okay, I don't care. Just because you disowned a video doesn't mean you can't still criticize it. And if that is the case then I disown this video there you apparently can't criticize me now lol. But not only do I not give a fuck about this portion of the video as evidenced by the fact that I don't really agree with the sentiments that Halo fan brings up in this point just on the basis of age alone, but also this is a direct instance of Sylveon disowning the video for the sake of making the point. Whereas the former instance doesn't connect to anything except his final final thoughts, which aren't even his final thoughts given that he goes on to cover the YouTube comments in the Halo fan anyway, so... Blah. This really does seem like Sylveon preemptively disowning the commentary before I can even retort. Even still, that's retroactively fucking hysterical given some of the later instances of you putting thrusters on your reverse bicycle when Carbon Rider got called out for dismissing Prince Kai's suicidal thoughts. Something that you should have been against to begin with if you were planning to stay consistent. Or when you backpedaled on saying that Kai should get stabbed already. That was apparently just a joke. Also definitely plan to commentate on some of these other videos of yours because let's not act as if this is apparently stuff that you don't want us to see. Apparently. Given your reaction to my own unlisting of my JAR video. The last thing I want to point out for this segment is once again Sylveon's plagiarism from none other than our good robotic friend, Just a Robot. Something that Foxwell pointed out in his own video on Sylveon. And just in case you think they stopped copying Jar, they didn't. They used the same kind of wrestling arena Jar did in his video on Luke, and even plagiarized his final thoughts. Now, with my ending thoughts, I want to make this 100% clear. Are people like Harley, Just Stop, Lexit, and Tunes, Hopeless Peaches, and even myself worthy of criticism? Have we done a few bad things here and there? Some more than others. Now with my ending thoughts. I want to make this 100% clear. Our people like Jar, Dylan Thomas, Everyone Doodle, have talked about, and even myself, worthy of criticism. Have we done a few bad things here and there? Yes. Some more than other dot s. But basically, every single person Prism A Luke talks about, he makes them look way, way worse than they really are. And he's lying on purpose. But basically every single person, Doodle Tones talks about. She make them look way way worse than they really are. And she's lying on purpose. If anyone wants to say, I talked with Prism 8 Luke in DMs, he seems like a genuine guy. Or, I talked with Luke in DMs, he seems like a nice guy. Yeah, a nice genuine guy doesn't lie about someone claiming they're defending Lollycon when they aren't. If anyone wants to say, I talk with Doodle Tones she seems genuine. Or talk with Doodle Tones she seems like a nice person. Yeah. A nice genuine person does not lie about someone coming. That they are harassing them when they aren't. 
And before someone says, well, how do you know Prismate Luke is lying? Maybe he's just making a few dumb mistakes. What effort has he made to correct his mistakes? And before someone says, well, how do you doodle tones is lying? Maybe she's just making a few dumb mistakes. What effort has she made to correct her mistakes? Aside from the pyro situation, which he didn't even bother making a thumbnail for, and once with the Yandere dev situation. Ever since his pyro apology, he has done nothing at all to correct his mistakes. Why? Because he's not making a mistake. He's blatantly lying. Aside from Confessions video which she didn't even bother making a new thumbnail for, and ones with the Neil vs. Salt CC drama. Ever since her Doodle is Cringe video, she has done nothing at all. To correct her mistakes why because she's not making a mistake. She's blatantly lying. I wanted to make a response to him, and his fans said I was just doing it for views. Same with Harley. If you make a long video, he'll claim you're doing it for views. And if you make a part 1 and part 2, he'll claim you're splitting it up for views. I wanted to respond to her but she told me I just doing it for the Pokemon drama. Same with Jar if you make a long video she claim you're doing it for the Pokemon drama. And if you make a part 1 and a part 2 she will claim you're just doing it for the Pokemon drama. The only reason why Prismate Luke is big is because he did like two dozen videos about the Yandere dev drama. And he purely talked about it for views. No other reason. The only reason Doodle Tones got popular is because she made a two dozen videos on popular dramas. And she purely for views. No other reason. If you're still supporting Luke after you watch this full video, let me ask you something. How many more people does he need to lie about for you to stop supporting him? 50? 100? Give it two months and that'll become a reality. And if you're still supporting Doodle Tones, after you watch this video, me ask you something. How many more people does she need to lie about for you to stop supporting her? 50.100. Give it two months and that will become a reality. Prisma Luke only got big because he talked about big dramas and repeated what everybody else said. And now that he's a big commentator, people think his word holds merit. And he's aware of this. But at long last, people are finally catching on to his bullshit. And pretty soon, this prisoner will be on death row. I can't wait for him to twist that into a death threat. Doodle Tones only got big is because she talked about big dramas and repeated what everyone else said. And now that she's a big commentary channel, people think her word holds Marit. And she's aware of this but at long last, I am finally catching on to her bullshit. And pretty soon this doodle will be on death row. I can't wait for her to twist that into a death threat. So much for someone who's apparently better than those that won't listen and actively take criticism, huh Sylveon? By the way, I don't need to twist that into a threat when you actually have left a comment saying that not only should I be in prison for the horrid crime of, uh... Hold on, let me check my notes again? Ah yes, being mean to others online but also telling me that God is waiting after all that, which, while I concede that maybe you might not have meant it in that way, considering you do say that nobody deserves death, except Kai, I guess, but I digress, definitely could have been seen otherwise given the rest of your comment, for sure. Sylveon did wind up attempting to remake this video with some different points, and of course, considering this is a video also in his Videos I'm Not Proud of folder, I figure there may indeed be more to cover regarding my original video on Sylveon, so... Why don't we take a look at Sylveon's approach to disowned videos, and talk about that a bit. Actually, back on the note of people's stories of Mr. Omega, I asked Ponder Sprocket while I was working on this video as well if I could use a very special audio recording she made of her confronting V the day the allegations were made public. She said yes. It's 25 minutes of catharsis to finally see someone who is unable to be challenged without him suffocating you in arguments finally get put into a position where he could not be manipulative anymore. And in the early moments of the recording, Ponder and another person in call known as Neo really spotlighted some of these more common tactics. Evening. Night. <laughs> so you've been updated on the madness? I'm still going through the Google Doc. I haven't even gotten to the grooming and I have 
I have so many problems already. Uh, yeah, I voiced my so with me. Huh? Um, I, I'm very sure that's with me, and I completely understand. Obviously you don't, because I had to point out this, and when you said, oh, I agree with you 100%, again, you said, this is what it looks like, not... I was blatantly manipulating Joni and yeah. gaslighting them and being a manipulative piece of shit. Yeah. Like, if other person can do it that. The sad sack routine. I cut I... that out. Okay. I, let me be honest with you. Um... I can speak for myself, I can't speak for Ponder, but that doesn't endear me to you any Oh, further. Leo, you'll get so so much of a kick out of this. Uh, you know when people uh, try to imply that they're scared via text, so they do that little stuttering typing thing? Yes, he did that. Yeah, he did that when he contacted me. Ah, yeah. I see a 21-year-old man doing that. that. That's really endearing. One of the things Joni called V out for was gaslighting, which is a manipulative tactic used to make someone question reality. And with all the other things the two spotlighted in this recording, it really puts into question a lot of the things V says. Which is why, in my second video on you, I went in and actually argued Ethan and Neo Alt's comments. Because I went back and looked at all of what the two comments were talking about, and it just did not happen the way V said it did. Like again, I did do bad things to him myself, like the way that I kicked him from the Cloud Palace was bad, and, you know, maybe I could have been a lot better at reaching out to him when he said he needed it. But when that's really all I did do in hindsight, then this crusade of Sylveon's is really petty and kind of ignorant of all of what V did to people. <laughs> This one does kind of play out of order to the events that have occurred with Sylveon, but I assure you it won't really matter given how much we're covering in this rabbit hole, so... The third video we're looking at is one Sylveon titled, Doodle Tones My Worst Fears Realized. So I see we're still ripping for much better commentators. How's that applying criticism doing for you, Sylveon? That's going to be a lot of fun to dive into later. Chronologically, this came out in April, so sometime after he covered several of my other videos by this point. Sylveon had already shown he hadn't really cared to actually give any legitimate criticism in an accordance to his first video on me, and every subsequent video that Sylveon covered after just kind of cemented that fact. But again, those are stories to divulge into later, and I don't want to poison the well early. It had been roughly a month between this one and the first video he did on me, so much like 2016 Doodle Tones, it was quantity over quality. Ironic, isn't it? Let's see how much had changed between the first retort and the second one, shall we? I couldn't think of an intro. So here's a remake of my response to Doodle Tone's response to me. For those who are new here and don't know this context, this is just a selfie on. I feel like I'm internet famous. Um, oh yeah, another person that's even more niche than Mr. Enter, who's kind of in the cartoon slasher community, but also also in like the niche underground commentary community too, which is a whole nother beast on its own, is a doodle tones. I feel like I'm internet famous. Yep, learned nothing. Am I surprised? Not in the slightest. Am I disappointed? Like my mother is to me. Also, I want to point out how he breaks character here in acknowledging he's just a Sylveon, but still using the Elizabeth sprites as he would playing his stolen Doodle Clones character. And a Jar fan who- That's not true. Nowhere in any of my comments. Did I bring up Jar or the drama you had with him? You say that, but when you directly reference the alt CC drama with just a robot CC rant during that time frame, with the first video you came to comment on being the video on T-Bone covering Team Boss Boss, someone who Jar has had previous scuff with, then pardon me for hearing that rather skeptically. Especially when your username is just a Sylveon. Like, down to the name I was able to tell you were a Jar fan. We even discussed where you came off like you came from the Jar drama of 2016 in the comments of Confessions. This predates your video on me, which tells me you came from the Jar drama in 2016, even if that's not the crux of your spite now. Found Jar's video on me last year, came- Okay, so what's so destructive about the first comments you showed? They're clearly just jokes. I don't see what's so destructive at all. Now that may seem to be the opposite of what Doodle actually claimed. But if you use your imagination, I said that she was the worst person ever. You can also use your imagination to get me to say, 
The Holocaust never a weight that could be taken the wrong way even as a joke. People will say context doesn't matter what is something I could say that won't get me cancelled. Oh I got it America deserve 9-11. I'm not exactly sure how but your second attempt to cover this point was worse than your first. Because in the original, I could concede to that your comments were just jokes that might have been a little lazy with how I laid out the screenshots. Sometimes that does happen. But here, you go on to possibly kneecap your point by continuing to incoherently bring up imagination. I only say possibly because your joke winds up mixing in with your point and makes your counterpoint a bag of scrabble letters. Like, are you insinuating that we should strawman my argument? I just, I don't fully understand this point. Pretending to be me whilst I- Okay, how is that destructive in any way? All I am doing here is asking people what they think of you, is that a crime now? Oh, you are trying to start shit and you know it. To prove my point, let's look at some other screenshots that I have that might contextualize this so-called random polling that asks for opinions of me. Here's you to I bully bullies. Here's one to Jar. Slush TV. Jar again. Jar. 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 Manga common. Some people on Twitter. I bully bullies, jar. I am really tired of hearing about doodle tones. Now, had it just been the poll in a vacuum, I'd be willing to let this counter retort slide. It'd be flimsy given 75% of the poll is dedicated to more negative responses, so it seems more weighted to shit talking, but I could ignore that. I could let it slide. But given how adamant you had been at the time to get Jar and others to talk shit about me, it becomes abundantly clear as to what your motives were in this tweet. Don't play coy! Mind you, these aren't the only screenshots I have of you doing this, but this is enough to get the gist of it. At the same time, leaving destructive comments like these, and just overall being a general- Do I even need to say what the problem with this screenshot? Yeah, you kinda would. Because combined with everything else that was shown that you didn't cover, it paints a much broader portrait of what kind of shit you talk. In particular, if you want a better explanation of that one, I chose it because of your magnetism towards some of the other anti doodle tones accounts of old during the Alt-CC era, either shown through your mass retweeting or direct replying to them to update them on just how terrible I am in 2021. <laughs> Even though the people behind those accounts, I can guarantee you, aren't active on said accounts anymore. The one example here is a little on the sillier side, I'll admit, that was kind of the point, but like, that doesn't negate its purpose for being here, showing your pattern of behavior. But they still persist, and I still stumble into their shit even trying to ignore them. Glad you're enjoying it. Truly, making a multi-hour expose was definitely how I wanted to spend the closing moments of 2021. Crunching this alongside my worst of the year list definitely doesn't take a toll on my mental and physical health. Totally. And then Sylveon makes one five years later. And this is where I come in. Now, I want to preface this by saying that I do not stand by my initial video on Jar. When did I say you did? Didn't I already address this point? So a person from the Neo CC steps away from what they normally talk about to talk about Pokemon and fails every which way you cut it. A political commentator decides to step away from doing what they normally do to talk about Pokemon and fail every which way you cut it. Damn puberty hit JX9 hard. OMG, that's the thing I said Lamo. It's like we're the same person or something. Except, obviously, to literally everyone with two functioning brain cells, we're not. Okay, allow me to explain this. Doodle clones. Is well a clone. A clone of Doodle Tones. Therefore she is Doodle Tones. Ah, so here we get more lore on Sylveon that directly has him claiming that he and I are one of the same because he is a clone of me. And he tries to frame this as explaining away the point, because otherwise, why explain this at all? I don't really care what the fuck your story is that leeches off of my established brand, and to a degree, my real life, for your own personal satisfaction. And furthermore, that doesn't change how we're not the same person. Step off of my dick, figuratively speaking, and get your mind out of the gutter. I don't even want it. To some extent, the definition of a clone reads as Cloning is the process of generating a genetically identical copy of a cell or an organism. Cloning happens all the time in nature. In biomedical research, cloning is broadly defined to mean the duplication of any kind of biological material for scientific study, such as a piece of DNA or an individual cell. Which is what Doodle Tones is. However what I should have said instead is it's almost like I'm a clone of you or something to avoid confusion. You. Are. 
still pretending to be me. To be a direct clone of something by your own definition would inherently insinuate some genetic connection between you and I, which I never fucking asked for. Hello, fellow Doodleton. Oh, hello. Way. My scanners aren't registering you as one of us. How do I know I can trust you? Because I am a direct, incomplete clone of you. I know everything about you all because I am just you but different. What's your alibi? Well, you see, I was in electrical land. Hold up, but I didn't see you in there. At all. I was on cameras the whole time and I never saw you enter. But... By the way, no. While that would be what happens, that interaction isn't canon to my own story. As much as you probably want it to be. You haven't made anything more complicated. Stop trying to lore jack my story. It's incredibly poor taste. But anyway, back to the point. You are claiming to be a genetically identical copy of Doodle Tones, which is me. I'm Doodle Tones. Like, IRL that might not be my name, but that is my alias and brand 10 years running. You may not like that, but sorry Jack, that is how it be. Mind you, this ignores the aforementioned attempts to actually steal my brand and profit off of that very brand theft with a Patreon, which, I'm no lawyer, I'm pretty sure that ain't legal and is definitely against Patreon's terms of service. Yeah, you changed the latter thing to not directly have my drawings plastered all over your page, but uh... You still having a Patreon at all is still potentially making money off of stolen assets you don't own, because what other content do you create other than YouTube videos consisting entirely of my characters? Like, bruh, your about video is your Clone Lives Matter video. A video where you cycle through all of the characters you've stolen from me. I doubt it. No it's not. The metric system does not exist. No I think it was talking to me. And the other doodle clones. Clones are the only things that should be allowed to exist. Pandas don't exist. Just saying, as long as you build your brand off of stealing mine, you're going against Patreon. I would be in my right to report that, and you're lucky I have yet to as of the moment. We were. You'd know just a robot and I aren't on bad terms and haven't been in years. Yes, I am aware of that. I never said you two were. Then why be so adamant on sparking back up the Pokemon drama with your, quote-unquote, totally not outdated commentary that is, quote-unquote, totally out to help me get better because you totally don't have malicious intent against me. That'll make more sense later. You'd also know what the Omega did to me and other- Okay, how is this manipulative at all? All he is doing is telling you to get help. Which you seriously need to do. If you think you should still be here. After everything you have done. Good god, you're fucking dense. First of all, that's not me that V is talking to in that screenshot. That's an XCC member by the name of Joni Rue. Now, if you fucking knew anything about what you were talking about, you would know that the reason why V was telling Joni she needed help in that screenshot was because she was coming out as trans, and V didn't want to accept that. This doesn't even require other contextual screenshots either. You can see V say that he's under the notion that Joni was never trans or non-binary within the goddamn screenshot that's shown. And considering the shit with confessions, specifically his comment alluding to the Umbris and discount situation, that becomes ever the more hypocritical of a man who hated hypocrisy more than anything else. Now, even if I were to be placed in the seat of Joni here, that wouldn't be much better. Because I've been out as trans since 2012. These messages were from 2019 in accordance to Joni's screenshot. I would have been on hormone replacement therapy for about a year by that point, so he'd be trying to dismiss my journey into transitioning because he didn't want to believe I was trans, which... Gross. Never mind how gross it is to begin with that V was probably dismissing Joni's coming out because of what he wanted from her. Let's talk about V Omega. V Omega was outed not even a full year after George's allegations by Joni Rue in a twit longer. This post outlined that V was an abusive, controlling, transphobic groomer, and I will happily concur to those labels. I'll be talking my experience with them in another video if it's not already out because I'll have to then. I'll leave a link below to the full twit longer if you wish to read up on it all, but the particular centerpiece that I want to look at, of course, is the grooming allegations. Though, while Joni didn't exactly have any screenshots relating to that particular allegation and was much more focused on V's abusive behavior, V sure as hell was willing to give them in a now-deleted Twitter thread he was making responding to it all. Luckily, I have the important receipts. So, here's a screenshot that V took of their DMs from January of 2018. You can see here that V and Joni are talking about pornography, with Joni explicitly saying that she was not one to look at pornography. By April of the same year, the topic was brought up again, with Joni admitting to sometimes looking at specifically furry porn. 
By March of the next year, while we don't see the fullest extent of this screenshot, we can see that Joni was all for talking about pornography, showing that V's attempt to wear down her boundaries was, unfortunately, grossly successful. The fucking creep. Look, I'm just saying, if this is the hill you want to die on, you can dig your own fucking grave, homie. I'm not doing it for you. Point is, learn to read, because if you don't see where that could be malicious, then there's honest to god less hope for you than you think there is for me, and I don't care enough to be cordial about it. ...as you sit there and play the victim for him publicly, but of course, you wouldn't care about his grooming and manipulation tactics. Which the evidence you showed does not prove any of that. Well, hopefully this collection of videos rectifies that. Not like you're gonna care much anyway, considering since then, things have been explained to you and you still defend him, but... I guess that's none of my business, except that it totally is, you freak. Though, because Kiwi Farms is a much more credible source of information. Yeah, I know this guy is completely right. Dude, he barely even understands the context of what was actually going on because his information was given to him by, get this, the Omega. <sighs> actually, to be perfectly honest with you, I wouldn't be entirely too surprised if the two were one of the same, considering Kiwi Farms has, like, a rule that you can't be found out on there, so that's plausible. But in any case, I'm sidetracking. Also, why would anyone want to be me? Half the time, I don't want to be me. Then why are you still here? I would tell you, but you would show that you don't care and call it emotional manipulation. But, you know, since he wants me to directly respond to him, I will. Um, what are you talking about? I never asked you to respond to me. I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but still. You were obviously pining for my attention enough. So, unless you're going to sit here and provide evidence that not even really Jar gave regarding this idea that the Pokemon world and the human world aren't all that different. But he never said that. All he said was that the Pokemon world was based of our world. Not that there was no difference. Wait, I feel like this was taken out of context. Today I'm bringing you guys 11 Pokemon that could destroy the world. For further clarification, I'm talking about the actual destruction of the Earth, not humanity. And by Earth, I mean our Earth, not the Pokemon world. Keep that in mind for later on because that's going to be important. Well, the Pokemon world is based off our own world, but I get what you're talking about. Do you? Because I can tell you I'm unsure if you get it as you'll prove later in this video. While, yes, the world of Pokemon is loosely based on our Earth, the logic and sciences between the our Earth and the Pokemon Earth is not the most similar. I mean, hell, Pokemon trainers can be around the cargos, which are approximately 18,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is roughly hotter than the sun. I know you do bring this up later, but we're bringing it up now for a lot of this list will be- But maybe my cargo just does not want to burn her. In the anime Ash tries to ride Ponita but gets burnt. But later in the episode Ash gains Ponita's trust. So when he tries to ride her again he does not get burnt. So it seems the fire Pokemon can prevent their flames from hurting people. Okay. Sure. If I may though, all this proves is that I use a bad example, which... Yeah, makes sense. This is my second worst commentary we're talking about. It's kind of a given that it's shit. But the premise of the Pokemon world and the Earth that we're on being at this very moment being ultimately different logically, it's still very relevant to the point in question. Unless you plan to prove that logically we live in a very similar world with Macargo, whereas the one in that screenshot isn't burning the trainer because he supposedly trusts her, that doesn't mean that one that's in battle wouldn't fry someone on the other end of the stadium. Imagine a miniature sun that's hotter than the sun just a handful of feet away from a human. Alternatively, I remember Nihilistic Snake bringing up the very decent example of Earthquake being a move ground Pokemon can learn, and mentions how that doesn't just destroy the Pokemon world having those happen multiple times in very close proximity sometimes every day. Mind you, we're not talking about normal, real-life earthquakes either. These fuckers open the ground below the Pokémon they're being used against in some iterations, and that's just something that doesn't actually happen in real life. Go figure, it'd be really fucking scary if it were to. So, unless you're going to sit here and provide evidence that not even really Jar gave regarding this idea that the Pokémon world and the human world aren't all that different, because Jar even agrees with that, then I'm sorry, this point at best is just a point against my example, and nothing more. Hey, you're the one that wanted me to keep Giancarlo stressing the separation of the Pokemon world and the human world in mind. This is on you. Ah yes, that's what I figured. You'd rather isolate a portion of the argument that you would think would be easier to cover, because the full argument is well enough elaborated on, 
and you can't argue against it. Because that's what you're doing here. Just after the point where you've interjected, I explain that Jar agrees with the fact that the physics of the Pokemon world and the real world are different. So I already have acknowledged what Jar said. But remember kids, I'm apparently the dishonest one. Clearly. Hell, let's bring up a real world example. Explode a Porygon in the Pokemon world and only the Porygon dies. Whereas in our world, 600 children will be hospitalized. Serial? That's not true. Porygon was not the cause of the flashing lights. He just happened to be in the episode. That was merely a joke. A really tasteless joke. But a joke. Yes. But the joke was still incorrect. Does a joke need to be? More on that later. Like, good god, shut up 2016 doodle tone. Warning. The next part is so stupid. You might receive brain damage from it. Ah, I see the well poisoning didn't get fixed in this patch. Quite the shame, really. Maybe I'll send a bug report in for future updates. Wait, repeat that last part. So the repercussions of killing a god that created the land we stand on is to That has to be the most retarded thing I've ever heard in my entire artificial life. Groudon created the land in the Pokemon world, not in our world. Do you even know what you are talking about anymore? Yes, sir, miss. Actually, I just realized this edit was in here. I think it was also in the previous edition to this commentary, and it's just such a weird edit. Like, why cut at miss while I'm calling you Mr. Plagiarist? Yes sir, Mr. Plagiarist. Actually, looking back at this retrospectively, I think I do. That's just such a strange and jarring edit. Especially here where you're supposedly not in character if your whole tirade on what a clone is is any indicator. It's just... It's just weird. Looking back at this retrospectively, I think I do. I just worded it like shit, and my point in general is kind of just an assumption. See, reminder that this is under the hypothetical that Groudon existed within the real world. If he did, then that could make him the god of our land, because as you and Jar both said, he is the god of the land in the Pokemon world. Therefore, that translation could apply. Yes, I am aware that Groundon is the god of land in his world, but in this world he did not create the land. Let me give you an example to make this simpler for you. So Ra as the sun god in his world, but then he decided to go on vacation and went to a different dimension and that dimension was the equestrian dimension. Now guess what in that world he is not the sun god Celestia is- He thought it was such a good point from his previous video so he did it again. I don't particularly feel the need to repeat myself regarding how this dismissal of a hypothetical for a point that sidesteps my own doesn't work, so I'm not going to. Actually, on that note, Sylveon starts repeating a bunch of his previous points from the first iteration of this video after this point. No don't the nerds will destroy you. I will always remember. As it is. Try again. Try again. Try again. Warning. This next part is so stupid. It might make you explode. Don't know, so I don't know if he was wrong about it or not. Jar Literary just explained why that doesn't matter in the clip you played. By the way, wanna point out? Sylveon reposted this video from their AU Doodle Clones account to their Doodle Clones account. I think this is the first time I had been referred to by name. So that is an interesting piece of Doodle Clones trivia. So I'll just try to keep the rest of the segment to any new point that Sylveon makes in order to keep things interesting. Because as long as this video is, I'm not intending to just sit here all day and waste time reiterating points that Sylveon's not gonna listen to anyway. Yeah. The thing we learned so far is that you're an idiot. That's the only thing I have learned as well. You are one to talk. You useless unfinished prototype. Sylveon, your days of abusing me are over. Sylveon failed his self-awareness check. Because I don't think this gets across what I think Sylveon wanted to get across. Wait, you can't hurt me. I am your creator. I never cared about justice, and I don't recall ever calling myself a hero. Like, the potshots write themselves at this point. I don't even know where to begin. Just a Robot's video on me is one of the most important videos for me. As much as it may not have looked to be the case the year that situation happened, I did look at Jar's video as valid critique that was made not out of any sort of negative feelings towards me, but because he genuinely found issues with my video. Okay. Why would that matter? Why would what matter? Why would Jar's video being actual critique matter? Well, simple, because it showed me that he actually gave a fuck to see me get better, and wasn't merely doing his response as a bad faith actor who wanted to tear me down. It's important to be able to get across your message in a way that's both concise, but also in a way that doesn't feel vindictive towards those you're covering, as otherwise no one's going to take you seriously or care about what you have to say. 
That's something I had to learn over the years of commentating. How you come across is indeed as important as what you are saying. Why do I bring up the JAR videos at all? Context. I build up JAR's video on me to explain that he's the last person to truly give me any amount of good faith critique. Then I explain why I wound up covering so many videos on me, which allows me to segue into the problems with your video. Just a Robot's video on me is one of the most important videos for me. As much as it may not have looked to be the case the year that situation happened, I did look at Jar's video as valid critique that was made not out of any sort of negative feelings towards me, but because he genuinely found issues with my video. And to be honest, that's probably the last video that I can think of that covers an entire commentary of mine that was like this and was good because of it. V's was close, but in hindsight, the fact that he made it purely because I was mentally breaking down in his DMs talking about how much I didn't care for my video on Umbrus definitely rubs me the wrong, wrong way. Plus, it was more of a video on Umbrus and Larvesta than it was on me, but that's neither here nor there. That's an entirely different discussion. Point is, Jar's video is good. Flawed, I'll admit, but good. And as time goes on, I appreciate it more for what it is because there are way too many videos on me, especially nowadays, that come out with a vendetta because they have a grudge against me, because they don't like me for some sort of arbitrary reason or for something that happened years ago. And like, I get it. I'm not that good of a content creator or as a person. My history is absolutely destroyed and Maybe I'm not doing that great at becoming a better person. I don't discount these possibilities. But to sit here and choose destruction over critique is why it seems like 2017 I haven't taken any criticism. It's not because I can't. In fact, literally my video on Xenon Quark was me practically begging for it. But it feels this way because people haven't given me a reason to feel like their critique comes off as genuine or from a place of me wanting to get better over wanting to tear me down and demoralize me until I go offline. That's why I feel your video, Sylveon, is, as of this moment, the worst video to have been done on me. Though I'm not going to count your video on confessions out of the runnings just yet because, well, we'll see soon enough, I guess. But your video was made purely on the back of disdain and spite against me because of dramas that happened years ago, and then you said vindication against me to drive this video into lazy plagiarism, sometimes in ways that drag even Jar's video down with you, shining a light with problems that his video had on me in hindsight, and otherwise half-assing his points so spectacularly to the point of invalidation. And honestly, I think that just exacerbates the problem with doing a commentary like this. To better fit with the theme of plagiarism in this video, let me take from a once great commentator who had a speech just for a situation like this, because I feel it's prevalent to the situation. <clears throat> You're trying to do the exact opposite of what commentators are meant to do and follow the commentator stereotype as an obnoxious destructive tool with no real intent to help others but with the intent to tear others down. Listen, I just want to get real with you guys for a second. I know I come off as pretty sarcastic and occasionally douchey in some of my videos, but I make these videos to help, not drive away. Now, I'm not saying you can't just make videos to debate, but when destroying someone's image or tearing another person down like you did here is your main priority, which you pretty much flat out said was the case, then sorry sir, you get no respect from me, try again. So for my advice, drop the spite, come up with points that aren't just ripped from other commentators and try to come into these videos actually with the intent to help instead of taking people down. Because as it stands, this is just a product of 2016 leaking into the current year. Take it or leave it, at this point, I don't care. If it's neither of those questions, then why does what matter? You're so vague that it's hard to tell what you're alluding to here. Point is, Jar's video is good. Flawed, I'll admit, but good. And as time goes on, I appreciate it more for what it is because there are way too many videos on me, especially nowadays, that come out with a vendetta because they have a grudge against me. I have every right to have a grudge against you. You're a awful person. Do seriously think you deserve any respect. After things you have done. You are delusional if you think that. Oh be quiet. You're holding a vendetta against me on behalf of some dishonest child groomer. I really don't want to hear it. Because they don't like me for some sort of arbitrary reason or for something that happened years ago. And like, I get it. I'm not that good of a content creator or as a person. Then what's the point of you still being here? But it feels this way because people haven't given me a reason to feel like their critique comes off as genuine or from a place of me wanting to get better 
over wanting to tear me down and demoralize me until I go offline. Which is what absolutely needs to happen. Okay, you know what? I'll give a more direct response to this deplatforming ideology that Sylveon holds towards those who make mistakes. So Sylveon, what exactly would deplatforming me do? It'd get me offline, sure as everything. It'd keep me away from people online, okay? But like, considering my crimes really boil down to being kind of a bad friend, I'd still be able to do that towards people in real life, no? Even if we were to be under this notion that everything said in confession still holds 100% true to this day, that would mean that I would still be transphobic towards those around me. I'd still not talk to people when they need me. I'd still be a loose cannon shouting at people over trivial matters. I'd still be this covert narcissist with no remorse. Like, it wouldn't change anything if I were to disappear from an online space other than that I'd have disappeared from an online space. This isn't like child grooming, pedophilia, rape allegations, assault, or really anything against the law itself. This is just me being a douche canoe. Maybe a bigot if you'd argue further. But I'm not abusing my platform. I'm not going out of my way to send fans out as attack dogs, despite how many people want to argue otherwise. I'm saying, at worst, some head-ass, out-of-pocket garbage and not being there for friends who want me to be there for them. The deplatforming me wouldn't change those matters. On top of that, let's say you were to deplatform me because of my mistakes. What precedent does that set for anyone else who makes mistakes online? What precedent does that set for you as someone who, on your own, has apologized on a few occasions when things were explained to you or were called out for bad behaviors. By this exact logic, could we not make the argument that you need to deplatform yourself? But here you are, on a third Twitter, with a Discord server where you're probably continuing to steal my work or rewrite my characters in, with a YouTube, a Reddit, a DeviantArt, a Patreon, and good lord knows what else I'm missing as you parade around under my brand for your own gain. But, you know what they say, rules for thee and not for me, right, Sylveon? Like, I don't even know if I fully agree with the sentiment that statement is trying to make, but I know you sure as hell do, or at least so you would like us to believe. Wolfie is the one doing it herself. She doesn't want others doing it, as she seems to want control over how she looks in pieces of art and in thumbnails. She just doesn't feel comfortable with other people doing it. So you're saying rules for thee but not for me. Don't worry, we'll be coming back to this later in the video, I assure you. Try again. Try again. Okay, final thoughts time. Susie, I don't hate you because of the Pokemon drama. Not even the LCC drama. Or for any of the videos you have made. If you just made bad videos. I wouldn't really have a problem with you. But after hearing all the awful things. You have done to so many people and have still gotten away with almost no backlash and that is the reason behind everything that's happened. All this stuff that you never got backlash for. Uh, which is why you made confessions to begin with. Guys, I think Sylveon hurt itself in spite. I know spite is not a move Sylveon can learn, but I cannot stress enough how much I don't give a shit. After everything, I only have this to say to you. You don't change, Susie. You stagnate. You say you listen to criticism but then continue going on with the same things you've always done and it leads to you making the same mistakes. Makes a positive claim, but no evidence. So I literally only have his word to take on this, whereas I have been able to prove a negative in retort. You say that other people like me are the ones who are elitist for calling out your bullshit. Never said elitist. That was never a claim. Instead I've made claims that people were bad faith actors who don't want to actually give any form of constructive critique, but instead would rather tear me down and demotivate me as much as they can, and literally all comments like this do is prove my point! Good job! But if anything you have a bigger ego than most people I know in this community. Bro, you don't even know me. <laughs> Especially now if you think my self-conscious ass has a big ego. I'm starting to wonder which prison mate Luke rant this comes from. You act like you can't be proven wrong and until enough manpower is put on you to finally give up. You stubbornly hold on to everything you say like you couldn't be in the wrong. Actually wait, hold on. Is this a prison mate loop rant? Hold on, I was joking. Is this just stop again? Hold on. Honestly, all I can say to him after all these videos and so on is this. You don't change, Luke. You stagnate. 
You say you listen to criticism, but then continue going on with the same things you've always done, and it leads to you making the same mistakes. You act as if your content is just your opinion, and you don't need both sides in an argument to find the truth, as you so eloquently put it. You say that other people like me are the ones who are elitist for calling out your bullshit, but if anything, you have a bigger ego than most people I know in this community. You act like you can't be proven wrong, and until enough manpower is put on you to finally give up, you stubbornly hold on to everything you say like you couldn't be in the wrong, and it's everyone else's fault. Motherfucker! Yeah, okay, I think we're done with these particular videos. As you can see, Sylveon isn't someone who particularly takes criticism well on his own. He'd like to pin me as someone who never applies critique when it's given to me, but Sylveon has been critiqued for many things by this point that he has not once applied to himself. Except he paused, critiqued him for his plagiarism. Now, I'm not insinuating low or zero following makes your arguments invalid, but listen to this for a second. It's always great when someone opens a video with an ad hominem attack. Now I don't have a problem with ad hominem attacks, but here's the thing Doodle Tones does. In her video on Pika Chan Gamer, she complains about him doing the same thing, yet she's doing the same thing to Jar. You're such a hypocrite. It's always great when people start off a commentary with an ad hominem attack. Now, normally I don't care about ad hominem attacks. But the thing is, Doodle Tone does. So it's bad for Pikachon Gamer 64 to complain about someone using Spiconia, but it's A-OK -okay for you to complain about me using a robot voice. You're such a hypocrite. Most of the points he makes are directly stolen from Jar's video, point for point. It's straight up plagiarism. Also critiqued Sylveon for ripping my brand. At this point, what DC is doing is straight up harassment, plagiarism, and copying someone else's identity. Which, if you haven't guessed already, is actually illegal, or at the very least, not accepted on YouTube. Bork Productions critiqued Sylveon for using my art to fool people doing art raffles. To make matters even worse, ladies and gentlemen, Doodle's fans have also been harassed. How does Doodle Clones harass the fans of Doodle Tones? Number one. Stealing Doodle's artwork and then insert them in random tweets in an attempt to fool the people on social media. And good potatoes, Doodle Clones does this a lot. And Sylveon went on to keep doing all that. Never mind all the other criticisms regarding his bad faith arguments and vindictively spiteful attitudes Sylveon takes during specific situations that he's not a part of. But it's not like Sylveon actually understands criticism as much as you would think he would as someone who parades around how much I can't take it. Now would he? So I allude back to the screenshot a lot throughout the video, one where I claim he defends V, but when you really look at the screenshot, you'll see that Sylveon does claim that he isn't intending to defend V Omega's grooming or anything else he did, and I know Sylveon is going to take issue with me bringing up this screenshot because of what he explicitly said. And I want to clarify to him, and you, the viewer, that I don't think he's defending the grooming. But Sylveon, you're definitely defending the manipulation when you go around posting Ethan and Neo Alt's comments to talk about what all I supposedly did to V. You're still allowing his influence to thrive. You're still believing things that aren't actually true, and things that I have actively debunked in my second video on you. The things that I say I did to him, the kick from the Cloud Palace, the not being there, that's really it, and you yourself haven't shown any extra evidence as to what all I actually did to V. So, now the conversation just becomes, are we really trying to de-platform me over being kind of a bad friend at worst? Like, if this is truly all you have, then fucking stop trying because you don't have any clue as to what you're actually talking about. V's word is so fucking flimsy at this point, it's not even funny and I and others have told you this is the case. Yet you're still using V as a justification to stalk, impersonate, and attempt to harass me off my platform. Like, bro, get real. You can tell me you're not actively trying to defend V all you want in this comment, but when everyone has told you that V was a manipulator and a liar, you only really focus on the grooming portion of the things that we tell you. There's gonna be a video coming out by Cosmo Stardust, soon to be Fern Winters, and if my video is out before hers, I'll try to link it in the Google Doc down below alongside everything else when it comes out, because I know she's got stuff to say about this too. So, I haven't really touched on this too much, because I don't really care that much at the end of the day, but... It is worth at least noting that Sylveon, when in regards to commentary targets, really does come across as 
rather lazy. He's covered a lot of old bandwagons from the likes of Fox Goodman, Nero's Q, T. Moss Boss, Cosmodor, and a few others. But any deviations are few and far between, and as you might have seen from the past couple chapters, he's not particularly great at covering those. We're still going to be covering the vast extent of the six main videos that Sylveon has done on me, but the biggest question is where to begin. We covered his videos about my Just a Robot commentary, easily one of the worst videos I've made bar none, but continuing on, you'll see he's also picked up my other easy targets that are realistically only easy because other people have covered them. I won't harp too much on the plagiarism aspects of Sylveon's videos going forward unless it becomes, like, abundantly clear in the videos in question, mainly because I don't want to go through just a robot's entire commentography so I can find any instance of Sylveon just taking points from him for the sake of an easy facade of intellectualism. However, I can point out to where there are probably instances of such that come from in this video being just a robot's hour-long commentary on multiple members of the SEC talking about the original Pokemon video. Y you know, and then he wonders why we all think he comes from the Pokemon drama. I'm just saying, Sylveon, you do yourself no favors. In any case, we're covering yet another follow-up to the just a robot videos, this time being my video on the Conundrum video, and my video on Mr. Awesome and Mario 360 talking about this situation. I'm gonna be honest, I'm not too fond of these videos myself, the former takes out a lot of context and harps on a singular point that a lot of people got wrong in the video, and the latter is very rude to put it nicely, as my potshots and emotionally driven responses towards Mr. Stubb and Mr. A were rather overshadowing to the actual points I was trying to make within my video. In my opinion, these would be rather easy to cover for anyone who actually gave a fuck to do so retrospectively. However, are we going to be able to say that Sylveon truly gave a fuck? Well, let's find out. A YouTuber named Just a Robot whose software is inferior to my own by the way made a video about doodle tones. Just a Robot. If you are new to my channel, then you probably should watch these two videos first. Otherwise, you'll probably be confused. Just a quick recap of what's going on. So I went on vacation to visit my sister in North Carolina. But because of that, I didn't have very much time to work on a video. So instead of doing a serious political video like I normally do, I decided to do a video on top 11 Pokemon that could destroy the world. Another YouTuber by the name of Doodle Tones did a response video to me, and she completely missed the point of my video entirely. She herself didn't like her own video, so I decided to do a response to it. At first, I thought this would be one of my least controversial videos ever. But boy, was I wrong! A whole bunch of commentators started making videos about me. My fans started attacking Doodle Tones, and both me and her ended up making videos telling our fans not to attack one another. This is where things should have ended. But Doodle Tones made another video talking about the drama. I decided not to make a video about it, because I knew if I did, a whole bunch of people would start yelling at me, Oh, just a robot! You just have to get the last word in, don't you? This drama was going to be over once and for all, but you just brought it back. Or something like that. So I decided to let her have the last word. But then, about a month later, she made another video about the drama. So I decided to make another video about this whole thing. Who knows what will happen? Maybe this will end things once and for all? Or maybe this will make everything ten times worse? He was not. Wrong my name is Unit of Various Export Information. But you can call me UV since that's easier to remember. Ah, <sighs> we're back to your blatant game jacking. This time you're not even trying to disguise it as a doodle clone, you're just taking my character and placing it within your own video. Good to see that criticism going at good use. Also, I have no idea why you decided to play all of Just a Robot's context like that when you had every chance to give context to the situation yourself. Like, I know I've been playing a lot of rather long bouts of clips within my own video. Some, I'll admit, do drag on a rather sizable length. But I have to for context of evidence, not really for context of information. This is just kind of unneeded padding, really. As I said earlier, I just found the dumbest commentator on YouTube. Her name is Doodle Tones. Just found the dumbest? Yeah, there's a lot of ways I could make fun of this. Canonically, ironically, hyperbolically, but 
I think I'll let this one slide with a mere well poisoning fine. She makes commentaries. Videos yeah I know what a shocker right. But wait there's more. Not only does she make commentary videos she makes. Drum roll please. <laughs> Bad commentary videos. She's by far one of the worst creators you can find on the platform. Even her thumbnails are half-assed at best. Too easy. Let's watch some of her videos to see if I am right or not. Anyone catch the, the reference that this was just a cap in the ass? Like, literally sitting here well poisoning for a solid minute just to turn around and bring up the possibility that all this fronting could have been misled. That's true dedication to your commentating craft, clearly. Like, I started this segment referencing this bit here. Again, going forward into the commentary itself, I'm going to stress again that I'm going to skip over points that I've already addressed in this video ad nauseum, which includes Sylveon's first point about deciding a video to avoid it being critiqued. Now he's given me a reason to care because now he up and went and did this shit. A commentary regarding a video I disown. Okay, so what just because you disown a video doesn't mean you can't criticize it. If that's the case then, I disown this video. There you apparently can't criticize me now lol. I've already addressed that sentiment, it's not that much better here with the sole difference being that there's not a weird disconnect between him joking about doing exactly that and actually doing that, at least within a vacuum to this video. I could still bring up the future hypocrisy of the Kai and Carmen related tweets though if the need arises, but truly the only point that I need to bring up here is just what comes after that. And not only that, but he misses the point and blindly agrees with the person I commentated on. Or maybe. Just maybe. You are the one. Who is wrong? Are you willing to entertain that little idea of mine? Sure, I'm willing to entertain the possibility that I could be wrong. In 2016. However, given the prime sentiment of the conundrums video on Dan Mad was regarding my unfair shot at Jar's line delivery, which was mass misconstrued as a shot at his robotic filter itself, I most certainly wasn't wrong, at least in that department. But we will have to come back to that later. As for now, it's not super important. What is super important though is Sylveon's attitude towards this video, which is the exact reason why people bring up whether or not a video or statement is disowned or not. Sylveon is effectively time traveling here, asking me the question if I would entertain the idea that I am wrong in 2021. I would like to remind you all that I straight up disowned my video on the conundrum by 2017. And while I guess it doesn't inherently indicate that I believe what I was said was wrong as evidenced by how I described my video on Mr. Medicare, this video was me at probably my most spiteful too. I came into this video swinging at someone who I was genuinely angry at for, albeit arguably understandable reasons, however, given my own attitude, I didn't really get across the point that I was trying to make well enough for me to not come off as a, for lack of better words, kind of a spaz. Technically speaking, nothing I said in my video was wrong, but also because of Medicare's entire motive behind his own video, being one that's not meant to be taken seriously and is just supposed to be seen as a glorified cringe compilation, mine just missed the mark entirely. What it should tell Sylveon is that I've already entertained the idea that I was in the wrong if nothing else. Which in the case of the video on the conundrum here, I tried showing as much as I could using the disown stamp on my thumbnail and even mentioning how I didn't much care for this video and its sister video on Mr. A in Doodle is Cringe, a three hour video essay I made that Sylveon referenced in a second video on me. In there, I even explain what about these two videos I don't like, to which if Sylveon truly watched the video he alludes to as the last time I tried making anything better, he would have known before even making the first video on me, much less video three or four. Because the Mr. A video literally has me shooting a ton of toxic remarks towards both Mr. A and MBXLR to the point listening to the video becomes genuinely uncomfortable. Die. No. Honestly, you're basically putting me into this position where I have to defend both a video I disown and Nihilistic Snake. Do not steal my catchphrase to pour salt in the wound. That's fucked up. And the video on Conundrum is somehow worse because not only was I venomous towards him too, but I also cut a ton of context from the video because I felt it would drag out forgetting that in order to properly argue a video that has a lot of context to it, that we need to understand what the context is. Okay, why you tell you such a hypocrite? Because I still have no problem acting like the voice um issues and no problem for the Spikoya issues. Whee! What's the problem? Oh, but are you saying Sylveon can't critique this video because you've disowned it? He would say so, but the answer, and I'm going to make this as clear as day, is no! Retrospective commentaries aren't an issue. 
If I thought they were, why would I go on and make a worst of the year list every year that you, Sylveon, seem to take issue with? The point of bringing up that I've disowned these videos is to tell you and others like you that these videos aren't indicative of the quality of content that I still create to this day. That I don't still stand behind the sentiments that I shared within the individual videos themselves. You might sit here and say that you don't think I still stand behind these sentiments, but this clip right here says otherwise. This isn't talking to me retrospectively, it's talking to me as if the video is more so present day me. I also know what else you intend to say in retort to this, that pointing out my problems doesn't make them go away. Sure, it doesn't excuse the problems to point them out retroactively or within some time frame of the video's publishing. By all accounts, this is technically correct. However, that's not the point. Critiquing yourself publicly shows a level of self-awareness to what your problems are. It shows you understand where things went wrong and what you're willing to attempt to not continue those mistakes moving forward. It shows a want to change, and this idea that we should all continue to hold an individual to the problems that they fell into in the first place is really toxic and reductionist, not to mention counterintuitive towards growth. Unless you can prove from my present actions that truly nothing has changed, then holding me to the standards of five years ago isn't really fair critique. Now, because I try to be as nuanced as possible, I should clarify that I do know some of Sylveon's attempts to say that I haven't improved. But gonna be honest, Chief, none of this is particularly great criticism either. To go down that list real quick to cover all my bases, this is again a really awful thread that I made in response to someone, sure, I'm not denying that. But this was also 2016, I was 19 years old, and I haven't done this since, so in that regard, I absolutely have changed. This was in response to one of my wandering thought morning threads. Sylveon tries invalidating the whole of that apology because I even made a rant to begin with, which is holding me to, if I can be perfectly honest, a really bad self-criticism of myself. I've never really been that good with wording myself. That should be obvious. In fact, during the last section, you'd probably see me as trying to pin my problems on the commentary community when that is so far from the truth. I thank the CC for putting up with me and giving me a place to chill for three, maybe four years, depending on how this one ends up. For those of you on the outside looking in who maybe wish to join the CC, I say do it. The commentary community I associate with today is very accepting of new people, and while we don't always get along at the end of the day, and we definitely have our problems, for sure, it's not at all an intimidating group as we're all just a bunch of weebs who talk about Pokemon. It's great, it's why I've stuck around for as long as I have and will continue to do so as long as people want me around. To get back on topic though, my wording is very typically easily misconstrued, and this caused me to get into a lot of trouble in the past. See Jester Robot, The Conundrum, Early Dylan videos, etc. And it continues to get me into trouble nowadays too. In fact, you're gonna see that a lot the more we moved into the 2017 and 2018 segments. I have to continue to clarify things that people may have misunderstood due to my shit understanding of language. In fact, that's the reason I practically refuse to be a messenger nowadays. Again, you'll understand as shit goes on. From there, I should also mention that I have a mouth that doesn't know when to keep quiet. If I have thoughts on a subject matter, no matter how right or wrong it is, or how much I'm even unsure what I'm saying is correct, I still speak on it, and that's what led into a lot of 2017 around me, hence this next segment altogether. Like, discussing my thoughts on subjects is literally the point of being a commentator. And I know what the response to this is gonna be. Then don't be a commentator, leave the internet. But bruh, at that point, you should do the same, and so should every commentator, or just anyone with an opinion at all. Because we all have thoughts, we all have feelings, and if we're to use this garbage critique as a precedent, then we should heavily police opinions online. This is fucking stupid. This isn't even elaboration, this is just saying that I haven't improved from confessions in response to someone saying that I have been improving. But, like, where haven't I improved from confessions, Sylveon? Oh, you haven't changed because you still bring up the jar drama years later. Homie, did you forget that you were bringing up Jar to me first by citing his exact gripe with the Tukukui argument, which, by the way, I know just a robot has since used since the Alt-CC drama. Kind of extremely insensitive to come at us about being insensitive regarding the thumbnail when you sit here and joke about it. So I just wanted to put this part in the video because I feel like this went widely unnoticed and I find it very weird that Jar is in this video wanting to tell us about the thumbnail when he criticized the thumbnail himself. 
This is what's known as the Tukukui fallacy. Being a hypocrite doesn't make me wrong. Even still, me bringing up the Just a Robot drama years later has always been in response to Just a Robot's fans bringing it back up to me first. So even still, this isn't me dragging it back up for the sake of re-sparking the drama. I would very much like to move on with my life and continue making videos that I want to make, and it's why I don't typically dwell on this situation after the fact years later. On that note, you've brought up the Tukukui itself being an issue, which Discounting Jar's usage of it is a dumb critique in of itself because being a hypocrite doesn't make someone instinctively wrong on their own. Like, yeah, being a big hypocrite isn't a particularly amazing thing, though I would argue humans by nature are hypocritical to at least some degree, but I'll push that to the side for now. Being a massive hypocrite is a problem we can mostly agree upon, point is. But that wouldn't mean someone who is being hypocritical when they argue can't necessarily have a point pushing past the hypocrisy. So that's just a bad criticism in of itself. This one was in reference to videos getting actually disliked bomb. I was laughing about it on my Twitter because I thought it was funny that a Yu-Gi-Oh! replay compilation wound up getting more dislikes than likes. Wasn't exactly mad about it. The laughing emoticon should have been kind of a tone indicator on that one, Chief, so... This one is just not correct. Oh, but you still block people because they made fun of you. Man, I can't wait to see you never block a singular... Huh. I mean, well, it was only the one, right? You would never do that again. Huh. Well, I mean, maybe it's only the two cherry-picked examples, right? Oh. 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 Well, never mind. Clearly blocking people because they stand against you is totally okay, I, I guess. Like, you even blocked me before after I blocked you initially, so clearly you have a high ground, don't you, Jack? Nevertheless, blocking people who are only wanting a fight is kind of the point of the block button, dillweed. This one is you just calling me arrogant. Uh, to be honest, I'm not even sure if this is supposed to be connected to the rest of your crusade against me, or if this is just its own statement, to be honest. Either way, it's nothing. Sylveon insinuates that I don't believe of myself to be criticizable, which is just not true. My main thing is that people don't critique me and would rather talk about my controversies from years past, which you sure as hell aren't helping matters in. Actually, before this tweet was made, I had my Xenon Quark video already public for a few months, and I know you've seen that one, so don't know why you choose to insinuate that I don't want critique other than to continue your directions with grudge against me. This is just telling me to leave the internet. Technically a criticism, yes, but also not helpful in the slightest. Very destructive, and put it simply, it's quite lazy critique all in all. Oh, but if you were truly sorry to those you hurt, you would have left the internet by now. Except, how am I expected to be held accountable and improved from being the dickweed I was if you run me offline? If anything, wouldn't that feel like running from my responsibilities instead? Especially since you tell me not to apologize to people I've wronged on the internet, on the internet. Like, with all criticisms, while I should definitely listen to them, I should be allowed to think said criticisms aren't applicable. There's a reason my modern disclaimer says that my videos are for criticisms, but my targets can take it or leave it. No one has to follow every criticism they get, that's just fucking absurd mentality to have. Here's the thing, this is regarding the shitstorm currently going on, as the just a robot commentary I did. Something I personally want to fade out like my TP commentary. Yeah, you're talking about it here. You're not exactly doing yourself a favor, are you? Well, perhaps I wasn't at the time. But then what were your intentions of covering that video years later, Sylveon? Just saying, if you want to claim you're not doing this all because of the Pokemon drama, then why did you start with the Pokemon drama? But whatever. The thing is, while I don't disagree with the main points of the Just a Robot commentary that he did on me, the voice point is one that has been severely irking me because it's such a simple point. Everyone is blowing out of proportions. So allow me to hold nothing back, throw all the punches, and try to shed some light on this thing once and for all. It's funny because she complained about my friend Doodle Clones doing the same thing. Let me take from a once great commentator who had a speech just for a situation like this, because I feel it's prevalent to the situation. <clears throat> You're trying to do the exact opposite of what commentators are meant to do and follow the commentator stereotype as an obnoxious destructive tool with no real intent to help others but with the intent to tear others down. Oh, so you did watch my final thoughts in my first video on you. Huh. In any case, once again, this does come back to the disowning in age points. I had disowned this commentary by 2017. 
publicly. Obviously, if I'm making a statement that goes against that very same behavior in a video from present day, then why are you even remotely surprised that people would bring up the ages of some of these videos and retort to you trying to respark old drama? You can't sit here and claim that you don't think I stand firmly on my Just a Robot video, such as you did in both iterations of your commentary on my response to you, and then make this one acting as if I clearly haven't changed from this piss poor attitude I give off in this trash fire of a video. And today's avatar is Maximilian Pegasus. Why? Because I'm absolutely fabulous. Never do that again. Well, Sorry, but he's fabulous. He can do what he wants. You're not fabulous. You're the opposite. There's a lot more truth to that statement than I would like there to be. Cool ad hum. Today's uh, special commentary is on a good friend of mine. Who's in my who lives not that far from me? His name is Dan Dragonstar, 1988, and it's his commentary on just a ro just a. Ro Don't you mean just a senpai? But remember, guys, he's totally not here for just a robot. Good God, you're transparent. Well, let's get this commentary started. While Dan, that is an incredibly nice guy, I will say take what he says with a grain of salt, as he can't control it. He has trouble getting his points across. But if you're so intent on doing this commentary. Let's see what you got. You know what Diddle Tones said, now imagine that I said it. Okay, sure. I'll pretend you just said that. Sylveon, this is an absolutely garbage point and you should feel ashamed of yourself. Like, all my interjection does is well poison Dan Mad's video for being incoherent and rambly, and when I point out that he does have a bit of a speech impediment, it's unfair to dismiss his entire video just on that basis alone. You taking that point from me and using it against me is not only the same amount of nothing that my initial point was, but now you're using it against someone who doesn't have the same speech impediment Dan Mad has. So this is even less convertible, you're just pouring more poison into the well. That shit's expensive, Sylveon. And Dan, uh, this is going to be an OTK right now, Dan. <laughs> Man, there was a missed opportunity for 2016 Doodle Tones to jokingly point out that the Conundrum video isn't a one-shot, so how could it be a one-turn kill? <laughs> Maybe I could have salvaged the entertainment value of this video at the very least. Just gonna give you a fair warning, I know that we're really close, we're not that far away, and I see you at the garden all the time playing cards, so... <clears throat> Just remember, Dan, this is my first commentary. Go a little easy on me when you do a response, because... If you go too far, I'll have to beat you again with my version of tunes. I see you're still trying to go with no script, or if you have one, you sure as fuck aren't using it as your delivery is worse than your actual first commentary. You know, that shit I covered in April. Also, what happened with starting the commentary? I know you can point to my video on the 2021 gamers and call me a hypocrite, something that you're gonna do a lot in this video, but I digress. My argument with the 2021 gamers commentary is that my disclaimer goes on for 19 seconds, not almost half a minute with nothing to add to the disclaimer aside from you're totally going down, but go easy on me or else you're going down again. If my commentary on you back in April was condescending, we need a new word for how low that was. What does this have to do with anything? So my point here was that the conundrum has no script and was just rambling for extended periods of time. Then I retroactively addressed a potential counterpoint that could be raised utilizing another commentary I'd done around the same time frame, which also had a bit of an extended introduction to call out a potential bout of hypocrisy before explaining that the drag between the two videos aren't all that comparable. That's what it has to do with anything. Continuing on, Sylveon kinda just gave brief points towards Dan Mad that I'm like 90% certain they plagiarized from Jar's video, but I don't really care enough to go deep dive into find, so I'm just gonna be skipping a bit ahead instead. Pikachon Gamer 64 to complain about someone using Spiconia, but it's A-OK -okay for you to complain about me using a robot voice. You're such a hypocrite. Okay, why you tell you such a hypocrite? Because I still have no problem acting like the voice um issues and no problem for the Spikoya issues. What? Issues. What's the problem? What was the point of playing that clip? You mean the skip card? Because that was me skipping Dan Mad's entire point. It's bad for Pikachon Gamer 64 to complain about someone using Spikonia. But it's A-OK -okay for you to complain about me using a robot voice. You're such a hypocrite. Okay, why you tell you such a hypocrite? Because I still have no problem acting like the voice um issues and no problem for the Spikoya issues. But actually, it's not Spikoya P. 
Ika Chan, but yeah, I just nitpicking here because it's definitely not Victoria, it's just like texting voice. As the texting voice, some robots doing the texting. It's cool doing the robot thing, but is anything like cool doing the robot? The point is, you're not doing the right thing of Duotone's voice. Actually, I am not doing the right thing of my voice. So, my voice stands. So, yeah, because it's a gif. So, I might be a Nick picking here, but I get the point. What's the problem? Which, no, isn't okay, because we should have been able to hear Dan Matt's point in full. It's almost like cutting the context of a conversation is a strictly dishonest tactic that muddies the context of what's being discussed. For all anyone watching my video could have known, Conundrum could have had a totally valid critique against Dan Matt. After all, his point is not necessarily all that great because it's... I think contingent on the idea that the problem between Jar's voice and Steel the Hedgehog's voice is that there was a person behind Jar's voice, which... No, wasn't the point of conversation. Because what Jar was trying to get across in this interjection was that I called out Pikachu Gamer for an ad hominem attack towards Steel using a text-to-speech software because it doesn't do anything to Steel's point, but would have been totally A-OK -okay with the idea of criticizing his robot voice at the time. Though Jar's point flawed, Dan Matt doesn't particularly argue it in a cohesive manner. He rambles whilst unscripted about his own voice, which further confuses his argumentation and in turn would be really easily argued against within the confines of the situation. But I skip it outright. Something I still think is one of the worst aspects to this video, and there's a lot to hate about this video. I wouldn't get onto my case for the clip playing, I'd get onto my case for cutting the context, but then again, I guess if you did that, you wouldn't be able to cut your own context from videos now, would you? Clearly, Dan, you didn't get what he was talking about, because what he was saying is, Doodle Tones was a hypocrite for making fun of his voice when Pikachu Gamer was making fun of her voice. He was just pointing out the obvious. It's stupid because all three of you missed the point of the statement Jar was covering here. See, that dreaded voice point was to point out his delivery, not the voice itself. I can understand Jar maybe misunderstanding it, but fucking hell, Dan Matt and Conundrum, you two should know better. I expected this from the guy who could calculate the joules per energy from a cargo to get this wrong, but not the guy who can barely structure a sentence. What does Jar's intellect really have to do with anything? Like, Jar wasn't close to this community, him not understanding my intentions is passable because he didn't know me that well at the time. He wasn't too well versed in how the SEC critiques production as well as the points. Conundrum and Dan Mad were in this community and were closer enough to probably understand my intentions with that statement. I had both on Skype at the time, they could have reached out to me to clarify things if they really felt something was up. Jar couldn't have. But, like, if you truly don't want to give Jar the benefit of doubt here, be my guess, I guess. It's not my funeral. How many times have I debunked the voice point by myself? Um, zero? No. I definitely addressed it. The full context of my point was in regards to me arguing and pointing out how the point against one's voice is an ad hominem, something that Jar even plays within his first video on me that you plagiarized, friendly reminder. It's always great when someone opens a video with an ad hominem attack. Now I don't have a problem with ad hominem attacks, but here's the thing Doodle Tones does. In her video on Pika Chan Gamer, she complains about him doing the same thing, yet she's doing the same thing to Jar. You're such a hypocrite. Like, when you cut back to the video, you hear me say, Let us count the ways, Perry Puss, Zenith, Skeleton Nation, Sirius, and even Ryan. So, there you go. Examples to what it was I was even talking about in this point. This also helps fully contextualize why I wouldn't have expected Jar to know my intentions with the critique of his line delivery, unless he was extensively in the know to all my videos predating the one on him, and how adamant against dismissing a person on purely their voice that I am. Now, Given where you cut away from this point in the middle, I figured you might have been thinking about the point regarding what I was alluding to with my point to begin with. But even that's something I addressed in both live streams and even the follow-up response to the JAR video to begin with. I will, however, address one point within his video, though, as it seems this point was one that was lost in translation. And that's being the point where I bring up the way he speaks. 
It seems to be a very common misconception that I was bringing up his voice in total, and through this I was called a hypocrite by many of his fans. The thing that both Just a Robot and his fans don't realize, though, is I was talking about the way he spoke, his inflictions, his delivery, things more relating to that. The point was more an opinionated nitpick on my end because I felt the delivery of his line sounded forced, kind of like a child sounds when they're trying to play pretend and want to be the hero. Now, can you still call me out on that for having similar issues? Well, yes, sometimes. I will admit my delivery at times can sound stale or forced. But just because I do it, that does not mean I can't point it out when others have the same issue. It's just something both of us have to work on. I hope I was able to clear up that particular point in this video. I would have argued it in the comments, but well, when you're dealing with a fan base, reasoning with them is nigh impossible. Like, just because you hadn't watched those videos before coming into a dead drama to attempt and revive it doesn't mean these moments didn't exist. It's kind of why you don't do videos like this with the intent to hold an individual to the same standard they showed within a disowned video. Just saying. To address the whole ad hominem crap too, there is a difference between what Pikachu was doing to steal the hedgehog and what I was doing to just a robot. Pikachu tried using Speakonia as a way to discredit steal- No he didn't you liar. All he said was hey, maybe try using your real voice. It's better. How is that discrediting someone? at all you idiot. I like how this is just a point taken from my video on you and refocused to be a point against me. And worse yet, this is one of Jar's weaker points from that video considering what I, and coincidentally Pikachu and Gamer did, weren't actually ad hominem attacks considering neither of us based these production critiques on debunking their claims. Pika's was a little more on the iffy side considering his thing was directly in response to a point being made in Steel's video, though it wasn't really related to Pika trying to prove anything. Mine, on the other hand, is in direct response to something that isn't even a point. So to call this an ad hominem on either of our ends is just wrong, actually. Like, it's not plagiarized, I guess, so I'll give you that, but it's just funny to me. And I know this was taken from my video on you because you plagiarized Jar's point where he insinuated that what we were both doing was an ad hominem initially. So again, it's just funny, especially when you consider the modern knowledge I possess that I willingly gave to you. But remember, I haven't grown or changed at all. We need to keep up that narrative. The Hedgehog, whereas I was pointing out a subjective point within just a robot's presentation. It wasn't at all to discredit him, which is why I got it out of the way early before the points started coming in. Nevertheless, it had nothing to do with robot's voice. But I, and I quote myself from that same commentary, was arguing the way he speaks. Yet another instance of Sylveon throwing in one of my own points against a video that he knows I don't stand behind but still acts as if I do. What a fucking gamer. He was not attacking Doodle Tones on that point. He was just pointing out the obvious on the voice of fact that she was going after Pikachu Gamer for uh, making an ad hominem attack on her voice because she uses voice changer. And she was going off on just a robot for him using a voice changer of his own. The, the voice is great. Oops. And repeating the same point again. The worst part is, is that this doesn't actually debunk this point, considering I was emphasizing where I insinuated that it was just a robot's line delivery that was the issue that I unfairly brought up against him so many years ago. Like, the more modern point that I brought up against the original Just a Robot video also has a correct point. Sure, that's literally why I brought it up. But trying to take it and place it in a context it wasn't initially directed at won't always function the same way that you want it to. In this scenario, I'm correcting the conundrum on what my point was. Whether or not my initial point at the end of the day is good isn't important to this discussion as the important aspect of this debate is solely focused on what my initial point was. It's the substance in the point that's the topic of discussion, not the point itself. This autopilot is not working. Sylveon then skips the rest of my conundrum video to move on to the Mr. A portion of the video where there is definitely more substance to cover than merely repetitiously correcting a singular point in an emotionally driven way. There's also a little skit he does between Elizabeth and UV that's out of character on both sides, but I figure that should go without saying since he wants to claim these characters as his own so badly because he can't write his own original characters to save his life. So we're skipping that portion of the video too. Doodle! Oh hi Motivation and Will to Live, how are you doing this fine day? Oh I've been doing fine, but look, I'm worried about you. You've got almost a week without releasing what the people want. I know, it's just, I don't really have any good material and it's been way too hot for my liking. Okay, here's some material, 
That's the easy part. Well, what's the hard part? Me. I'll keep this on the back burner. It won't become obvious immediately, but this does come back up in another segment. Wait, was that the hard part? M motivation and will to live? Wh where'd you go? He, he, he. You fool. I killed her while you weren't looking. And it seems that you're next, so get ready, diaper boy. Also, will be important later. Huh. Well, I mean, l let's see what they gave us. Oh. 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 Alright, well, well, this could be fun. Let's try it. But first, let me switch avatars to match this, uh, colder climate. There we go. Let's do this. So my next co-op partner and a diva of a punching bag do a commentary on a bandwagon that did a commentary of an ex-target of mine that did a commentary on me that started a huge war in the comments section that has gone on to be the second most thumbed down video on my channel. And so I come back to hit them both because I feel this is a bit of unfinished business. And you just have to get the last word in, don't you? Look, it was either that or this chain goes on longer than anyone wanted to be. You'd be surprised at just how petty this community was in 2016 with bandwagons. I know, I know, we can be petty in general, but imagine that with less filter. Joking aside, it sounds to me like you're just mad that I covered this chain at all to begin with. Never mind that this was also a video from 2016 and just a robot actually got the last word in all those years ago, because no one covered his hour-long video on the CC. Actually, I think Carmonet might have, but I don't think that video is still up, and I don't remember that one being particularly good. In any case, I actually briefly mentioned that I hated it had to be made to begin with in my worst of 2016 list, but I didn't argue anything out of it because the only other person that should have had the last word, if not the instigator of the situation, would be the victim of it. However, I will admit I was hoping that I, as the instigator, could stop the situation from going further. Did I do it poorly? Oh, absolutely. But that's the intent that I basically say that I had within this video. Oh, right, sorry, we have a narrative to spin. My bad. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, I actually wanted the last word. I wanted to silence Jar. Ha ha, I am evil. Fear me. Also, I wrote my script the day I watched this video. I'm spiteful and stubborn, and I wasn't gonna let this opportunity fly by. Okay, so let me understand this. You wrote this script when you first saw Jar's response to Doodle. That response was released on June 15th of 2016. Now, that's about a month of time, which could have been used to show the script to others so you could have had quality control, allowing for rewrites, edits, revisions, reshoots, anything you'd see an average commentator scripting checklist have. But you didn't do that, did you, Satanic Ekans? To add on to that, why exactly are you getting your panties in a twist over this? I mean, I understand if you think you owe Doodle or something, but really, why still hold this grudge? Especially when the two who are in the midst of all of this decided to end the nonsense within a week or two of it starting. He's, uh, spiteful and stubborn. You listen to Mr. A, he kind of explains what's what in the disclaimer. Pointing out your problems don't make them go away. I don't believe I ever said it did. I merely explained in that interjection that Snake had already explained why they possibly didn't do what these two were alluding to, since MD and Mr. A were literally asking Snake why they didn't get people to script check or drop the video after the drama altogether, with specifically my point against Mistress Dove being used to point out a huge assumption on both their ends. He's, a uh, spiteful and stubborn. You listen to Mr. A, he kind of explains what's what in the disclaimer. This also kind of goes to MD's point as well, because you see, he said he originally wanted it to go up in June. While, yeah, he could have scrapped it or showed it around to more people, odds are he was satisfied with the work, especially when he asked the fiery Henry to edit the thing for him. And perhaps he showed people the script prior to asking Henry, and maybe they said it was okay despite skimming over it. This stuff is answered or at least can easily be explained just by going off the disclaimer introduction. Make sure you clean your ears before commentating, else you wind up like me earlier in this very chain that we're talking about. Like, it doesn't do much good to ask why something the way it is when a reason was already given in context. Never once did I say or even imply that it was a good thing for Snake to do, just that their questions are redundant and based on assumptions. Hey, what's this? 11 Pokemon that could destroy the world? Well, that doesn't sound so bad. Ugh, okay, this is going to seriously bother me if I don't bring this up here. I get it, you're trying to be a robot, that's your character, but the way you speak is grating. It's as if you're a child trying to sound incredibly cool, but you wind up sounding more edgy than anything. It makes me want to play dodgeball in traffic. She says while having that voice. He says while having no voice. Here's my voice, then. Okay, okay, he says with a voice that he doesn't even use. What's your point? 
Like, you've already used my point against you against me within this very same video, so you know that I don't stand behind this critique of Jar's line delivery, yet here, you choose to go back to misrepresenting and strawmanning my criticism, and trying to argue it with a no you. Like, bruh, why would you actively choose to make a worse point to a video that's not even that good to begin with? It's always great when people start off a commentary with an ad hominem attack. Now, normally I don't care about ad hominem attacks, but the thing is, Doodle Tone does. You would show off your real voice instead of using Spiffonia. Use a different program. You Or better yet, use your real voice. Returning viewers will definitely know this, but the whole use your real voice argument seriously gets on my nerves. Same goes for the show us your real face argument. Neither of these critiques debunk anything anyone has to say. Instead, this is what is known as an ad hominem, which is basically something directed at a person instead of the argument that they hold. No, you idiot. When did he discredit his argument at all? All he said was, hey, the voice you're using is bad. Maybe try using your real one. He did not say, because you're using Spiconia. I cannot take you seriously. Now Sloth Boy said something like that to Jar, which by the way, you are defending right now. Sylveon has honest to god lost the plot. So it's bad for Pikachon Gamer 64 to complain about someone using Spiconia, but it's A-OK -okay for you to complain about me using a robot voice. You're such a hypocrite. No, she is not a hypocrite. What you just showed actually works in her favor. Her complaint against Pikachu Gamer was that he was pulling the use your real voice argument. Um, no he wasn't. Meant. Doodle Tones was criticizing your robot voice because she thought the way you were doing it is annoying. She wasn't complaining that you weren't using your real voice. So, honestly, she's perfectly fine. What? Snake, why she criticized the robot voice doesn't change the fact it can be viewed as an ad hominem attack, as in both instances it's the commentator complaining about how the presenter presents their voice. Which is, as described by Doodle in her commentary on Pikachu Gamer, is essentially an attack on the person and not their argument. AKA an ad hominem attack. Oh, it looks like I'm gonna need to snap some necks already. Yeah, yours. <clears throat> and I quote, If you're going to apologize, then don't do it on the internet. People here are mean and hate you so much. You've done such terrible things and you literally deserve to be off the internet for good. You've seriously messed up hard, and I think you deserve to be in jail for at least three to five years. But you don't deserve death. Nobody does. Man, I wish I had watched this video prior to making my second video on you, because I would have called this shit out sooner. It's even better when you realize that one of Sylveon's biggest examples as to why I should be deplatformed are the Dark Ghost Twin rant screenshots, where I told a dude to jump off a ditch and die. So it's bad for me to tell a dude to jump in a ditch and die, but it's A-OK -okay for you to tell me to snap my own neck. Like, spoilers, it's not OK either way. However, if I require being deplatformed for this shit five years ago, you're not allowed to get away with it now. Like, fuck off with that. If the Kai Wei shit wasn't bad enough, I can direct you to this clip for your gross hypocrisy. Now I know what some of you are thinking. Hey, in your commentary on MGTOW Gangster, you pointed out that his microphone quality was bad at the beginning of your commentary. And yes, while I did tell him that, I also told him where he can get a good microphone, and I said this. I know that my robot voice is not the most pleasant thing to listen to, but at the very least it's something new. So at the very least I acknowledge that my robot voice isn't that good. I told this to Jake Spider Monkey 1994, and I'll tell you too. Pointing out your problems doesn't make them go away. He was explaining why he used the robot voice. He wasn't trying to excuse his robot voice. Wait, he explained why he uses the robot voice? No, he was certainly trying to excuse it, Envy. Sitting there and acknowledging the fact that it's bad and then going off to say, but at least it's something new, is trying to excuse any criticism that may be given to it. And if you're too busy twiddling your thumbs and waiting for Snake to finish yammering on to tell him that he's wrong to realize this, then I'm sorry, you're just gonna look like a total fucking moron in me. Shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! Shut the fuck up! This might be the easiest video I have had to respond to. If only any of your points were good and weren't contingent on the fact that I made them first. I mean you saw that, didn't you? You heard that, didn't you? I heard you use a George Carlin clip to tell me to shut the fuck up instead of arguing my point, and then persist to ask if we all heard my point as if that on its own was self-refuting. 
Yeah, it's a shame your interjection wasn't a blank. Or put it in the middle. I know this isn't the top 10, but you always have to save the best for last, and I wasn't sure if this one was the best, or the worst. It's the worst, dude. You, uh, gonna explain why there, friend? I mean, saying that Electrode is just the worst Pokemon to choose for this list without explanation is rather unfortunate. I mean, you must know something I don't. Inform me, because as far as I'm concerned, Electrode isn't even the worst Electric-type Pokemon for this list. When I say it's the worst, I'm not saying it's the worst Pokemon ever. I'm saying it's the worst Pokemon on this list. Pay attention to what he says before I say it's the worst. Hey, fuckface, take your own advice. Did you not pay attention to what Doodle said? She was complaining that you, were, you didn't elaborate on what you meant, stupid. Way to claim Doodle is a hypocrite and then right after make yourself out to be a hypocrite as well. It's a good thing this unnecessary angry outburst was here to help me remember that this is a Jewish Viper video. And it was even complete with edgy insults that like any originality and stuttering. Eh, at least he's- Welcome to the Neo CC. I love it when someone tries lumping an entire community they don't know under one stereotype they don't understand. Dub and Mr. A were in the SCC at the time of this video, my guy. Them pointing this out against Snake's typical rhetoric in their commentaries should tell you that not everyone within this community shared the same commentating style Snake had at the time. More to the point, Snake and others were, in general, very frequently criticized for their edgy persona and destructive nature. It's a bit harder to prove that with evidence as most of the commentators who covered Snake have deleted a vast majority of their commentaries, but I was able to dig up one from YouTube dude who had this to say about Snake in particular. You see, I said that Snake scripted most of his commentary. I didn't say he scripted all of it. No, the final thoughts were the part of this video that he didn't have full control over. Know how I know? Here's what the co-op partner said during that part. Look, guys, I can see you guys having good intentions, but, well, with bad results. Therefore, don't feel discouraged, and just take this as a learning experience. I'm sure both of you have what it takes to do better in the future. So I think it's best you follow my comrades' advice and get to work. And here's what Snake said. My advice to you both is to not touch political issues with three pairs of surgical gloves for a long, long time, because you're clearly not good at it. Notice how the other co-op partners were trying to offer constructive criticism? Even if Soraeus was being obnoxious in his final thoughts, he did say, get to work. Unlike Snake, who offers destructive criticism by telling them to stop doing political commentaries for a long time. I guarantee you, if Snake wrote everyone's final thoughts, they'd all be telling 6T and Flippy to shut up. Actually, on that note, you know my final thoughts on you, Sylveon? That, uh, open quotation of someone who had similar criticisms towards this very kind of destructive attitude that Snake and I both perform within this very chain. Yeah, fun fact, that was a criticism against YouTube Dude himself by ex-commentator Ray Kohai, one of the very people who I had apologized to in the video you claim this crusade truly stems from. Ugh! Ugh! Finally done! Thank God! This commentary, abysmal! You had shitty points, you commentated on Dead Horse, your act case with the bop was incredibly annoying, your acting was shit and unclear, you kept wasting my time at certain parts of the video, your jokes suck, and you suck. Do us a big fat fucking favor, Comment Jack, and quit commentaries altogether, because all you are doing with your piss poor videos is painting a bad light on the actual good commentaries in this community. Okay, this is something I've seen people do off and on again, and I've noticed YouTube Dude has become my new example of this, but I can't freaking stand when someone tells someone else to stop making commentaries, especially in this much of an emotionally driven manner, when the worst they do is just not make a good content. At worst, Comet Jack is just a D minus tier commentator who hasn't even been around a full freaking year yet. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not a fan of Comet Jack either, but telling him to leave the community, especially in your antagonistic, immature, mean-spirited, vindictive manner, is honestly something I don't think is very warranted on your end or anybody's end. You have no purpose here, and you know what? Comet Jack will probably do a commentary on this video too, and you know what? I won't reply back, because I don't want to see another second of this guy's videos. I don't want Comet Jack to improve. No, no. I want him gone. I want him to quit commentaries and never come back. So basically, once again, like a lot of your other commentaries, you want to do the exact opposite of what commentators are meant to do, and follow the commentator stereotype as an obnoxious, destructive tool with no real intent to help others, but with the intent to tear others down. Listen. I just want to get real with you guys for a second. I know I come off as pretty sarcastic and occasionally douchey in some of my videos, but I make these videos to help, not drive away. If anyone I commentated on now came back and improved, I embrace them with open arms. Heck, that's what I did with Doodle Tones, Gale Force, and Star Maker. Now, I'm not saying you can't just make videos to debate, but when destroying someone's image or tearing another person down like you did here is your main priority, 
which you pretty much flat out said was the case, then sorry sir, you get no respect from me. Try again. Like, I can't be the only one, right? Am I? Am I the only one who sees the morbid humor that stemmed from the fact that one of the very people I stated I wronged in a video that Sylveon doesn't think that I can improve from wouldn't support this very same ideological crusade? Like, she definitely didn't support the negative and destructive attitude that YouTube dude displayed in his video on Comment Jack, that's for sure, which should also help show that not everyone was like Snake. And more to the point, not everyone likes Snake's attitude in commentaries. Actually, on that note, I just thought of something. Yo, Sylvie, you wanna know who else was critical of spiteful behavior in commentaries? Because you'll never believe this. While I was about to go record for the next video that I'm about to do, I ended up finding this commentary. So this is gonna be my first commentary on a commentary. So this is Midnight Vampire, someone who I assume wants to join the CC, and decided to make their first commentary on Doodle Tones, simply as a means to get an influx of viewers. This guy is already trying to make me look bad, why am I not surprised? Hey, Midnight, you understand that telling someone they ended up covering a bigger target to get people's attention isn't inherently a bad thing alone? In fact, my first couple of commentaries were to do the exact same thing for the most part, covering people that were bigger and could be considered to be tougher topics in the long run. Although you can debate whether or not those commentaries were good or not, that'll be up to you, although in the end it would prove nothing. What I'm trying to say is here is that Dahl was saying what he assumes that is the case, and didn't give out indications as to what this was of it being a good or bad thing. Unless you can prove otherwise with the intent of these statements, the most I can do is just dismiss your claim and call you out for being conspiratorial and trying your absolute hardest to try and make everyone who disagrees with you to be the bad guy. If that wasn't your intent, maybe you should consider rethinking how you word what you say, present yourself in a way that would not be seen as spiteful and biased towards any form of criticism, especially when Dahl here has yet to provide any indication whatsoever of him trying to have any malicious intent behind this video. That's right, even your dearest furry, albeit later than this video in 2018, also critiqued this type of attitude. Like I will say, for some reason my video on Mr. A was let slide years prior, you could maybe argue that in its own right is a double standard due to my status, I guess, if you really want to persist this negative stigma against the SCC, but regardless, this kind of behavior was not nearly as common or accepted as you're making it out to be here. Always have to save the best for last, and I wasn't sure if this one was the best or the worst. If you want me to elaborate why it's the worst Pokemon on this list, he says this about it. One electrode alone would not be enough to destroy the world. He doesn't say that about any of the other Pokemon, just Electrobe. That still doesn't change the fact that you should have explained in your original video. Jar never said that it did you liar also Jar just assumed people knew about the anime he shouldn't have to walk you across the street. Sylveon's point is wrong. No, I won't elaborate because I assume everyone knows the concept of being a presenter in videos and explaining your points. I mean, I shouldn't have to hold your hand and walk you across the street, clearly. Gonna let that one sink in. As soon as he even starts to erupt volcanoes, America would just nuke him. I mean, I could bring up the fact that Groudon is practically the god of land, bring up several hypotheticals that put you in an awkward position, or I could just take the easy way out and point to his Pokemon Emerald Pokedex entry where it says it just awakening this thing causes volcanoes to erupt. Yeah, but how many volcanoes will erupt? 50? 500? All of them? All of them? The thing is, the Pokédex just says that volcanoes will erupt. Not all the volcanoes will erupt. Also, the repercussions of killing a god that created the land we stand on is definitely something to take into account. Whoa, whoa, what? Also, the repercussions of killing a god that created the land we stand on is definitely something to take into account. Groudon created the land in the Pokemon world, not the land in our world. Do you even know what you're talking about anymore? Oh, calm your circuitry, you know what she meant. And that still doesn't negate her argument that killing Groudon would be pretty disastrous. Does he? D does he really know? Does he, Christian Elephant? Because if he did know, then I don't think this point would be here. Also, playing devil's advocate for Jar here, it does refute the argument as the Pokemon world and our world are different. Sure, Doodle was arguing based on us being in the Pokemon world, but Jar was arguing based on them being separate. And that's not even taking into account you didn't even try to refute the point he- Yes. Finally.
someone gets it. I mean, Mr. A's interpretation of my statement here is wrong, given as I explained before, and will even go on to explain in this video, that my statement assumes the hypothetical that the translation of Groudon's status could be kept in mind bringing it into the human world. My point isn't that we are put into the Pokemon world, it's whether or not Groudon would translate into being godlike on our own. Now, yes, I should bring up for those who didn't watch my original video on Sylveon, that my statement here is, once again, based on an assumption, which does kind of make it sort of shaky at best, flat out invalid at worst. But what I failed to remember in my initial video on Sylveon here, that I do later to go on and clarify in my video on Dub and Mr. A, is that my statement here is apparently supposed to be a joke. I would argue a joke with a point, but a joke. That's interesting to know. Another thing that I'm surprised no one pointed out is the fact that this is a joke on my end played straight, but whatever, let's take it seriously for this argument, shall we? If Groudon was put on our Earth and thus had all of its powers that it does on the Pokemon world, or at least that's how I originally saw this hypothetical, Groudon would thus practically be a god that controls the Earth beneath it at this point, and nuking it could potentially cause biblical-sized devastation that the world has never seen. That's what I was jokingly poking at. Now, saying that Groudon is the god of the land in the Pokemon world, while isn't wrong, doesn't necessarily entirely debunk this theory as we would have no idea if it would retain its godlike status on Earth. Basically, what I'm saying is neither Jar or Snake are in the wrong, and you should try again. I mean, either way, he doesn't invalidate the point at all. So that's... yeah. Another thing that I'm surprised no one pointed out is the fact that this is a joke on my end played straight, but whatever, let's take it seriously for this argument, shall we? Um, how was that a joke? In any way, you liar. And I quote from my initial video, If Groudon was put onto our Earth, it would thus have all the powers that it would on the Pokemon world, or at least that's how I originally saw this hypothetical. Groudon would thus practically be a god that controls the Earth beneath it at that point, and nuking it could potentially cause biblical-sized devastation that the world had never seen. That's what I was jokingly poking at. Oh jeez, context that gets played after you get done with your interjection that literally explains what your interjection brings up? Seems this is a common thing for Sylveon, but even still, if you choose to remove the joke aspect from my interjection, which honestly at this point I would, Mr. A still got it wrong, because my statement is still based on the hypothetical that Groudon keeps its godlike status, not that real humans are placed in the Pokemon world. So even still, removing that this wasn't supposed to be a super serious statement, Mr. A and Jar don't debunk it. If Groudon was put on our Earth and thus had all of its powers that it does on the Pokemon world, or at least that's how I originally saw this hypothetical, Groudon would thus practically be a god that controls the Earth beneath it at this point, and nuking it could potentially cause biblical-sized devastation that the world has never seen. That's what I was jokingly poking at. Now, saying that Groudon is the god of the land in the Pokemon world, while isn't wrong, doesn't necessarily entirely debunk this theory as we would have no idea if it would retain its godlike status on Earth. Basically, what I'm saying is neither Jar or Snake are in the wrong, and you should try it. Try again. This. Is. A. Waste. Of. Time. Why. Am. I. Watching. Trash. This is literally only a question that you yourself can answer, Home Slice. But with that, Sylveon's multi-commentary bonanza is over, and to wrap up this chapter, I want to briefly recap what it is this video in particular has taught me. Sylveon doesn't just not understand context they actively refuse to. The videos on my responses to him were full of blatant lies and plagiarisms that shows how lazy Sylveon can be when creating an argument. There were a lot of removed portions from context and just in general, he didn't seem to listen to a damn thing I'd said in my videos. Had it just been those two videos that Sylveon made on me, they would have still been bad, but I would still have a reason to give him the benefit of doubt. Combine those two videos with this double feature though, and a more clear-cut picture starts revealing itself. Sylveon refuses to let things go, refuses to acknowledge the possibility of growth from creators he has a predisposition of feeling negative feelings towards, and more to the point, doesn't care about the time frame or context of things that he wishes to talk about. Again, it's not a crime in of itself to talk about old topics retrospectively, but the way that Sylveon does it assumes that the creators had only recently fell into these actions, and that they're fresh enough to condemn in a more direct light. Combine that with Sylveon's reductionist approach to critique, and you just get a recipe of disaster that was only used to destructively approach a conversation. Alas though, this would not be the end of Sylveon's videos on me, nor would they even be the last pertaining to just a robot. The next video I wish to look at talks about the Alt-CC and SCC from a 2017 viewpoint, with a pretty infamous SCC rant. Oh right, yeah, this was the video where he just took my character for his own gain and not even tried to hide it. 
Uh, so if you're new to this channel and actually stuck around by this point, first and foremost, wow, you must got a lot of time on your hands too. Uh, thank you for sticking around. But second, you might have been wondering what all I allude to with game jacking and lore jacking and such. Well, typically I put little story skits and stuff at the beginning and end of my usual content, being my Doodlecom commentary series. Another piece of my brand that Sylveon has stolen, by the way. I didn't for this video because it's a rather long one already, but normally they're there. If you're at all interested, I'll link a playlist of all the individual portions in the Google Doc down below. I mean, same goes for just about everything I reference or allude to throughout what I am dubbing this docu-commentary. In any case, it's not really a requirement to understand my story to understand that Sylveon just pockets all my characters. It's something he does pretty openly and is definitely the biggest criticism that other people have had of him thus far. But if you are interested, if you do kind of want more of that context, it, it's there. The ongoing trend of Sylveon almost exclusively covering disowned or rather infamous commentaries of mine continues with the much smaller mistake in comparison to all my other blatant blunders. In 2017, there was a group of individuals called the Alt-CC that formed their own little group detached from the community with the inconsistent intent to critique the methods of the SCC. That said, various sources had claimed the intent was to destroy the CC, some apparently wanted to do what Sylveon wants to do and run me specifically off the internet, or at the very least quit commentaries. There was a handful that wanted to return the SCC to its 2011 roots. I mean, Jar just wanted a place that wouldn't be an assumed hive mind, you know, the works. But this wound up causing a bit of a rift within the communities, some being more persistent with the critiques of ones another than others. Looking back, I definitely had a lot less to say on the matter than maybe people thought that I did. Like, I definitely spoke out against them a handful of times, what with the Us vs. Them video, the Passing Thoughts video, and the important iteration of this self-destructing mud hole, a video made in response to a livestream manga comment hosted talking about things Dylan Thomas and friends didn't like about me. The problem I had with the stream, though, was that the critiques were very contradictory. It was hosted at a time where I could not defend myself and felt more like an attempt to lock me into a losing situation where I was damned if I didn't agree with the critiques, but damned if I did agree with them, and in turn made my video on that premise. Admittedly, this is yet another video that I'm not super fond of in hindsight. It feels very overdramatic in a lot of areas, definitely shouldn't have said that the people in the livestream were, quote, emotions away from sociopaths definitely not one of my shining moments. However, Sylveon is thankfully not covering that. That in mind, self-destructing Mudhole did wind up spawning an SCC rant by Megaduke, aka Professor Cartoons, who tried taking a more fence-sitting approach to this conflict to which I made a pretty subpar video on in retort of, and that's the next horse that Sylveon wishes to beat. I've got a point to make about this video, so if this segment feels a bit repetitive, I want you to know that's intentional. So this is where my older brother's project was held captive for all these years. I've heard it's really powerful. Thank God I brought my brother's dairy with me because it has directions on the location of the project. Ah yes, we do get more of Sylveon's derivative lore, which only really establishes that Sylveon's clone character is basically my Shadow the Hedgehog. Literally down to the fact that they can use Chaos Control without Chaos Emeralds. Over here, my name is Elizabeth. You've awakened me from a state of suspended animation. And I am very grateful. To show my gratitude, I am at your command. Bad timing as usual. Wait, I will show you my power, sir. What just happened? It's a power called Chaos Control, sir. Can you teach me how to do that? Sorry, sir, but I was created with the ability to use that power. A normal creature like you can't use it without the use of a Chaos Emerald and I have no idea where they are. I mean, I guess it makes sense. I have had a lot of recolors over the years. I've seen some bad Doodle Tones rants before. I've seen some bad CC rants before. Hell, I've seen some bad Alt CC rants before. But never have I seen a rant that's so fucking pitiful. I almost want to give the ranter in question a pat on the back and tell him to calm down over what amounts to a corpse. You're talking about yourself, right? No. I get this is supposed to be a pot shot, but like... No, there's not a single way to recontextualize what I said to point back at me. I'm so glad I sat down to watch this because, ooh, boy, what a ride this will be. Indeed, Doodle. This video will be a ride, but unfortunately, 
for you. It's pretty funny for me. The ride is at your expense. Literally, we haven't even gotten into the commentary and already Sylveon has thrown two no use to belittle me, which has to be a new record. Like, don't get me wrong, my video is indeed a lot condescending, and I too would like to punch myself in the face with the statements we're about to hear come out of my mouth, but this is quite frankly just pathetic. Hey guys, this is Megadoop TV here, and you read the title right, this is gonna be a full on rant! A video has never won me over so quickly before. About the commentary community, because who boy, I'm pissed, I do not like the way that the commentary, I do not like the direction the commentary community is going right now, and this is gonna be a very, very angry rant, so prepare yourself. No need to worry, I brought an entire bottle of bleach to help me get through this. I'm prepared. Good start, good start. Admitting that we should look at all of your points with a mountain of salt that they are from the word go really makes this easier on me. Megadoop, are you familiar with what happens when one makes a video while pissed off and emotionally charged like that? Well, you can't think straight and, well, you get this video. That was the best self-pwnage I've ever heard. And another no you pot shot. That's three in a row when responding to me. Like, it's not like you couldn't make a point against this statement either, as my point is hilariously dismissive and poisons the well out the gate. Like, oh yeah, because Megadoop has criticisms of the SCC and is coming in a little heated, he should only be taken with a grain of salt. Like, how is that exactly fair? Like, again, all SCC rants are the same, especially in hindsight, but that doesn't mean valid critique couldn't be brought up. Oh, and let me just push this aside for a bit, because the fact that you admit that you're as angry in this video as you are gets to be really relevant later in the video. No, you try again. That's now four of them in a row. Right now, let's talk about some of the shit I really need to talk about. First off, I think the commentary community, the reason their arguments and crap have just become trash. Like, they, be, they just become trash, right? Like, one of the main common arguments I keep hearing from the commentary community is the two quote qui fallacy, or the hypocrisy, hypocrisy doesn't make you wrong. Oh, and by the way, just quoting a fallacy does not make your point correct, okay? This is what these guys seem to do. They're like, oh, let's just point out fallacies of the thing, especially with the ad hominem and the straw man, and especially nowadays with the two quote qui. But anyway, two quote qui is basically a logical fallacy in which um, if you claim that a dude is being a hypocrite, that doesn't invalidate his point. And these guys always like to use this argument, which is so dumb because half the time I see it used, or actually 90% of the time, the people who claim that the other dude is a hypocrite, they are not trying to say that, oh, your, your point is wrong because you're a hypocrite. They're just saying that you're a hypocrite and that's it. I love how the entire time Sylveon throws an edit of Elizabeth on screen to show his clear bias while Megadoop is speaking, as if all the previous interjections of this video pointed at Megadoop weren't signs enough that Sylveon is going in with the lack of nuance and care as to what's being discussed. Like, okay, I get it, you hate the SCC, you specifically hate me, but bro, we have next to no reason to look at these points as fair, balanced, or understanding at this point. Why should I give any sort of care into what you've got to say going into this video? Any examples? Any you're gonna name offhand? Anything? <sighs> Mega, buddy, wow. I, I don't want to believe you're this careless, but if you ain't got shit, then you ain't got shit. I could maybe believe it if, you know, you showed us an example of this happening, but you don't. I only have your word to take on the matter and, uh, well, you see, you later give me a reason to not ever take what you say at face value. Ever. But we'll get to that when we get there, now won't we? I. Think. My. Brain. Is. Leaking. Out. Of. My. Ear. Why? Examples are a perfectly reasonable thing to ask of a person who's trying to make such a broad statement like that. Like, if you're going to say those who use the two kukui are using it incorrectly, show us how it's being done incorrectly so that we know where you're coming from. Megadoop doesn't do that, and your retort here is being used as more of a reaction towards what I'm saying, and doesn't actually argue anything. On that note, I want to point out how we are a fourth into Sylveon's video, and not a single argument has been made against me yet. This, thankfully, doesn't persist, as his next interjection will demonstrate. Right? And it's just so stupid! Like, these arguments, and this, that's not just one, there's another argument I cannot stand. Humor doesn't- humor is subjective, therefore you cannot criticize the joke. See, here's the thing about this one. With humor being as subjective as it is, it really is hard to criticize the joke. I grant you it's not impossible, but if you're gonna just sit there and say the joke isn't funny and expect that to be a critique, then I got bad news for you. You're as dumb as a brick. Um, no. If a joke is bad, then you should point it out. You can't just hand wave away criticism with, but is subjective. That's not my point, though. I didn't say you couldn't criticize a joke. On the contrary, I straight up say it's possible to in that clip. There are things to critique when it comes to stuff like joke delivery, the timing, the pacing, the rhythm even. What I said was that because humor is subjective, criticizing a joke in of itself because you personally do not find it funny isn't critique. You can't criticize what someone finds funny, as that is subjective, 
but that's not to say you can't criticize a joke at all. Let me put it this way, people conflate humor and comedy a lot when it comes to discussions of critique and it shows. Comedy does have a set of rules. Don't overrun your allotted time, don't be a dick, avoid low-hanging fruit, the rule of three, you know, the works. And it's there that one could come up with critiques of a piece of comedy-based work. Humor is what one finds funny. This is entirely subjective. So saying that one's joke is not funny and leaving it at that becomes a statement of subjectivity that means nothing, which is what I was originally bringing up towards Megadoop's video here. Now, is there a point to possibly bring up here in Retort? Well, yeah, Kirby Star Warrior did a fairly decent job pointing at how ultimately my point doesn't exactly cover the point that Megadoop brings up here. How is it possible to miss the point this badly? Nowhere did he imply that he supported simply calling the joke unfunny and leaving it at that. His issue was that people acted as if because humor was subjective, the joke can't be criticized at all. That said, as true as it may be, I do still have a problem with Megadoop's point being again, rather vague and presumptuous of people's arguments, as I cannot recall a time where I've heard anyone say that a joke could not be criticized because humor is subjective, but admittedly, that's not what I initially argued in my video, so I still take the L from Kirby there. Because while you didn't personally find it funny, that doesn't mean the subject in question didn't find it funny. I write a lot of jokes that I find funny in my commentaries that people go on to then take seriously. One of the more recent examples I can think of being my video on Ernie where I had not one, but two comments about my pot shot at Jim's clopping video, making a joke at his expense. I found it to be funny, I knew it was a joke, but see, that's the thing. You can't really criticize a joke like that because if you didn't find it funny, then you didn't find it funny. You can explain why, but in the end, if they found the joke to be funny enough to leave it in, and you didn't, that's just two opinions meshing together, and subjectivity doesn't debunk subjectivity. I I'm sorry. <laughs> Your Dark Sight's argument is gonna be, it's just a joke, you're taking it too seriously. Well, the joke doesn't make any sense and it's not funny, so it failed. Again, missed the mark entirely, but in the exact same way as the last interjection, so I'll leave it at that. Yeah, and keep on, and let me just say for record that I've been guilty of some of the stuff that's been said in the video, but unlike the STUPID motherfucker. Please marry me. I'll hold you to that after you watch this video. Also, considering you call this a rant on just a robot and I, I still have a hard time speaking on behalf of the robot, but I haven't been hesitant to say that I'm wrong, or apologize on something I did wrong. But, you know, this is all one big lead up to when you get to me, so I'll once again touch on that when we get there. So you did it once. You did not admit you were wrong. All those other times. Yeah, you're right. I haven't made any statement after my most notorious flops. I've never apologized or acknowledged when I've made a mistake, Everyone knows that I think I'm totally perfect because of my enormous ego, right? <clears throat> Master TP video. I... I need to definitely say something. I guess an apology, maybe? I don't know, consider this what you will. I fucked up. Badly. See, I made a m mistake, or I made a promise rather to myself that when requested I'd do a commentary on whatever I was requested on and basically played the defendant to the best of my abilities, despite whether or not I agreed with their points. And, to say the least, that's got me into some shit fast with my latest commentary on three members of the bunch of pseudo-intellectuals. Just a robot. It's my consequences. I will deal with it accordingly. We don't need more shit stirred in that comment section. Mr. Medicur. I suppose it's kind of a roundabout way of saying this, but... I kind of backed myself into a corner and I'm trying to get myself out of it. I'm only human, I'm very flawed, and I'm very aware of that. The thing is, is I just have to somehow fix my problems and ignoring the problem wasn't helping. That aforementioned Alt-CC apology. Alright, so I have zero idea if you noticed anything weird happening the past few days, but I'll fill you in. Ryan Boone and I talked with Dylan. Yeah, he actually calmed down and we talked it out. And he filled me in on things, pointed out the problems I'd caused, and informed me with issues he had regarding the commentary community that I don't inherently disagree with. Uh, I'll go ahead and get my apologies out of the way, because really, that's the big thing that I need to do, as I am definitely the one to blame for all of this. So first of all, I'd like to apologize to Dylan for A, not talking it out sooner, and B, keeping the flames kindled. To be honest, I think that was the worst part about what I did, because I at least had a reason for not talking it out sooner. I mean, yeah, that did cause a lot of this, but I can argue the reason was there. But there was no reason I should have kept the fire kindled like I did, going out of my way to call Dylan a petulant child that was flipping his shit out over nothing, when in reality he was flipping his shit due to the fact that people were attacking him, doing the one thing I do not support, which is witch hunting. I've made an entire countdown dedicated to shit videos I've released, and considering the age of Sylveon's video to continue down the path of me acknowledging my mistakes when I notice I do something legitimately bad, uh, my Mega Dupe video, 
the very video you're covering here. So me and YouTube dude went over the video that I just released and uh... Yeah, no, there was a lot of things that I overlooked that were wrong with this video. Um... I... I don't know what to say. Uh, this makes the second time that I have to make a video actually coming out like the exact same day basically saying I screwed up a lot actually um I haven't fully read all of the comments in the comment section there was a few that I, I saw that I addressed that I found were funny but uh yeah no the more that I look over this video um I could have done a lot better I really could have done a lot better the friend versus heat and drama got two follow-ups in the form of the debated addendum and doodle is cringe the latter of which acknowledges my mistakes in a ton of aspects of my life, specifically during the DeviantArt and YouTube portions. Not to mention, confessions and apology. You should know about those videos by this point, Sylveon. But no, I've never admitted to when I was wrong or apologized for anything I did wrong, ever. Get real. So no, I'm not trying to say that Jar is any better because he's just as bad. But for now, I want to talk about Doodle Tones because right now, Doodle Tones is really get on, got on my fucking last nerve. And I'm going to talk about this. I know I'm a little late on this, but hear me out. So about a few, uh, two weeks ago, Doodle Tones made a response to Manga Kamen and a few people on a stream. Basically with uh, so much salt and vitriol, basically bitching about how she, she doesn't want to take any precious criticism. Oh no! <laughs> and this is where this video is gonna go downhill fast yeah that still tastes like poison all right so now i know where this video stemmed from and by golly is it retarded you know i had said that anyone who did a response to that video would inherently miss the point of it all but i never thought i'd eat this on the nose Oh, no. No, 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 no. I wasn't trying to deflect criticism. I was trying to address it. Which, by the way, was a criticism they had towards me. They wanted me to go start dressing critique more and start arguing it more often. And what did I do in that video? Exactly that. Like the video or not, that's what I did. And the secret purpose behind it all was to show just how bad of a position I was in during that time. Because people were accusing me of ignoring all criticism because I feared it or some shit like that. Thanks, Boonslayer, for that one. But I knew the minute I did, someone was going to jump on my case because, fuck, everyone was doing that. I couldn't do anything because I knew I was damned if I did, but I also knew I was damned if I didn't because, who knows, criticism. The only way people could have actually proved me wrong would have been to not do a response to that video, and I gotta thank Pretty Kitty Jorm, Ephraim, and now Mega Duke for showing me just how correct I was. Thanks, guys! After that, got another Jenny Cooper. Let's have you get on with that Udera's wins then. Very good, very good. SHUT YOUR FUCKING MOUTH! No problem, Charlie. SHUT THE FUCK UP, YOU CUNT! Well, I'm glad I didn't actually wind up needing that retrospective deep dive into Dylan's atrociously garbage stream hosted by Monka Common after all. Ugh. Like, this is easily one of my least favorite parts of my video, but like... I had somewhat a point in what I was saying in retrospect. A lot of that stream was setting me up into a situation where I couldn't exist without being jumped on, thinly veiled under a guise of criticisms, and rewatching it with the intent of making a point here. Again, while I will say I was super over-emotional in self-destructing Mudhole and definitely hyperbolized the problems it had, if I may get this off my chest a bit, just for some closure because I don't think I'll ever get another chance to actually talk about this, Karami makes a statement along the lines of Doodle's paranoia is the biggest problem she has. The type of person that's, that's the exact the problem, I think, is it, like regardless that's of what you want to boil it down to, that that is probably one of the biggest problems associated with Doodle Tones uh, is essentially that paranoia. First of all, what predated this stream was me in a full-blown panic and removing everyone from my friends list because someone who I thought was a close friend at the time fucking gave ammunition to bad faith actors. Don't be so paranoid. Simply put, don't do shit like this. For people who say they still consider me a friend, deciding to publicly put me on blast during a time you guys know I cannot defend myself because I was asleep, you addressed this early in the stream. Gee, for people who want me to defend myself as much as you want me to, you guys sure do a piss poor job at showing it. Also, the whole reason I was paranoid to begin with was because Ski Hound leaked shit from the pillow fort to the alt cc chat because boonslayer and i were discussing dark Side's video which i know he doesn't stand behind anymore so i ain't holding it over his head i'm better than that 
I'm simply stating that that was the reason why I became paranoid to begin with, and it's not like I haven't been trying to mend my platonic relationships with people whose bridges I had incinerated. I certainly have been. Slowly, but surely. And yes, the Alt-CC was most certainly full of bad faith actors. If their attitudes towards me publicly weren't enough of an indicator, you can hear it from the horse's mouth himself. Especially after you started going, ha ha, I trolled CC, you guys got trolled. At that point I was just like, yeah, no, at this point I'm done with your shitty attitude. Yeah, I was getting full of myself, and that that's something that legit happened, because what 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 normally I do is I calm down. But Dark Scythe and them kept telling me, go for it, go with it, go, go, fucking get them, rip their throats out. They encouraged, that sounds to me like bad influences. They, they encouraged me to stay mad and to fucking attack people. That's bad influence right there. Even if they're cool people, I don't know. I'm not going to make assumptions about them as a character, but that sounds like bad influence. I, I, I don't want that shit getting out, because it's, it's really going to make me sound like a fucking tool. Because it was my actions, but I, I, I was kind of being told to stay mad at the CC. Because they were like, they fucking, they fucking hurt you. They fucking betrayed you. Why, why should you give a shit? And and I'll I'll say this now, and I'm I'm being serious. I swear to God that I'm being serious here. They tried to get me to step out of my boundaries, and I didn't step out of all my boundaries. Like when when we were in calls, they tried to get me to stop using your pronouns and shit. And I said I have respect for her. I I don't want to fucking do that. I. I was making them walk a line of honesty. I, I wasn't allowing them to lie about people. I wasn't allowing them to threaten to dox people. I said, no, that's fucking stupid. And trust me, somebody in the group not saying who kept wanting to dox you. I don't think you need to say because I think I already know who it is. It, it's not who you think it is. <laughs> So it's it's not the DiCaprio? person you. No, it's not the person you know. It's fucking Mr. Inferno. Oh, okay. And I don't know why they banded together to begin with, but they were going to be way edgier, and it was going to be way taken less seriously. The original yeah, name no, is complete. <laughs> I I would I would tell the old CC this though. Uh, but, uh, like I tell them this myself. You don't need like. I wish them luck on whatever it is they're doing, but they don't need to do it this way. There is another way that they can do it that's so much easier. I'm telling you, they have an overall intendant that's already playing out. I want to help the CC. I want to improve the CC. That's not their motives. Like I said before, what? I, I, I'm, I'm the one who's trying to help. People are making me out to be the bad guy. I'm the one trying to help you guys. That's not their motive. What is their motive then? Their motive is to poke at the CC till it falls apart. Then become the CC. Oh, they just want to troll it. Okay. No! They want it to die. They want to recreate the 2012 incident and take over the CC. And I know that the old CC wouldn't last if we became the new CC. I wanted to set up strict rules and make our own little community to where we were by ourselves. But Borg and other people want to be the new CC. They want to be the fifth generation. That doesn't make they, any sense. They just opened a new policy like two days ago to where anybody can join. I said, if anybody can join, what's the fucking point? We were supposed to be people that were purposely outcasted and were, were trying to break the systems of regular thinking. If we allow anybody to join, how can we be sure that, that person isn't a follower? I kind of promised myself I wouldn't use this conversation as evidence, but like, it's been years now. I don't think any of the lead players in the alt drama even care anymore, and it's kind of relevant to better understanding where I'm coming from here, because, yeah, like, 
Hearing the attitude that the alt took with the SCC, and specifically with me, you can definitely see why I would be as paranoid as hell to have shit from a private chat leaked directly to these people. This don't be paranoid forehead approach is very victim blamey if I can put it nicely. That also might have better explained why I didn't actually speak out against the alt all that frequently, in hindsight. Because I did kind of know what their intentions early on were. It's almost as if. So, when Dylan brings up this statement later in a live stream, He actually yeah. does have some counter-arguments for some of the alt CC's claims. But I want was, to hear them! I want he, to hear them, he but she's bring too them afraid to talk about them. Them. It's really kind of funny that things didn't click with Dylan on a personal level. Like, Griffin Bar was done in March. Our conversation was done in January. I could give Dylan the benefit of doubt that he might have forgotten specifics, because that would be fair. You know, I wouldn't have much to bring up if he did. It happens. That said, this is still something that does kind of bug me a bit in retrospect. Like, we are looking for other people other than Doodle. Like, we're not just specifically targeting if Doodle. Other, if other people would present a conversation, we would like to talk. But no one else is talking out but Doodle. No one else is showing the things we want to argue against besides Doodle. So I'd apparently never mentioned my problems with the alt, as alluded to in Dylan's statement that he would have loved to hear the problems that I had with the alt. However, because I spoke out against the alt a lot, that's what led to the alt covering me a lot. Like, okay, does this make sense to anyone else? Like, I guess one could argue, oh, Dylan just means you spoke out against them without bringing up anything valid. But like, combine that with this? No offense to her, my least favorite commentaries of hers are always the ones where she's defending herself. In any situation. They're so horrible. She never disproves the person, she just... She just dances around the point the whole fucking time. And it just bugs me. Then it sounds like you didn't really want me to actually talk about the alts or talk about my problems. I don't know, it just sounds to me like I was put in a similar situation to what Dylan was apparently dealing with literally months prior. Yeah, he, he a... said he looked he said he looked through Ryan's Twitter and he's glad we were able to work things out. Then he saw that I'm not just attacking people, that if people talk to me about it and try to work things out, I'm willing to talk about it. No one was talking to me. They, they come to my fucking feed asking for a debate. They come to my feed asking to argue. And then they get all bitter when I fucking argue. It's like, why would you come to my feed asking for an argument when you don't want to fucking argue and you're going to say I'm overreacting for answering your fucking comment? Do you want me not to answer your comment? Or your tweet, whatever. It got to the point to where I felt like I couldn't do anything. If I, if I ignored them, I get called out for ignoring criticism. If I comment, I get called out for fucking responding to criticism. Both of us were put into a situation where if we did address critique, we were going to be labeled as people who couldn't take criticism. And good god, nothing has changed on that front. But if we didn't acknowledge the critique, then it was going to be labeled as unwilling to hear criticism. And as Dylan went through it first and talked to me about this, Hearing that I didn't actually know anything about it and would have been willing to step in to help, going as far as to make the alt CC apology to begin with, you think maybe there would have been a little bit of empathy from Mr. Thomas at the time, but nah man, I guess Doodle Tones was the real problem. Again, this was years ago at this point. I don't think Dylan is the same way that he was back then. Or at least I'd be willing to believe as such if someone told me, much unlike he would return to me. So like, don't harass the guy. Actually, don't harass anyone who is involved in this situation. It's not even important to the discussion anymore, it seems, as Sylveon would rather I just shut up when making a point instead of actually debunking the point, or otherwise pointing out flawed logic I showed within this interjection. So, at this point, this tangent was for me, and me alone, because looking back at this evidence I have, good god, it just pissed me off all over again, and I just wanted to get it off my chest before it ate me up inside. We'll get back to the discussion at hand. Oh no, because how dare they give you some criticism? And, and she tried to paint them as if they were attacking her, as if they were making a goddamn smear campaign against her. Okay, well, that's missing the point. Prove me wrong then. Show some evidence that it wasn't. It was two hours worth of them not only bashing me as a content creator, but as a person. And it worked. 
people kind of just shrugged it off and said, Yeah, all this stuff is correct, and the fact that this live stream exists isn't a problem on its own. They wanted me to defend myself during the time where I couldn't. Dylan wanted me to stop doing videos addressing me because I always avoid the arguments. Fuck it, I already did a whole video demonstrating where I got the idea that this was a spear campaign, so it's redundant to repeat the whole- Dude, go fuck yourself. Once again, this is not an argument. I promise there will be a payoff to this portion. No, it's clearly not the goddamn case. Uh, you think, you're, you're trying to, and then she, she, I shit you not, she labeled freaking Manga Cabin, of all people, who, who all he did was just host a goddamn stream as a sociopath. She labeled him, and you think I'm bullshitting? Uh, like, I wish I was bullshitting here, but here, play the clip. I'll even give you the benefit of the doubt after all of this is said and done. You know, something you guys certainly seem to have to do. Considering there wasn't actually any monitor to begin with, even though there were probably not one but two who were supposed to be. You're not friends. Friends wouldn't do this to one another. Friends wouldn't put a person in such a helpless situation where they can't get out and only put them in a position where they know one of them will get jumped in a dark alleyway. You are emotions away from being sociopaths, with a lot of you. Again, not all of you. Just the main people who set this whole shit up except you two dude, who told me in a call that you guys were going to discuss Rankin's comments, so comments just decided to pull up the stream to talk about it all. Ooh, fun! Taking that out of context just because I use the term sociopath, are we? You know, Megadoo, you state that your anger in this video was for show, but this point proves it wasn't. Let me show you where the sociopath thing came from, alright? Watch this. It's hard for me to look at this shameful display of a stream where you guys started it early with, let's talk about the ups and downs of doodle tones, as if you guys were actually going to have a fucking discussion about me, only to go on and thrash on about me. Not just as a content creator, but overall as a person and not see malice within it. You guys then end the fuckfest by saying that you guys would still be cool with me, and I for one am hurt. I'm hurt that you guys think I'm honestly that stupid to sit there and be a little manipulated dits following you guys like a lost puppy after you spent all this time trying to fucking psychoanalyze me like you actually knew me. Also, you know how you get onto the CC's case for the two Kukui fallacy? I would love to see how you get out of this one, hypocrite. You got angry. You're calling my video hate and vitriol, which I believe you're going to do after my interjection here, just because I called out Manga Common for hosting the cavalcade of mudslinging that whole thing came off to be. Now I'm beginning to wonder if you at all cared about my side or if you just saw a manga comment and <gasps> had a fanboy reaction about it. This video is a mess. I have to defend a video I knew even going in was not going to be good, but you know, whatever. You make this fun. Please get help. Another non-point. We are at 9 now. And also, I'm gonna leave the rest of the video in the description because this video honestly annoyed the shit out of me. And also, she also in the video, she also just could not take any fucking criticism, right? Your line delivery seems like you just got out of bed. Now this, I can kind of give them. I mean, I would like to go back to being more laid back, but sure, okay, recent comms have sounded like I just got out of bed, and in all honesty, it's probably because I have. So fair. Try again. Try again. Ten. This time it's just another instance of Sylveon using my catchphrase against me as some sort of gotcha Tourette's. She was bitching and moaning about Manga and um the other guys basically quote unquote attacking her when all they did was just give fucking criticism. They even said in the stream what well, they they were n neutral to you doodle tones. They were neutral. In fact, some of them were actually on your side way more than Jar was. So are you angry that I don't still have a drama with just a robot? You kind of just arbitrarily bring up Jar here. I'm trying to see a connection. Yo, Doodle, you're stupid and idiot dummy. And stupid furthermore, head. I know I, I, I am okay. upset and Are you? So you got mad at them because they made fun of you. God, that's pretty fucking pathetic. Eleven. Also, I want to readdress Megadoop's point here because I need something to do during this allotted time period of the most non-commentary to ever exist. Oh, they were neutral to you. Some were even on your side. I feel like Megadoop missed the several iterations of Dylan saying that there were too many people in the stream that were against me, and how the stream kept requesting we get someone who was willing to defend me in there. Which, by the way, no one was actually willing to do during that stream. Even those who said they were neutral were willing to throw me under the bus at several points when a counter-argument was brought up. YouTube Dude was like the closest to actually defending me, but that's because he himself was put into a hot seat for his final thoughts taking shots at Renegade Master. I'm just saying, in hindsight, it truly felt like I was the only one not involved in that stream that actually bothered to watch that stream. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm looking back on it in hindsight and the new biases I have for or against certain individuals that took part could maybe be skewing my thoughts on how this whole situation went down, but like, let's not lie about our history, shall we? You're trying to say that I took Jar's video a lot better than I did the live stream? Because if that's the case, 
Jar's criticism wasn't totally contradictory and didn't put me in a damned if I do, damned if I don't situation. No they didn't, they just made fun of you. You have less than zero idea what the discussion even is. I went back and rewatched that live stream for context to this video, and if what you truly think was that they were merely roasting me, then not only do you fail to understand the point of that live stream, but you didn't even listen to a fraction of a fraction of that stream. Hell, Megadoop says that all the stream was doing was giving me critique, so you're not even listening to the person you have a bias in favor of. Jar knew exactly what he was doing, proving me wrong, showing that I was wrong. He didn't push out this arbitrary, oh doodle, you can choose to ignore this stream if she wants. After, you know, putting out there that I'm afraid of criticism and can't take any of it. Which you proved here. How? Care to elaborate? Actually, wait, is this contradictory to your last point? If all Dylan and friends were doing was, quote unquote, making fun of me, then how am I showing that I was unable to take their criticism? If it's because I'm covering someone critiquing me, then I have some bad news for you in your two videos defending yourself. Jar didn't do that. Manga and the gang did. No. I'm just gonna chop this up to 12, because if you're just gonna give me a one-word interjection that's vague as fuck, then it might as well be a non-point. I hate this group mentality, because quite frankly, you guys can see I'm a little bit sweating here because of the anger. Quite frankly here, here's the thing. It isn't, like, I don't care. Alt-CC, Neo-CC, they're both fucking cancer. This drama was pointless. It should have never goddamn happened. I don't care who fucking started it, okay? What I do care about is that this shit just ends. <laughs> These two It was at this point I'd realize I'd actually died midway through watching this and this was just what my brain was showing me in my last moments I mean it's the only way I can explain whatever the actual hell is going on. 13. But in all seriousness though, what I'm gonna say is this, fucking focus on yourself, maybe help a little bit of other people out, I don't care. Focus on yourself, maybe help others. God this piss poor wording makes it seem like you want people to do just self commentaries and nothing more. That's kind of what I'm doing since I'm a clone of you. 14. <laughs> Alright, you know what, let's do it. Look guys, it's the angel of death. You're wrong. Where he's just going to say the intro is a problem and not explain how or why it's a problem and how to fix it. You're wrong. I really enjoy when an issue from a previous commentary happens in the exact same way with the exact same issue backing it. You're wrong. And it's not like the priest's intro is a good intro. I think Robodoodle has caught a virus because that sounds nothing like her. You're wrong. <laughs> I totally forgot about this bit, and being recontextualized into a video that unironically does the exact same style of commentating makes this joke so much better. Good god. And since that's the end of this massive fucking train wreck, we're done here. And I don't actually have much of final thoughts other than if you really want the alt CC versus neo CC drama to die, stop talking about it. Stop treating it like it's still a thing. Eventually people will leave it be and it won't be a thing anymore. This doesn't just go to you, Mega. This goes for everyone who believes this drama is still going on. This goes for the Direct Messenger, Ray Rules, Brainy Later, and anyone else who's still talking about this. As for me, I'm going back to ignoring the fact that it even happened. Have a good day. You're wrong. And 16. And thankfully, that's the last point of this particular video. Afterwards, we get another derivative skit from the likes of Sylveon and Sylveon, where he kind of cements that this bit was inspired by Sonic Adventure. It's not really all that relevant, but I don't know what you would expect. To wrap up this chapter, though, I would like to point out that the title of this video is Doodle Tones Does Not Understand Criticism. But out of the 25 interjections Sylveon has in this video, only four of Sylveon's interjections are actual points of attempted debate. 16 were complete non-points, and like the last five were pointed at Megadoop to metaphorically speaking, suck his dick. Out of the four attempted points, we had two directed at the humorous objective defense, both of which missed the point of the conversation, and the latter two were about the intent of the manga common livestream to which Sylveon showed an incompetent lack of research or just general thought about. Even if he was right though, Sylveon does not follow this video up with final thoughts like he does the other videos. He segues into his outro skit, thus leaving these four debating points to try to speak on their own. Critique is an evaluation or detailed analysis of discourse, not mere pot shots and vitriol. No use will only get you so far without elaboration, so who truly doesn't understand critique here? On that note, I suppose it's time to remind people that critique can be disagreed with if a person doesn't feel like it coincides with their vision. 
For instance, I will continue to disagree with critiques centered around my voice changer, because I use this voice changer for me. It's comfortable for me to use. I'm not super fond of using my real voice unless it's important to do so, and trust me, these videos are not important enough. Or at least I don't think they are. Maybe some of y'all will disagree. I don't know you or your life. But in any case, just because a person gives critique doesn't mean it's infallible or must be agreed upon all aspects of a person's life. Sylveon's level of critique is leave the internet or some level of plagiarism from a much better content creator. Thus, his content firmly resides at the halfway point of the spectrum. Not funny enough to be enjoyed as jolly old entertainment, not insightful or organized enough to be seen as a critical piece in almost any drama. Luke doesn't really have a personality, he's just a guy. I don't know his personality at all beyond the guy that covers video topics after other people have already done so and doesn't add anything new. In all honesty, his videos are just boring. He plays low-level music in the background sometimes, but it doesn't really add to his bland delivery from his script, that is, if he even has a script to begin with. It was quite a slog going through his catalog for the sheer volume of boredom I felt. But for those of you saying, Oh, just stop. Why would you bring this up after Luke apologized in the lead of the video? You're dating something up that he doesn't want seen. And to that, I have to say that whether or not he apologized, it still happened and still caused waves in the community. If Luke has truly learned from it, he should be perfectly fine hearing criticism of it even after the fact. This is not productive at all. It's very destructive, if not flat-out reductionist. It doesn't actually help anyone to be told to stop a certain style of media they're doing if they intend to get better, because giving up on something isn't an improvement. On the contrary, if someone stops something they can improve upon, then it's actively stunting that growth because the best way to get better at something is to keep at it, but change your approach. Of course, like all things, I don't want to walk away from this giving an impression that it's clear-cut as black and white. Everything has its nuance, of course, and sometimes something can't be improved upon or is just flat out a bad idea from the get-go. And in that sense, then, yeah, cut it out. But I don't believe in telling someone to stop making videos or stop drawing or stop making music. None of that's productive, generally speaking. Call it a hot take if you want, but this is a firm belief I've been holding for a few years now. I assure you we'll come back to this in another chapter, but for now, we have three more videos to talk about from Sylveon. The LCC drama was definitely one that I didn't expect nor wanted to relive, because the whole thing was predicated on this idea that everything people said of me was true, regardless of context or connotation, and that led me to making some very rash decisions in retaliation. It was a giant source of stress for me at the time. Anyway. Going more into this journey, I hope you've been keeping in mind how Sylveon describes the Doodle Clones character, and specifically how inconsistent it is. I don't really touch on it throughout the video. I do kind of allude to it at several points, but I don't just lay it out like I probably could have. Basically, in one situation, he claims he's not me, but is merely an incomplete clone of me. In another, he'll claim that because he's a clone of me, he is me. In a later address situation, he'll claim that because he's a clone, he's explicitly not me. In another situation, he's wondered if he should still have the same fears as real life me. In this video, he's Shadow the Hedgehog, which makes me believe that a lot of this clone charade is merely because he sees it as a good harassment tool and not merely because of the reason he gives later on, which, spoiler alert, has seemingly always been I thought it was a cool idea at the time. You'll really be able to piece it all together in the end, I promise. It is quite the journey, I tell you, and it's only going to get more wild as time progresses. I would like to take a break from the drama-centric topics for a brief spell, as the last two kind of encapsulate much bigger issues with Sylveon as a person and content creator. But also because there's not really a better place to fit this video. As I said, Sylveon has quite the pesky habit of only covering my biggest of fuck-ups, and while we have seen it thus far with the Just a Robot situation and the following Alt-CC drama, there's truly only one video that he could cover that I would have felt would be impossible to screw up even. So let's take you as far back into the past as I reasonably can with a specimen of Sylveon's caliber, the very first of many disasters. Now let me start this video by thanking Logan Vernier for requesting this commentary, and also saying to those on Twitter who say that I'm an awful commentator, trust me, I know. Believe me, you get worse. But that said, I enjoy making commentaries, so I'll continue doing so. Anyway, I was requested to do a commentary on a Master TP video, someone who I've had no prior knowledge of, and honestly I didn't care enough to do research because the video requested of me is 41 minutes long. 
And there's no chance in hell I'm covering it all anyway. I'll probably watch more of these guys' commentaries later when I'm not set up for trying to be the defendant of Chaos Key 4013, or just be an asshole who sits and pokes at Master TP10, Zara Rick, and Gale Force 3192 and start a fire that I have no business starting. Can you see into the future? <laughs> you know, sometimes. Tomb Critic inspired you to make emotions? What were you like before? Actually, did he inspire you, or did he reprogram you to feel? Hey, Melantart, why would we care about the location of where your videos take place, or who inspired you to transcend the levels beyond robothood? We don't. You should have started with this whole, as a gaming pony, I like video games spiel instead of sucking this Toon Critic's proverbial cock. I sometimes like to jokingly call myself the Simpsons of commentaries, but that's about as relevant to this discussion as you bringing up both confessions and apology twice in a row to statements made in 2016 that are already preemptively preparing for possible predicaments to begin with. No, 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 Don't you ever touch Lana again! Wait, what did you just shoot? Chaos Key? Yourself? The footage? Lana? Ryan? Oh, my Chipotle! That's a good question, actually. You bring no excuses to random gunshot noise. It just comes off as, well, pointless. I think they were implying that he tried to shoot the intro but shot Ryan instead. Would I count retrospective dead naming as transphobia? Yeah, I think I will, because Ray was and is pretty public about being trans, and even if Sylveon wants to claim that they couldn't have known because Rachel left the SCC well before they showed up, friendly reminder that I mentioned her coming out as trans in Confessions. You know, that very same video that Sylveon alludes to as why I should be deplatformed. I've heard both Mills Kohai and I'm fairly certain Avi due to my own deep-seated, I guess, bigotry and skepticism. Like, there's really no other words to describe it. I feel like a bigot. How could I not be? It's not like I like being this way, but if you allow me to explain. Leading up to joining the CC, I'd met a lot of people in my life who randomly came out as trans falsely to get closer to me because they would feel like I'd relate more to them that way, and I definitely cut them out of my life for it. This developed another bad habit that I have now, though, where I have to find any rationale to tell myself that people who are close to me only came out because of me so I don't get hurt again. And in short, this is a habit that I hate myself the most for and desperately want to break but I've yet to be successful in. And that especially sucks now that I'm in a community with a surreally high trans population. And if you remember my aforementioned Umbris and Discount stream fiasco, you'd probably know that I'm especially worried when kids come out publicly because I don't want them to potentially ruin their life. Though that's another side of double standards. I came out publicly at 15. GG. However, neither of the individuals I'm talking about are kids, so there's no morally based excuse that I have for this, despite how scummy it is regardless. It's just me putting patterns onto people because I've been so hurt so many times before and it just isn't right. This isn't okay for me to do and while I can sit here and apologize all day for it, it's not gonna at all matter to me because this is the last thing someone who is trans should get into the habit of doing. So unless Sylveon didn't even watch Confessions, which would raise a hell of a lot of problems with Sylveon's crusade with me on a fundamental level, they should have known. So yeah, that's on them. Not sorry, keep this in mind for later as I will have something to say when it gets to be important. Stop using my avatars! Why did you do this to me? Wait, how is Ryan still alive after that? Um, however, the avatar of which I'm using in this commentary is my character on which I spent hours drawing different reactions to. So if wanted to so if I really wanted to complain about someone using my avatar, it would have to be this exact one. Why do people hate clones so much? What did we do? It's not our fault we were created. It's our creator's fault. Yet we get all the blame. Hashtag clone lives matter. Ah, so now we're just doubling down on this then. Sylveon, I don't even care if you try to play a character here. Because not only is this the source for the biggest thing that I and others have criticized you for, that you... Still refuse to change, by the way, being your constant theft and impersonation. But this also doesn't do much more than deflect that critique onto a character to avoid the responsibility of you creating said copycat. I mean, technically this wasn't even pointed at you, and in the confines of the video on TP, that point is trash because it takes such an obvious joke seriously. But the fact that this garbage point could be attributed to the situation and be valid is fucking 
telling, my man. Now, I know Sean's made a new intro since making this countdown, but we want to criticize what he changed for this Halloween edition of his old intro, just in case he tries to do- Wow, that's a bad microphone. I know that my text-to-speech voice is not the most pleasant thing to listen to, but at the very least it's something new. Oh, we're back to the gist of robot plagiarism, are we? I know that my robot voice is not the most pleasant thing to listen to, but at the very least it's something new. The dumbest part about this instance of plagiarism is that it's not even true. There were, and still are, plenty of content creators that use text-to-speech software in and out of commentaries. Like, bro, Pink Robot exists. But unless you have legitimate reason to believe they are trolls, or have proof that the video was done more in jest over serious discussion, then there becomes more of a reason to believe they are not merely doing their actions for the purposes of getting a rise out of people. So does Auto Magic Critic. If you've watched any reviewer, rander or commentator on YouTube, one thing to notice is that they will performatively get really angry depending on how bad the thing they are ranting or commentating on is. It's the old angry video game nerd approach, it is to give an impression on how bad the video is to entertain the audience. Now that said, yeah, Jar probably wasn't the first commentator to use a robot voice either, but I certainly wouldn't be able to pin down any other instance of one. With text-to-speech, I can think of Rat Barrage in their one commentary. Okay, I have a few things about this intro that I wanna say. First of all, the music jumps near the start for seemingly no reason. Artemy Musha has a character that uses text-to-speech. Wait, Bastard Gummy, is that you? Yes. Anyone who has seen the original video knows exactly how boring Ultrasonic fans presentation gets. Well, I guess everyone knows my current policy on videos that rely on text to convey information. Crystal Cult existed at one point, I think. To clarify, fat acceptance is not about promoting an unhealthy lifestyle. Obviously, if you are at risk of heart disease or in bad shape, it is imperative you take the necessary steps to maintain good health. Starmic, I believe, is still a commentator. Relic, in his own words, states just a couple of double battles which puts his argument in an awkward position where one could easily counter it with examples that debunk that notion. Like, this wouldn't have been correct at really any point to be honest with you. If you really wanted to dig into the deep recesses of SCC history, I'm sure you could also find a plethora of alt accounts and troll channels that all use text-to-speech to at least some extent. So your own plagiarized defense just flat out doesn't work in your favor. Having a bad microphone is nothing special. I suggest you get yourself a U37 microphone. You can get one for about 70 bucks. So, while I've already addressed the fact that Sylveon doesn't understand time as a concept, I kinda wanna cement why that's important a bit more. Because here, he's covering a video from 2016, giving outdated critique to someone who's already well past the point of fixing the microphone quality issue. In fact, TP fixed that very issue two months after this video was made, in their very next commentary. I seem to have an addiction to bad Pokemon countdowns, and I think I'll need to see a therapist someday. Also, happy April Fool's Day! The punchline is that my avatar's from Digimon. Like, you want him to fix an issue that's already been fixed. With me, you brush off time because of a preceding bias and disbelief that I have all changed in any discernible way. But this critique is literally outdated by TP's very next video, you've become redundant. Also, also, this criticism fucking sucks. You're telling TP to get a better microphone because having a bad microphone is nothing new, but like, that wouldn't be the defense nor reason as to why someone would have a bad microphone. Plus, since you acknowledge your text-to-speech software as a potential problem, but excuse it because it is apparently, quote-unquote, something new, then my previous interjection that shows just how it's not would then put your own criticism back onto you. So, let's see what you do with that point. Do this again. First off, the audio is fucking shit. Says the person who sounds like he's recording in his bathroom. I would point out how this call to hypocrisy is coming from the person who is using the text-to-speech software, but I don't particularly feel like starting a commentary chain here. What? Could you not find a better version of this on YouTube? Or even rip it yourself? All it is is a random static transition clip you found that you inserted. Unedited, mind you! Enter the intro, followed by bits and pieces from the opening of Pokemon Crystal. This is lazy. One. I don't see how that's a problem too. Also this is funny coming from you. Since all your stills are just PNGs, you found on Google image results. And you didn't even bother to remove the background for any of them. So I don't think you have the right to complain. 
about someone being lazy here, mister. Now, this on the other hand, I will call out, because you did even less work just going onto my toy house and ripping your assets from there. Since I know you don't like the Tuka Queen fallacy being called out, allow me to then say that it becomes very vital that you yourself aren't a hypocrite, because if you think hypocrisy makes another person's argument incorrect, such as what you're showing here, then we can completely disregard all of your points because of the hypocrisy of your presentation possibly forever. Since you like holding people's noses to the grill for their mistakes, as long as you have that presentation, congrats, you played yourself. You could have at least done something, like play the static clip for a second and then cut it at the beginning in order to have some form of glitchiness. Next- Are you gonna murder him if he doesn't? Uh, obviously not. This is a production critique. I mean, yes, it's harsh in tone, but first and foremost, since when did you care about that, especially given a later point in this very video? But, secondly, all Sarah was trying to do here is get across how Chaos Key could better his production. Like, this isn't that deep. This is the fact that you're using unknown as something spooky, though I'm gonna let Gale cover this. Oh no, is unknown spooky? I don't think it was even supposed to be scary. And your basis for this? Never explained. He literally just disregards the possibility that it was supposed to be spooky because... Why not, I guess? It's easier than coming up with a cohesive argument, I suppose. What one finds spooky or unnerving may not spook or creep out another. I myself find the movie It to be laughably bad. However, those with colrophobia may think otherwise. I myself have an irrational fear of sitting under chandeliers, but my brother thinks it's absolutely hilarious. How has this not become an internet meme? Because I'm a fucking nobody online and this actually isn't all that memeable. Like, haha, this person has a fear of the possibility that something could crush them. We should laugh at them, I guess. It's not particularly much to laugh at, is it? It's subjective. And while sure, when one makes a subjective video, they can have a conversation started on maybe some better things that could have been pointed out or maybe better reasons for those entries, but in the end, it is subjective. And if he finds unknowns to be spooky, that's his prerogative. Just because something is subjective doesn't mean you can't criticize it. You can't just hand wave away criticism with but it's subjective. Wasn't this literally recycled from the last video? And it's just so stupid, like these arguments, and this, that's not just one, there's another argument I cannot stand. Humor does n humor is subjective, therefore you cannot criticize the joke. See, here's the thing about this one. With humor being as subjective as it is, it really is hard to criticize the joke. I grant you it's not impossible, but if you're gonna just sit there and say the joke isn't funny and expect that to be a critique, then I got bad news for you. You're as dumb as a brick. Um. No, if a joke is bad then you should point it out. You can't just hand wave away criticism with, but is subjective. Yeah, this is literally just the same argument, but somehow it's worse here because no, you can't critique what one finds scary, that's fucking stupid. Like bro, what criticisms would you bring up for someone with arachnophobia? Just don't be afraid of spiders forehead? If you answer yes to that, then you clearly have no idea how anything works. Wait, Mr. Demonic Entity, sir, I'll fix that for you. Bro, I haven't really mentioned this yet because I figured it'd be obvious, but like, I'm not the only one who's off put by Sylveon's obsession with me, am I? Who sleeps like that? People who have fallen asleep in their chairs? Like... I know I've fallen asleep like that before. What happened? You must have met my friend Susie. She does this stuff to people all the time. That dose awful editing? No. Susie, well, um, did a thing with you while you were sleeping. Uh, I'll go things that are fucking yikes for 300, Alex. So I alluded to this early ish on, but that character that Sylveon puts on screen there? Yeah. That is my self-depiction. That is what I use to represent myself in drawings and videos. It's supposed to be based on how I look IRL, if albeit a little fantasized and gender bent. But it's still, regardless, supposed to be me. Sylveon has taken this persona of mine and has tried rewriting the very fabric of the character to be a sex-obsessed weirdo that they initially wanted to rewrite as a sex offender. When called out on this behavior, their main line of defense is that my persona isn't actually me, ignoring the part where I say that the character is supposed to represent me. So here, he's effectively insinuating that I rate Chaos Key, I think. 
Sylveon does kind of keep it vague, but like it is heavily implied and it's very gross. Now, to prematurely address some other potential counter-arguments from Sylveon's end, because I know he would bring up Jar's video about the topic of sexualizing people's characters and shit, because Sylveon's done it before to justify sexualizing a lot of my characters. However, to shut that shit down early, you obviously haven't watched Jar's video, because nowhere does he say that it's okay to draw porn of people's OCs if they don't want it. But ultimately, what he does say is that it'll happen anyway, but that doesn't make it correct. Now, to be fair, her avatar is quite attractive, and so is Wolfie Chews. But should we really be drawing porn of people if they don't want us to draw porn of them? Well, I guess not. I mean, we already have enough porn as there is, and I myself don't draw porn, so it's not gonna hurt my business in any way. He also brings up the idea of getting permission to do things like that within his video, albeit he concerningly disregards that sentiment because he wouldn't walk up to a minor to draw porn of a minor's OC. I guess we could ask people for permission to draw porn, but I'm not going to, uh, go up to the 13-year-old who made Sky and say, Yo, 13-year-old, what up? Mind if I draw porn of your character? I mean, after all, she's of age. Like, Jar, buddy, pal, my home slice, my amigo. I don't think you meant it that way. But what the fuck? In any case, Sylveon, Jar's video isn't really a good counter-retort, as he says it's not an okay thing to do. And Carmen Ryder's video, another one I know you like to follow the preachings of with its it's just fiction sentiment, has its own brand of horrid teachings to it, as Carmen kinda just has this apathetic attitude towards drawing boundaries just at all. Number two. It's inevitable. There is a reason Rule 34 exists. It's inevitable. Trying to stop it will only result in people making you look like an ass, and others making porn out of spite. Which, when applied to other situations, is kind of dangerous, actually. Like, people will manipulate others. I mean, that's inevitable. People will groom children. That's inevitable. Rape. That's also inevitable. I just don't understand what this is exactly trying to do. Now, no, maybe drawing porn of OCs isn't as severe as those other three examples I give, but it's the sentiment of disallowing others to draw those boundaries in the first place that really grosses me out. Like, let people have boundaries. All we're asking is that we have boundaries and that you respect them, you know? Like, this conversation isn't that deep. I don't know why it was such a big topic this year. Also, as a bit of a side note, Carmen's video also has this weird contradiction involving deep fakes. People would often use the argument for Jaden and Wolfie of, they're based on real people. And to that I say, the keyword being based on. It's not of the actual people. Pretty sure doing that would be impossible without deep faking them. Which is something I am against. Like, if you're okay with fictional representations of people being looted because they're fiction, why do you draw the lines at deepfakes? Because that's also fictional by all accounts. Like, you're not forcing real people to be fucked, you're just simulating a situation where they do. And further on that note, drawing a real person being looted should also not be off the table for you, which means Shadman's depiction of Lieutenant Corbett should be something that's a-okay. Mind you, full disclaimer, I personally don't believe any of the above is okay, I'm just pointing out a weird bit of logic in Carmen's video that wasn't particularly all that well thought out either. So, back to Sylveon, you're gonna have to come up with your own counter-arguments to this one, Jack. In any case, to imply rape like that between two real people, or even just Chaos Key on his own like that, is just kind of... fucking yikes. Wow, he even bores himself. That's impressive since even Meta probably laughs at his own jokes. You should probably start watching back your own videos, mate. <laughs> How is it that Sylveon's interjection tries less than my text overlay here does? What the? Excuse me, Mr. Flying Phone Sir Chaos Key is in the opposite direction. We can add user interfaces to things Sylveon doesn't understand. Complete a top 5 Halloween countdown about something dark within a given time. Failure to complete the list shall result in erasure. That's oddly Pacific. 
<laughs> I like these implications. It's now my headcanon that Sean is actually dead and these videos are nothing more than his eternal torment for being literally Hitler in a previous life, all because his parents never let him go to the Fall Out Boys concert with his golf girlfriend, which is totally different from Emo, by the way. So he ended up doing a murder-suicide on his family, but that failed since it turned out he didn't have the right dosage of weed to OD off of, so he went to jail and then played butt buddies with Big Bubba and ended up killing him due to Sean's weak pelvis. <gasps> What the fuck was any of that? I think you just described Doodle Tone's backstory. You know, considering Sylveon knows my pet name and has shown that he likes to weaponize it as much as he can, this kind of just comes off as continual transphobia and, like, I wish I could feel literally anything towards this, but considering Sylveon's history with being a massive fucking transphobe, I'm just not... More on that later. You tell me, you're the one who went on a 50 second tangent about your headcanon. The only one who would know what the fuck that was, would be you. I know you were trying to get a joke out there, but that joke was so far out there and random, it barely made any sense whatsoever. Try again, please. But I thought you couldn't criticize these jokes. Because they're subjective. Yet you're doing it here. You're such a hypocrite, try again. Once again, I'm just not at all surprised he would call hypocrisy on a temporal level. Like, never mind the fact that I didn't say you couldn't criticize jokes in the video on Megadoof, because at this point I feel like I covered my basis on that. But even if I did, my video on Master TP10 came out February of 2016, whereas my video on Megadoof came out April the next year. Now let's ignore the fact that someone can become more educated on a particular topic and will change their approach to something, because you'll do that anyway. We can also ignore how this TP video was disowned well before the Megadoop video came out, showing that I no longer stand behind the rhetoric shown in this video, because you don't care for that either. We can push both those counter-arguments to the side, because even if I stood behind the statement that you can't critique a joke, the time frame between the TP video and the Megadoop videos are reversed in this counter-argument. I wouldn't have shown the hypocrisy here. It would have been in the Megadoop video, because I wouldn't have shown the sentiment that a joke can't be criticized as of this video. In several ways, this call to hypocrisy fails. Now, that said, there is a point of hypocrisy from my video, for sure. Several people have pointed it out in the past, but I get onto the triops case for the unknown isn't spooky point, saying that what one finds scary is subjective, but fail to realize that what one finds funny is also subjective. So, to sit here and harp on Zara's joke for being shit while shutting down the Triops case for not saying unknown isn't spooky is a rather unfortunate predicament past me put myself in. But, that's not where you claim the hypocrisy is, so therefore, you're wrong. That's what I'm counting down. These are my top five dark and creepy things in Pokemon. You say that these things make the series not child-friendly, but there are plenty of things that I've done and had worse that are still considered child-friendly. What? No, he didn't. He just said that they were creepy. Not that it made it not child-friendly. Stop putting words in his mouth. Jesus Christ. Actually, Sylveon, about that. But for a series geared towards children, there is some weird, dark, and creepy stuff in this series that makes me question just how kid-friendly it really is. Chaos Key does kind of insinuate that he's questioned just how kid-friendly Pokemon is supposed to be due to the dark undertones that the series portrays right there in the intro. Now, I would question, in retrospect, if this is genuine or mere hyperbole for the sake of entertainment, as the latter is a more likely probability. But he does say that the dark and creepy things make him question just how kid-friendly this series is. That wasn't falsified. The first generation. He well, says while well, showing footage the from the Gen 3 remake. Okay, what's your point? Well, lucky for you. Late last year, we actually got Gail to better elaborate on her point here. My emoting of that line left a lot to be desired, I'll admit. But the thing is that there's plenty of difference between the two, and it's not just appearances. It was impossible for Charmander to learn Metal Claw in Gen 1, for example. Just seeing the footage can make people think about those differences. Not to mention, showing actual Gen 1 footage meant that he could have shown some subtle differences between Red and Blue and Yellow. Yellow was never adapted to Gen 3. Not to mention that Gen 1 has so many glitches that were cleaned up later. Missy <coughs> number! Glitch City! <coughs> Excuse me. Her point is that the Gen 3 remakes don't properly show what the first generation gave to its players due to the differences between versions. Albeit rather nitpicky, first of all, since when did you care about that? And 
Secondly, this is just as another instance of a production point that could have upped the production slightly. It's what introduced the world to Pokemon with its 150 monsters, memorable music, and some interesting locations. With one of the most standout locations being the one and only Lavender Town. The story of this town goes like this. Team Rocket invaded Lavender Town, kidnapped Mr. Fuji, and killed the resident Cubone's mother. Wait, 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 wait. They killed the Cubone's mother. In a kid's game. Rated E for everyone? More like rated E for explicitness. Yeah, off-screen death. Explicit. Look, I know it was a joke, but what I'm trying to say is, your joke is shit. Death isn't a common thing that is told to you in kid games. So, I was gonna look up examples of deaths in children's media, and while I easily found those examples, I personally think it's way more interesting to note that there was a study as far back as 2014 that found it was 2.5 times more likely that a character of importance was going to die in a kid's film than in a film more geared towards adults. I just thought that'd be a much more interesting approach to this point. Link in the Google Doc link below. I like these implications. It's now my headcanon that Sean is actually dead and these videos are nothing more than his eternal torment for being literally Hitler in a previous life. All because his parents never let him go to the Fall Out Boys concert with his golf girlfriend, which is totally different from Emo, by the way. So he ended up doing a murder-suicide on his family, but that failed since it turned out he didn't have the right dosage of weed to OD off of, so he went to jail and then played butt buddies with Big Bubba and ended up killing him due to Sean's weak pelvis. <gasps> What the fuck was any of that? That clip had nothing to do with anything. Actually, it was a really piss poor attempt at calling hypocrisy towards Zara calling Chaos Keys rated E for explicitness joke shit. No, it's not particularly elaborated on, nor is it valid in any way, shape, or form, but it did indeed have some relevance to the discussion. The music, at least in the original games, was a very unsettling tune. Yeah, the only reason that music was unsettling in the original games was because it was 8-bit. Does not change the fact that to him it was unsettling. Next! One, shut up doodle tones. Two, the song isn't only creepy in the Game Boy versions. As in Pokemon. Let's go Eevee. It sounds like- So again, he chooses to just tell me to shut up instead of arguing my point before going on to make a totally absurd point about a game that came out in 2018 towards a video that came out in 2016. Like, god, TP, why can't you just predict the future like the rest of us? Joking aside though, not only is this a very unfair point to make as the game didn't exist as of the Triops video, but this is also very subjective on Sylveon's end because we didn't know how anyone in this chain would have felt about this version. They could disagree on premise, and then your point becomes moot. This is why subjectivity doesn't work as an argument. In black and white, if you go to the Marvelous Bridge, there's a chance you'll encounter a mysterious ghost girl. An old woman tells of a girl who used to play with her Abra during a time before Marvelous Bridge was built. Fast forward to black to and white too, you'll come across the Strange House, which is a house known for a sad incident that is said to keep people away. The inside of this house is an absolute wreck, making you ask questions like, why is this house in ruins? What happened to the people who lived here? Why are the bookshelves downstairs talking about Dream Eater Pokemon? Must resist urge to make Hypno's lullaby reference. And for goodness sake, why are those objects moving? This is some really messed up shit. Hi, joke lifted from one of Josh Gorcher's videos. How's the weather? Many thoughts tug at you as you walk through the desolate landscape, such as, This is the fate of everything if I don't succeed. I wasn't fast enough to save all of these innocent people. Is this what nothing is like? Is this what hell is like? And my favorite one? Goodness Grace is alive! How long do I have to keep walking before something happens? Oh, hi, Ruin Paul! Those clips have nothing to do with each other. Your continual dismissal to actually make a commentary is fucking staggering. In any case, they're saying Chaos Key ripped a joke from Josh Scorcher and used the latter clip to represent which joke of Josh's they're accusing Chaos Key of pocketing. The comparison stems from the elongated setup, played in a mostly serious tone, followed by an abrupt, angry, yet benign statement regarding how long the scenario lasts for, as the tone changes for the punchline. The jokes are most certainly similar in delivery, and though in this scenario I wouldn't call it direct plagiarism, 
I can definitely see where the trio got the idea that it was heavily inspired, if not much else. Seriously, you have set up a perfect tone that actually kept me invested. Strange for a Chaos Key video. But nope! Screw audience investment! You had to shoehorn in a reference to Josh because you can't make your own jokes, and any time you try, it's nothing more than shitty puns or some shit. <laughs> I like these implications. It's now my headcanon that Sean is actually dead, and these videos are nothing more than his eternal torment for being literally Hitler in a previous life, all because his parents never let him go to the Fall Out Boys concert with his golf girlfriend, which is totally different from Emo, by the way. So he ended up doing a murder-suicide on his family, but that failed since it turned out he didn't have the right dosage of weed to OD off of, so he went to jail and then played butt buddies with Big Bubba and ended up killing him due to Sean's weak pelvis. <gasps> What the fuck was any of that? Again, that clip had nothing to do with anything. Again, it was just a piss poor attempt at hypocrisy calling. I even go on to elaborate why I played the clip this time. I am not going to keep making this point. Humor is subjective. Your ramblings of a madman wasn't anything funny either, at least in my opinion. Though much like the other videos, uh, you seem to cut in the middle of a point to make a statement that gets debunked or explained directly after your own. I am not going to keep making this point. Humor is subjective. Your ramblings of a madman wasn't anything funny either, at least in my opinion. But yet you, or at least TPM Master, found it enough to leave it in the video. Platinum. Wait, what happened? Oh no, this is bad doodle clothes. Has gone into attack mode. She is about to flip out. Any second now. Oh no, she has escaped the lab. Sugar, you go after her. Yes, sir. And Susie, you do the rest of the commentary. While I hide under the desk. Platinum's Dark Rye event. And that's all he wrote, I guess. Like... This whole interjection builds up for a giant tirade that debunks the pretty bad point that I give here where all I do is call Zarek's joke bad for like, the third time, but this time with garbage double standards. But it stops at the reactionary buildup and doesn't capitalize on an actual point. It just gives Sylveon an excuse to use my self-representation as his avatar for the remainder of this video. Again, I repeat, how is it my video tries harder? Most of your points to what should be the easiest video of mine to cover could just be boiled down to an over-glorified reaction video. Involves the player character. The player character is putting him or herself in danger to face Darkrai directly. You go to New Moon Island in your nightmare to face Darkrai. You have to defeat or capture Darkrai in order to find out the truth about it. The truth? Darkrai isn't actively malicious. What makes the whole Darkrai thing even worse is that it's implied through the though you don't will a quote after capturing or defeating Darkrai, that Darkrai doesn't even have full control over its power of sending people and Pokemon into eternal nightmares. You seem to imply that Darkrai is actively malicious in what occurred at the Strange House when the member card Darkrai event in Platinum shows that Darkrai can't even control its own power. How is that not any worse than the Strange House event in Black 2 and White 2? One Mabby Chaos Key just didn't know about that event. Too sorry, but I think a destroyed house is way more scary than a single Pokemon. You know, I'm willing to overlook the first point on premise because there is some merit to this hypothetical. I'm sure it could still be somewhat argued, but if he didn't know, then he didn't know. That said, while that might be true, the fact that you were so willing to use later evidence in this video to try and argue points from five or six years ago really puts this point on kind of unfortunate grounds. Because if you're going to, say, get on the Gale's case for ignoring games that wouldn't have been released by the time of the Triops video, why then isn't it okay for Gale to get on the Chaos Keys case for ignoring a potential entry from games that were out by their videos? Well, the correct answer is, is it's not correct either way. It's Chaos Keys list, and if he personally doesn't find the Dark Rye event all that dark or creepy, that's on him. But that's what brings me to your next point. You disregard Gale's point. Not because it's attempting to use subjectivity to debunk subjectivity, but because of what you personally feel about a subject when it's also not your list. You could wind up sharing an opinion with Chaos Key, for sure, but ultimately the only subjective stance that matters in this scenario is his, because it's his list. Countdowns in the way that these are typically done are to get across an individual opinion. 
to organize one's thoughts of a subject matter, with the entries being used to give a miniature review at most. So in trying to argue against a countdown, you definitely want to focus more on the facts behind the reasons for the entries over your own subjective viewpoint and vice versa. When defending one, it also helps not to throw in your own opinion because everyone's personal tastes after the zeroth degree doesn't fucking matter. Speaking of the strange house in and of itself, the only reason I had so much to say in response here was because I've seen the member card Darkrai Platinum event for myself. The only reason I had much to say here at all was because I was comparing the strange house event to something else. To tell the truth, I really don't have much to say solely about the strange house event. I haven't played Black 2 and White 2 in a while, but seriously, I really don't remember much about my experiences checking out the strange house when I played through Black 2 and White 2. When I don't even remember much of my own experiences going through that event, then it must not be all that creepy to me. This isn't your list now, is it? Next. Hey Doodle, I thought you said you would stop repeating yourself. No, I said that I would stop repeating the point about Zarek's joke, not that I would stop being repetitive, unfortunately. Reading these entries really make me question why these games are rated E, but Rick's Pokedex entry states that it pretends to be a guide in the dark, when it's really just absorbing the life force of those that follow it to fuel the light on its head. Considering the Celestial Tower and the previously mentioned Strange House are full of Litwick and a bunch of trainers, yeah, I don't want to think about what could happen. Lampent appears right when someone dies and takes their spirit away. They even so much as hang around hospitals for patients to die. So you're telling me the light that people see when they die is actually this lamp with arms? Man, no wonder people say not to go into the light when someone is about to die. <gasps> Lamps? No! And that's why Ryan left the Neo CC. That's one down. So many more to go. 2017 called. It wants its goal back. Joking aside, people are bound to leave at some point, and Rachel really wasn't having fun with commentaries by the time she was ready to quit. Plus, if I may be honest with myself, I know I sure as hell wasn't much help either. Or so she tells me. In any case, people come and go. This is really nothing new, and your joke continues your blatant transphobia otherwise. Anyway, the last two points don't really mean anything. They're very bare bones. Whatever. This running pattern is getting particularly tiring, but this video in particular shows a unique level of uncaring into the subject that he was covering, as Sylveon spends a lot of his time reacting more than actually debunking anything. And the irony of a Jar fan being an overglorified reaction channel is quite funny to me. To be honest. But in any case, the other unique aspect of the TP video falls in the form of Sylveon defending and doubling down on his stance of being a clone channel, which we'll get to later. For now though, I do have one more drama to relive, and it's by far my biggest one to date. Let's talk about DeviantArt, Fetishism, and Mr. Medicare. I want to come in and better expand upon the point about sexualizing people's OCs without permission. While just in general it ultimately should be up to the creators of said OCs to decide what they want to do with them, I think in particular instances it's more important to realize the purpose behind those characters. Like in the cases of an artist's Sona, the purpose of said character is to be an artist's self-depiction. These characters are supposed to be the placeholders for the artists behind them, as it were. And so drawing NSFW of the self-depictions would, in essence, be drawing NSFW of the artists behind them, essentially. Oh, but these characters are only based on real people. I hear someone in the back call out. And that's technically true, but also not. It's technically true in the sense that sometimes they're not the actual people behind it, but also that's not the point of the characters. Like, some people would rather portray themselves in other ways that differ from just plastering their own face on the screen. So they'll use these characters to basically insert themselves into situations that they draw in, you know? Even if they're fictional, like, at the end of the day, that is what the character's purpose is. There's less degrees of separation there, and I hope that makes more sense as to why I'm a bit more protective of my Sona in particular. Like, sexualizing her is like sexualizing me. And I'm asexual, I'd rather you didn't. Actually, on that note... It was a particularly hot August that year, not just from the 90 degree weather that took the Denver by storm, but also because of the flames that I had started after creating the most controversial video to ever be published on my channel. I used to watch Jim's content a lot back when he was the internet aristocrat, and was even subscribed to him by the time he was Mr. Medicare. I was used to his content making fun of weird concepts on the internet, but 
Something that day struck me as particularly off about that video. Something rather rancid. Maybe it was because he was never one to put individual nobodies on blast. His content was more particularly focused on the cats with power and those who are a real danger to others. But that's what wound up spotlighting an issue in this particular video a little bit more than most. I was heated. I was crossed. I lashed out at this man without a shred of dignity or survival skills, and promptly, I was to be this man's next meal. I had friends turn on me, friends leave me, and a new spotlight of enemies that wanted to destroy me. I was public enemy number one for a solid month, at least in my own corner of this no globe we call existence. And even to this day, my infamy precedes me whenever I meet someone new. I became paranoid, uncertain who to trust, and at this point it's in particular that marks a lot of the drunken Joe schmoes I deal with in modern day. It's been half a decade, and I still can't shake this trail of grease balls. Probably never will. But at this point, why should it matter? I know what I know, and if I'm silenced whenever I speak my truth, then... So be it. It just shows how much these people truly want answers. So yeah, if it wasn't obvious by this point, as we reach our concluding chapters, we do have one more well to dip into. If you've been a fan of mine for any length of time, you most likely know about the Mr. Metacrit commentary I did back in 2016. It's easily one of my biggest and most unnecessary blunders by a country mile, and so it's obviously right material for this garbage goblin gremlin with a grudge. Though, you probably would have guessed that by some of the previous videos we've covered today. He, he, he. You fool. I killed her while you weren't looking. And it seems that you're next so get ready diaper boy. However, had Sylveon not had a blinding hate for me, this would be the last video he'd want to cover, given his track record of being horny on main, to put it lightly. Because yes, viewer, if you are new here, this video is about fetishes. Will this be awkward? Absolutely, I would not have expected any less than talking about sexual topics with a minor involved. However, I've discussed it with Sherman, who is 16 in the room, twice, so I guess it won't be too much different here. That said, I'm looking forward to this about as much as those videos too, so, uh, fuck. Let's begin. Yo, Doodle Tones, what's up? I bet your content still suck. He says, covering a video from 2016. Like, again, I wouldn't have much hang-ups about you covering old videos if you were looking at them retrospectively instead of acting like they're modern problems with my content. But you keep making statements like this that make me think we never truly left 2016. Let me grow, I've been 19 years old for 5 years! So let me get one of the more fun questions out of the way. What is my sexuality? I consider myself to be asexual, as sex, I guess you could say, kinda disgusts me to a certain extent, or rather the idea of having it turns me away. Um, who asked? Actually, you'd be surprised. I was asked by quite a few people when I came into the CC, and even predating that, I was asked by people who weren't familiar with trans people, so... I figured, since this video was going to be covering sexual topics, I'd answer the question. However, fetishes are things that infinitely fascinate me, as I find it to be interesting to see where the weird of the world begins and how far it goes. Wow. We are only 10 seconds in, and you have shown people how disgusting you are. I want to point out how this video came out well after these two clips. Here's some material, that's the easy part. Well, what's the hard part? Me. You must have met my friend Susie. She does this stuff to people all the time. A dose awful editing? No. Susie well. Um did a thing with you while you were sleeping. I'm just saying, if I'm disgusting for merely finding fetishism fascinating, then what in the flying fuck does a rape joke pointed at a real person be called? Follow up, and I'll admit this is a little bit retroactive. You also went on to defend Lolly several times. Now, I'm not going to sit here and argue whether the concept of Lollycon teeters on the lines of pedophilia, or if it is pedophilia, because that's not important to the point that I'm trying to make here. I mean, I have my thoughts, but as I said, it's just not important. So we'll ignore that point real quick. Like, all that aside, the point that I'm trying to make here is that if you're going to call me disgusting for thinking fetishes are an interesting topic of discussion, then I'm going to tell you that I hope you have good house insurance because those stones are your fault. Pedophilia or not, Lollicon is a genre of erotica which means it can indeed be called a fetish. Like, most hentai places has that as a category. Oh, but haven't you been getting on to Sylveon's case for making points that wouldn't be valid as of the videos he's covering? And yes, I have, because points like that are unfair to the videos in question, because new information comes out and can recontextualize the situation. Now, typically, I wouldn't go on to argue retroactively against a video, and in fact, I had plans not to for this entire video. 
because pointing out the aforementioned sexualization of my self-representation and a rape joke towards a real person would have been fine on its own. However, firstly, if Sylveon wishes to continue to ignore time frames, even to a more modern degree, well after this video, then at this point it should be fair game. And secondly, but more importantly, it's not like Sylveon does a lot of argumentation in this video anyway, and you'll understand more as this video continues. By the way, I want to point out, nothing is more terrifying than trying to do research of a topic on Google only to get a warning telling you to report a cyber tip for child sexual abuse imagery. I feel like I'm on a goddamn watch list now, Jesus fucking Christ. I will say there are some I enjoy more than others, certainly that. Please go get help. You first, kid. I'm not the one out here stalking, impersonating, and harassing a D-grade YouTuber because they hurt the fifis of a child groomer. I'm just saying. Now, that said, I know fetishes are not for everyone, and some people may also be turned away or disgusted by them. Because it shouldn't be on the internet. If I may ask a question to modern Sylveon, why do you then defend Lolicon? Oh, because it's fictional. No one's getting hurt. Well, so are the likes of some of the most notoriously bashed on fetishes online, like Vor, Inflation, Transformation, and a plethora of others that I'm not going to go into because I want to be able to keep what little monetization I have left. And on occasion while browsing art from people I legit think can draw well, who happen to draw fetish art, I will occasionally find people who happen to stumble across these pictures and happen to voice their distaste in the rudest of ways. Well, what did these people expect? You shouldn't put disgusting things on the internet. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. But you went on to defend- Okay, you know what? This has been a whole minute of the exact same point. So instead of being repetitious ourselves, I'm going to play the game that Ponder Sprocket and Artemy Musha gave, where every time a point is literally the same thing as X point, I can just read something. So, uh, for me, Anytime Sylveon's point is just anti-fetish nothing and can literally be applied back to the fact he retroactively defends Lollicon, I'm just going to read off excerpts from the Strange Log because I think some of these excerpts are fucking wild and would like to share them with y'all. Spoilers, I hope you enjoy this next bit because Sylveon had a very one-track mind during this video and I want to prove a point. And honestly, that just kind of pisses me off whenever I see it. What is wrong with you? If you punish the humans for stealing a jar of battery fluid, five humans are sent to the bioreactor instead of eight. Which brings me to today's target. Mr. Medicare. some of you may know him as the pioneer of commentary, some of you know him as Jim 81 Jim or the Internet Aristocrat. Someone who helped popularize Gamergate. And most of you know him as the person that started the Doodle Diapers meme. likes to just be an overall shit poster. Here's the thing though, there's only so much you can do with wanting to roast someone before it begins to feel dirty. You just described this entire video. You cannot confide in friends you don't have. Welcome one and all to the eighth episode of Tumblr. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, this isn't Tumblrisms, this is Deviance. The first, uh, the first episode to be exact. This is Pump Me Up. And that's not a euphemism. That is not a euphemism for being excited. You may be asking yourself, as you slowly unzip your pants because you know what's coming, Jim. But I don't wear pants. Why is everyone looking at me, Susie? When did I say you could come near me? You know what? This counts. Removed happiness from the game. Why would we be looking at DeviantArt? And what could Pump Me Up possibly refer to? Well, it refers to inflation. And I'm not talking about the monetary kind. I'm talking about a very special kind of inflation that's only found in the minds of degenerate motherfuckers. Degenerate. Having lost the physical, mental, or moral qualities considered normal and desirable, showing evidence of decline. Well, if you're drawing stuff like this, that's probably true. Fixed a bug where the fabric of the space-time continuum would break, causing the solar system to stop moving. You know what this implies, Jim? You're implying these people have a declining sense of morality. You're implying these people are near immoral, which is a wonderful thing to imply when you're referring to people who express a fetish in a safe way. In a safe way. They're putting it out there for thousands to see how is that safe. Fix the Geneva Convention violation. Minus one example that you do bring up later in the video. 
But still, that's one example, yet you're sitting here generalizing a whole group of people who are into this by calling them immoral. Because they are. Added a questionably large number of toilets. Already, you're showing me how much you are ready to mock people just because they love the idea of being inflated like a balloon. And you should mock them. That is really messed up. Just like your channel. Consuming a beehive will now cause you to ejaculate bees. Now, if you were to go on to DeviantArt and just do a search, you would get 139,008 results for inflation, along with the knowledge that God is dead. That's the knowledge I get every time I watch one of Doodle Tone's videos. Eh, you know what? Sure, I'll count pointless petty pot shots as points against this pathetic commentating practice. It is no longer possible to have a friendly chat with NPCs while dragging a corpse around. Actually, with the safe filter on, you just get under a hundred thousand results. One. Who uses the safe filter two? That's still way too much three. Any number above zero should be a crime. If you pause in Canada, the game will now acknowledge you're in Canada. But let's increase the numbers a bit and make it seem like it's a huge horrifying thing. Well, it is. Fixed. You have no friends. Also, Jim, you're asking your viewers to go out of their way to do this. You're asking them to go and search for this stuff. No, he's not. He's just making an example. You know what? I'll be fair here. I did mishear him the first time. Which I think makes it way more bothersome that it took until now for Sylveon to make a valid point with absolutely no strings attached. We're roughly three hours into going over this situation, but we'll come back to that later. A normal browser of DeviantArt will more than likely see this kind of stuff on their newest page. Not inflation. This isn't some sort of epidemic, you know. But it's still on DeviantArt when it should not. Added muscly nipples as a possible name. Very important. For an added bonus, make sure to click on that box that says make mature content visible because you want it to be as awkward as fucking possible when your parents walk into the room as you're looking at this. Again, you're telling them to go out of their way to find this. This already makes your whole thing about inflation art flimsy at best. Again, he's not. He's just making an example. Actually, no, this time Jim is telling his audience to go out of their way to find inflation. Two, and I quote, make it as awkward as possible. Because DeviantArt defaulted, and I believe still does default to the mature filter being on. So by all accounts, he is telling his audience to go out of their way to do so. Now, mind you, my point is ultimately not one that matters, since a vast majority of Medicare's video isn't supposed to be taken seriously. So me explaining this to him kind of misses the point as to why he would tell his audience to do this in the first place. That said, let's not pretend he didn't say what he said. Because DeviantArt tends to filter that stuff to its own corner of the website, so those who do enjoy it and want to see it can find it and enjoy it. I hope those people get help. The Pope should now be more low-key with the torture and drinking features to great works. I mean, it's their kink after all, not yours. And you going out of your way to find this to hassle them for this stuff is almost borderline harassment, Jim. Doodle. You sound like a feminist right now. Okay, but what does that necessarily debunk? Actually, in hindsight, this interjection becomes hysterical for reasons I don't think Sylveon intended. But, on that note, you can't eat a pile of salts anymore. By simply just scrolling through the results that you get, even with the mature content filter off, you get a good idea of what you're dealing with. Now, a few thoughts are gonna cross your head as you're looking through this cornucopia of artistic talent. The first probably being, why on God's earth did I ever search up inflation on DeviantArt? That's going to quickly be followed by a sense of deep, deep shame, and that is how it should be. Another thought that will probably cross your mind as you're looking through this is a, a bit of awestruck wonder that there are actually people in the world that masturbate to this, no matter how fucked up your fetish is. No matter how embarrassing it may be to you, there is somebody out there that gets turned on by this. So feel a little better about yourself. Jim, it's funny how you're trash-talking inflation because you're clearly into inflating your ego. Look in the mirror. Quirk is now appreciably quirkier. I can imagine the comments they got on this wonderful piece of art, this expressive piece of literature. They must have been just inundated with people throwing roses at their feet. Like Forest Girl 123 from February 25th, 2013. Haha, <laughs> this is the funny side I've heard of it. Good one. Or this comment, clearly praising this, and I quote, creepy fetish girl after saying she died afterwards. And that's before this video where people came to her conveniently through your video to basically prod at the flames a little bit. And that's a good thing. You shouldn't praise creeps like these people. Knife. Can be used like fork. Also can stab dad to slow down. Also Jim has no control of his fan base. As a commentator you should know this. Yes, you can't exactly control your fans, and of course I know that. But the least Jim could have done was not encourage his fans to do so. Something that my emotionally charged dreck was built upon. Now, I'm not an art critic, but maybe some of my viewers are. If you would be so inclined to visit Master Mind Taker's page and take a look at Moonbeam here, maybe you could leave a comment telling them how good it looks. I'm sure they would enjoy the positive feedback from you. 
And don't be shy about leaving comments. Master Mindtaker is more than happy to interact with you. Jin was willingly using his fans as a weapon, and then predictably used that said weapon on me shortly after my video came out. And this is something I go on to cover within my own video, so you should know where this point stemmed from. The main problem isn't that Jim's fans went out and harassed this small amateur artist at all. It's that Jim knew what he was causing making this video to begin with. And yes, the word commentator is in quotations. I mean, the content I do is commentary, by definition. I, I don't see what the problem is calling me a commentator. I mean, you can say that I'm not a good commentator. Fine, to a degree, I'd agree with that sentiment. But just because someone isn't good at something, it doesn't mean that attempt stops being that thing. Yeah, there's people praising the poem, but that's mainly because those people are into that kink and went out of the way to find people who share that kink. Simply put, they went to find like-minded people that share an interest with them. I mean, would it be wrong for a bunch of sports fans to congregate together and talk about sports? Would it be wrong for two people who think blondes are hot to get together and talk about blonde chick? Oh my god! That's one of the worst examples I've ever heard! Oh yeah, by the way, my new laugh chip came in, so yeah, I can laugh again. At least those people aren't getting together to draw disgusting images for thousands to see. I mean, the latter example is debatable, like... There's some disgusting vanilla pieces out there, but in any case, that ignores the purpose of my example to begin with. My point was that just because there's some praise in the comments of Mastermind Taker's content, it doesn't really mean anything because like-minded people who share an interest are bound to sought after said interest. Just because the interest here is unconventionally sexualized, that doesn't really debunk that idea. Plus, not even everyone who partakes in these fetishes do post to communities of said kink. It could just be rando comments or people who add the post to a favorites gallery to show appreciation or uh, save for later, I guess, in some cases. Oh, yeah, also. Sims playing with the campfire will now place the stick in the fire rather than just wave it nearby in a semi-threatening fashion. Do you think that Yoshi gets embarrassed when he poos out eggs in front of Mario? Sorry if that offends anyone, but I thought it was a funny thing, haha. <laughs> Why would someone asking about Yoshi laying eggs offend anyone, first of all? Second, this is a fictional story that's meant to be a little silly. It's obviously meant for the sake of humor. If it wasn't, they'd actually go out of their way to talk about popping. Gee, for a video that wants to focus on riffing, you are sure taking this whole fetish seriously. I feel sick. Then let me take over. Fine. Added new fun activity. Go for a walk. Try again. Try again. I swear, it's almost like a tick for this kid. I mean, just look at this beautiful picture, entitled Moonbeam. A character I created named Moonbeam. The reason behind her giant tummy that makes her look pregnant? Well, you see, she's a young witch that lives inside of a gingerbread mansion. Not a house, a mansion. She lures foolish and usually bratty, never innocent or good travelers, into her home to fatten them up, and then turns them into food to eat. Of course, as you can see, that's sort of taken a toll on her figure. Her belly's grown so big for so long now, she's actually beginning to even feel pregnant too. I also wanted to take a shot at drawing a character on the side. Does it look good? Now, I'm not an art critic, but maybe some of my viewers are. If you would be so inclined to visit Master Mind Taker's page and take a look at Moonbeam here, maybe you could leave a comment telling them how good it looks. I'm sure they would enjoy the positive feedback from you. Fuck you, you are actively telling your viewers, hey, go harass this kid who basically draws inflation because I don't like it. This isn't a term I throw around lightly, but you are starting a lynch mob, Jim. Yes, you do. You use that word. Every time someone says anything negative about you. Okay, but do you actually have any proof of that? Something that's not an alt CC meme from 2017. Something that actually has some ground to stand on. I mean, that's a rhetorical question at this point, I know you don't, but if you're going to make such a certain and positive statement about this, then the burden of proof is on you to prove that statement. Singling a person out and telling people to target this person's page, and from what I can tell it hasn't quite gotten out of hand yet, but the fact that you are even suggesting such a thing is legit the scummiest thing that I've heard in a while. No, that would be you. Finally just went ahead and made skeletons totally bleed immune. And that's all the rest of this video is, just going page to page to poke at people and tell his viewers to check these people out in a very snarky, sarcastic manner that really tells me he just wants to start some flames on DeviantArt. I don't wish to know what the future holds for these people just staying to themselves and not hurting a fly how are they staying to themselves? They're putting it out for hundreds of people to see that is the opposite of staying to themselves. They're not posting it on others' pages though, they're keeping it on their own page. I mean, maybe in set communities of people who enjoy that kind of content, but ultimately they're keeping it to themselves. Just because something is being posted at all doesn't mean it's being shoved in people's faces, and I get really tired of hearing otherwise. Also, dogs' tails rotate according to the animal's health.
Just like with Vanilla Dogs. People coming to their page to get kicked in the balls because some guy with 83,000 plus subscribers didn't like the subject matter of their art. It's like if they were legit doing some awful things on vegan art, sure, call them out. There are people who legit need calling out. Like you. I mean, if I actually do something bad, then yes, what's your point? But if all they're doing is going to the one place that'll allow them to actually express themselves to do just that, then at that point you're just another blatant cyberbully. There's nothing wrong with expressing yourself, but not like this. The entrance elevator door has had a stern talking to and should no longer lock people inside. Okay, final thoughts time. Doodle tones, I'm not going to go as far as to call you a creep, but you definitely need to seek help. Due to their overwhelming deadliness, we removed the hostile invading rabbits. Hellcats will spawn instead. None of this stuff is okay. Candles are fireproof. And it could get you a lot of backlash and you being labeled as a creep like the people who draw things like this. Toilets are no longer death traps. I don't want that to happen. Given the rest of this commentary, that's the funniest joke all video. Sylveon, you never once shown that you actually want anything of me to change. You've never attempted to actually give me any legitimate critique, and we're far enough in the video for me to be certain of that. In your first video on me, you call me stupid when you're not plagiarizing just a robot, and spending the rest of the video plagiarizing just a robot, acting as if my video on him is still relevant, and as if I never got better as a commentator since that video, before capping it off with a Doodle Tones I know I may come across as an asshole to you but I genuinely want to see you improve you have a lot per to get better you don't seem like a terrible person. Oh wait well forget that it seems this dark path just gets deeper. Oh and by the way Doodle Tones this is just the beginning. By the way if I truly never had gotten better as a content creator then why not pick something more relevant, something more up to date. You claim you're not here for the frankly outdated drama between Jar and I from 2016, but not only did you go on to make your third video on me, which was about the Jar drama, and the fourth video on me, which was about the Alt CC drama, which directly involved just a robot, but your whole commentator career started with my video on Jar. How am I supposed to come to any other conclusion than that? You're not just here to revive that petty drama from years prior. Your second video goes on to persist what the first video did, this time in response to a video you chose to not listen to as you continue to presume that I try to hide from these mistakes or that I don't think very highly of retrospection despite the fact that literally half of my channel has become fucking dedicated to that shit at this point. Also, for someone who wanted to act as if I'm allergic to criticism, you sure as hell chose to not take any of the real critique that I actually gave you by that point. Or the critique that anyone gave you at that point given that you went right back to plagiarizing just a robot for your final thoughts. Now with my ending thoughts. I want to make this 100% clear, are people like Jar, Dylan Thomas, everyone doodle, have talked about, and even myself, worthy of criticism. Have we done a few bad, things here and there yes, some more than other s but basically every single person, doodle tones talks about, she make them look way way worse than they really are and she's lying on purpose. If anyone wants to say, I talk with Doodle Tones she seems genuine, or talk with Doodle Tones she seems like a nice person. Yeah, a nice genuine person does not lie about someone coming, that they are harassing them when they aren't. And before someone says well how do you Doodle Tones is lying, maybe she's just making a few dumb mistakes. What effort has she made to correct her mistakes? Not to mention how in your remake of this video that still doesn't change much with the only change of note being that you plagiarized just stop instead of just a robot. Just saying. Outside of that though, you also once again don't show any signs of wanting improvement out of me. You wanted to instead twist some narrative around me being comparable to that of prison mate Luke. You know, without actually providing any sort of evidence to support this comparison. You'd like to pitch how I'm some liar who's out here maliciously hurting others without knowing that any of the people that I actually hurt on any level. Proved by the fact you didn't know V Omega was a groomer or that Rachel is trans. Third video on me wasn't much better because that video starts with blatant well poisoning before going on to say that I was deliberately trying to continue a drama that had already been dead for years before you arrived back to it. The rest of the video isn't much better either as you sit there for the entire video misunderstanding the concept of time or context, arguing points that didn't exist, dismisses all growth of humans in general, showed a super destructive and reductionist side of your commentating style, and didn't even give any attempt at advice during the closing sentiments of the video. Not saying that's an inherently bad thing, by the way, final thoughts are not a requirement. However, when all you give me is destructive nothings, lazy or plagiarized points, and character theft, 
then not having these final thoughts becomes more of a detriment to your cause. Your fourth video on me lacks any sort of research to the discussion and went in falls deep with no regard to what you were saying being accurate, much less even close to understanding. That of course isn't mentioning the total disregard to criticism, commentary, or even debate as a whole, as a plethora of your counterpoints towards my video on Megadoop didn't even address the point, much less actually debunk anything. Some were no you points, others were pot shots. And when you ultimately had half of your actual points miss the point entirely with the other half of your actual points, showing that aforementioned lack of research to what it is you're even talking about, pardon me for looking at that video as not even criticism, barely commentary. We'll get to your fifth video here in a bit, don't worry. Your sixth video didn't even try on any account as it comes across a lot more as an overglorified reaction video than anything resembling cohesive commentary, never mind the blatant transphobia littered throughout it. The seventh video, this one, also gives less than zero fucks to try as a majority of your interjections amount to fetish bad with not much in the realm of debunking anything that isn't basically debunked by itself, and even taking out the retroactive hypocrisy still doesn't have much of any substance to contain itself as a commentary either. Because when you're not just saying fetish bad, all you wind up doing is continue to put me down, tell me to get help because I'm okay with a concept you don't like, or alternatively just try dismissing my claims due to things you don't listen to or otherwise obviously don't care about, with unelaborated on counterpoints and apathetic responses that function as reactions. Finally, the eighth video recycles a lot of the worst aspects of the second video, literally point for point in some scenarios. It still has the blatant plagiarism, the narrative spinning, the presumptuous nature, the piss poor defense of being a clone, well poisoning, you know, the works. If you truly gave a fuck about my well-being, then riddle me this, Sylveon. Why would you rather me deplatformed over actually trying to help me get better for problems that you perceive to exist? I do not buy this facade for even a fraction of a millisecond. You've been running on spite and misplaced vindication for a solid year, and it doesn't even stop at me. But again, we'll come back to that. For now, I want to focus on your presumed main drive, the source you cite for the reason that I should be deplatformed, because clearly, if my apology videos are so bad, there should be a reason as to why that's in some way valid, correct? Well, let's put a close on this circle and look at your complaints with confessions and apology, shall we? Alright, I want to come in and, I guess, actually clarify my thoughts about Lolly and Lollipon, because I thought about it while making this video, and yeah, people are going to make assumptions if I don't. So, in short, I do think it's CP. By all accounts, Lollicon, by definition, is a genre of media in which young, or at the very least, young-looking girls appear in sexual or suggestive contexts. And if you're attracted to adolescent traits in a person, that does at least border on pedophilia. Because, you know, that's kind of the parts that pedophiles are attracted to, you know? Not always, but th that is typically the case. But with that said, as gross as I personally think it is, I won't overlook that... Yeah, there is nuance to this conversation. On the one hand, there was the study by Patrick Galbraith that noted a different study by a researcher from Japan that showed that there was a decrease in sexual abuse of minors in Japan at the same time that there was an increase in Lollicon, which can be an argument in favor of Lollicon helping those with those kind of sexual urges. Then there's the conversation of what is okay to portray in art, and I'm not going to ignore that part. Then again, on the other hand, there have been arguments against this that bring up the possible normalization of child abuse, which is a very possible thing that, you know, could happen. Point is, it's a very messy conversation that I don't really hold a strong opinion of one way or another. I think it's gross, and I think it kind of teeters that line, but at the end of the day, that's it. I avoid it, but I understand that there is at least a conversation there to its connections, to reality, and I know enough to know that I know not. It's why I'm not here to argue. But with that said, I do think just labeling it as it's fiction, so therefore it's fine, is as reductionist and simplified as it enables pedophilic behavior, and I strongly think saying just because it's illegal doesn't make it wrong is a completely fucking dumb argument to make. Blech. Hopefully that gets my point across as to why I'm not completely disavowing the defense of it, but still show disgust towards its existence. Because I have my two cents, but I don't care enough to want to get involved in this debate. I have too much to do as it is. But this will be important going forward too.
I want to make it clear, of course, that this isn't the last thing we'll be talking about if the amount of time left in this video is any indicator. But I do believe it is a fitting close to the saga between Sylveon and I. I started by talking about confessions from a more retrospective viewpoint. Knowing now what I know about the individuals then, I would have still apologized for things that I genuinely did do wrong, because it's important to hold yourself accountable. But I would have probably been a bit more hesitant to devalue that apology if they chose not to take it. I didn't make those videos to make myself feel better. I made them because I thought that I had done wrong, and truly, there's no getting around the fact that I did, hence why I made it a point to also show how I have objectively grown from two years ago. Whether or not I'm a better content creator is subjective. Personally, I think I'm still quite mediocre. My content could probably not exist, and honestly, there probably wouldn't be much value to actually have been lost. But I'm kind of content with that. I make videos because they're fun. That's something that's never changed. So ultimately, I could care less about being someone's problematic fave. But I've definitely shown an attempt to grow as a person, whether Sylveon wants to admit it or not. I'm sure I still have a ways of go to becoming the best version of myself that I can be. I'm not perfect by a long shot, but it's quite clear to me that I'm better now than I was two years prior. But, you know, I guess maybe that's my bias talking. After all, I'm apparently this giant egotist who can't take criticism. Plus, Sylveon has this video on confessions and apology, so maybe there was something wrong after all. Let's dive into how he felt, shall we? Let's see if this crusade was worth it after all. You know all great stories deserve a sequel. But the truly legendary ones deserve a series. And we're about to Peter Jackson this video series up. Starting with some blatant plagiarism, are we? You know, all great stories deserve a sequel, but the truly legendary ones deserve a trilogy. And we're about to Peter Jackson this Prismate Luke drama up. Though I guess I don't know what I should have expected from the video that literally rips the naming convention from the video it's plagiarizing. Truly, you learned a lot from this video going into your remake commentary on my first video on you. But doodle this drama is dead why? Are you making this video? It makes no sense. Well the answer is... Simple. I'm doing it purely for views and money. And no other reason. You know something. At least she's honest. <laughs> okay. We'll see how well this age has been put to scrutiny. Oh wait. Plus this is just continued plagiarism. Full disclosure, Sylveon's entire opening is just word for word Jar's video on Luke recontextualized to be about me because... I guess we're in some form comparable. Okay now that we got the one and only argument out of the way let's continue on with this video. Uh, actually there's gonna be a lot of arguments coming up, especially when paired with everything else I've covered thus far. In all seriousness there's a very good reason as to why I'm making this video. Because 9 out of 10 people who have spread around false information about Doodle Tones trying to improve herself have done nothing to correct their mistakes. They have not made a follow-up video, pen comment tweet, or anything. Because no one really needs to do any of those things? Like with Luke, this request to create an addendum made sense because it was Luke legitimately spreading falsified or unresearched assumptions about other content creators that fans of the work believed in and used to attack those he accused with Jar spending the rest of the duration of the video actually demonstrating those lies. Confessions and Apology are videos throwing myself to the train. Those videos don't actually hurt anyone else with any sort of negative assumptions made about others. On the contrary, it's me spotlighting my own problems and giving anecdotes of how I hurt others already. This plagiarism doesn't work in this context because you're effectively wanting an addendum to an acceptance of an apology for my negative actions, to which you have no right to demand. And most of the false claims come from Doodle Tones confessions and apology videos. Don't get me wrong it's not 100% false but it's mostly false. Say what you will about the videos Doodle Tones has done on both Mega Dupe and Mr. Ray but at least those videos got a decent amount of dislikes. While the like to dislike ratio on her apology videos are basically perfect. Again, I just can't see this as anything but misplaced plagiarism. Luke and I are not that comparable. And I would argue that her apology videos were even worse than all of her over videos combined. By no means am I asking people to dislike her videos. Except, 
You literally are. Contextually, Jar says this to spotlight how a video is seen as filled with more lies against another individual, or as otherwise more harmful to another individual, was overlooked a lot more than videos that weren't as bad in comparison. He felt like the Peaches video is a lot more slanderous in nature, but was a lot more passed on than Luke's Jar is racist and Harley TBS videos. You, on the other hand, are deliberately demanding people rescind their acceptance of an apology, showing that you want more people to look at this video in a much more negative and malicious light than some of my other blunders. You can't say you have a more noble intent than that when the only person that this video shines a negative light on is me. And you're only spotlighting it because you feel people are lying when they say they see improvement from me. Fuck off! I'm just pointing it out. If you want more information on the misinformation doodle tones spread about Mr. A and Mega Dupe, I recommend checking out my videos on them. Already did. There wasn't much proof to be found. I'm gonna try to make this more concise than the last attempt I had making a video like this, but I definitely feel like this is something that pretty much everyone who has followed me, considered me an inspiration, anyone who has once considered themselves a friend of mine, and Everyone in between needs I fear for all their futures. Oh no, it's because spotlighting the problematic attitude of a content creator doesn't give people the option to just leave if they deem these problems unforgivable. Their futures are in danger, I guess. Like, if this was supposed to be a joke, then I guess it went over my head, but otherwise I fail to see the point of this interjection. It's been something that I have been wanting to tell you guys pretty much all year, too, and have been hinting at with little quote-unquote self-deprecative posts everywhere. Twitter, YouTube, DeviantArt, you name it. It's something that has been on my mind for a while and that I need to make abundantly clear for you all now that I'm back in this state where a recent fuck up put me in a hot seat and letting myself live it down has been quite impossible. Generally speaking, I'm fucking terrible. That's it. That's the general gist of what this video is going to try to get across. Obviously, it's not going to be left at just that. I plan to make the best case for why I'm human filth than anyone else has made with a bunch of rancid actions I have taken in the past that I have not mentally let go of. Things that other people might have forgotten or otherwise may not have known about that I plan to air out as indiscriminately as possible. A lot of this will be taken from my old document, one of which I made an unlisted video that as of now has become redundant. But details haven't changed. Never and I am here to spread it even more. Good for you. That said, if that's all you're here for, then you're wasting yours and everyone else's time. As the video is still up, and playing my video in full with no argumentation would be DMCA-able. Because let me tell you, this year, 2019, has given me a lot to think about, and especially the past few days have kept me in this mental state where I'm back to reading my own receipts. So let me just get into it. First, with a little bit of a backstory. As much as I hate to say it, early 2016 was the last time that I actually felt good about myself as a content creator and as a person, believe it or not. As much as my early videos disappoint me to look back on today, I actually felt proud of my videos on Comet Jack and Joshua Fierstein. I felt like I had put effort into those videos and felt like I had accomplished something greater than I had before. I mean, yeah, I knew I could have probably been better, I was just getting started after all, but this was a step I was glad I took at the time, as I had just gotten out of a previous rut I was in in 2015 regarding getting my GED. For those who don't know what a GED is, it's basically a high school diploma for those who dropped out of high school, which, yeah, is more embarrassing when you realize that I was homeschooled for the last three years of high school. Well at least I now know why you're so bad at maths, and why I'm so bad at maths since I'm a clone of you. Yeah, so remember how I called you an over-glorified reaction channel a couple of chapters ago? Yeah, that. We have already went through roughly two minutes of my video, and all you've interjected to say was, I fear for the futures of those who watch you, I'm spreading your video around, and so that's why you're bad at math. It's only gonna get worse from here. This led into Deterfy's video on me, then Lance, then Henry, and so on and so forth coming out, and believe it or not, this was the first time that I was genuinely criticized. Of course, I had the you suck us comments before, as I was a Roblox tuber who at one point did epic rap battle parodies beforehand. Of course, I would be told vague comments like that, but it was nothing like the real, actual criticism I got during this time, and I still have to thank those who slapped some sense into me and allowed me to see the error of my ways in those videos. It's such a shame that looking back, I never actually applied that criticism, but... We'll come back to this, I assure you. Well, by March, I tried making friends with everyone, tried not to piss off anyone else, asking for criticism from those who seemed like they wanted to help, as feeling like a bandwagon didn't feel terribly great. And I guess people just kind of lightened up on me as I didn't get much else from then on. 
They probably shouldn't have, considering how I acted, even at the time, but they did, and it eventually got to the point where people trusted my judgment for some reason, and let me a little too loose in this new candy store, which led me to do some pretty brash and really stupid decisions, and really, I don't think I should have gotten away with half of the shit that I did back in the day. And that's what Sylveon created me for. Well then, you're very late to the party. The fact that this video at all exists shows that I was willing to call myself out for my misdeeds where no one else did. And mind you, this purpose also presumes in some way that I haven't gotten better for my 2016 days after I called myself out for the shit in 2019. Which, as I demonstrated before, is objectively untrue given what I demonstrated in Chapter 1. If all you're here to do is call me out on these old things that I'm literally calling myself out for in this video, then your purpose is redundant at best and absolutely worthless at worst. You might also be noticing how much drag there is in this portion. Stagmaster decided to look into where Sylveon's interjections are, and uh, they're quite spacious. Not a whole lot of Sylveon's 55 minutes actually has anything to say, and you'll see that more as we go on. Though I will try to trim the fat, I make no promises of me being successful. Let's talk about Pikmin Planet, the person who was the initial cause of me looking at Master TP Ken's video to begin with. Because this is a neat little tidbit of yikes that nobody outside of a handful of people would have known that I did. So, there was this commentator called Ski Hound, who at the time was notorious for doing live-streamed commentaries called The Berserk Cast, where they and a group of other commentators would get together and just do what live-streamed commentaries do. There's unfortunately not very many archives of those streams, like, I know there was a Berserk cast on me that's nowhere to be found online as of 2019, but I remember it pretty fondly, and remember catching a bit of it live, though admittedly I didn't stick around to watch the whole thing. Regardless, sometime in the future I wound up on a couple of those live streams myself. The one on Yana's top 10 overrated Pokemon list, and the important one to the discussion, Cringe Fest. Which is essentially just a bunch of people partaking in cringe culture and reacting to various videos by people considered cringy. This stream, however, was special, as we were contacted by an individual known as Weston, more famously known as Kablam Bandicoot 64 If you're at all familiar with my earlier content, you know who Kablam is. He was a pretty big bandwagon back in the day. Anyway, we got Kablam onto the stream to debate him about his behavior and how he didn't come across as any better than his rival at the time, the mysterious Mr. Inter. And during that stream, Ski Hound, I guess, dropped the N-word as a joke? The details on this are a little hazy, but the only reason I know what happened was because of what Pikmin Planet did following the stream. So I made a video talking about the Berserk cast I was on and had advertised it to my very different audience at the time, with Pikmin Planet coming into my comments section and DMs saying that I shouldn't be advertising a racist on my channel. Confused by such a claim, I explained to Pikmin that it was more of an edgy joke over anything else and we had gotten into a discussion over whether or not white people should use the N-word. You know, as you do. With me on the defense of the ability and Pikmin obviously not in favor of it, uh, for a while we had our back and forths until I got so fed up with the discussion that I blocked Pikmin Planet from Skype. That reminds me of a lot of things. Imagine being salty that you got blocked while also blocking others around the same time. Couldn't actually be me, but more on that later. You guys remember Mr. Medicare, right? I sure as hell hope you do because some of you won't ever let me live it down. And I won't as well. And trying to silence it is only going to make people want to talk about it more. Yes, I'm fully aware of how the Streisand effect works. However, again, this isn't a case of me not being open to retrospective lookbacks at a situation. This is me against people treating these old, outdated situations as if they're still indicative of how I am as a content creator. I won't either. The last day of August and the following September arguably became the worst time of my life and the biggest mistake I had ever made. No, I think trying to come back on YouTube Despite all of this is your biggest mistake. Bro, no one even knew of like half of this shit before I told them. And after telling them, a chunk of my audience accepted the apology. The ones that didn't got apology as a follow-up. And then took that, with only a small selection of people accepting neither. By that point, I didn't really see much reason to leave. People like Rachel reached out and we briefly became friends again until both of us got our closure. So what reason would I have to leave after these videos? Hell, isn't that the exact reason you say you decided to cover this video? Was because people accepted the apologies and you didn't think they should've? So you knew the reception was overall positive, but still expected me to leave the internet. 
That doesn't make any sense, and is horribly retroactively hypocritical, but more on that later. Having had been subbed to Medicare almost a full year prior, I definitely jumped into kink shaming event my fetish very emotionally driven, as the idea of using a large fan base as a flail seemed very shady, to put it nicely. People told me not to do this video, Mills Kohai especially telling me that this video would have been a bad idea. But I went through with it anyway, and regardless of how technically nothing I said in the video was incorrect, I was still spurging out over a video that at most was just a glorified cringe compilation Jim devised together to laugh at the weird on DeviantArt, similar to how he did in Tumblrisms, a series that I was totally okay with at the time. Good to know my double standard stuck by me this entire time, huh? I'm sure Deterfi would be proud. Regardless, this painted the biggest target on my back because I happen to be connected to fetishism in other ways, having gone through and doing fetish RPs publicly throughout 2014 and 2015 for the sake of escapism. You know, it's never a good idea to post your fetishes online, if you're not afraid of it being spread on the internets. Supporting poop fetish groups online is a one-way ticket to being a joke. Ah, so now we get to the other, big problem with Sylveon's video. So I've already addressed how Sylveon plagiarizes Jar in the intro statements, all throughout the intro statements, and how comparing Prismate Luke to myself doesn't work because of the context of our videos and what harm said videos can do to others. But of course, if you thought that was the only source of plagiarism from Sylveon, I've got some bad news for you. Meet Techachan, someone else who took an issue with confessions and apology and left their own, quite frankly, garbage comment on the video. Mostly just berating me because there's not really a whole lot to cover in confessions actually when you break it down. And this is where Sylveon gets a lot of his substance in this commentary. It's a shame the substance is mean-spirited nothingness that doesn't really prove anything about either of my videos. Oh well. Anyway, to actually address Petch's comment, firstly, this kind of assumes that I even have a kink to begin with, but I've already addressed this to hell and back over the course of five years, and people still believe what they want to believe, so it's whatever at this point. But even with that aside, let's say that I was into a poop fetish. What does that matter here? It doesn't really do anything to what I was saying here, I was merely explaining the situation to my newer audience in which I painted the target on my back doing a commentary on Mr. Medicare, emotionally driven after people told me not to do so, putting blame on myself. Your statement isn't really productive, much less brings anything of note to the table. And being connected to Sylveon, well, we'll come back to that later again. I've never really been that good with wording myself. That should be obvious. In fact, during the last section, you'd probably see me as trying to pin my problems on the commentary community when that is so far from the truth. I thank the CC for putting up with me and giving me a place to chill for- Lamau the internet has no chill, and if you want the internet to be a place where people put up with you and chill, consider writing your tangent laden spurg outs in a journal. You know, like a composition book? We use these throughout school. This one was always a bit frustratingly funny to me, which is a weird emotion to have. I literally explained how the SEC had been chill enough to let me vibe and this dude just rolls up in my comments going, lol, there's no place to chill on the internet. Like, bruh, pet ya, my home slice. First and foremost, the sheer idea that there's no place to just hang out with people online is genuinely misled at best. Fandom exists. Plenty of individuals who share interests get together to vibe. Not every place is loaded with fights and internet drama. The SEC has actually very commonly been that kind of place after 2018, before I made confessions. By 2019, the only people who were causing a fuss no longer associated with us, and the few that had associated with us that caused a stir aren't more than just petty at most. But second, bruh, the statement just flat out ignores me thanking the CC for putting up with my garbage. And Sylveon, uh, I don't expect you to listen anyway. For those of you on the outside looking in who maybe wish to join the CC, I say do it. The commentary community I associate with today is very accepting of new people and, well, we don't always get along at the end of the day and we definitely have our problems, for sure. It's not at all an intimidating group as we're all just a bunch of weeps who talk about Pokemon. It's great, it's why I've stuck around for as long as I have and will continue to do so as long as people want me around. No, absolutely not. But thanks for your input. Uh, any askers? To get back on topic though, my wording is very typically easily misconstrued. Maybe you should edit your script to where people can't misconstrue your words, unless you mean by misconstrue, you mean people can counter my opinions, and that sucks. Well, I guess we're talking back to Petcha, and good golly they misunderstand what an opinion is if they're thinking I'm worried about those being countered. In any case, no, you were right the first time, I definitely had a bad habit of not making sure that my wording was concise enough for people to not misunderstand. 
because very commonly I had people misinterpret my points. Some examples include the JAR video where I got onto JAR's line delivery instead of the robot filter. My bullshit levels list where that seventh bloody dragon misunderstood that when I said SWAT, I was alluding to the entirety of SWAT instead of just the generic officers in Payday 2. And, well, I guess now your comment of what I've seen thus far is any indicator, but that's neither here nor there now, is it? And this caused me to get into a lot of trouble in the past. See Jester Robot, The Conundrum, Early Dylan videos, etc. And it continues to get me into trouble nowadays, too. In fact, you're gonna see that a lot the more we moved into the 2017 and 2018 segments. I have to continue to clarify things that people may have misunderstood due to my shit understanding of language. If you have a shit understanding of language, then get off the internet and go back to school. It was hyperbolic self-deprecation, shut your mouth while you indolent plagiarist. In fact, that's the reason I practically refuse to be a messenger nowadays. Again, you'll understand as shit goes on. From there, I should also mention that I have a mouth that doesn't know when to keep quiet. If I have thoughts on a subject matter, no matter how right or wrong it is, or how much I'm even unsure what I'm saying is correct, I still speak on it, and that's what led into a lot of 2017 around me, hence this next segment altogether. I know how to fix that. Wait, who are you? Oh, she's gone. So let's talk about the Alt-CC. From everything that I heard at the time, the Alt-CC started after the aforementioned Medicare drama, where their big motive was to take down the CC, cause it to fall apart, and then rebuild it as this new empire, as it were. And I'm gonna do that as well. You know, being 70 pages into this video script at this point, it really does cement in that unless Sylveon is plagiarizing points from someone, they really just gave up on being a commentator and picked up reaction videos. Makes me wonder how many of the previous points I covered were plagiarized from elsewhere that I just didn't catch on to. Hell, in January of 2017, after Skihound had joined the Alt CC and leaked Boonslayer and I talking shit about the Alt in a chat that they were in, I got so paranoid that I snapped publicly and removed everyone off of every social media and barrowed myself into a deep three-month isolation. And that's where you should have stayed. Ah, uh, but where would you have stolen your identity from? That I had planned to go back to shortly after writing the initial document I made regarding these thoughts, but didn't as I have places like the Cloud Palace to watch over. With that said, that paranoia hasn't gone away and admittedly I've not been able to get over what happened that day, nor have I let myself live down the emotionally driven fuckfest that was self-destructing mud hole. This I feel is when I really started to lose it because I've always said in honesty that I don't think that I'm honestly that great of a content creator, but I've gotten myself into the habit of fighting back whenever I see someone else say that. And you haven't changed since you did that to me multiple times. This is me getting angry that you were camping out confessions and apology, just to spam comments. Not because you actually had anything negative to say at all, but that you kept coming back. Hence me asking if you had nothing better to do than that. Mentioning how I always saw you on that video whenever I got a notification from you, and the last bit where I asked what your end goal is. You can pester someone till they get angry with you, regardless of what you're saying. The second comment is literally the reverse of me getting defensive. Good going. At least when I misunderstood a comment of yours, it was a vague joke that was ultimately a non sequitur. It's not literally the opposite of what I was saying. This third one here is completely out of context. I mean, so are the other two, but even out of context, they don't work, so I don't care as much. This third comment was directly in response to you asking where you were bringing up old dead drama regarding Just a Robot, and I pointed out where, showing the comment where you directly bring up a complaint towards the two quickly call out, something which Jar took issue with in his CC rants back in 2017. I also really like the part where he says, we lack the ability to ignore other people making response videos. I mean, really, how much of a hypocrite can you be? Oh, I'm sorry. Being a hypocrite doesn't make you wrong, even though I'm not saying it makes you wrong, but for some reason you're taking it that way. And number three, and this is the big one, stop being so hypocritical. The fact that commentators use the argument, just because I'm a hypocrite, it doesn't make me wrong. It just shows how far gone you guys are. Honestly, I haven't heard anyone but you guys use that argument. True, being a hypocrite doesn't make you wrong, but people will take you far more seriously if you actually practice what you preach. Honestly, when most people think about the commentary community, they think of a bunch of people who can't make videos, who tell other people how to make videos. And when you call them out on it, 
all they can say is, Oh, well, yeah, we do that too, but uh, uh, that doesn't make our points wrong. Take the block of wood out of your own eye so you can see clearly enough to take the grain of sand out from someone else's eye. Look, I'm just saying. I find it really funny how you get onto my case in your response to me for taking a joke like malicious pot shots in a singular screenshot where there actually were loads of context surrounding those very screenshots that could give someone an indicator of where I was coming from, but three out of three of your screen caps being used to say that I've been overly defensive are maliciously taken out of context and actively lied about. Possible counterpoint? Oh, but Doodle, this nearly four hour long video could be proof of you still being that, so Sylveon's still not wrong. And, like, let me put it this way. Even if you think so, at this point, I don't care about coming off as defensive if it means shining a light on actions of someone who has been harassing and impersonating me pretty much all year. Especially since being silent about it had fixed literally 0% of the problem. Pardon me for being a smidgen upset. It's a drive that emotionally drains me just thinking about it. See Megadoo, Mudhole, Us vs. Them. There's multiple streams, particularly Poilzone and Saturday streams, and some of the early Steamer streams, just as some examples. I think back to early 2016 and how willing I was to accept criticism, and then look at 2017 at how unwilling I was despite saying otherwise that I can't help but to think that all of this was caused because I developed one of my many bad habits I hold today. Oh, you'll get over that feeling, 2019 doodle. You weren't really that avoidant of critique, just the critique that you got was contradictory, unhelpful, reductionist, destructive, or just bad. I mean, there were plenty of videos, even predating confessions, that covered you that you didn't hate. Like, you can ask Keyblade Master. Had I not been so brash and emotional with my video on Jim, who knows what would have happened. And combined with how quickly I'd blown up as a content creator leading up to that point, I believe we can all agree that I got too big too quickly, and even now I'm unsure what I'm doing with it. But more on that later. Eventually, the problems with the Alt-CC died out, but that didn't change my depleting state especially when I had no idea as to what a filter is. I'd always enjoyed the live streaming and often considered myself more of a live streamer over being a YouTuber, but that's not really a good thing when you're in the midst of big dramas or in a community of people who often argue with videos on the internet. Or alternatively, when you're constantly in calls with people who want to talk about things you don't want to. Even now, when streaming alone on Twitch, I still have this problem where sometimes my chat wants to talk about something going on in the community that I don't really want to talk about, but since that's all the chat's going on about, it steers me into a direction where I talk about it without too much fighting on my end. I already mentioned before about how I went off on just a robot in a stream, which caused Dylan to make his response to me that led me to fuck up and hurt him, and how I had talked about a group of individuals who were just trying to shed a light on my negative traits, but God forbid those be the only two examples that I have screw me up in a live stream. The amount of times mine or others mouths have gotten me into hot water during streams is super staggering. And while I'm glad it doesn't happen as often now that I moved to Twitch, I still hate the fact that my habits won't let me ignore things like that. I know breaking a habit is difficult, but fucking Christ. Most of these situations are either small one-offs that put me in a position where I looked like a fucking prick, or already stemmed off the alt-cc drama to the point it was just bound to happen. Such as the time I unfairly blew up at Sholmes for something he didn't even mean. Or the times I blew up about Umbris and Discount thinking that they were trans, basically gatekeeping who could and couldn't be trans based on age. Or the time I yelled at Pretty Kitty, Jorm, Starmaker, and Ernie during a stream instead of doing a live commentary, which was the whole point of that stream. Or the time that I put Kurome on blast during that same stream caused by roping him into a conversation he wasn't prepared to have. However, there were two that caused situations in of themselves that I do feel like mentioning here as it truly demonstrates the problem regarding me either needing a fucking filter sometimes, or at the very least, needing to control the situation better. While this isn't exactly chronological to the events that I've been talking about- If you're so insecure in your identity that you want to take estrogen slash testosterone and possibly mutilate your genitals just to regret it years or off your shelf later maybe you shouldn't call yourself being a different gender. This was just ill-placed, plagiarized, and transphobic for the sake of it. On that note, man Petcha, you have zero idea what the fuck being trans even is if you think I shouldn't be called such based on the gender dysphoria I feel. Oh, you can't call yourself trans if you want gender reassignment surgery. Is definitely a new take that's just a new level of dumb about leading up to this point. The recent and now privated Saturday stream as of typing this is definitely the first one that should come to anyone's mind. As regardless of how you feel about my apology on Twitter regarding the situation or not, there's still no changing the fact that not only did I inadvertently blame someone who thought they were being groomed for potentially being groomed, 
which even if I don't know how much I believe the grooming claim to begin with, isn't correct to do or even something that I would have believed in had I believed the claim. Not only did I go out of my way to fight people who were in the right to call me out for such a stupid thing to say and everything else in between regarding that shitty situation, but just overall I shouldn't have even talked about it on stream to begin with. No one brought it up other than me and it made the call feel at unease and killed the good vibes that were at there in the first place when talking about Doug Walker's The Wall Review. This shows, at least as of 2019, how much I refuse to learn. The Poyo Zone streams September 21st, 2017 is the other one I wish to bring up. You know, the Kirby and the Amazing Mirror stream? If you don't know, allow me to give context. There was this commentator known as Super Funny Bros who now goes by Smartass Burp. He was, for a while, one of the most respected members in the CC until he made a very politically driven video on this guy called Libertarian Socialist Rants, and then hightailed it out of there after the backlash, though not without making a video that was fairly okay to the general public. During the Poyo Zone stream, Mills Kohai decided to go onto Burb's Twitter and found a tweet worded just to say, Just a reminder, black people aren't oppressed. This isn't verbatim, but generally the point was the same. Burb saying people of color just straight up aren't oppressed, which we chuckled about and made jokes about because of just how poorly worded it was. Well, that was our intentions at first, but then it became a huge political debate. In hindsight, I don't know what I was expecting. What I should have done was step in and tell the both of them to drop the subject, but what I did instead was let the two argue and even got involved myself once trans people got brought up. By the way, have I mentioned this aspect will come back later too? And this started a fruitless argument where a simple joke at the expense of poor wording got us to, and then by association the rest of the community to an extent, labeled a bunch of cringy SJWs. Joy. By the way, none of this was helped by the Arkham Asylum steamer streamed where instead of stopping discussion I stayed silent throughout the stream, where the rest of the chat ganged up on Dylan. I guess I can chalk this up to another double standard where I claim I don't support witch hunts and yet let that shit happen live. Guess I only don't support it when it's someone I don't know, huh? I practically wound up just yelling at everyone and yelling about things that I shouldn't have had the rest of the year, and of course we don't just stop there because I had one final message to everyone by the time the year ended that really wound up digging myself a hole. We then arrive at the end of 2017 and the leakage into 2018, and for those of you unaware, this was a very interesting time for the community. We had started with that blood sports garbage and the image and avatar gates and to be honest I probably stepped in where I shouldn't have. I hear a lot of claims that the image gate video TP and I made both took Dylan and Kainu's videos out of context and I know they're probably right but I think the biggest problem was just the fact that I got involved at all to begin with. See, during my year-end 2017 list, I tried getting the message across that when a drama persists to get dragged out, that people should walk away and allow those dragging it to scream into a void. And sure, my wording was crap, and got Sketch TV and Pink Robot all kinds of frustrated at me. Again. Get. A journal. And talk to a counselor. Oh wait they don't get paid to feed into your delusions of being a super kawaii girl with internet fame. And instance two of the ill-placed, plagiarized, and transphobic interjections for the sake of it. With that in mind, this just wouldn't do anything to what I'm saying now. The, albeit pretty bad point that I'm making against myself is that I got too involved with dramas. The best fix for that would just be to not get involved, because writing my thoughts in journals wouldn't really change matters. I could still have gotten involved in other ways behind the scenes, and then what would your write a journal critique do? It's not a particularly great solution to a retrospectively nothing problem. But the point was that dragged out drama should finally dissipate. I'm glad to know that idea all lasted but a month. Tops. Because that's exactly what Imagegate was, a drama that got dragged out for too long that the people involved should have dropped it from the get-go. I shouldn't have gotten involved when my based statements of 2017 were don't do this. Sure, I'm glad that I didn't promise myself I wouldn't stop there because had I done that, my record of being unable to keep a promise and not be a pretentious douchebag would have kept up. Seriously, how many dramas did I get involved in in 2018? The Halo Dan Wars, the Sugar Pie drama, Wolfie Chew, Bex Fault's vape drama, the Fran situation, Dwebly, anything else I'm missing? The drama regarding Fran was particularly my lowest last year as I went into a situation entirely misinformed and shamed an entire community for allowing Joni Smith and Eaton Mitsuru for getting away with shady evidence like this, all in a desperate attempt to finally break my bad streak of having double standards, only to then spend like a month debating whether or not I should go through with making the debate a addendum which I'm glad I waited on so I could fully get the right information I wasn't given before. 
And even that evidently wasn't good enough, as Sketch had pointed out, that both of my videos on the situation were garbage, as I too had used shady information to back up my claims and apologize. Thus I've put myself into one of those wonderful lose-lose situations I've put myself into on a fairly regular basis. And honestly, while I was hurt when he said it at the time, the more that I thought about it and molded over, I have to agree with Sketch that it's reasonable Heaton doesn't forgive me for that. Honestly, I felt like I was given too light of a slap on the wrist for making something as toxic as that. The little reputation that I had left should have been destroyed at that point in time. And that's what I'm here to destroy. You're sure doing a bang up job of that, I tells ya. This is the surest sign that I hadn't learned a goddamn thing from any of my lessons of the year, and why in particular I'm glad that I didn't get too preachy when it came to my 2018 list. Because I do not need to keep doing this. Though what I have planned for 2019 is, uh, yeah. Expect that to get a little preachy at the end. Kind of have a lot to say about this year. But regardless, anyway, this moral uncaring on my end isn't okay for anyone, much less an individual with the follower base that I have, despite the fact that it's way too overinflated for its own good. Then stop making them. Who are you to decide which video of the year is the worst? Who is anyone to determine anything as the worst? It's an opinionated list that not everyone will agree with. Why have an opinion on any subject at all if we can't speak on anything when we're not the arbiters of quality going by this logic? Secondly, that's not the fucking point. I was critiquing myself for getting preachy during my year in list and not following the very same preachiness going into the following year. I just spent like a whole fucking paragraph talking about how I told people not to get involved in needlessly padded out dramas that go nowhere before touching on basically every drama the year after. I get you want to use Obscurian's 2017 anti-doodle troll account as a citation for complaints lobbed at me, but it just doesn't work as a counterpoint here when my worst of the year list by themselves are not the problem. And if you think it is, you're gonna love what's in store for 2021's list. And that's just on an outsider's perspective and what you can see publicly. The people that I hurt last year goes way beyond just a mere few dumbass videos, but actual things that I have said and done that have broken trust with others. Broken my own trust with myself and has put me in the state that I'm in today where I finally just need someone to put a fucking bullet in my brain. Allow me. Yeah, remember when you plagiarized Jar during your final thoughts to make a pot shot at me, supposedly twisting something into a death threat? Yeah, that. Well, let's start with the way that I hurt Sketch TV, aka The Omega, as an individual and caused him to lose trust in the entire commentary community because I think that's the biggest and most important factor in where I'm at now that I can't trust myself with anything. Then why are you still on the internet? Okay, okay, jeez, if you really want to know so much, you don't gotta twist my arm about it. Basically, I just don't feel like I can do anything else. I'm a homeschool high school dropout whose grades were consistently failing throughout high school that has zero work experience over the course of six years and a plethora of really bad allegations attached to my legal name that would make things a lot harder for me to getting a more conventional job. And don't act like it wouldn't, considering what Sky Williams had to go through to be incredibly apathetic or otherwise ignorant to think differently. So, how have you been doing lately, Sky? I know you've been off of social media for a while, you haven't been posting to YouTube, but I have seen you stream a couple times. I have not been doing well, I've just kind of been existing, but I wouldn't even call it that. Like, I know that sounds like really dramatic, but it actually is that bad if that makes sense what do you mean by that like not existing every single part of my life is just com is gone and i can't resume a normal life because all the background checks i've tried i've just fail them when you put your name sky williams and you have such a huge gap of like work history you want to explain oh i was an influencer and then they're going to look you up mm -hmm. and then that's when you don't get the call back i was fired from three therapists that like looked up what was going on and then was like oh actually um i don't think that i can help you or i don't think we'd be a good fit and it's like I didn't know that you can get fired from a therapist. I didn't either. I would talk about the fact that I believe, since everyone else believes it, and even I've said it, even though Dr. K disavowed it, everyone believes that I'm this psychopath, that I'm a sociopath, that I'm this huge mass manipulator. And so if that's true, and I'm tricking myself, then maybe a therapist would be able to tell me. So then when they ask why they think I believe that, I have to go into some sort of detail about my life. And once I do, it's over. Oh, right, no, sorry, uh, I know, uh, explaining any facet of my life is emotional manipulation now, so, uh, I suck around because I'm not actually sorry, and I just want to profit off of everyone. I'm here to continue to hurt those around me and completely stagnate as a person because no one should ever trust me. That's what you wanted to hear, right? Like, that's, that's good enough? 
Oh, shit, no, you're, you're right. Uh, self-deprecation is just me wanting to avoid any sort of criticism because I'm just incapable of hearing it. Do you not see the other goalpost moving that this kid does? Like, unless I leave the internet, something I don't think I can afford to do, this kid's gonna veal mega all over the place and never be satisfied with any other sort of explanation or correction of a situation that's just none at all. But we'll come back to this in a later portion. For those unaware, Sketch TV was in my group, the Cloud Palace. And things definitely started out okay. He was the first person to be voted in and the first person to have a 100% approval rate to get in. This showed that people were really ready for him to join in on the fun, and for the most part, he was a nice person to talk to and was one of the most active members we ever had in the group, even to this very day. Of course though, all good things must come to an end around me, and pretty consistently, it's my fault. And that includes your channel. Uh, no, because my channel is still around, and still active. It will probably eventually get to a point it won't, of course, but until then, I'm still here. Look, if all you're gonna do past this point is just give me rude blahs of nothing, then I'm gonna raise an eyebrow at how this video was the one that truly sparked any sort of crusade against me. This was my first role as a leader, and I had no idea what I was doing. I'd argue I still don't have a clue, but I'm picking up as I go on. And over time, Sketch started getting involved in things and picking up bad habits that the rest of the members looked at and started having problems with. Individual instances were used as examples to me, and long story short, because I'm no messenger, I asked people to compile a list of complaints people had with him so I could relay this information to him directly. Why the members didn't do this themselves? I don't know. You'd have to ask them. But my guess would be people didn't initially want to start a fight. But I was trying to break the tension in the group regardless, especially since I didn't want to just chuck out Sketch at the first sign of defiance. Which is what needs to happen to you. I feel like you just aren't listening to literally anything in my video. But if that didn't get the temperature to fucking boil, there's also this wonderful tidbit regarding anything that I've previously brought up regarding trans people in 2018. Oh yeah, nah, we're going there. I'm gonna lose a lot of respect in the eyes of those who look up to and watch me, but, you know, if I'm gonna be honest, explaining how awful I am, this needs to be talked about. Unfortunately that didn't happen and people just glosses over this video as you making mistakes and I'm disgusted by that which is why I got too angry in the first place. But remember guys, he doesn't want people to dislike these videos, so says he at the very beginning of this one. And I would argue that her apology videos were even worse than all of her over videos combined. By no means am I asking people to dislike her videos. But it's not your choice whether someone does accept the apologies or not. Stay mad, see, mauled, cope, I don't care at this point, because given we are halfway through your video on confessions and apology, and not a single valid point has been made, at all, I genuinely believe that you don't have any real problems with this video, but rather are just angry at the fact that I didn't die from the sheer blunt force of the just a robot drama. I know, I know, I'm not here for the jar drama, which is why we spent a majority of your videos talking about it and watching you consistently plagiarize just a robot every chance you get. We'll come back to that point later, but for now, we have a video to complete. Hurt both Mills Kohai and I'm fairly certain Avi due to my own deep-seated, I guess, bigotry and skepticism. Like, there's really no other words to describe it. I feel like a bigot. How could I not be? It's not like I like being this way, but if you allow me to explain. Leading up to joining the CC, I'd met a lot of people in my life who randomly came out as trans falsely to get closer to me because they would feel like I'd relate more to them that way, and I definitely cut them out of my life for it. This developed another bad habit that I have now, though, where I have to find any rationale to tell myself that people who are close to me only came out because of me so I don't get hurt again. And in short, this is a habit that I hate myself the most for and desperately want to break but I've yet to be successful in. And that especially sucks now that I'm in a community with a surreally high trans population. And if you remember my aforementioned Umbris and Discount stream fiasco, you'd probably know that I'm especially worried when kids come out publicly because I don't want them to potentially ruin their life. Though that's another side of double standards. I came out publicly at 15. GG. However, neither of the individuals I'm talking about are kids, so there's no morally based excuse that I have for this. So you're saying if they were kids, it would have been perfectly fine what the fuck is wrong with you? That's literally not what I was saying. Seriously thinking you're only halfway paying attention with this playing off in another tab. Especially since I just got through explaining how it wasn't okay for me to get on to kids for coming out early, emphasizing it as yet another double standard that I had because I came out when I was 15. I'm just saying in regards to Rachel and Avi, the latter of which has aged really poorly, 
I don't even have the moral excuse that I had with people like Discount or Umbris at the time that I yelled at them. Mind you, no, it's not okay either way. I was never saying it was. I'm just saying I have less of an excuse for the two who were adults. During like June or July in particular last year, I had yet another slight mental breakdown. Thought about downing a bottle of rubbing alcohol just so I don't keep falling into this cycle and even went as far as to sip some so I don't gag it up while I'm trying to off myself. By the way, rubbing alcohol tastes terrible. Burned my throat. Did not appreciate. So that explains why I am constantly in pain. I am a poet and I didn't know it. Well, it's good to know Sylveon will use someone's attempted suicide to forward his own derivative bullshit. In other news, grass is green, the sky is blue, and water's wet. What I thought was the end of my mental breakdown, I had talked with Mills Kohai and was too out of my head to just admit that the breakdown was based on a cycle of self-hatred. Again. Because I had thought that maybe I was just jealous that they were able to get help immediately, whereas I had to wait six years to get HRT. Which is worse, but as I said, I'm still a little out of it. And maybe I was, a little, but that wouldn't have justified such a massive meltdown that got them to block me to begin with. And it's about time I did the same thing. Aw, but I thought blocking people was a problem. After all, it was you who made a video predating this one where you called me a pussy for blocking you, so... Shrug? I guess it's only okay when you do it then, huh? God, now let's get into the garbage of this year because if you hadn't heard enough to convict me of being one legit crime away from being the actual fucking worst, let's go back to talk about the situation of the Cloud Palace and where I went wrong this year, continue to do wrong this year, and hope to not repeat going into the next decade. If you don't want to repeat it, get off the internet. See, you've said this several times this video, but it's never not going to be a defeatist and counterproductive statement to make. I'm just saying. That feeling when you impersonate someone, use their catchphrase every chance you get, and not understand what said catchphrase means. Only just to Sylveon things, I guess. So, the Cloud Palace in February of this year released a video on a commentator called The Cam Project. It apparently wasn't that good, what with the fact that the commentators in the video rallied against the crediting of artists, put in actual NSFW into the video, and just overall came across as unpleasant and out to attack the commentator in question over something as stupid as being involved in the conversation about Mary Sue's. Personally, I didn't see those problems myself when checking over the video. I did spot a point that I didn't like and told the editor of the video to fix the audio balancing, but as far as my problems were concerned, that was it, though I probably should have checked more thoroughly considering what followed. This caused kinda a really big and arguably unnecessary backlash over the video, people saying that this was apparently the worst the community had to offer, like ever. I was told to delete the video from both sides, from those within the Cloud Palace because the video was bad and causing people anxiety attacks over just the mere mention of it, and people outside the Cloud Palace because the use of the NSFW art and how it looked bad that someone who was a minor was using the NSFW to begin with. This went on for a while before I finally took down the video, well, privated it, but regardless, the original upload isn't public anymore. Though I know there's a couple of mirrors floating around despite how much they bother me. This comes back to me though because when I had finally took down the video, I spoke out against everyone telling me to take it down in a very hostile way of doing so. Something that I fought tooth and nail over being the right in, but honestly, given how far we're into this, do you honestly think I expect you to believe I was at this point? I wound up calling specifically the detractors of the video children, and overall disregarding the following criticism that I could have dealt with the situation better. Once again, this was my anger getting the better of me, thus showing that even nowadays I can't fucking learn from any of the mistakes that I've made in the past. Then leave. Turkey was too powerful. That's right, boys, we're bringing back the bit. Sylveon doesn't want to care about actually commentating, so neither will I. No matter how much I address them and tell myself to fix them. There's also the whole I haven't been that defensive thing. When I initially wrote the original document most of this came from in January, I initially laid out an outline of things that I wanted to fix about myself. Habits that I wanted to kick so I could work on being a much better version of myself so I don't keep putting myself into these stupid ruts where I get myself into trouble over my own vapid stupidity. One of the things that I had listed off that I wanted to fix was being overall less defensive when people step to me or critique me in some way, shape, or form. Try to go back to the one good aspect 2016 me had in better taking and trying to apply criticism, despite how much I didn't at the end of the day. While I can say that I've succeeded in being less defensive with confidence, it's- Well, that's fucking bullshit. Once again, the first screenshot has a level of context behind it regarding your insistent need to come back to this video to tell me how garbage it is. 
I actually didn't actually say anything to you until that point, so that's still less defensive than always speaking out when someone critiques me poorly. Second screenshot continues to be literally the opposite of me being defensive. This now makes the second time you used a screenshot that goes against your claim. Third one is just me blocking you, and if I have to repeat how hypocritical you are in that department, in literally this exact video even, then I'd be frankly wasting my breath at this point. But even if you weren't, that's still not defensiveness, that's me not wanting the constant confrontation. I mean, on the one hand, a lot of the relationships that I have had with people have been dwindling for a bit now, but it has unfortunately gotten to a point where my pre-established trust issues and paranoia of others is seeing a much higher spike than normal. I'm not one that likes the concept of guilt by association, but it's hard not falling into that trap when every time I turned around I could expect someone to cut ties with me silently. And that's a good thing no one should have any ties with you. You are like an endorsement from the KKK. If your name is associated with anything or one it gets tainted. Friendly reminder that your entire brand is associated with me, because your entire brand is me. So do you endorse the KKK? <laughs> oh wait. So what have we learned during all of this? Well hopefully it's that I'm terrible, and when I say that I'm terrible it isn't just self-deprecation trying to get them pity points. Nope that's exactly what this is. All you do now is sympathy bait people. Now, see, you can't know that. You just have self-deprecation to go on. Self-deprecation that, mind you, you agree with when I speak it, but I digress. The point is, this is an assumption of something that you cannot actually know without knowing me better than that. And boy, you just don't. As it stands, this is the equivalent to you saying someone who legitimately had suicidal thoughts was merely suicide baiting for a... Right! Forgot you went on to do that too, literally after defending Hopeless Peaches during that whole thing too, but once again, we'll come back to that point. A lot of that in this video. I have legitimate reasons to believe that I'm one of the worst people on YouTube and people are just kinda okay with it. Then why are you still here? If your pet dog finds a limb, he'll get all defensive and keep running away with it until he finally eats it. It only happens with young dogs though, so don't worry, he'll grow out of it eventually. Don't get me wrong, I've been trying to not be terrible, but- No, you haven't. Fixed an issue where you sometimes couldn't compliment Stephanie. Sadly, my inability to learn from my mistakes doesn't give me much hope in my future continuing on. Then stop. Add it, Mr. Stabby. Does that mean I'm going to stop YouTube or stop commentaries? No. Yes. That is absolutely what needs to happen. Okay, but why exactly? Like, you keep saying it needs to happen, and call back to these videos, plus the comments that the Omega left on the former video. But considering how you've had nothing to say about this video thus far, do I have any reason to take this seriously? Besides, I even go on to explain why I would stick around and why others don't have much reason to, even saying that I could afford to lose subscribers, effectively telling people that they can and should leave. Oh, but that doesn't fix the problems. What problems? At most, I'm being accused of being a bad friend and kind of an asshole, which I'll concede. But these aren't problems that require some mass deplatforming crusade. Plus, these aren't even things Sylveon has brought up yet in this video. He's just brought up garbage nothings that don't add or subtract to the conversation in the slightest, telling me to leave in response to a now two-ish year old video that he refuses to actually prove I haven't gotten better from. Bah, they're fun, this isn't a resignation letter. As long as I have fun doing commentaries, I'm not gonna stop doing them. I made this video because it's time that I be honest with myself and my viewers. Whether people stick around or not is none of my business. In fact, it'd probably be better to lose some subscribers considering how otherwise dead my channel is. I mean, it's not gonna get any better. Why would it? I never wind up fixing these mistakes and just rehashing the same ones over and over again. Then what's the point? Leave. <sighs> you really are that dense, aren't you? Like, even taking out your Twitter for a sec, you literally said earlier that my self-deprecation is just a ploy for sympathy points. Now here you are, once again, agreeing with my self-deprecation. So is this me saying some real things about myself, or is this just me talking up a game to get people to feel sorry for me? Please, pick a lane! 
spoiler alert, it's neither. And to finally address that point, because I was waiting for a better time to address it, and what better time than the moment you actively counteract your previous feelings towards this... It's time for a lot of self-analysis. So it's obvious that you really don't understand self-deprecation entirely, because if you did, you'd know that while it is often used to appear modest or to seek attention or validation, it's often seen as a form of self-harm. There are a plethora of reasons why we can even pick it up to begin with, but in a much more typical sense, we as humans pick it up to begin with because societally we look at conceitedness as an inherently negative trait. Basically what I'm saying is typically people don't like being seen as narcissists. However, it's a habit that's easy to get into and becomes a vicious cycle once one starts believing these negative thoughts. Full disclaimer, it doesn't exactly help matters when you're surrounded by people who enforce those negative viewpoints of yourself either. Y'all might know that phenomenon as the illusory truth effect, but to keep on track, basically the idea is when self-deprecation stops being a joke and more of a habit, then it's self-destruction. You can really start telling when one has reached that stage of self-deprecating when their self-esteem is affected. And this can come in the form of poor confidence at one's abilities, something that confession shows in fucking spades, feeling a lack of control, something shown throughout a lot of the alt-CC drama portion, difficulty asking for help, I'd be lying if I said I didn't, you can ask literally any of my friends or family, worry or self-doubt, to be honest, Pretty much all of Confession shows that as well. Trouble accepting positivity, which can be seen in a lot of places on my Twitter and YouTube, particularly anytime someone says anything positive about me in video form. Negative self-talk, which you'd be daft if you don't see. A fear of failure, a poor outlook on life, which this parts of Confession show. A lack of being able to set boundaries, sometimes to the point you're sacrificing yourself for others, and possibly other signs that I don't really need to get into here. God, I actually do need help. But in any case, when one reaches that point, it's not merely attention-seeking. It's also not necessarily true coming out of the individual saying it. A person who has reached the point that I was in this video would be trying to find any excuse they can to further put themselves down. I was showing less and less self-esteem as time went on, and Confessions is quite obviously that breaking point. Mind you, no, this kind of explanation isn't trying to excuse any faults, nor am I saying that my apologies weren't genuine regardless of how I feel about the individuals now. I still am deeply apologetic for the shit that I did do to hurt people, and whether or not they choose to accept it is up to them. I also want to clarify that I'm not looking for sympathy when I talk about my mental state. I think it's important that I should be able to release these feelings without being accused as such. In fact, with confessions and apologies, I actively wasn't looking for sympathy, which is why I hearted and agreed to comments that continued to put me down. Guys, for y'all out there who thought that was the purpose of my videos, I'm gonna be blunt, y'all are fucking stupid! Confessions and apologies are mental breakdowns, plain and simple. This was the most vulnerable I had ever been on this channel, and it shows in just about every facet of it. Yet, Sylveon sits here and makes the claim that because I didn't leave the internet, that this video was all for the funny sympathy baiting and attempts to make people feel sorry for me with no regard to whether or not I changed a lot of my attitude going forward into the content that I produced afterwards. I get it. Sylveon's 15. Expecting him to know about psychology is expecting a fucking lot. But I'm tired of letting this spiteful little twerk push this narrative on me that leads him to justify impersonation for the sake of his kicks. <sighs> anyway, we have a little bit more to go of his commentary on confessions, and apology is like 7 minutes, and we have a little less than 10 minutes of Sylveon's video to go, so... Onwards, I guess. Maybe one of these days I might be able to hear him correctly and this video will become irrelevant. Nope. During cannibalism, a pop-up window has been added explaining in more detail what is happening and telling about the tastes of human organ. That would be nice, but I'd be horribly lying to everyone if I didn't tell you all to not hold your breath at this point. I've shown to be nothing but a constant cycle of patterns. If I break it, cool. If I don't, more people will wind up leaving anyway, so at least I can take solace knowing that I won't hurt everyone at all times, and I can at least say I gave you all warning signs. I mean, that's one good deed, right? Go fuck yourself. Summon Deer Decoy has been renamed to Summon Deer Koi. Very important. Okay, that video was completely terrible. If only you had any sort of anything relevant to bring up in response to it that proves just how terrible it is. Because as it stands, your commentary thus far hasn't proved bunk. Right. Guess I'm not as finished as I thought I was. 
Not only because my confessions video missed some vital things that probably should have been brought up, but because I just didn't at all do enough to actually apologize for the misdoings of what I explained within the initial video. Who would have guessed? People who were expecting me to apologize. In any case, bees now become angry when baby bees are attacked. I feel terrible about it all. I've been feeling terrible about it all, hence why I even wanted to make confessions to begin with. The fact that I'm even here today making a follow-up shows that I'm not quite fully there where I want to be with caring about the feelings and well-beings of others, and I fully understand if those who are hurt don't wish to accept the apology given today. I know I wouldn't initially. Apologies are only the beginning, really. It's what follows those words that matter, and that's what I hope to work towards in the future. LIAR! Cool. Got any sort of evidence to prove that I lied about this? Any at all? Yes, I will keep asking rhetorical questions when the situation arises. It's almost as if Sylveon is driven exclusively on the spite he has towards me for shit he wasn't the target of, nor around for, and is only seeing everything from a clouded and biased perspective retrospectively. Yes, I am getting tired of it. Yes, I am glad we're close to getting done, and yes, I would prefer if he fucked off. Thanks for asking. Making those words matter. It's been a year and you still haven't. And you still haven't explained anything, so I guess we both can't get what we want. Drug chemical effects are modulated by body size, so elephants need a lot of fear to get hammered. Squirrels, not so much. I'll just have to work at it and hope to do a better job at it. But I am sorry. For everything. LIAR! This is an even worse instance of you merely dismissing what I'm saying by calling me a liar outright. Because simply put, you can't know that. You can make guesses based off of the actions that I've taken after I apologized, but not only do you A, not explain where I haven't tried to change from, shocker, and B, haven't shown any proof of me being intentionally dishonest with my audience. You got any screenshots of me talking shit behind the scenes? Got any brain scans to say that I'm not actually sorry and that I was lying during this video? You got any proof at all that I'm lying about being apologetic for actions that drove me into a mental fucking breakdown? Because I highly doubt that they even exist to begin with. I apologize to Dylan and Jar for being as antagonistic as I was early on. Especially to you two, because I know the hostility towards the two of you were especially unwarranted on my side. I also apologize to Dylan, especially considering what I did in regards to recording an old conversation we had about the alt. Especially without your permission, which is illegal. I actually had no idea until well after, but yeah, no, that was bad of me. Actually, 2019 doodle, it, uh, wasn't. Colorado is a one-party consent state. Fun fact. I apologize to Sketch for pretty much everything that I've done to him. Things that I didn't even recall in the initial video, the things that I mentioned directly, and everything in between. You say that yet in this video, you state that what he said was invalid because he groomed a child. Almost as if these two videos were a year and a half apart, bro, huh? Especially since Joni outed V as a manipulative groomer in 2020, a time frame between these two statements, and could have given me plenty of time to reflect on the shit he had said about me. Once again, I know Sylveon doesn't understand time in the slightest, it's a mythical cryptid to him. So is growth and maturity, so I'm not surprised, just disappointed. I'm not defending what V did, but this is quite the contradiction, don't you think? No, because enough time had passed with new information coming out that recontextualized a lot of what was said. A contradiction would be, no, I don't know, treating self-deprecating statements about myself as actual statements about how I feel, before saying that I'm only saying those same statements... Uh, for sympathy baiting in the same video. You know, as an example. Breaking his trust with others, glossing over his video on me for a joke, undermining what he had done for me overall. The guy actually had my back during a lot of situations, and I honestly took that for granted. I know to him it seems like I'm merely glossing over everything when I could go into so much more detail, and I apologize for that too. I really do. V could probably run circles around me with the amount of mistakes and misdoings I did to especially him. There's honestly too much to account for. I definitely hurt him the most often out of everyone else mentioned today, as I didn't really value the friendship that we did have enough, and just to hurt the guy in this way, it's quite frankly disgusting what I've done. Anyone else feeling hella uncomfortable? Good, because that's how I've been feeling for a good chunk of this video. Ray, if you do see this, I am so sorry that you ever had to deal with me. I don't know if I can even make it up to you at the end of the day, but I can sure as fuck try by at least trying to put a step forward and trying to break any and all bad habits that have led me to this point. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be a journey. Hell, I fully expect to slip up here and there on my road to recovery. No, don't try to come back. Just leave you have done enough.
It's the best thing you can do at this point. Ghosts will no longer be obsessively calling you five-ish times a day to see if you want to come over and hang out. But if there's even a chance that I can show change in my life and change as an individual, then maybe, just maybe, there's a chance that I can show you all how genuine I am and how much I've not been happy with myself. Nope. Animals are no longer denied the joy of eating flowers because they are categorized as a gift. If there's anyone else I'm missing, which I'm like 500% certain there is, I do fully apologize for whatever I've done to hurt you too. That may seem like a little limp-wristed and yeah, I get it, considering all the broad apologies that I'm giving out here. But considering how fucking garbage I've been as a human being, as a friend, as a colleague, I highly doubt that I could even begin to apologize to everyone individually. Is this supposed to be an edited screenshot of my channel being flagged down for copyright, or is this you alluding to someone else who has? Because you put these images on screen so haphazardly with no point being made, it becomes anyone's guess. And since the majority of your points are on parallel to old school and deleted SCC memes of old, I can only get Yes, you're once again telling me to leave the internet, with this screenshot being wishful thinking. This is just supposed to be a step in a better direction. I definitely want to improve myself as a person for the rest of this year and those that follow. There's no reason why I can't just treat others with respect. Then why has nothing changed? It has. You're just jelly. I don't particularly take kindly to shit starters who spam my notifications with petty bullshit and go on to impersonate me when I don't give them the attention they desire. And as much as my history seems like a cycle, I do hope to one day break that. This should be a good way to start doing that. Fly down channels that infringe on copyright? Because there's a particular nuisance I can start with, regardless of what confessions may have people believe. With that, I hope I at least fixed some of the issues people had regarding that video. It wasn't meant to be a pity party, and to be honest, the fact that some people treated it as such only shows that I'm really bad at showing honesty, but I hope that can turn around too. Nope. Okay, now let's look at Doodle Tone's third apology video. Hello, Vice. This is an apology video regarding the previous video. I'm sorry that your sense of humor is trash. Try fixing that, and maybe you'll realize that my prank was funny. I am genuinely apologizing for this. If you don't believe me, then hear the sad music. I'm also crying, so now you have to feel bad for me and buy all my merch. Anyways, that was the apology video. Make sure to like and subscribe for more epic apology videos. It's beautiful. Now this is why I want Doodle Tones to leave. Yes, it would be better if she improves. But it's not that she's getting things wrong. It's that she's blatantly lying. How do we know she won't start lying again? Now is there some drama with the Omega Shore? But I don't care V could run over both Laura Bush and Caitlyn Jenner. But it still doesn't change that Doodle Tones fell madinky looking ass is a liar. To everybody watching this video, if there's one thing I want you to take away from my video series on Doodle Tones, it's that this is a cautionary tale about how not to act on YouTube. And we end, not with a bang, but with more nothingness to flavor the already nothing nothing that we got. I'm sure it's plagiarized too, but at the end of the day, I don't particularly care by this point. Sylveon says that confessions and apology are the real reasons I should leave the internet. But as I've stressed many a times prior, he didn't say anything that really led me to believe that I haven't actually changed from these videos. When you really look at all these claims, they're either horribly misconstrued, plagiarized from someone else's perspective, and oftentimes avoidant of what I was saying to the point I really do wonder if Sylveon actually paid attention to the core of his crusade, or at least what he calls the core of his crusade. To just tell me to leave the internet on such shaky grounds doesn't tell me that you want me to leave the internet for any betterment of people or, you know, to improve myself. But more based on a petty grudge, you don't even seem to understand properly yourself. In general though, I feel as if the leave the internet mantra is lazy in its own right. Because with me, it's not like I'm out here grooming children or soliciting nudes from other people. I'm, at worst, an asshole. One that said some head-ass, out-of-pocket garbage, didn't take the feelings of others into consideration, and reacted on emotions. Which, no, none of these things are particularly admirable traits, and that's why I sought to fix them. But regardless of if you think I have or not, these traits are things that ultimately are fixable. So telling me to leave the internet with that in mind, it shows me that you'd rather tear someone down and tell them to counterproductively stop striving for betterment 
over giving any sort of constructive critique that one can use to strive for set betterment. It's not really good critique, to put it mildly, and much more to the case if we were to go off this idea that this is the correct answer, then we're setting a precedent for individuals who struggle with redemption to disappear over putting in the effort to try and better themselves. Effectively, cancel culture. More to the point, I doubt Sylveon would want to set such a precedent either, considering his actions on Twitter and YouTube comment sections. So let's talk about those. So I noticed while making this video that Sylveon left yet another commentary in the form of a comment on my first video on him. A lot of it is what I've already covered in chapters 2 and 3 respectively, so I don't really feel like making chapter 11 addendum a thing. But that said, I do want to point out this one particular moment in Sylveon's comment where he seems to allude to all of his commentaries on me being disowned. And I want to explain why I don't care. First, because if you recall, Sylveon had disregarded any and all instances of a video being disowned by claiming that there could still be criticisms of a video. Twitch, as I want to stress, is indeed correct. But while that may be true, it is also true that holding people to the same standards if these things may have changed is wrong. However, Sylveon, doesn't show signs of change. He's still using my characters and brand. He still disregarded videos ages by Foxwell's comment section. He's still using old situations as if they're modern. He's even rehashing points from his second and seventh videos on me in this comment. Like all that's changed is that he's not actively posting publicly anymore and that he has actively spoken out against these sentiments. But that also rings hollow considering how many times Sylveon has apologized to save his ass before. Literally, all my criticisms up to this point and after are still valid, and I can, and have, proved it. So, shrug. If you want me to believe you at this rate, you're gonna have to try harder than not at all. I want to put it out there that as of scripting and recording this portion of the video in mid to late November, Sylveon's Twitter has been mostly inactive in the posting realm. He still likes a bunch of stuff on Twitter though, so I know he's not dropped this account entirely. Sylveon's Twitter was and is a rather special place that one not look at so lightly. I've already covered a lot of it briefly in my second video on the guy, and I've alluded to instances of the primary problem earlier on in this very video, so a lot of this portion is going to retread a lot of that ground, but not only do I have much more to say on the matter now that I'm at this point, but there are a few new things to consider when looking at these Twitter posts moving forwards. For starters, we should keep Sylveon's opinion on hypocrisy in mind. We've seen how he reacts to the Tukukui argument, so being able to defend said hypocrisy is now off the table, but he's also made a video talking a bit more about this subject. Now I've talked about hypocrisy a lot on this channel, without really explaining why I hate it so much. The reason why I hate hypocrisy it shows that a person either has a complete lack of self-awareness, or they'll apply a moral code to other people while not applying it to themselves. Which, no duh, of course this is the problem with hypocrisy on a ground level. Even when using the Tukukui I could have told you that. Now, personally, I'm actually willing to be a bit more forgiving with hypocrisy myself, because human nature is rather fickle, and we're pretty quick to defend our own actions when we do something we see as a minor offense. Also, I tend to try to look at things more nuanced when a conversation about hypocrisy gets brought up, because, to put it shortly, being consistent in every situation is just not possible. Sure, it's not exactly something to smile at, but hypocrisy is just a part of life. With that said, we see here that Sylveon is heavily against being a hypocrite, with him detesting such defenses of hypocrisy. So you'd think he himself keep to a strict moral code so as not to be labeled a hypocrite himself, correct? Someone who bullies children and picks fights for attention doesn't deserve views. You mean criticizes them? A year ago sweet kids in the community were terrified about getting a negative review. So I reached out and asked him to be nicer. Pretty hypocritical for a reviewer to get mad when criticized. Grow up. Right? One of the criticisms about our community is that there's too many beginners copying bigger people. Freaking duh. How many times did kids pick up a camera for the first time because of their favorite vlogger? Everyone starts off copying because they don't know how to make something new yet. How do you function? Mind you, this is still stuff from his YouTube. We haven't even gotten to Twitter yet. 
Like, it's really hard to look at Sylveon with much nuance when there's no gray area with this kid. So keep this in the back of your mind as we move forward, because as we deep dive into the three Twitters this kid has had, you'll see just why he has easily been the most frustrating individual I think I've ever dealt with on this channel. You know, if the four hours of content wasn't enough for you. Before we do that, though, let's first look at the easiest thing to note on any of his accounts, bar none. The infringement and impersonation. As you might have noticed, Sylveon uses a lot of my old original stills, and even some more modern ones. His brand is my brand. He's done everything in his power to make that known, except when he hasn't. Either via trying to take my characters and rewrite their history for his own gain, or to run around looking for art raffles for free fan art of my characters. There was one time in particular where he straight up lied to an artist of Elizabeth being his character, and tricked them into making art for him under the guise that she was his character. Upon realizing the mistake, the artist came into my DMs profusely apologizing for making fan art of an impersonator and deleted the original upload. However, Sylveon went on to claim these as fan art of him and furthered on into entering art raffles, even as late as some of his most recent posts. Oh, but he never claimed he was me. It's the artist's fault for falling for such an obvious clone, right? Sylveon likes to skirt around his responsibility a lot, but what he fails to realize is that this is not at all a defense. As well, some bystanders like to point to my sub count as an excuse too, but while I may have 14,000 subscribers, when compared to much bigger YouTubers, I'm still, quite frankly, a nobody. Especially since a lot of these artists that Sylveon are going to would most likely not instinctively know who Doodle Toads is. This is why it's a problem. When it comes to impersonators of someone like Mr. Beast, we can all look at those and understand that they're not the real deal. Mr. Beast is a very famous name with one of the biggest platforms on the internet, so imposters have not much ground to stand on unless they're, you know, scamming children, which is gross either way. But like my general point stands, the average shut-in would likely know not to trust a Mr. Beast account without verification. Meanwhile, I'm incredibly niche. Most people on a grand scale would not know me if you put me in a lineup. Most people probably don't even know I exist. My platform does not stand out and has even less of a reach even in my own circle sometimes. Add that to the fact that I don't even get half of my subscribers' attentions half the time, I barely overshoot a fourth. So as much as people want to point to my subscriber count as some gotcha end-all be-all why are you complaining point, that's not really valid here when my subscriber count means literally nothing. On that note, because I'm as niche as I am, my circle of reach is really small, so there's a really high chance that reach doesn't overlap with much of the artists that Sylveon is going to for free art. Seeing a name like Doodle Clones might not mean anything to them without knowing the already established original account you're pinching from, yet you run around acting not only like you own the characters, but that you created them. Sylveon also likes to bring up the counter-argument, oh, but the SCC uses characters they don't own all the time, so why is it bad when I do it? trying to bait us out on hypocrisy again. Avatars are something that the SCC gets critiqued for a lot. Hello and welcome to Uncle Bonza's Character Still Emporium. We got everything you need to make your quality commentaries. We got loads of stuff around here like angsty anime boy, anime girl in both cutesy and rebellious varieties, and... Yeah, no, that's all. You already know what a slideshow commentator is. It's simple, it's an individual that uses PNG, for example, anime characters in their video. The difference is that they slide everything in between sentences, and most of the time these images are just not transparent. The vast majority of video makers around here use avatars of various anime characters, various video game characters, even some famous people, which is... What? Yeah. The slideshow commentary community is a commentary community composed of commentators that use avatars that don't belong to them, that are from either a video game, an anime, um, cartoons, or comic books, what have you. Just something that doesn't belong to them that they use as a placeholder avatar, so that way there's something for their audience to watch. Like there's literally people out here who literally put pictures of anime avatars as slideshows and then they go, they go. Hell, all they do is screen cap cartoons or animes and use images with different backgrounds, shading, and many more issues. Because obviously they don't draw their own pictures, because that will take effort. They just get random pictures from Google Images. 
This is a trend that you'll notice a lot in this particular community. They use a fictional character from animation and lazily edit it into their videos. Set images are usually from TV shows, movies, and anime. <laughs> Disgusting. When you use a picture from an anime or you use a My Little Pony character as your avatar, it doesn't say anything about yourself. It just shows, hey, I like this show. Basically, it's a shitty slideshow with pictures of different resolutions with backgrounds cut out and stolen fan art from fucking Google Images instead of the generic gameplay or standing in front of the camera talking. The images themselves are completely random, ranging from screenshots of the character from the show they originate from, usually without the background removed, fan art, PNGs all ranging in different sizes and art styles. With the slideshow CC, it's like, wait, who is that guy who used Kalula again? No, 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 not that one. Yes, that one. And I'm just tired of seeing the same character just appearing randomly and it just gets annoying pretty quick. Okay, so... You're taking screenshots from an anime, and you're making it your face, and your voice changing your voice. Why? You guys aren't roasting anybody, you guys aren't burning anybody, um, you guys are doing nothing more but arguing about stupid stuff using screenshots from cartoons or images of characters or abstracts, however you want to put them. You're not burning anybody. You really aren't. And I know most of you are kids. To me, I think using avatars, even if your own original characters, looks just as dumb. However, in this scenario, it's especially interesting to note that there's a very big difference between the two actions of we in the SEC and you. First, it's way more obvious from a creator standpoint when someone uses a more franchise character like Tomoko, Muffet, Eevee, or XJ9. These are characters from shows and games that an average person would likely recognize. And even if they don't recognize the source exactly, secondly, there's a level of disassociation from the character from a more popularized piece of media than someone's OC. An OC is more personal, closer to the heart of those that create them, and in some cases, there's aspects of the artist written into the very fabric of the character especially if it's a self-depiction. Whereas a more franchised character probably has multiple character designers pitching in with ideas and concepts. Not all, mind you, but this is often the case. Third, slideshow commentators have been using copyrighted characters way less frequently over the years. I myself have been spending most of the time using Elizabeth or my self-depiction in my videos if I'm not opting in to using gameplay or drawing footage. And finally, fourth, we don't go around pretending like we own the characters with the intent to get free fan art of the characters we do not own. We don't pretend as if we're clones of another character, we especially don't do it with real people. We acknowledge our roots, and most of the time we don't try rewriting other people's characters to fit our own branded narrative. We might use other characters in other art, but we're not character thieves. And we've been trying to lessen being art thieves over time, something you seemingly have no intention of not doing yourself. Instead, you'll acknowledge you've been impersonating me with fake screenshots to justify it, upgrade your thievery whenever you can, and sit there game-jacking so you can try to be a part of my lore. God, talking about all this makes me miss the days of Scribble sounds. At least they were more transparent with their intentions and actually bothered to create characters that didn't require people to know who I was going into their work. I wonder if they would let me repurpose those characters for anything. In any case, it's dishonest of Sylveon to sit here and pretend that they aren't doing anything they themselves deem as wrong. You wouldn't have to clarify to people that were not the same person so frequently if you truly thought this was okay behavior. I wouldn't have said you wouldn't have to link to my toy house so often, but you also no longer do that, so... While it was a morally great depiction of art theft before, now it's just straight up art theft. No cap. And no, your YouTube bio doesn't count because not everyone who stumbles upon your videos will look at that. <sighs> That's not even getting back into the shit with drama and art commentator Kai Weiss. I know right now it's a bit of a hot take to come to his defense, given his thing with falsely DMCAing Akumu, which is something I didn't support and actively spoke out against, by the way. Me clarifying that will make more sense later, I promise, but antagonizing the drama and art CC and then deep sixing his channel outright, but I do hope he's getting the help and support he needs that he can recover from what looked to be his own mental breakdown. 
You do truly hate to see it. In any case, Sylveon has a habit of targeting other creators that had drama surrounding them at some point, and one of those individuals was Kai Weiss. I'm not sure what Kai's beef with Harley, TBS was, and being perfectly honest, I don't think I care. However, once Kai had blocked Harley, they called him out with a rules for thee but not for me mantra, which I have my opinions of. They're not particularly positive, but nor are they relevant currently. What is relevant was what Sylveon had said in retort to Harley's tweet. Can we just stab him already? This understandably got people pissed off. One of those people being Omnia, another commentator in the drama Art CC. She called it out publicly, to which a very concerning pattern arose that you could see within the replies to that. There were people who genuinely thought that I was Sylveon, saying something like that about Kai. Now, don't go and pester these people with, oh, you fell for it comments, because apparently these people have been getting these comments, but they wouldn't have much reason to just assume that I had a vindictive impersonator. Plus, you know, they've already been corrected on it. But that said, it got to the point people had to come in and defend me in the replies. This is not as easy as they shouldn't have fallen for it as Sylveon would like it to be, because when he's doing this stuff under a very similar alias and plastering my character that effectively makes my brand all over his page, people are instinctively going to connect that back to me. This is a dangerous action that we can't merely overlook because of something as trivial as the size of our platforms or our ages. Sylveon also has tried dismissing this as a critique against him, apologizing for what he claims was a joke. But not only did he eventually go back to yelling at Kai afterwards, claiming Kai perhaps was lying about suicidal thoughts he had when the DACC were jumping on him every week, but also, I don't know if I care enough to allow Sylveon to merely apologize without any repercussions considering what I've been dealing with thus far. After all, it was Sylveon who dug into my past to pull out the dark Ghostwind tweets to use against me as some sort of moral arbiter despite the hypocrisy of him doing something very similar to Kai. It's Sylveon who says that I can't stay online to apologize, who says that I should delete my channel because I messed up a lot in the past, who says my apology is fake because I decided to stay online, and it's Sylveon who doesn't care if something is a dead drama seen by his constant living in the past and argumentation on Night Tide Eye's second video on him. He's also gone after old videos that do us disowned, treating them as if they were brand spanking new. Let me just say that just because someone disowns a video, then it doesn't mean that it still can't be criticized. A lot of people who are against the CC delete their older videos. You can cover a video that's been disowned, but it helps if you have actual criticisms and can leave your biases at the door. As you can imagine, Sylveon is incapable of this. I'm also going to bring up that he goes after old dramas and pretends like they're still relevant. He did a commentary on a YouTube video that Smart did on Quinn Reviews, milked Fox Goodman for all he was worth, and covered a video Nero Skew did five years ago. At first I assumed that Sylveon was trying to be a parody of what he perceives the Neo CC to be, particularly Dual Tones, his videos just come off as that intentionally bad. Given the lazy points that don't really debunk anything, how he barely if ever give his context to the video he's covering, and the plagiarism he was guilty of in his first two videos on Dual Tones, as well as a comment left on our channel, which is word for word what just stops at the prison made loop. So personally speaking, at this point, I could give less than a fuck of what Sylveon apologizes for. That's not even considering the aforementioned shit regarding him defending the Omega as adamantly as he does. Where he was called out, not once, but twice for this shit and apologized both times before turning around and continuing to defend V. Or when Carmen Ryder presumed that Kai was a suicide baiter and Sylveon flip-flopped like crazy all over that, calling Carmen out after Peaches spoke out about this behavior and then putting turbo thrusters on his backpedaling bicycle once Carmen apologized to then claim that Kai was never a goddamn victim in the first place. By the way, why should Carmen get allowed a pass for apologizing after doing really shitty things online? but I'm the one that has to delete my account? Could this be rules for thee but not for me? Is this double standards and hypocrisy? Ah, couldn't be right, because Sylveon takes a strong stance on hypocrisy and thus would never be a hypocrite himself, correct? On the note of Sylveon attacking other creators, how's your crusade against Connor the Waffle going? Yeah, I distinctly remember Sylveon had this whole spiel where he was getting onto Connor's case for theft, Linking a video by Rhythm Red, spotlighting a lot of shady things that game reviewer Connor the Waffle did. In this video, Rhythm Rev talks about how he thinks Connor's videos are boring, which is subjective, 
that Connor is pretty bad at delivering jokes, which is fine, but not much of an expose. And then we get to the actual complaints that Rhythm Rev had. For the thumbnails of these videos, he puts in the branding of the channels that he's referencing. Motherfucker, what? He's blatantly using the branding of other YouTubers to attract more views and make people think that they're actually going to watch a video made by the creator, or one of similar quality. Which Sylveon would never do, right? But even more egregious is the fact that Connor steals fan art. Not occasionally, but all the Connor compulsively steals fan art created by artists, mostly from DeviantArt, and uses it for his thumbnails, even when it has nothing to do with the video at hand. Which Sylveon would never do, am I right? Even his waffle guy in his logo is a slight recolor of the waffle guy from the music video to the Perry Grip song, Do You Like Waffles? It's not even subtle, man. And Sylveon would never do this, hmm? Actually, art theft is the main thing that Rhythm Rev talks about in his video. Unsurprising, considering it's in the goddamn title of the video, and considering that's the video that Sylveon was linking to at the time, you would think he would actually be bothered to watch the core of the Connor Crusades. But the minute Dalsmik called him out on doing the exact thing he was calling Connor out for, he backpedals with this, oh, I'm referring to the footage stealing Connor does. I've never stolen footage, and linking to a second video on Connor by user Sharp. This, however, is also bullshit. I remember the Doodle the Artist video where you took Bejeweled Fanboy's entire speed art of me and pitched it as if you were drawing it. You know I've just realized, despite me being a doodle, I haven't doodled anything. I think I will draw myself. Yeah, apparently this video was taken down, but not because of any remorse. Apparently it was because Seppi Paws fought tooth and nail to get it taken down, so like... Free game, I guess. Same goes for your shameful display of branding theft for your Patreon. But, man, for someone who takes such a hard stance on hypocrisy and wants to sit here and expose and try to run off as many people as he can, you sure don't seem to understand how much a lot of your fights come back to blow up in your face. Okay, so y'all remember that video I made like two days ago talking about Harley and how he uh, made a misconception about me, like how I mocked his grooming? Yeah, so uh, I made a tweet adding him so he could see that video, and he responded with this tweet that I'm going to put on the screen right now. Which is, uh, basically just him deflecting literally everything I said, basically saying, I did not mock your grooming. And he basically just said, okay, well, in my opinion, this is mocking my grooming, so not nothing you said matters how are you not mocking his grooming you literally say in the screenshot you show that harley is using grooming for views how is that not mocking it oh you would know this o2l wouldn't you sylveon yeah don't think i didn't catch wind of your they deserved it response to someone claiming you made fun of an assault victim harley made a stunning and brave response to me after giving me a fantastic ultimatum that being i take down my videos on him and he would take down the one video he made on me or he'd make a second video on me, painting me in essentially the worst light possible. I didn't accept option A for two reasons. The first one being because since I made my videos, people have surprisingly been happy in more ways than one. People that have been afraid of being targeted by Harley and his horde of confused rainbow stripe. Okay, transphobe. Okay, like, don't get me wrong, I too find this Sin guy to be unpleasant, but I cannot take your doubling down on this guy being a huge transphobe seriously when you have all of this shit under your belt. Wait, what did you just shoot? Chaos Key? Yourself? The footage? Lana? Ryan? Oh, my Chipotle! That's a good question, actually. You bring no excuses to random gunshot noise. It just comes off as, well, pointless. I think they were implying that he tried to shoot the intro but shot Ryan instead. Wait, was that the hard part? The motivation it would live? Where where'd you go? He, he, he. You fool. I killed her while you weren't looking. And it seems that you're next so get ready diaper boy. 
There were two that caused situations in of themselves that I do feel like mentioning here as it truly demonstrates the problem regarding me either needing a fucking filter sometimes or at the very least needing to control the situation better. While this isn't exactly chronological to the events that I've been talking If you're so insecure in your identity that you want to take estrogen slash testosterone and possibly mutilate your genitals just to regret it years or off your shelf later maybe you shouldn't call yourself being a different gender. You'll apply a moral code to other people while not applying it to themselves. Not to mention this, this, and this tweet, all where you go out of your way to be a transphobic bigot for the sake of shooting at a person you don't like due to a misplaced crusade. Then you want to parade around on Pride Month acting like nothing is wrong. You doubled down on this fucker too, so I really don't want to hear it from you. Regardless of how transphobic sin might be, you can't sit here and hold people to standards from ages ago, say that you are knowingly doing so, then get angry at people calling out tukukwis and saying that you hate hypocrisy this much, all the while having these instances of hypocrisy littered throughout a year, a nearly a year of you being around. This isn't even a case of this being years old shit like it is with most other people you cover. This is months, at most. Let's see, there's the Septi pause videos, specifically the first one where you made a response to Septi's first video on you, and then in the comment section complained that during Septi's second video on you to keep my name out of it, quote, otherwise you won't listen. But then it's me that refuses to watch videos on myself and listen to the criticisms. Like, bitch, you won't even listen to Septi pause when he tries to convince you to stop being an obsessive stalker because, and I quote, you don't want to stop. Once again, this is another instance of blatant hypocrisy at best coming from you, and malicious Machiavellianism at worst. I'd be willing to believe the latter, I mean after all, for someone who claims that I'm some lying manipulator, I've already demonstrated your lying, so now let's talk about your manipulation, or at the very least continued hypocrisy. Neither would be particularly great at this point though. I remember these little DMs you posted publicly on Twitter, but for what reason I could only guess. This was done shortly after you started posting my old 2014 fint art to your page and by the looks of things someone reached out to you and asked what happened. You posted Septi Paws' first video on you, showing at least some level of remorse, or at the very least fear that you'd be found out as an obnoxious leech, and then followed that up with a thread I posted that, by the way, wasn't about you and I think it's pretty goddamn telling that you thought otherwise since you never posted in the series to look back comments. After Berserk starts calming you down, you start by saying you won't change. Gee, now I wonder what you would have said if this was someone else saying that. I mean, it's not gonna get any better. Why would it? I never wind up fixing these mistakes and just rehashing the same ones over and over again. Then what's the point? Leave. This had to be after this video too, considering you link it in the very next screenshot. Considering you feel as if this coming from me was manipulative to some degree, I can only imagine what it truly is coming from you. Especially since you claim that everything you do under the Doodle Clones alias was merely just a character. You'd know Just a Robot and I aren't on bad terms and haven't been in years. You'd also know what the Omega did to me and others as you- That there was supposed to be Doodle Clones the character talking. Doodle Clones is well a clone. It's in her name. Now you see why I took issue with that claim. With it, this becomes either a gross publicity stunt to get attention, or manipulation of people who don't know of your actions to get them to be on your side against the evil doodle tones. Without it, it still has the possibility of just being incompetent levels of hypocrisy given how you acted towards the exact same sentiment being shared by someone you have a beef with. Yet, it's okay when you do it, apparently. So, ultimately, I'll let you pick your own poison, Jack, because in no way does this make you look good. Oh. And let us not merely forget your video on my Medicare video. However, fetishes are things that infinitely fascinate me as I find it to be interesting to see where the weird of the world begins and how far it goes. Wow. We are only 10 seconds in. And you have shown people how disgusting you are. You fetishize my characters all the time. Like, I don't know what else you want from me in response to this. You're constantly talking about how thick Elizabeth is, and if you're not, you're drawing cake sprinkles around those characters, or sometimes on them, to imply ejaculation as best as you can. If you're not sexualizing my characters, you're being hypersexual all over your Twitter accounts, or at least what's left of them, and that of course isn't mentioning the aforementioned defense of Lollicon. Like, even if you want to say that it strictly isn't child pornography, fine! But as I said, you can't deny the fact that you are defending a fetish. With a video like this having been made prior, and fun fact, isn't even disowned as far as I can tell. 
we can definitely say that this is yet another instance of hypocrisy on your end. Oh, but what if he's learned or has changed his stance on all these opinions? Surely if you want people to stop holding others to all these old things, surely it should start with you, right? Well, given how little Sylveon himself seems to care about possible growth from an individual, I feel like it's only fair that we at least acknowledge these moments of development one way or another. Personally, if you want my theory, I barely even think Sylveon himself believes half the shit he's advocating for, so this ultimately comes off as hypocrisy he's falling into because he wants to hang around with a more interesting crowd, I guess. He wants to hang around Jar fans, he wants to be in good graces with Jar, he wants his senpai to notice him, or at least that's my working theory. It's either that, or he is the least consistent person in the room, wanting all the rules for thee, but not for he. I know he takes issue with people who are like that. Honestly, I'm getting rather tired. Uh, we get it by now. It's an absurd amount of just infuriating apathy to holding himself to the exact same standard he wants to hold to just about everyone who's on his shit list. You know what, Sylveon? You hate hypocrisy this much, yet you are the most hypocritical person I think I've ever seen. It's quite fitting, isn't it? To close out, I want to rapid-fire lightning round recap of a thread that I posted on Twitter compiling all of Sylveon's more contestable behaviors. <clears throat> So as Sylveon wishes to bring these old, addressed, and apologized for 2016 tweets up, well fine, allow me to play this game of his by dragging up receipts, as I'm sure he would love me to do so. So let's start with some simple harassment. The easy stuff. The stuff that ultimately is bad, but not the worst. There's more than these, mind you. These are just a random selection I picked out of a lineup. To continue, here's a few extra tweets I would like to point out. So you don't claim these as your own, then? You never have? Well, that's a plumb lie, isn't it? We got these screenshots of possible manipulation. We got some transphobia, followed by Sylveon acting like he's pro-trans rights when it benefits a grudge he has towards another individual. Some racism. His willingness to defend Lollicon, while also seemingly worried about a fictional character being of age. We got sexual harassment of other users. Here's one of Sylveon supporting NFTs. Then these four tweets, you can feel free to figure out what's wrong with these in succession. Here's some other blatant contradictions. Look, all I'm saying is, Sylveon, you can say whatever you will about me, but I can point to God knows how many instances of shit you've done. And that doesn't even account for the con contents of these videos that you seem to be not proud of. Especially grasping at little scribbles, which other than being blatant plagiarism of Just a Robot's Prison Mate Luke video was also word for word a comment that I got onto it and really nothing else going for it. I'm tired of covering this. We've been here talking about Sylveon for roughly four and a half hours now, and I believe most of this well has been dried up enough to get the picture. However, I'm not quite finished yet, because I want to bounce to the next chapter in this video and talk about the bystanders to Sylveon's behavior. I want to also address something, again, regarding Sylveon and his opinions of the Omega, because I was shown a screenshot of Sylveon actually reaching out to V's inactive second channel. I can only guess to try to talk to him about how bad I am or something. Look, kid, I don't like you, but take care of yourself, alright? Like, you knew by this point V was someone who previously groomed a minor, why do you think this is a good idea? Now, it's a good thing V doesn't use the Fluff V account anymore, else this situation could have gotten a lot hairier, but still. What this continues to tell me is that regardless of how much Sylveon will sit here and tell us that he thinks V is indeed a bad, despite how much worse I apparently did to him being a bad friend, he's still willing to put that aside for what I can only guess is to try to get more information for his crusade. <laughs> In a perfect world, I wouldn't have to deal with these things. Mainly because in a perfect world, I wouldn't have been a huge cunt, but also because I wouldn't be the new Chris Chan to some weirdos online. People really like making life harder for others, and websites don't help either, only really enabling bad behavior like this by allowing mass production of throwaway accounts. It sometimes feels as if bullying is never enough for some people, because making lives miserable is apparently a fun and worthy endeavor that we must reward instead of look down upon. I should know. I remember when people got angry at me because I lost my edge with people citing my meanest videos as the attitude that they wanted to see from me. But it actively takes more effort to be a fucking prick. Fun fact. 
you are putting in more energy to actively get in someone's way. Think about it. Would it be more effort to leave someone alone after being blocked? Or to keep making new throwaway emails and throwaway social media accounts to keep messaging these people the things that got you blocked in the first place? On that note, it requires you to actively be thinking about a person to want to stalk them instead of, you know, leaving them the fuck alone. It takes more time out of your day to dig for someone's docs information so you can plaster it everywhere you can in comparison to the alternative of just not doing it. I could go on, really, but my point, I think, has been made well enough. It costs nothing, not time, not energy, not resources, to not be a dick. But again, the internet rewards the alternative, oftentimes ignoring legitimate problems on their sites. I know Twitter certainly didn't do anything until I started sending DMCA's towards Sylveon's posting of my characters everywhere, despite acknowledging that what Sylveon was doing was against the terms of service to begin with. And even when not posting, he's still breaking those terms by even having a third account to begin with. Ban evasion is against their rules, but you can't even report someone for such an act, so... It's certainly not a heavily enforced rule. Personally, I'm someone who advocates for making new accounts costing a sum of money to make. I feel like people would start cleaning up their act if they knew it was going to cost them financially. It wouldn't get rid of the problem, not by any means, but I definitely feel like it's a good way to reduce it. In any case, the rewarding of bad behavior doesn't stop there, mainly because it's hard to make laws for an international space like the internet is, much less enforce them. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but doxing, while can be seen as breaking a lot of different cyberstalking laws, and often does, the act of getting someone's information is actually totally legal and there are plenty of websites that allow for such an action to be done. On that note, it's impossible to actually report a cyberstalker unless you have their information too. So if it's a one-sided stalking fiasco where the stalker is using a VPN, then, uh, tough titties, you're unfortunately just gonna have to deal with it, I guess. On the note of VPNs, I'd like to personally thank Express and Nord for making my life a living nightmare. I understand y'all have a job to do and getting those promo codes out there certainly gotta pay the bills, but it just makes it that much easier for people to do shit like this without getting caught. And digital investigators don't take these things all that seriously either, I've learned, as I tried calling one on Sylveon only for them to listen to my plight and call what Sylveon was doing to be ultimately harmless unless he was actively threatening my life. So, I guess fraud is legal now. I won't lie, with this combined with the Shurgan situation I was dealing with prior, I'm incredibly frustrated. Combine that with all the other shit that I've dealt with even before that, I've forgotten what it feels like to not be stressed all the time. This shit's probably actually killing me, and no one cares. It's great. Truly. But remember guys, I'm not a victim. I didn't have someone go directly to Sylveon to make them art so that they could use to circumvent DMCAs with the sheer intent to keep Sylveon's crusade going. No, that... that clearly didn't happen. I'm just imagining it. I'd like to talk about some of Sylveon's supporters. Well, one in particular, but I will briefly mention another to clear my basis. Like, I originally didn't have much to say about Carmen Rider's hand in all this. They defended Sylveon by calling them a troll without much knowledge going into it, and when corrected, did eventually apologize if albeit resent it sometime after. I do have my opinions of them and their content, but it's not exactly relevant to the discussion, and in all honesty, they've been keeping out of this situation, so... Ultimately, it's whatever at the end of the day. I can vibe with their existence. That said, I will raise an eyebrow to them wanting to use tweets from 2016 to completely dismiss and discredit me. I, I feel like that's a little bit shaky, but... For now, I can vibe with their existence. Now, Studio Needing More, on the other hand... I want to talk about this dude. Because they've been a special brand of thorn in my side about this whole thing for a couple months now. This segment is about to get pretty heated, fair warning. They came in as a bystander thinking Sylveon's impersonating antics were cute. Already a red flag in my book. And followed that up by posting a speed paint on their channel describing the situation they were portraying in a very undermining and dismissive way that painted the situation as some sort of wrestling promo. And capping it off with encouragement to Sylveon. Considering what all I've explained to you in this journey thus far, you might be understanding why I immediately took a negative opinion of this individual. Like, way to underplay the harassment that I've been dealing with for, at the time of your speed paint, nine months. 
Though if that wasn't bad enough... Hey there, it's me, your absolutely despised deviant here. I hate how condescendingly antagonistic this comes off as. And for a mere announcement video too, it seems a little off-putting, don't you think? But in any case, this is a video Neat made announcing an interview with Sylveon they were going to do at the time. Seems harmless enough, right? Comes in to explain their intention of collabing with, by this point, someone who they deemed a controversial figure. It's not an inherently bad thing, uh, but the intention itself becomes contentious the more you watch the announcement. Please understand that my next video is by no means an attack on tones, but instead was made entirely 100% for fun. Not to be misunderstood by making fun of tones, it was purely made with the express purpose of just being plain dumb entertainment. So please don't, you know, look way into the themes I'm going to be focused on that video. If you can do that, I would much appreciate it, thank you. This won't make sense until later, but please keep it in mind. And yes, I'm well aware of what the reputation of clones is. And I do understand a little bit of their intentions with tones. However, this was a while back and I'm using my own personal experience with clones in my next video. This also becomes much more important later. But even then, as it is, it becomes a concerning red flag. You think you understand Sylveon's intentions towards me, but yet you still claimed it as a while ago seemingly unfamiliar with the stuff on Twitter that was going on at around the same time. This was posted on, on October 10th, literally four days prior, Sylveon and I were fighting over screenshot subtweets regarding him pretending to be trans. Because he, a cis male as according to himself, responded to a Trans Awareness Tuesday post that was calling trans people cute by self-deprecating, saying he wasn't. This of course not being the first time he used the LGBT as an aesthetic, this was obviously something I called him out about, to which he denied up and down he was doing, and I only called him out about that because this little idiot wanted to try and weaponize my dead name for a quick shot at me literally a day prior. So you saying that you understand a bit of Sylveon's motives is bullshit because if you truly did, then you would have known to at least a degree about his Twitter actions. Spoilers, you admit later on that you had no fucking clue, but we'll come back to that. And I do apologize preemptively to Tones if she finds my next video in poor taste because it involves clones. Again, I don't support attacking and harassing of another person or persons. Apology not accepted. We'll get into why later. By this point, I was already weary of Neat and his motives. Call me paranoid, but calling Sylveon's actions cute after knowing what he does is, frankly, a red flag. Like, we're talking about the kid who went around saying the n-word towards someone explaining why the word is not okay before turning around and denying he even did so. Or that it was a while ago, which, considering your crusade about me, Sylveon, uh, very hypocritical. And that's not even accounting for the fact that you went around and returned to standing behind those very actions and beliefs. I wouldn't exactly call racism cute myself, but, uh, go off, I guess. Nor would I call impersonation cute. Something that, by the way, I noticed Sylveon started denying he was also doing by the I'm a clone defense, which is not a good defense at all. The idea of a clone in this context is a duplicate or an imitation, a second copy of someone if you will. You're impersonating the likeness of another individual as a clone, which is impersonation. Like, duh. Fuck, it falls under YouTube's impersonation policies even. The only reason I can't report him is that he's not literally uploading all my content to his channel, but he still falls under the descriptor of the kinds of channels YouTube looks at as impersonation. There's really no defense for this, Sylveon. You can't parade around as a replica of another person by using that person's brand and characters while pretending like that doesn't amount to at least a form of impersonation. And Neat doesn't help their case either, as his comment says that they don't think stalking an impersonation is cute, but the idea of copying someone is. Like, hello? Do you not realize that those are effectively the same things in this context? In any case, Neat had set the groundwork for his interview with Sylveon. He claimed it was made for entertainment, and perhaps it was. But even entertainment can have problems behind it. Hey there, is this Doodle Clones? Out of boredom, can I interview you? I've been thinking for a long time now about making a video about you and how you are a clone of Doodle Tones. 
I want to point out that the character we see on our phone there with the panty shot. Yeah, that's supposed to be Selvion. Well, supposed to be Doodle clones, but you get my drift. It's effectively the same thing at this point. Now, I get that Sylveon has labeled the clone character as the age of 24, the same age as the person he's impersonating, so... No, this isn't Lollicon, though it's not like Neat or Sylveon would have a problem with that either. Is Lolly CP? No, it's not. By law, 2D lollies are fictional, and because no child is being exploited, it's not CP. Actual pedos are predators, they seek to harm kids, because to them it's part of their disgusting fetish. But fictional characters? No. Of course you the viewer may disagree, after all, a kid is still a kid. Well that's where I'm going to poke holes at. Remember the FNF Sky drama? Where's Sky? A fictional character in FNF was created by a 13 year old but that she wrote Sky to be a 19 year old? But because a bunch of breadsticks couldn't tell the difference between fiction and non-fiction, they immediately forced the fictional character to become 13 just like the creator and blindly called anyone who drew fan art of her as a pedo. That drama was just complete garbage. Yeah, here's a seemingly spicy fucking take. How about we just don't draw porn of characters that belong to minors? Like, I feel like that should be a fairly no does statement to make, especially in Neat's case here, because he's willingly drawing etchy and pinups for a 15 year old. We get a fucking panty shot of Sylveon's character within the first handful of seconds going into this video, and spoilers, it's only going to get worse from here. You're such an enigma that I can't stop thinking about how cool it is that a clone of someone exists. Keep this on the back burner, we'll come back to it later. Question 1. Why doodle tones? A strange choice in my opinion. I thought it would be an interesting idea. And welcome to another episode of Your Character Doesn't Work. Sylveon obviously answers this first question out of kayfabe. I think I'm using that term correctly, right? I'm not a wrestling person. This character as established wouldn't have had any choice of being a clone of me if we were to go off of everything else this interview winds up going on about. However, here, Sylveon answers, I thought it was an interesting idea in response to why Doodle Tones, which, by the way, doesn't explain anything. Uh, it just explains why you chose to be a clone to begin with, and good god, that is a terrible excuse. I'll actually go into why during my closing statements because I actually have an interesting bit of two cents regarding this whole lore of his. Oh, what part of Doodle Tones inspired you to model yourself after her? Just as Sylvian was the one who created me, and I have no idea why he never told me. Interesting. So going back to this in-character, out-of-character flip-flopping, you can begin to see why the it's a character you dip argument doesn't hold up. Sylveon starts out of character and then dips into character once he seemingly doesn't have an out of character answer to the question that Neat places on the table. I've seen Sylveon do something like this before between he and Joy's Bank where he was called out for doing this exact practice, though I do wish I had gotten the full scope of the argument in question when it happened. Now ah well, same with the as they say. But back to the topic, to sit here and flip flop on your in character and out of character states only muddies the everything to do with that character. Once your in-character state starts blurring the line with that out-of-character state, then your character just becomes an extension of you. You can no longer use the play of a character as a shield from any criticism going your way. You also wind up making unintentionally funny moments like this one. Alright, what's the best part about being a clone? Nothing. <laughs> it's horrible. Then why even be a clone to begin with? Actually, on that note, that's actually inconsistent with the character we've seen up to this point. Like, I could do a whole ass character analysis using Sylveon's videos on me where he plays the character of Doodle Clones, and you would see that Sylveon originally wrote the character to be a very loud and proud clone of me, even as late as September. But now that he's being interviewed, suddenly Sylveon becomes this neat little anime kohai. I have thoughts and opinions, but I'll keep them to myself. Just know that I think this is pretty dangerous for a 15 year old to play into. Moving on, but you said that Justice Sylveon created you. Can I ask where they are now? We both live in the land he created me in. Oh. So Sylveon is a he. Interesting. Does that mean you're both in a spicy relationship by chance? Yes, you could say that. Gross. I'm also particularly off put by the idea of. That being the first question he asks Sylveon when hearing that a Sylveon, a uh, Pokemon, lives with a human female. Just 
Gross. What kind of relationship do you have with Sylveon? Friends? Lovers? Co-workers? He's my boss! Would you say that your relationship with Sylveon is positive? That is something that I cannot answer. It's fine. If you can't answer because the question is either too difficult for you to answer or it's too much of a sensitive topic for you, it's fine. Didn't you guys literally get through insinuating there was bestiality going on? Ah. Alright, off topic. Is Lolly CP? The answer is no. <laughs> yeah, the question was really dumb anyways. This was just a whole nother level of why. It almost feels like you hand-fested that in in order to make a point because you knew Sylveon was on your side a month prior. This was so unbelievably unneeded that it hurts. One more question so we can complete this interview. Any messages to Doodle Tones? I don't have any messages to her. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be a journey. Hell, I fully expect to slip up here and there on my road to recovery. No, don't try to come back. Just leave you have done enough. It's the best thing you can do at this point. Yeah, no messages at all. Okay. Alright, this should suffice. Thank you for the interview. So, with that being said, till next time, clonesy. So will this be made into a video? Also, sorry if I come across are desperate or something. I'm not used to doing things like this. <laughs> You're so kawaii. I'm also gonna include this in the interview. This entire interview has been just so much fun. Thank you for being in my video. Uh, gee, I, um, well, the thing is, I'm really scared of how I come across to people. Well, according to her fans, you're a troll. According to Tones, you're a harasser. Though, according to me, you're such a kawaii gal. So, you're kinda all over the place. Anyone else feeling super uncomfortable right about now? Also, who in my fanbase says Sylveon's a troll? I'm pretty sure we all came to the conclusion he wasn't after Septipaws' video on him. You can't be a troll and be afraid of being cancelled at the same time. Can I ask you something? Ah, uh, sure. Go ahead. Do you hate me? Oh, what? What's this? It's just... It's just with all of the rumors spreading around me and all of the pictures people have of me, I wouldn't be shocked if you're going to use this interview to hurt me, too. What? No? What? Yikes, you're such a downer. I already said before that I'm doing this interview because I was bored, and also because I find you interesting. And again, I thank you for humoring me. I really hate this interview. I don't know if you can tell. This little bit here towards the end feels like some hella strong emotional manipulation on Neat's part to try to paint Sylveon as this misunderstood individual that people are much too hard on, when that is so unbelievably the opposite of what the case actually is. Sylveon had come in to harass me for confessions and apology and had been rallying for my deplatforming for months before this interview happened, and was even continuing to antagonize me as little as a week prior to this interview. But if you watched this video in a vacuum, you'd think Sylveon is some meek, small, oo bullied babu who the community just decided to target for no discernible reason. It's so tone-deaf and ignorant on Neat's part to sit here and paint such a manipulative picture of someone who's already being manipulative in the interview. Oh, do you hate me? No, bitch, he literally just interviewed you and let you fucking roleplay for a handful of messages. You being in character gave us literally no answer to anything actually about you, and so this interview wound up being pointless anyway. What a crock of shit. Anyways, if that wasn't bad enough, Neat also wound up making a video trying to educate Sylveon on trying to be me. Which, ugh, fucking stop! Hello, Doodle Clones, or other people who just wants to copy Doodle Tones. This video is just a very short tutorial on audacity. But essentially, people with the most basic of intelligence is capable of doing this without me teaching them. Neat. Oh, I don't support impersonators. Also neat. Here's how you can impersonate Doodle Tones. Bruh, I don't know what you expect of me at this point. Neat has got to be the single biggest enabler in this entire drama. 
It's almost as if he knows that's what he's doing at this point, but uh, more on that later. But that, of course, is besides the point. I'm assuming that Doodle Clones is unaware of Audacity. By this point, we've heard Sylveon's voice, Nate. It's been some time since I've bothered to make a video on someone. Okay, this guy's microphone doesn't sound the best. I recommend you get a Honey Bee Worker microphone. It's actually the microphone I have but almost never use. Because my real voice sounds like garbage. Which continues to beg the question of how much you actually know of the person you've been so vehemently defending and encouraging up to this point. I guess it's not really a necessity to watch every video from someone in order to defend them properly, and ultimately it does seem like a rather small thing in comparison to everything else this video does, but you seem to know nothing, and it's very telling. Also, I'ma be honest, not a single outside source seems to know how I change my voice because everyone seems to believe I do it in Audacity or Vegas itself. Ignoring how that would only work for videos and not live streams, but in any case. Next I'm going to demonstrate to you how far I can truly imitate tones. Remember that clip I told you to keep in mind? Well, let's imitate it. Ah, uh, okay, this is seriously going to bother me if I don't bring it up here. I get it, you're trying to be a robot. That's your character. But the way you speak is grating. It's as if you're a child, trying to sound very cool. But you wind up sounding very edgy, if anything. It makes me want to play dodgeball in traffic. Also, incidentally, you also kind of copy just a robot here, too. Oh boy, do I love it when you start out with an ad hominem attack. <laughs> oh my god, I actually did it pretty well. But remember, impersonation isn't considered cute, unless you're Sylveon, apparently. And in which case, Neat will happily put together a tutorial so you can just be close enough to me to where you can fool you and only you into believing otherwise. <sighs> God. This will come back later, by the way. Just this entire fucking video. No, but do you understand now, Doodle Clones? The reason why I'm making this video is simply because one of the most common criticisms towards you is the fact that you use text to speech. So my intentions is to teach you how to use your own voice. If you hate your real life voice, well look no further than Audacity to fix it up for you. Text to speech was not an issue that I took with Sylveon, neat. I took issue with his constant harassment, his need to impersonate me, and his plagiarism. Not once did I even mention his text-to-speech in that video. Where are you getting that from? So not only did you not know of his Twitter shit, not only did you not know of his channel shit, but you also didn't know of the criticisms lobbed against him by the original person he's impersonating. Did you really know anything coming into this situation? Like, I'm genuinely asking at this point, or did your boredom tell you that blatantly enabling this kid who's obviously doing something to get backlash would just generally be a good idea? I know you go on to tell Sylveon not to continue harassing me, but that's only one issue out of, like, three that I initially took with Sylveon. That doesn't even account for everything I brought up in my second video on Sylveon, which you seemed to just kind of ignore outright. Was your video out by the time Neat got involved? Yes, my second video on Sylveon was released in June. Neat didn't get involved until September at earliest. And my biggest complaint with Sylveon in that video was the brand theft and impersonation, even giving examples as to how what Sylveon was doing could have been incredibly harmful to me. And when people see my character Elizabeth, it's very reasonable to presume that a person will think of it as myself, as demonstrated by the reactions to a tweet Omnia put out, talking about a tweet you made asking if Kai Waste would get stabbed already. Those replies are still around, by the way. Maybe not all of them that think I said that are up, but those deleted tweets still have people correcting the misinformation. Fuck, you even have Nani and those replies being fooled for a bit, so you can't sit here and pretend like you're not doing any legitimate harm by doing this. But Neat doesn't seem to know about this video here. I don't know if he just doesn't know of this video's existence, or if he doesn't care. Given this thread where he thinks I haven't addressed the shit Sylveon's been doing, I'll give him the benefit of doubt and say it's the former, but this video was a more up-to-date on Sylveon's behavior at the time that the original commentary I did on him wouldn't have properly been able to demonstrate because it hadn't gotten as bad as the first video that I did on him. Now I got video 3 here at about 5 hours in length, so I hope you've been paying attention. Also, Doodle Clones, one more thing. My intentions is to help you improve as a content creator, so I would really much appreciate it if you don't pursue Doodle Tones anymore. I mean, yeah, I understand where you're coming from with being a doppelganger and how doppelgangers devour the original. 
But the thing is, Jar forgave Doodle Tones, their drama ended ages ago, Doodle Clone admitted that she was wrong, and since retracted her opinion on that drama. During our interview, I sensed that you had no ill will towards her at that moment. That's the best joke in this chapter. And I apologize if I sound too preachy. It's just I really do enjoy your presence, so it would break my heart to see you get cancelled. But I digress. Mm, just... Just wait. I do have thoughts about everything. I'm sitting as patiently as I feasibly can 95 pages into this fuckfest. But I have thoughts. This was the last video where Neat put on this facade that he actually gave a fuck about what I thought about this whole situation. That'll make more sense here in a second, because after this enabling garbage, people started taking more note on Sylveon and Neat's behavior. One individual, who I will just call Keith moving forward, wound up making a thread on Neat's behavior, pointing out how Neat kind of romanticizes Sylveon's worst traits. Neat responds... Poorly. He starts by strawmanning Keith, by acting as if Keith's problems with Neat's behavior is that he pushes Sylveon to continue harassing Neat, when, as clearly stated in Keith's original thread, the problem was the romanticization of the harassment, with Keith's examples being the How to Be Her video, the interview, and the announcement to the interview, as well as the speed paint, but like, honestly, that's not super relevant. I've already addressed why I think these videos were problem. You kinda just came into everything knowing little to nothing about what you were getting into, yet still wanted to act as if Sylveon was this super moey moey Japanese high school anime character, and I also made a point to highlight certain instances of you, yeah, flat out romanticizing Sylveon. Can I ask you something? Ah, uh, sure, go ahead. Do you hate me? Oh, what? What's this? It's just, it's just with all of the rumors spreading around me and all of the pictures people have of me, I wouldn't be shocked if you're going to use this interview to hurt me, too. What? No, what? Yikes, you're such a downer. I already said before that I'm doing this interview because I was bored, and also because I find you interesting. And again, I thank you for humoring me. And I apologize if I sound too preachy. It's just I really do enjoy your presence, so it would break my heart to see you get cancelled. But I digress. To act like these instances didn't happen is actively ignoring your own content. You may not be advocating for harassment, but you sure are supporting the impersonation he's doing. It's ignorant and incompetent at best, and malicious and uncaring at worst. This thread continues with ReviewTube coming in to clarify in a very generalized way what the issue is, without really fully understanding the issue themselves. Neat kinda derails into a brief conversation about Sylveon's gender, which, as I've already pointed out, is male. And even if you wanted to argue that Sylveon prefers to go by she, her online, then that's fine. You can call them whatever. But one, I'm referring to the kid behind the fuck tree. And two, considering how little regard Sylveon has towards my gender as a trans woman who has been on hormones for years, I can give kind of a fuck less about whatever theirs are. As Neat put it, if you don't respect their gender, why should they respect yours? Though I do believe Sylveon goes by he, him pronouns regardless, considering his based Twitter bingo has him cross off he, him with no added trans thing marked off by him, so... Whatever, I'm sidetracking. Back to the point. Once the thread gets back on topic, Neat goes right back to strawmanning by asking where he supported or enabled Sylveon. It's here that I should have figured I was about to deal with a brick wall, but give it time. We'll get to my contributions here in a second. That said, while I'm here, Neat, do you realize you can accidentally be harmful? Like, even if you didn't intend to support or enable this behavior, which, by the way, you actively did, but bear with me, you can still wind up doing so through your actions. Now, I don't believe for a second you don't support Sylveon, you may not support the harassment portion of what they were doing, if I'm to give you the benefit of doubt, but there is no way you can convince me that all this pep talk garbage pitching this idea of how cute it is that I have a little clone isn't active support. You're just lying at this point. But even then, without supporting the harassment outright, you still supported it through your actions, willingly giving Sylveon extra fan art of a character he doesn't own making a tutorial about how he can get even closer to impersonating me, or copying me, as you so like to put it. You helping Sylveon turn this harassment into some anime story plot. Like, regardless of your intent, all you've been doing is making my job harder, and I'd very much appreciate it if you stopped. That includes this NSFW story time thing you've announced sometime after. 
We'll come back to that though. Anyway, continuing the thread, Nate tries pushing the how you can be good enough video to try to prove that he doesn't support the harassment. As if that's not a direct counter example to the contrary. Like, Neat, you sat there and told Sylveon how he could make his voice sound like me to a degree. Even if you tacked on the end that you want him to lay off of me, you actively gave him ammunition to the contrary. Like, yeah, I don't want you to shoot this guy in the empty forest. However, I will happily give you a loaded gun to do so. To which gets sidetracked by the ever so annoying don't feed the trolls mantra, which inherently presumes Sylveon is a troll. So this is already quite an interesting array of awful takes and behaviors, but you're also someone who's very clearly valuing your own reputation because you were scared shitless by Septipaw's video about you and you thought it would cancel you, despite knowing that your behavior is not okay, that you're intentionally ignoring Doodletone's apologies and amends in order to run her off the internet. You don't want the very same thing to happen to you over far more serious actions that you've taken. So, yeah. Yeah, spoiler alert, no. But even if we didn't have all this evidence to the contrary, Sylveon has been doing these actions for roughly a year before he went radio silent in late October. There gets to be a point where trolling surpasses that threshold in the actual fucking harassment, which Sylveon had well surpassed a couple months into this crusade. Plus, I had tried ignoring the so-called troll initially for a while before he stopped being ignorable. Remember? For those who are new here and don't know this context, this is just a Sylveon, a Jar fan who found Jar's video on me last year, came to me to leave a bunch of destructive comments on various accounts, pretending to be me whilst at the same time leaving destructive comments like these, and just overall being a general thorn in my side. Obviously, I've blocked them and they relish in that fact, but they still persist and I still stumble into their shit even trying to ignore them, so I feel the need to, you know, finally say something like this. Break my I don't do commentaries on people I don't like rule. Just, just this once. This was all in the video that you apparently watched me. You should have known at least this much. Though even if all that doesn't do it for you and you still want to allude to this idea that Sylveon is just some troll to not take seriously and that I've been wasting my time making this five hour video talking about all this stuff leading up to this point, you also forget that Sylveon actively goes to art raffles for free shit, my man. He's sorting out random Twitter artists, posting my work and my characters all over his timeline, using my brand for his own personal gain, and considering what I've mentioned prior regarding how these Twitter artists won't instinctively know who I am, it would be really easy for Sylveon to fuck around and get me blamed for his garbage takes. Which not only could happen pretty reasonably, but need I remind you, has. Anyway, back on track, the thread continues with me literally explaining what I have here in this video thus far. The fact that he has been kind of enabling and supporting this harassment, even if that's not his intended goal. But yet, Neat is still under this notion that his method of support truly is the best help that we've seen thus far, bragging about how far he's gotten to Sylveon's brain and leading him to no longer make videos on me, as if the videos themselves are the problem. See, Sylveon's last video explicitly on or about me prior to Neat getting involved was in May, roughly four months before Neat even showed up on the scene. By this point, Sylveon's harassment of me was on Twitter alone, and even then a day prior was when we had him bringing up the Dark Ghostwind tweets for roughly the fourth time. So you didn't even do the thing you explicitly thought you were doing in this regard going off of Sylveon's YouTube activity. On that note, this was also around the point you admit you had literally no fucking clue what you were doing. Your scope was so narrow in this situation that you really didn't see the shit that was happening literally a day prior. And I'll come back to this because it gets particularly frustrating once we get into the meteor portions. But in any case, this was incredibly ignorant. You showed up on the scene with nothing and expected to make an impact that was meaningful to the situation, but I don't even think you've gotten nearly as far as what you might think you have with Sylveon, at least not going off of your interview. That contains so much nothing it's not even funny, and anything outside of that implies that he's not lying to you about the shit he was actively doing at the time. Because as I've shown here, he's been willing to do that too. Either way, if your scope is his YouTube, then you know nothing. And saying that you see your own ignorance won't change that when you follow that up with, well, the rest of these tweets. I continue by pointing this out to you in the thread, particularly by highlighting how much Sylveon tries staying in character when called out, how much your interview only enables his behavior, as much as it's probably not the intent, and even elaborating on this in the third tweet following it, to where you just kind of reiterate that you're just here to stop the harassment he's been doing. Like, okay, fine, but she literally ignored the point again. 
The point is that entertaining the roleplay to begin with is enabling this bad behavior you say you want to help stop. As for this idea that Sylveon's insecurities are shown in his roleplaying, that's still not a particularly good excuse when for the most part that's very conspiratorial at best. Like, anecdotally as a kid, I used to do roleplays to escape stress, not to hide any insecurities I held at the time. And even if that is true, that doesn't avoid the possible encouragement you're giving him to continue these actions. Also, also, just because something is made for fun doesn't mean it's not problematic. See, minstrel shows as an example. Or if you want a more modern example, prank channels. I also want to point out the they'll grow out of it part of your response again, as this was something I took issue with in our initial conversation, because the impersonation is the main problem we really have with Sylveon at this point, and saying that they'll grow out of it is kind of just an anti-response. Like, how long do I have to wait for them to grow out of it? To say, just deal with it like you do is only really dismissing the problem outright, and not doing anything except being content with the idea Sylveon had been harassing me, that also assumes he'd grow out of it to begin with, which you don't know. You stated in your video that reporting them did nothing, so why is waiting any different? Hey, remember when in your interview Sylveon told you that their account was banned? I have only expected you to respond to me on Twitter, so... Okay? This is shocking. Completely unexpected, but I can work with this. So, on Twitter, you asked me if I could do an interview with you. However, I don't know how this interview will work. Also, the reason I'm committing here and not on your Twitter is because my account got suspended. Yeah, I guess that idea got outdated. But even then, hold on. What this tells me is that by this point, you actually did know of my second video on Sylveon. Yet you still seem to think it was strictly the harassment that I took problem with when there was a multitude of issues Sylveon had shown by that point. One of which was impersonation! To cap this video off, let's talk Sylveon's impersonation habits, because while Sylveon will go on and on and talk about how they're not pretending to be me whenever they get caught out in this particular behavior, their actions do speak a lot louder than their words here. Sylveon does pretend to be me on his account, the most obvious of things I can point to being anytime he uses Elizabeth as a place to say, hey, that's me, Elizabeth being a major part of my brand here on YouTube. One could get the wrong idea that Sylveon is trying to be my mascot, they're trying to take my brand and claim it as their own. While Elizabeth is not technically me as Susie, she is heavily connected to the alias that I go by on pretty much every platform that I'm on. This is, in its own right, brand impersonation, which is typically an attack that impersonates a trusted company or a brand to trick its victims into responding and disclosing personal or otherwise sensitive information. While I'm not a company, per se, a brand on a basic level is just a particular identity or image regarded as an asset. It's where the phrase, be your own brand, stems from, and when people see my character, Elizabeth, it's very reasonable to presume that a person will think of it as myself, as demonstrated by the reactions to a tweet Omnia put out, talking about a tweet you made asking if Kai Weiss would get stabbed already. Those replies are still around, by the way. Maybe not all of them that think I said that are up, but those deleted tweets still have people correcting the misinformation. Fuck, you even have Nani in those replies being fooled for a bit, so you can't sit here and pretend like you're not doing any legitimate harm by doing this. But whatever, maybe you see that as a bit of a stretch. He's pretending to be Elizabeth, not be you, right? Ugh, well, I can also point to him claiming that my Sona is one of his Doodle Clone characters. I do have a specific character that I draw to represent me as a person. Obviously, me being a pre-op trans woman, I wouldn't want to just plaster my own face somewhere and have that be the crux of it. So I'll go out of my way to draw this little character here to fill in those gaps for me. And sometimes I'll change up that character, either for shits and giggles or otherwise to update the look. And Sylveon has taken that character as well, trying to place themselves in the shoes of the drawn representation of me as a person. Even if you don't want to consider Sylveon impersonating my brand mascot as true impersonation, this has got to be a line, right? If not, how about these tweets where he took to my DDCD Twitter, a Twitter where I play the roles of my characters to answer queries that people have in the world that I built for my story connected to my content, and tried taking my place and answering those questions for me. Is that still not good enough? How about this tweet where he literally implies he and I are one of the same person? How about this tweet where he pretends Elizabeth is entirely his OC to fish for a nickname in my place? Or trying to get free art from, again, Nani? Or how about the time he actually did trick someone into making fan art of Elizabeth, thinking that the character was his? Hello? Am I the crazy one? Did that artist not come to me apologizing for making fan art of my impersonator? 
Like, bruh, you can correct people all you want when they call you out on pretending to beat me, but when you have tweets like this, you no longer have a ground to stand on. By the way, side but related note, I also do not want to hear that it's original to be a clone. You're literally just Fox Goodman, my dude. There's nothing original about having your entire persona be a clone. So you don't even have that going for you. I explain why this action is a huge problem by this point, giving examples of how harmful this could be to both myself and my friend, and you wanted to seemingly ignore that with this reply here, where you use our channel sizes as the reason for why what Sylveon is doing is truly okay. Once again, seemingly supporting this harassment by dismissing it outright as a troll that shouldn't be taken seriously. <sighs> Once again, I hate this idea that when you become a certain size on a platform, you can no longer feel like you're being harassed or that people can't be harmful to you. Especially when that size ultimately means nothing on social medias. I've gone on that tirade already earlier on in this journey, so I don't feel the need to do so again. Just refer back to it. But also, I hate this implication that trolls can't do anything harmful. First and foremost, it implies Sylveon is a troll in this scenario, which as I've stated again and again, he just isn't. But even if he was, a troll is a person who does something directly to get a rise out of someone, and what they do can actively be a danger to someone under the wrong circumstances. I remember covering this exact kind of argument in a video I made back in 2017 using the Steven Universe fandom situation with Zami as my example. For those who might not remember that situation, Zami was the artist that drew Rose Quartz perceivably thinner than that of how she was portrayed in the show before getting bombarded with death threats and harassment to the point it drove this girl to attempted suicide. The part that no one seems to know about though was the aftermath of that, so allow me to explain. She was sent to the hospital to recover and started getting help she absolutely needed until one day she tried reassuring everyone who was concerned about the whole ordeal that she was okay, only to be met with the following message, telling her that she was only begging for attention and that all of the harassment and cyberbullying she had gotten was justified, ending it with, and I quote, You deserve to die. Gee, where have I heard this stuff before? Now, I've heard the counter-argument that the person involved, Matriarchal Muffin, might indeed be a troll whose goal was to make fun of those SJW snowflakes, but here's where trolling can surpass just harmless bullshit into something far more dangerous, because see, Zami was in a very fragile state of mind trying to recover from the targeted harassment she was getting from people who actually believed the stuff that this supposed troll was spewing, which crosses the line of trolling, because A, Poe's Law. Sammy couldn't have known that the person was making fun of those who harassed her to the point where she physically wanted to end her own life, given that unless Matriarchal Muffin was widely known as a social justice troll, then it would come off as just another fuck nugget coming in to push her while she was down. B chose to use the same logic that got Zami into this situation in the first place during a time where she was still in the goddamn hospital trying to stabilize her mind. And C ended it by telling Zami that she is to blame for all kinds of problems before telling her to kill herself again. All she was doing was reassuring her followers and anyone outside of her follower base who caught wind at the situation that she was okay and that she was recovering from a suicide attempt only to be met with extra hate and vitriol towards her. I could also bring up the instances of Chris Chan and Etika, individuals who were both very not okay already, and the internet definitely didn't help matters, uh, just kind of belittling and demeaning what they were kind of going through at the time. Please, let's stop pretending like trolls are the way they were in 2008. It's actually increasingly rare to find a Gyro Hedgy 453, uh, Magical Pocky Usagi, or a Sammy Classic Sonic fan nowadays. Some trolls can and will be much more persistent and increasingly dangerous if just left to their own devices, sometimes. And if under the wrong circumstances, it can affect the lives of those that they're trolling. Dismissing their impact because, oh, they're just trolls and you're feeding them, is on its own a really irresponsible mentality to have its own right, as it just shows content with the possible dangers that these individuals can be to the wrong kinds of people. And, you know, again, in this particular context, it implies Sylveon is a troll after I just got through telling you he wasn't, so you're blatantly ignoring my initial correction, too. Continuing with the thread, quote, I'm not asking you to be quiet. You literally are, though. Need I point to your don't feed the trolls mantra that you just pulled a second time, dismissing his actions because I'm a much bigger YouTuber in that mosquito analogy that followed it. Your dismissal of continuing to report Sylveon with your is waiting that for them to grow out of it any different. The idea that they'll grow out of it to begin with. Like, ever since I showed up in this thread, all you've been doing is telling me to shut up and not address the shit that Sylveon was actively doing at the time. Maybe you're not explicitly saying the words shut up so bluntly, but you keep insinuating that not giving Sylveon the attention you think he's wanting and hope that he'll just grow out of it is the better option, which is effectively saying nothing about the problem and hoping it'll go away. You're telling me 
to shut up about this. Actually, even without calling back to previous tweets in this thread, you're still telling me to shut up about this because you're insinuating I'm not learning from people due to the fact that I'm speaking out against someone who has been harassing me all year. But I fucking digress at this point. We continue with Neat missing the point for why this is a problem, while also putting blame onto the artist who quote unquote fall for it. And his example kind of blows, actually. Like, you're trying to compare what Sylveon's doing to a Family Guy episode that was played for laughs? The fact that Peter and James were so vastly different was the point of the punchline. It was the crux of the humor throughout the episode. Here, though, it's not as obvious because Sylveon is targeting people who wouldn't know me to get free art using a character that these people wouldn't know. Like, how is this not obvious to you? Hell, you yourself go on in this very thread talking about how you needed to ask if Sylveon was an alt account of mine. So, why the fuck are you putting such an onus onto people for making a similar assumption? When people see my Sona or Elizabeth, the face of my channel, beside such a similar naming scheme to what my brand is, then regardless of if it's an exact point for point copy or not, some people are going to make that connection. The blame should be put on the person who is using that brand without permission in the first place over those who make the assumption that the account is in some way representing the person behind the brand. I also want to point this part out where Neat even concedes to the idea that Sylveon hasn't made any attack videos in like five months by the time he got involved. It still wants to pretend like he's gotten closer to changing Sylveon's behavior than anyone else has, but we'll come back to this. We then come to some really frustrating mental gymnastics from Neat because after I explain that Sylveon goes around and claims my character as his own, Neat gives this really bad excuse that artists are only making an assumption of what Sylveon means when he says draw me while posting Elizabeth under this image. To which I have to ask, how dense are you? Like, I'm not even gonna beat around the bush this time. If this is your idea of a good argument, you're an idiot. Sylveon is incredibly persistent in pretending like my characters are his. The examples I gave in this thread, even, are against your counterpoints here. Nani asks for people to post their OCs to redesign in a video. Sylveon gives Elizabeth. Wolf King Kairos asks for people to give OCs that he'll give a nickname to. Sylveon posts Elizabeth. Cassionia Arts shows interest in drawing Elizabeth in a maid outfit. Sylveon directly says that she doesn't need permission to draw fan art of him or use his content. Insinuating Elizabeth is his character. This isn't arguable need. You show here that you are purposely willing to ignore context, turn a blind eye to the situation in defense of someone who you say you're not defending the actions of. This is especially stupid when you realize that you even concede to the idea that Sylveon was misleading. Your point actively fails here, and you choose to be intellectually dishonest about this because what? You don't want to admit that maybe your cute little kohai is a malicious twerp with a grudge? Ugh, this is frustrating. I'm getting riled up about this, yes, but please understand what I've had to deal with thus far. We are roughly five hours into this video because the situation has been going on for a year. And to have someone come in and make excuses for this behavior, enabling it with new fan art in a support outlet where you allow the bad behaviors they have to thrive, and ignore any dissenting opinions from even the victim of this situation, going on to try and silence them even... <sighs> yeah, I'm a little pissed off. I'm pretty tilted right now. I'm gonna be straight honest here. This whole thread is kind of one of my least favorite parts of this drama, especially knowing how you've been ignoring me the entire way. Even as far as to ignore my videos, talking about my viewpoint of the situation, coming to a totally unrelated conclusion built on strawmen. You also try to convince me that Sylveon doesn't hold animosity towards me, which is a blatant lie if the rest of this video doesn't prove that enough. Oh, but the videos were from months ago. Yeah, but the thread where he weaponized my dead name surely wasn't. Nor were any of the posts after where he edits his screenshots to call me a mental patient. Like, I link you the aforementioned thread that contained evidence of him pretending my characters are his. Something that, need I remind you, he was still doing by the time this discussion happened. By the way. And that thread started on Sylveon digging back up old tweets from 2016 to continue making his same doodles is bad point against me that he's done many times prior. Just a week prior to this conversation, he was labeling me on the same level as prison mate Luke, Daft Pina, and Cosmodor people that Sylveon has shown animosity to in the past. We had the conversation on the 11th where I asked him to let me breathe, to which his reply was no. 
You're doing a hefty amount of context ignoring here if you're willing to believe Sylveon isn't still on this crusade of his because these screen caps were from months prior. Oh, but that doesn't mean he still holds animosity towards you. Uh, September 14th, we had a conversation between him and this Nightwing account where he was showing exactly that. No matter if it was back in March or as late as September, Sylveon shows he still holds true to these beliefs. So it's fair to assume that these older tweets yelling at me are in some way still relevant, unlike in comparison to the tweets I made to Dark Ghostwind in 2016, to which I have apologized for, and Sylveon knows that. We have a, frankly, annoying back and forth between Neat and I before we get to this tweet of Neat's, finally coming down to ask where at all he supports the harassment and acting like, all he's ever done is point out how flawed my logic is, despite never once paying attention to the logic that I've actually placed down, but fine. Do you want me to point to the exact moments? Let's recap then. You said people should ignore Sylveon and hope he grows out of it, which shifts the blame onto the people who are calling out the person doing the actions over the person actually doing the action. You acted like it was okay for Sylveon to beg for art of my characters because they should have known it was him, which shifts the blame onto the artist who might not even know who I am to begin with. There's your dismissal of screenshots of Sylveon, saying that he wants me deplatformed because they're old, why should they matter, after I told you his claim of not having any malice towards me was a fucking lie. There was your How To Be Her video, where you actively give advice on how Sylveon can try and better mimic me. There was your interview, where you enable his role-playing and cap it off with an emotionally manipulative picture painted to shine Sylveon in a more sympathetic light. That's like, what, five instances of you doing this? Oh, also, gotta love how he asked me for evidence of where he had upset me, despite me telling him I was unhappy with this behavior of his all thread. It's almost like you were ignoring me or something. By this point, I clocked out of the conversation because I realized I was talking to someone who not only was thicker than a brick wall, but also someone who clearly didn't have my best interest in mind as much as he would like me to believe. But this conversation went on for a while, eventually more and more people disassociated with me running them in circles, ignoring the point, deflecting the onus onto literally anyone except Sylveon, I didn't much care by this point, that is until this tweet got posted. I'm glad that in the end I won this little Twitter dispute. People blocking me, putting words into my mouth, and now random posts to change the subject. As Tones would put it, try again. Eat a sock. In retort, I'll admit, I subtweeted in the form of a gremlin's wisdom, and I think Neat caught on, so I'm not too worried about it. I'm not necessarily breaking any new ground by saying this, but, um, I feel like this is something that more and more people need to hear. But just because you're blocked, muted, or someone has given up with trying to argue with you doesn't mean you won the argument, nor does it mean you're correct. It just means you're the most stubborn of the two parties. I should know. <laughs> it was the whole thing with the Periplus thing. Uh, yeah, was, I, I wasn't correct, but I was definitely the most stubborn. Anyway. Just, uh, again, I just figured I'd make this short little video. See if anyone needs to hear it. Later, guys. What determines a victor in a battle? For some, it's power. For others, it's influence. But in the end, there is only one true power. And that is stubbornness. Sure, you can go ahead and disagree as much as you possibly want. But again, he who stands last is indeed the victor. As we've seen with the Vietnam War, as we have seen with Christianity back when Romans first ruled over them. Yeah, you can complain all you want, but of course stubbornness also equates to one more factor, never giving up. If America gave up during the Revolutionary War, then there would be no America today. And nothing of value would be lost, to be frank. I wasn't complaining necessarily, I was just thinking it was kind of stupid that your idea of victory was to run around a point without actually understanding anything for long enough until people got tired of dealing with you. That doesn't mean that you were the victor in the argument, it just showed that you had your head far enough up your own ass to not be able to hear when the victim of a situation isn't happy with your enabling of impersonating behaviors. Furthermore, it's super funny, if albeit hollow as shit, that the person who was just prior advocating for giving up and waiting for a situation to pass is coming in to talk to us about how to win a war. <sighs> now it's true that stubbornness has won a war or two, I won't deny that, but to call stubbornness the most important factor is very generalized and quite uneducated. Because if we were to go off of that logic, Napoleon Bonaparte and Adolf Hitler would have won their wars invading Russia. 
If you know your history, you know what happened in both those situations. I'm just saying, those two were also hella stubborn, and that's what led them into making rash and stupid decisions. Lesson learned, don't invade Russia during winter, forehead. But that's if we're talking about war, which we're not. We're talking about online discourse, and particularly a situation surrounding cyber harassment, cyber stalking, and impersonation. Not going out and actively killing people resulting to violence. On a more important note, hey me, you consider yourself a commentator, correct? Then why are you going into this situation with the intent of proving superiority? As a commentator, wouldn't it be more your job to clear up misinformation or to be able to present why ideas are illogical? To go in with the idea to critique above winning a situation? Because to go in with the intent to shut everyone up and show how superior you are only really demonstrates a lack of understanding and inability to want to listen. This video, combined with this tweet, doesn't show me that you care to actually resolve the situation, nor does it show me that you even give the slightest fuck about what the situation is even about. Let's also look at the Civil Rights Movement. Back when Martin Luther King assembled the March of Freedom. If Martin Luther King wasn't stubborn, they would have lost the march. But no, he remained stubborn. He remained unwilling to back down from his fight because he had a dream and stayed stubborn to win the rights his people deserved. I really hate the idea of entitled idiots who would give up before even trying anything, yet expect everything to go their way. Need I remind you, you were the one advocating for us to do exactly that? Oh, you should let Sylveon impersonate you because giving him the attention only feeds the trolls. That was you first. And a plethora of people came in to try to correct your misunderstanding of the situation, but after you ran us in circles for literal hours, thinking we were advocating for Sylveon to be isolated or to advocate for violence against Sylveon, by the way, neither of which were things people are advocating for, just FYI, that's when people started disassociating with you, because you refused to listen. Of course, when two stubborn people meet, the victor is decided by how much they're willing to sacrifice. I always detest the Martyr Act. Like, what are you sacrificing in this situation? What do you even have on the line here? You're just some rando who showed up late to dismiss the potential harm a person was doing because you thought they were cute. What's the point of this video? It's to explain reality. Something you only seem to have a tertiary knowledge of, but go off. Sure, you can call someone stubborn a gremlin. I was calling myself a gremlin in that video. And yes, I can be stubborn as well, but that's unrelated to calling myself a gremlin. I would say now you're just assuming things, but considering thus far, that might be a little late. But if you're not willing to fight for anything, or stand your ground, then step aside, because you're wasting everyone's time. This whole video lacks the self-awareness that it was you who first advocated for everyone to stop giving Sylveon any form of attention towards what they were doing in the first place. For you, the viewers, if you're passionate about something, it doesn't matter what kind of cancel culture fucks try to demean and destroy you. It doesn't matter how many idiots online try to discourage you, and it doesn't matter how many breadsticks devalue you. As long as you continue to believe in yourself, as long as you remain stubborn till the end, as long as you keep fighting for what you believe is right, then you will be the victor. See, knowing how he feels about the situation with Sylveon to begin with, I'm beginning to wonder if this particular don't give up portion is pointed more at Sylveon. Which, if it is, then... Yeah, neat, sure doing a good job not encouraging harassment. And if it's not pointed at Sylveon, then this is unrelated at all to the threads and seems to only encourage a toxic mindset going into a conversation or debate-worthy topics. Not because of the don't give up mentality on its own, that's fine in a vacuum. But in context to the rest of this be stubborn video, all you're doing is encouraging people to go in with a biased viewpoint and not be willing to budge or be open to the idea that they might be uneducated or misunderstanding on a topic. Once again, probably not something a commentator should be advocating for. Because believing in yourself, staying true to yourself, not lying to yourself, as long as you stay true to you, then no one in this entire world will ever rob you of your freedom. In the end, it's stubbornness that determines the victor as history has shown time and time again. Well, consider the ball to be in your court then. If I'm to be so bold, I honestly do think Neat is as bad if not worse than Sylveon in this situation. Because Sylveon definitely came in with a grudge and an inability to accept change. Plus, good god, a lot of their bad takes aren't particularly educated. 
Their actions are harmful and hypocritical, and yeah, Sylveon is just bad overall. But if I can defend Sylveon actions to at least some degree, they are 15. I do think he should be told off, I think his parents should get better informed of what he's doing, and I do wish he would quit his actions, but he is a stupid teenager who is going to do stupid teenager things. Neat is an adult. Neat has gone on record saying that they are a late millennial, which could mean a plethora of ages since no one can agree on where that generational split is actually, but all roughly in their 20s, so Neat doesn't even have an excuse for this behavior. That also ties into the next point I want to touch on, because after the situation between people who, you know, actually knew what was going on and Neat, he decided to take a more vindictive route and double down on the enabling behavior. First, it started with a comment on his interview with Sylveon, saying that Sylveon is his new favorite viewer now, as if the notion that you're only defending Sylveon because he hasn't spoken out against you isn't prevalent enough, but it gets worse. Because now, Neat has taken Sylveon's character and has repurposed it himself into a character called Huron. Curon. Huron? You know what, I don't care enough. The point is, now we have this character to look at. It's extra enabling, direct support, and Sylveon's got new toys to play with. But if that wasn't bad enough, we have new lore to look at. Perchance, were y'all feeling at all comfortable? Y'all listening in on this while you draw and play games? Y'all feeling cozy tonight? Because, uh, you're about to not be. So this story started in some of Neat's newest speed paints. Not the speed paints themselves, mind you, but instead in the comments of these speed paints. The two pieces you can find these stories on are Be My Bubblegum Boo and Reluctant Yet Eager. In that order. Episode 1 reads as the following. Kuron no it is Uragaki is a story about a nerdy head red of the same name. A long time ago, she was a smart and well-beloved individual but after falling in love with the wrong person, she can no longer face the people she was once acquainted with. As time passed, she has lost her way in life due to others constantly having their way with her, corrupting both her her mind and spirit. Not even having the courage to look at herself in the mirror. Everyone began calling her that girl not wanting to associate themselves with her due to the negative stigma surrounding her. After being used by people under the guise of helping her, she can no longer trust it anyone and keeps her heart shackled away not wanting to keep suffering disappointment after disappointment. Broken relationships after broken relationships. She believed that the only one left in the world that cared about her was herself. However, this all changed when she was interviewed by people who genuinely wanted to understand her better, for who she is, not for what others projected onto her. Thanks to their encouragement, she now believes that there is a chance of a happy ending for her. The story has yet to be finished. Are you done changing to your new outfit yet? Kuran Tan comes out of the other room. Do I look weird? I mean it's practically like my own clothing but a different color. I don't feel different. Met. Weird looking just means you're unique from the common masses. Individuality is key to freedom. I get that you didn't want to change your old look but even a small change like color is more than enough. I get it is hard to move on. That's human nature, but the point is that you are striving to change your life for the better, bit by bit. Any amount of change is progress, no matter how little. As long as you're happy, that's all that matters. Why why yet? I want to change. To be better. Thank you. Um. Senpai? Uh. Sure. If calling me that makes you feel happy, then I have no qualms with that. Um. Do you think I look pretty? And episode 2 reads as such. Kuran no it is Uragaki is a story about a nerdy head red of the same name. A long time ago, she was a smart and well-beloved individual but after falling in love with the wrong person, she can no longer face the people she was once acquainted with. As time passed, she has lost her way in life due to others constantly having their way with her, corrupting both her her mind and spirit not even having the courage to look at herself in the mirror. Everyone began calling her that girl not wanting to associate themselves with her due to the negative stigma surrounding her. After being used by people under the guise of helping her, she can no longer trust it anyone and keeps her heart shackled away, not wanting to keep suffering disappointment after disappointment. 
broken relationships after broken relationships. She believed that the only one left in the world that cared about her was herself. However, this all changed when she was interviewed by people who genuinely wanted to understand her better, for who she is, not for what others projected onto her. Thanks to their encouragement, she now believes that there is a chance of a happy ending for her. The story has yet to be finished. Well that movie was interesting. I fully expected them to kill of Michael like how most western slashers are doing nowadays. That movie was Sue Scott Ai. Huh. What? That movie is a slasher, most modern slasher aren't scary anymore. I get that you were clutching to me the entire time but I thought you were cold or something. Well. I was cold too senpai. But you were you wearing a vest. Asterisk anywho, I will go prepare the guest room. I mean your place was just a few miles, I didn't mind dropping you off home. Well. I wanted to get warmer. So your heater was broken or something. Kuran Tan, blushes and holds her arm behind her back, looking downward asterisk. Well. No. It's just I wanted a better way of warming up. I guess. She suddenly leans up close to you, her chin right next to your neck, her eyes meeting yours. You can feel her breathing right down your shirt, like a gentle breeze each time she exhales. The sound she makes is soothing to your ears. You can pick up the scent of her shampoo. She smells like autumn harvest, a gentle yet stern aroma. Should we go, and fix the bed together? I'm ready when you are. Yeah, so those red flags rising yet? I think Neat might have forgotten that he's talking about a 15 year old. I know what the inevitable argument is going to be. Oh, but Doodle Clones is 24, you said it yourself, right? And, okay, sure, that might be correct. But it's a 24 year old, played by a 15 year old. Erotically role playing with someone who is in their 20s both in and out of character. I'm not about to call it grooming, nor would I call Neat a pedophile, don't worry. I don't think I have enough evidence or authority to make a bold claim that he is. However, I would be lying if I said that I didn't find all this behavior of his to be immensely uncomfortable and horribly tone deaf, at the very least. With Neat explicitly confirming that this new story of his is based off of Sylveon, the infantilization of how he writes Sylveon in the self-insert ship fanfiction is something I'd highly advise against, else one more bold come in and make some much more aggressive allegations against him. Not to mention the fucking NSFW story time he openly said that they were doing together. Hey Clonesy, do you want to do another collab video? It's not as intricate as the first one we did. The premise for this video is simple. A party celebration of Prison Make Luke, Creepshow Art, and Susie Kai leaving the internet. Uh, why can't a lazy neat like me be lazy? Ugh. Error. Your homo sapien logic is insignificant. In six hours I will await upstairs in our room for you to recalibrate me. If you don't meet the designated time allotted then I will have no choice but to run a forced recalibration protocol. Wait, she can do that? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Is it okay if I ask what is recalibration? It's really a pain. Uh, it's, it's just a nuisance for someone like me who prefers to be lazy, but... Basically, like all machines, you have to get inside them and, you know, push around some buttons and uh, get handsy with the material. If a part isn't turned on, you have to turn it on. And if it's not turned on the first time, you have to keep doing it over and over and over and over. You get the point. There's a lot of innuendos in this video. However, all the innuendos aside, uh, I do have legitimate problems with this video too, and I intend to go into it, so... Let's begin. Ah, nothing feels better than the absence of harassers. Don't you agree? I do. I hope I've made that much clear by this point. Also, I've been wondering. Some tone-deaf asswipes have been saying that I've been enabling you. Do you think I'm enabling you? No, you're not. Ah, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just... Why are you asking such a biased party? Of course the kid who doesn't see an issue with stealing people's characters or trying to run people off their platforms for mistakes isn't gonna think you're enabling them. Uh, to think this makes some sort of point against your detractors is by far the most malicious or at the very least stupid part of Neat's behaviors in all this. Just... Uh, ugh. 
Ultimately, it's up to you, my guy. But if it were me, I just wouldn't forcefully sexualize characters played by minors. Even if these characters are of age, especially if you plan to give him himself, like the 15-year-old, lewd or NSFW art as someone who is indeed a minor. And that's coming from someone who has kind of first-hand experience with ERPs. I was the minor in a lot of those instances, but it wasn't okay when I did it. It sure as hell shouldn't be okay for an actual adult to do it. In any case, my advice to you, Neat, is to be more aware of what you're doing. You and Sylveon are both super reckless, but it's more excusable from the child since they're learning and growing. You, on the other hand, have a level of responsibility now being in your 20s. Please, use that responsibility wisely. Also, please, for the love of all that is good, drop this antagonistic attitude and dismissive behavior when you clearly don't have any idea as to what you're defending. <sighs> anyway, I think it's time to wrap up this whole journey. We've been going on long enough. I want to preemptively apologize to Jester Robot for my actions. When I made my Akumo video, I was more focused on passion and my creativity. And because of that, I made a regretful video that, honestly, I should have explained better. Actually, I guess we're not done with the portion on me. I intended to just leave it as it was, but this man decided to make my job significantly more annoying with the video he made addressing a slight controversy he got into regarding some porn he drew between representations of Kaya Weiss and Akumu. While he didn't just leave it as an explanation for that video and apologizing for it, I could only guess it's purely out of spite and as a defense mechanism once he heard that I was going to be talking about him here, but Neat had specifically called me out by name so he could give me a very special message. And I'm going to be blunt about it. I've tried being cordial. As annoyed as I've gotten to this point, I'm willing to give the benefit of doubt. This segment does not change what I have to say during my concluding statements. But Neat keeps pushing me to a point where I'm beginning to wonder if being cordial is exactly the right way to get through to him, but... Ugh, whatever. He hasn't heard anything from this video. Though, given his reaction in said video, I'm not so sure he wants to listen, but... Fuck it, I want to cover my basis. But there is also one more deciding factor that pushed me to producing this. And that is to burn a bridge. And the bridge I'm so willing to burn is the bridge against snowflakes. Basically, here's this thing. For a while now, there's a bunch of these idiots, I'm just gonna call them the Neo-CC led by this tone-deaf idiot who use the same kind of defense as Yandere Dev, saying that all criticisms are like gremlins. I literally did not. I'm not even sure where you get the idea that I did from a video called A Gremlin's Wisdom, as in wisdom from a gremlin. The gremlin owns the wisdom, possessive, whatever. The point is, critique was not something I was calling out in that video. In fact, I don't even bring up critique in that video, but more say that just because someone is as stubborn as a mule to the point they won't listen to what's being told to them, that doesn't mean that they've won an online argument. That doesn't have to do with critique. Honestly, they've been talking too much shit, so you know what? I decided to say fuck it. A tweet I made addressing your pornography and a subtweet video that addressed your condescending attitude towards people who gave up trying to explain a situation you clearly show no interest in actually bettering. That's apparently talking too much shit. Really? Burn the fucking bridge. Honestly, I don't give a fuck about these oversensitive Karens. Which is why you specifically chose to call us out on a video addressing the backlash you got from a video you were apologizing for posting that could have harmed your favorite YouTuber's rap. Out of nowhere, by the way. Arbitrarily. Okay. If you're oversensitive about a woman's figure, get the fuck out, man, because Big deal. Women have boobs. Big fucking deal. It's their natural born bodies. Why should you be the ones to judge someone based on their bodies of what they were born with? That was never a thing I talked about. Like, where, where did this come from? And yes, these are the types of people who are easily offended over some skin. Uh, who? Like, look, the problem with the video that you were addressing here was that it came across as revenge porn. And I know, you claim that wasn't your intent. Fine, if that wasn't your intent, so be it. But from an outsider's perspective, that is what it came across as. Though I guess you could also be referring to maybe the sexual story time you made with Sylveon, because I know some people also took issue with that video. 
but the problem there wasn't the showing skin either. The problem was that you were willingly and knowingly giving a minor not safe for work art, which, yeah, that's an issue, fam. Either way, in no sense is what you're actually, like, arguing here for. None of that was ever brought up. So I'm like, fuck it. The Akumo video was designed to not only support Akumo, not only to express my frustrations with Kai, but also as a message to all of these oversensitive neo-Nazi fucking sensitive CC members. Fuck you. I don't care. Which is why you've gone out of your way to address it at all in a totally unrelated video. But okay, we'll put that to the side because Neat says he doesn't care a lot. And we'll be here all day if I wanted to point out the I don't care so much I made a video about it mentality he has throughout, well, the whole video, actually. That said, I do want to take specific note about how he calls us neo-Nazis in the same breath as calling us oversensitive Karens. Like, buddy, I don't think neo-Nazi is the word that you think it is. With that being said, this completes my video. And for those of you who are wondering what about Kainomnia, as I said before, my Akuma video was designed to burn bridges. And so, fuck you, oversensitive snowflakes. Intolerant assholes like you are not worth the time. Bro, I'ma be honest, and we're gonna be 100% here, there weren't ever any bridges made between us. I don't know you outside of the videos I've seen you in where you enabled Sylveon's impersonating behaviors and the thread we had between us. There wasn't anything to burn, so to say that we're not worth your time, cool. You can move on elsewhere when everything is all said and done. Don't let the door hit you on the way out, that might hurt. And also, one more message for Tones and her neo-Nazi fucking CC. See, I'm still wondering, are we oversensitive SJW snowflakes or racist, xenophobic, homophobic, anti-Semites? Pick a struggle. Bite me. Like I will ever, ever care about a bunch of people who, instead of finding a peaceful solution with clones, will only dedicate themselves to hating and hating on one person who isn't even a threat. After talking with you people, no wonder clones hates you. No wonder she has dedicated herself to hating tones. Let's ignore what's said in those videos, I guess. It's clearly just the fact that videos on him exist to begin with that's truly hateful at the end of the day. I guess. Like, should I bring up Sylveon's playlist of 22 videos all directed at me? Can we say that Sylveon started it with all this hate and vitriol pointed at me? Oh, but the problem is, is that Sylveon's not a threat to you, except when he is, by attaching hateful rhetoric to my characters and a username very similar to my own that led to people thinking he's an alt account of mine, including you. Did we forget that part, Neat? Also, I love that Neat earlier insinuates that I can't handle critique because I hold a yawn dev and called it all gremlins when I didn't but details. Whereas he is just flat out labeling all these videos that critique Sylveon as hate videos. Like, no cap, no other way to look at this, I'm not twisting his words or anything, this is just him flat out labeling critique as hate, full stop. But we're the oversensitive snowflake neo-Nazis. Also, also, Sylveon dedicated his life to hating me well before these videos came out, but I guess we can also conveniently leave that part out too since Neat obviously doesn't care. All of you are absolutely disgusting. Too easy. Trust me, I'm an asshole. I don't give a shit of what other people think of me. But all of you? You guys act like you guys are the heroes. You don't act like you guys are the moral standard. That you guys speak for what's right. The moment anyone steps out of line for you, you immediately chuck them. You immediately isolate them. You immediately abuse and harass them. Like seriously, a bunch of creators ten times larger than fucking clones is after her. Talk about pathetic. No one was asking for Sylveon to be isolated or ostracized, we're literally asking him to not use my characters or my brand. Oh, anytime someone steps out of line is also a fun little piece of malicious rhetoric that sneakily leaves out the context of what exactly Sylveon had been doing all year. But no, please keep insinuating that we want to ostracize Sylveon for harmless mistakes, it clearly makes for a better narrative. Throughout my entire time with clones, she has been nice and very considerate. Look, I'm glad you two have gotten chummy. It's cool y'all are friends, and it's cool you're both being nice to each other, but... That said, the two interactions between you and myself and you and Sylveon are two vastly different interactions. 
With Sylveon, you started by complimenting them, calling them cute, and willingly giving an impersonator more ammunition and fan art that they could use to continue their charade. You've been enabling a lot of their behavior and have joined into their other crusades that, I mean, really are just people that just as robot takes issues with or had fights with. And look, both of y'all defend Lollicon and are big Jar fans, so there's a point of interest between you two as well. There's not really any real reason for Sylveon to be upset with you. Whereas with me, you ignored my plight, ignored any reasoning I gave you, told me to stop speaking out against Sylveon, unintentionally assisted in harassment against me, dismissed it all, and then got angry when people started noticing they weren't getting anywhere with you and decided to distance themselves from you. Plus, we never had any correspondence like you had with Sylveon. So there wasn't really any ability for you to get my side or had any attempt at a connection with me. Like, you're just blowing up at me because I've gotten upset with how you've been acting. Even if I had been ultimately more respectful about you than I probably reasonably should have been given your continued behavior. Black. Anne has shown way more humanity than your entire fucking CC combined together. You'd be surprised at how untrue that was when put into the context with Sylvia and I from the beginning, but of course, you wouldn't know or care about any of that, now would you need? Block me, call me out, whatever the fuck you want to justify yourself. I was always an outcast. So I'm used to being alone. Just understand that I don't care about you, your opinions, or your insecurities. Goodbye. So, I guess I don't actually have to give Neat the benefit of doubt. I guess I could call him a groomer and a pedophile after all. Mind you, I won't, and I'm not actually doing so because, again, I don't think I have the authority to make such a claim, but like... I mean, if he truly doesn't care about what I or others have to say about him, I mean, he'd have no problem with me doing so, right? All joking aside, I'm just saying, my man, this whole segment came off as horribly contradictory and antagonistic for the sake of yelling at people you had no interest in listening to in the first place. You say you don't care, but this segment. You say you have no interest in looking like a hero and will acknowledge you're an asshole, Yet you seem to hold this morally superior stance against something that no one was advocating for. You seem to take a stance against those that can't take criticism, yet have labeled every video against Sylveon as hate, obviously without having watched any of them. This whole thing came off as an unscripted, emotionally driven tantrum, all because people took issue with a video that was perceived as revenge porn. Even if that wasn't your actual intentions, I just... Come on now. Anyway... Hopefully we're done now. He's burned this metaphysical bridge that I'd still argue didn't really exist to begin with. Supposedly. So, I don't think anything new needs to be added to the segment, so I can finally move on with my overall concluding statements. So, of course, things still happened after the segment was written, recorded, and edited, even. But at least now I know where Neat got the idea that I was calling criticisms gremlins. But, uh, yeah, the logic behind this conclusion makes no sense either. This dude called Geo tried to explain where the gremlin part of the title stemmed from, which was exactly what I have described in this segment. That I was alluding to the idea that I was the gremlin giving a wisdom. But Neat tries counter-arguing that by saying that I wasn't clear enough as to who I was talking about, though. I'd argue I was in both title and description. And instead, he came to the conclusion he did under the guise of an emotional reaction, which... Yeah, I'ma be honest, me. That tracks. You seem to go into a lot of this situation very emotionally driven, if not everything you went into as such. It explains the random is Lollicon CP question in your interview with Sylveon. It explains why you think we're advocating for violence and ostracization of Sylveon. It explains why you seem to not know what I was talking about in the Gremlins Wisdom video. It explains your whole tirade at the end of your apology video to Jar, as well as the videos on the Kai Wai situation to begin with. It just... it explains too much. So if I could add to my already established critiques of you, that'd be another one I'd add. If you find yourself getting that heated to where you feel like you're going to make a knee-jerk reactionary response, maybe step away from it from a bit and collect your thoughts instead of, well, being stubborn and wanting to fight as much as you can. I know, I know, but war though, to which I say, please, understand that this isn't a war, it's just a very prolonged internet drama. Anyway, let's get into final thoughts. What a journey this has been. I'm exhausted. 
think I would like to start by apologizing for any toes that I might have stepped on. This has been a long time coming, and I definitely can say that I feel like maybe I came across as overtly heated during some moments. I definitely tried not to be, but given this is a 110-ish page script, you might be able to see where my normal demeanor fucked off to. However, that doesn't excuse anything, and if you guys felt that maybe I did get a little too heated or aggressive during some of these moments, I do apologize. With that said, we've been over just about everything that Sylveon has done and everything surrounding the situation. I think I left no stone unturned, but with everything that is all said and done, I think it's time we wrap things up. But first, allow me to recap. Sylveon is an individual who found me through just a robot. That much is clear. He started leaving some annoying comments, but progressed into malice over the course of time after he watched Confessions and Apology. Videos I made during a pretty obvious mental breakdown. I ignored him for a while, but this only led him to escalate his behavior further, creating an alias by the name of Doodle Clones. After blocking this alias after some petty back and forth due to him spamming my comments with vitriol, he decided to take this crusade to Twitter, and blocking him again only led him to making more videos on me. Each video had its own brand of problems to it. For the most part, they were just... bad, with a lack of actual points and focused more on reacting, had they not been plagiarizing points. His bias against me clouding his judgement and leading him into focusing almost entirely on all my old dramas with a lack of context or care behind them. Once he was done with those videos and showing that he truly didn't have much more than a petty grudge with me, he went back to Twitter, stealing my characters and attempting to use them in art raffles for free brand theft. During this time, he also kept up his crusade against me, showing more and more signs of hypocrisy the more time went on. Be it his own hollow apologies, his blatant transphobia whilst arguing other YouTubers he deemed as transphobic, the increasing sexual nature Sylveon had after making his video talking about my Medicare video where all he did was berate sexuality, be against blocking openly while blocking anyone who stood against him, and the list went on and on, all the while ironically being hypocritical regarding his stance on hypocrisy. He also picked up other grudges during that time. Team Moss Boss, Prison Mate Luke, Connor the Waffle, Kai Weiss, the latter of which Sylveon was violently begrudging to the point he made jokes openly about Kai's potential death, which got me blamed for those very comments. I eventually got to a point somewhere along the way where I even privated my Twitter account to which Sylveon continued to stalk, trying to see whatever he could that I was posting so he could presumably, no not even presumably, so he could continue to steal from me. I spoke out against him again by mid-June to which Sylveon got aggressive towards me, but after republicizing my account, Sylveon had apparently not felt safe anymore. However, shortly after this point, Sylveon himself got even more egregious, antagonizing people with his hot takes on lolicon, racism, transphobia, and anything else that could have been deemed as bad takes. I believe there was even a point where he defended NFTs, one of the biggest and most successful scams in history, I'd argue. All under my brand. Plastering my brand and self-depiction space all over these bad takes, and mind you, by this point, he was still going artist to artist trying to get free fan art of a character he didn't own but was claiming was his anyway. We eventually got his Twitter account taken down through DMCA's, and then a second one, and he currently still has his third. And by this point, people saw this as the perfect chance to get involved without knowing what was going on. This is where we enter people like Doodle Fanjo, Carmen Rider, and Studio Needing More, the latter of which concerningly started flirting with the child and valiantly white knighting Sylveon in his actions, deeming them uwu kawaii and obsessing with this idea that I had a clone to begin with. This is where we are now, and you'll be surprised, but I've thought long and hard over what I want out of this situation, and how a compromise can be made so that we can all go our separate ways finally. These actually will be constructive, because as much as I definitely don't like either of you, I don't merely want you guys to be deplatformed like that unless you've actually earned that hardship of punishment. But believe it or not, I think the both of you can change for the better, all things considered. First, Sylveon, delete the Doodle Clones accounts. Use your Sylveon account, make a new account for your characters for all I care, just leave my name, my brand, my characters, and my aliases out of it. If you are serious about being a clone being the cool idea for you, and it's not just an excuse for you to try to ruin someone's reputation, I even have a way you can do so without impeding on someone else's online identity, so you can have your cake and eat it too. See. Lore-wise, you could make your character a clone of some mysterious original character that you yourself have created. Sylveon can still be your creator, but the main character could be this clone that was created from the DNA of this extra original character. That way you're not at risk of copyright infringement. Hell, Neat could probably help you design your own character. He seems to be O2 eager to want to draw you stuff. So if he truly wants to stick by this notion that he wishes to help quell this situation and not support the impersonation, there you go, a legitimate way you can help out. On that note, Neat, you might want to hold off on the loot and NSFW stuff with Sylveon. He 
is a child, regardless of his character's age. The second thing I'd suggest to Sylveon is that if you want to still cover old drama topics, first I'd highly recommend you do your research on what you're talking about. Going in with whatever the popular opinion was isn't always the best idea, and you should know that considering the stuff with the Hopeless Peaches drama. Secondly, I'd suggest acknowledging where the changes in behavior are. If you want to look at something retrospectively, look at it retrospectively. Don't sit there and act like all videos are indicative of the quality of the individuals now unless you can actually prove that to be true. This does require effort in looking at their newest work and acknowledging that time is a concept, but that's the price to pay if you want to look at a drama or video that's years old now like the ones you often do. Humans aren't stagnant, we're an ever-growing, ever-evolving species that will mature as time goes on. Holding us to the same standards as our mistakes all the time isn't productive. Thirdly, you might want to set your biases at the door. Personally, I notice that whenever someone has any sort of grudge with just a robot, you and me actually come in to fight on his behalf, but Jar isn't infallible either. I definitely don't hate the guy, and I actually intend to work with him on a project at some point in the future. Hopefully the near future, with any luck. But even I'll concede that he himself can be quite vengeful at times, bringing up things that aren't at all relevant to devalue the opinion of his opposition. I know he did that recently when talking about Chaos 55T and her apparent beliefs about green goo or something. It wasn't relevant, point is. I think keeping these three things in mind while making a retrospective commentary would definitely help you out a ton in the future. Focus more on addressing the faults of these old videos in the context of these old dramas instead of merely reacting to everything as if it's all happening in real time. Finally, the third overall thing I want to suggest to Sylveon. I won't say you have to change your beliefs on lolicon and racism and porn. Ultimately, at the end of the day, while I have my opinions and disagreements, I don't think I care about all that when everything is all said and done. But I will say be careful throwing around those opinions like a morning star. If you truly want to die on those hills, if you truly believe this stuff, personally, I say go for it. But considering how you reacted to Seppi Paz's pretty lax video on you, and how worried you were about being cancelled, these opinions aren't going to help you. That said, at the very least, if you want to have this whole crusade about hypocrisy, please be consistent. Otherwise, your hypocrisy stance becomes hypocritical, and we don't want you hurting yourself with confusion now. That whole stance with Carmen was absurd in particular. Carmen gets away with an apology in a platform, yet I can't apologize and be online. Please. Anyway, I think that's everything. Hopefully this is the end of the Sylveon saga, because I definitely don't want to come back another six months from now to make another five-hour video updating everything. And due to the craziness of this video, I think I'll wrap it up by saying that if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more content akin to this, but not nearly as long, you can hit that subscription button and bell for notifications. I do have a Ko-fi and Patreon linked below, though considering what I heard about the latter in NFTs, I don't exactly know how long that's going to stay there. But we'll see. I got a worst of the year list to make next, so I'm not exactly at a point where I can rest yet, but hopefully all of you have a good day and a great holiday. Take care, everyone. <laughs>